shop, new kid on the block. Curtains running strong like a solo wave. I feel electric. Locked, plugged into the socket. Watch me burn it hot, yeah, I radiate. I feel electric. Cars into my veins like a power surge. Call it misbehaving the way I burn. If you're gonna wait, then you miss your turn. Charge up and ready, I'm going steady with you. Looking like you're blacked out, got that picture shot now. Everybody stop, get that picture shot now. Future shot, future shot, future shot. Future shot, future shot, future shot. Breathe, feel that energy. You can change the lights from red to green. See, I got what you need. Sparking a connection, go VIP. You feel electric. You feel electric.
Season 22 is brought to you in part by Intel Arc, Acer Predator, Monster Energy, 1X Bet, and the United States Air Force. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another day of Dream League Season 22 coverage. I'm Odie Pixel, and today I've got the pleasure of being joined by Trent. Trent, how are you doing? Uh, doing great. Thank you very much for having me. You know, it's uh, our fallen comrade there, Mr. Mr. Fogged. Um, the snow once I'll again siding with the Canadian. And, and yeah, knocked him out, out, bless him. Yeah, poor yeah. lad. Yeah. 
But uh, indeed, you're, you know, you're here to take his spot. I'm sure he's watching. So hello for actually, that's not true. It's qu probably quite early for him. It's quite no, early. No, 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 yet. He's probably still yeah. asleep at the moment. He's waking up. <laughs> he's rested up. Yeah, we're we gotta get him all yeah. patched up. You know, get him back in the game here. So. Uh, for, for now, yes, uh, I, I will happily cover for him here. And uh, and we have a great series to start with. And we already have 9 out of 10 players, so don't worry. You know, We're, we're going to get that on-time start. I can feel it today, Owen. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. We, we, were, we were very good with the games yesterday. Super smooth, and hopefully it's going to be another smooth day for us uh, today, ladies and gentlemen, in terms of the teams that we will be seeing a selection of. And in fact, you can probably find, yeah, I think pretty much everyone plays every day, right? So there's four streams going on. Y you, you'll find your favorite team somewhere. Uh, as I say, as, an, as Trent says, we've got pretty banger games here, so you don't have to go anywhere else. But if you've got other monitors, get the other streams open <laughs> as well. Um, but Trent, look at the teams that we have here. Uh, who are you most excited to see? Are there any sort of teams that you're, you're looking forward to see play here in this Dream League Season 22, where we've got the best 16 teams in the world? Uh, for me, Extreme Gaming is definitely, I, I think for a lot of people, one of the biggest ones to watch. I mean, they've already shown some, some incredible plays uh, in, their, in their more recent tournaments. Uh, particularly, I think they, they tend to shine more on this like individual level. Like they're gonna get compared a lot to Azure, who, cause you know, they're both from the same region and they both have some like really well-loved and, and some veteran players there. You know, you got, you got like FY on one side, you got Ame on the other, whoever just loves to cheer for. And uh, I, I think they have this cool dynamic where like Extreme are this really like individual based team. It feels like they make these really crazy plays by themselves, whereas Azure has this like unbelievable team play. So comparing and contrasting them has been really cool and uh, just enjoying the, their runs here. They, they attempt to get some of this action here, guys. Look at that money. Look at those EPT points, Owen. That's what they're here Absolutely, for. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, that's the crazy thing, right? You know, it's a, a lot of points, a lot of money. And of course, this is all on the way towards getting towards the, you know, rehab masters and where they get to play for the, the crazy, crazy bucks. So a lot of things uh, that these teams are competing for and every reason why, as we saw yesterday, there's no messing around. This is what matters the most right now in the Dota 2 landscape, getting those EPT points and performing here at the Dream Leagues. And as you can see for the two groups, yes, today's results uh having a quick look at them now trent anything that sort of surprises you here what was sort of jumping out what's notable i think most people probably immediately jump right to like whoa aurora is top of group b uh but that, i will say they have played some of like whoa well, because they're maybe the the weaker opponents in their group you know they went 1-1 one, one with with shopify and, and they did 2-0 the former um Klimsani, i believe it was uh now known as one win so uh you know no one's really a slouch across this whole thing but uh, when you see Aurora up top, you're just like, oh, because they, they had that recent swap where they brought in um, Lornoff, uh, which is pretty cool there, as there were all these rumors about like 23 maybe leaving, but he's staying, and we, we've got ourselves uh, Lornoff in the mid. So uh, I, I think that's probably surprise number one. And then uh, seeing Virtus Pro and Bet Boom together as well, whereas Virtus Pro is always playing this like second fiddle kind of a little bit between Bet Boom and, and Team Spirit, they kind of get lost in the mix a lot. Uh, so it probably feels really good for them to see themselves up at the top of the board right now. Yeah, absolutely. Especially considering what the from their results so far. I mean, they one of the series was against uh, Heroic, which I think people are expecting going to be the team that maybe struggles a, a bit more than the others. It's going to be a bit of a tough group for them. Um, but then the other win, uh, they got you know they were able to draw against Bet Boom, so I think mean, that would have been quite a satisfying you know series for them to be able to take a win and, and sort of settle the score there on that one. In terms of uh, the upcoming games today on this stream. Uh, talking about Bet Boom, we're going to be starting with them. We're going to have Bet Boom versus Azure Ray, uh, followed up by uh, one that I'm looking forward to. I mean, this is the the meme matchup, the big names, Tundra versus oh, yeah. Shopify. You know, look at the, the sort of the, the bigger names in the team. I mean, there's a lot of big names in those teams, but it's it's for the Twitch chat, it's Topson versus RTZ. That's what everybody's going to be tuning in for. Uh, and then later on in the day, uh, Bet Boom's going to be back on. We're going to see them go against OG. OG had uh, at least in the game we saw them, uh, myself and uh, T saw them from them. Yeah. Yesterday, they had a pretty good showing. Uh, I think, uh, and outside of that as well, yeah, they ended up the day three and one. So that's, that's going to be a good one there between OG and Betboom currently sitting at the same score on the group stage. And then finally, Team Spirit versus Team Secret, um, which uh, I'll also be interested in because Secret, they had a win yesterday that was, this, it was the only one win they had. They ended up going one yeah. and three, but the game that they did win, it looked really good. It looked really good. Uh, and it was against Extreme Gaming as well. So. You know, who knows with Secret? Uh, it could still be a case of kind of, you know, warming up with the team. Sure, they've played like a lot of qualifiers. Of course, a couple of them, they didn't win the qualifiers, but 
I think they're still sort of in that period where they're, you know, getting things together. Puppy's getting the, the new boys in shape, so, you know, Corden and Eki and uh, boom back on the squad. We'll see how they go. Anyway, back to what we're starting our day with, Trent. It's going to be mm. Bet Boom, as we see on your screen first. Let's talk a bit about them. Uh, this squad, they uh, were well, recently back at the uh, Dasher tournament. They did pretty well. Like this yeah. team from sort of this you know, big name lineup that they have. They've always had great online results. They managed to make it work in a land. Let's, uh, let's see if they can make it work again here uh, when it all counts at uh, Dream League. I mean, what do you reckon about this team right now? I think they're uh, perennial favorites a lot of the time. Uh, even with like their older Ross, I think it's gonna shift around a little bit more. And, uh, and, and I guess GPK, I think right here, as you see, like definitely one of the players who you're always looking at because there, there's times where they'll lose a game and then the next game, they'll just instant pick like Storm Spirit. And they're, just, you know, and there's like GPK, please carry us. Uh, we, we need your craziness out of the mid lane. Uh, I've seen him do some really innovative builds lately. He, uh, he, I think he built like a 13 minute BKB first on Wind Ranger uh, at that tournament. And it was super sick because it was a game where all he had to do was just fight and like try and buy time for his team. I thought it was such a sick item choice. You know, everyone's like getting their maelstroms, trying to farm them as fast as possible. This guy just buys an instant BKB like he's a Doom mid or something. It just starts roaming around the map, making plays happen for his team. So, uh, you know, he he's always been known as this like tilter a little bit. And I do think that is starting to uh, kind of fade away. Like, I think he is being more stable and more consistent, and, and that's certainly what this team needs. Absolutely, and yeah, from the, yesterday's results, definitely seems that the stability is continuing to this one. And uh, they will be, of course, playing up against Azure Ray. Azure Ray's results yesterday, they were able to, I believe, what, draw both of their series. Um, to be fair to them, though, that's still impressive considering the opponents. It was Gaming Gladiators and Falcons, definitely two of the uh, stronger teams. Uh, we can, at least from kind of before this all started, I think people would have expected those two teams, Falcons and Gaming Gladiators, to probably end up very much towards the top of the group. Uh, so they took a game of both of them. Uh, and in general, what, what did you sort of make of the, this squad? as your right, Trent. Yeah, as, uh, I, I think for me, like comparing and contrasting again to, uh, to Extreme, it's, it, I don't know, it's just enjoyable between these two teams because I, I really do see just like straight up teamwork when I watch this team. It, it feels like they are just, when, whenever their greatest moments are being achieved, it's not like one player doing this crazy thing, right? It's not like Zin Q's doing his like Monkey King sniping of the couriers and stuff when he's playing for Extreme. Over on this side, I'm seeing like the teamwork between like FY's rotations and Ori in the mid lane. I feel like they're, they're overall just team fighting as well, where they're able to bait out these longer fights and then reinitiate has looked so impressive uh, every time I'm going through and, and watching all of their replays. They, they just seem like a, a very, very solid unit. And that's probably why they're having so much success right now. Uh, it feels like they can easily beat anyone. Uh, it's, you know, I, I, I would say day one, maybe a little disappointed for them. I, I want to see like the just, just the big zero in the L column when I'm watching this team. Uh, I want to see just like all two O's all the way through. I will see if they can get one here today. I mean, when it comes to this matchup, would you say you would favor one of the two teams in this? I mean, are, are we looking at a 1-1 one, one, or do you think with the way that both these teams play, someone's got the upper hand? Uh, I think coming into this, I definitely would have said Azure. And uh, I mean, like you're right. It is like two of the best teams that they're 1-1-ing versus. So uh, I, I'm still going to stick with them. Yep. But Bedboom has been on the up. And like if they actually want to get that full momentum, I mean, they already 2-0 GG, which is still huge. Even if GG doesn't seem like the scariest team of the world, uh, they can, we all know they can easily just like start popping off again. So uh, I think Bedboom, if they get a 2-0 here, that's the way you just like win this group and you feel super solid heading into the next stage of the tournament. Yeah, I think I'm for sure there's no doubt about that. Yeah, whoever whoever ends up, if one of these teams 2 0s, they're going to be making it through this group stage, no questions asked. I think this is uh, you know, one of those series that sort of sets them apart from uh, the rest in this, uh, this group stage. Well, in terms of the game starting, ladies and gentlemen, we should have it on your screens pretty shortly. Looks like uh, the players are nearly already in the lobby. <laughs> Um, this I, is my fault. I yeah. cast a curse Your the lobby. I, well, what did you I said, do? I said, we got 9 out of 10 already. It'll be fine. Yeah, we, we still have 9 out of 10. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> that fact has not changed. I'm sure they'll be here any moment. But, He's coming. Uh, in, in He's flying from Toronto to Tokyo. I won't say who it was, but they're currently on a flight. Uh, you know, I'm here, sure too. I'm sure it'll be fine. And with, uh, with regards to the Dota, I mean, with the latest patch and stuff as well, I mean, any sort of uh, specific sort of heroes or strats you're expecting to see from these teams? Uh, is there anything you feel 
will quickly fall out of favor because of like that little recent patch where we, you know, the letter yeah. patch, where we did have things nerfed. Anything we're not going to see any get again, or we're going to see maybe teams try and then be like, well, you know what, this just isn't that good anymore. I was running through some of the numbers last night, just yeah. looking at I, it's only day one, obviously, uh, of uh, the group stage here. But I was just comparing and looking towards Bet Boom, Dacha, and I'm thinking like, you know, who, who are we not going to see anymore? And I think uh, your old friend Faceless Void, he might be on not, the out. Really? Well, it was only the time dilation change, right? It was time dilation. It was his talent. It was, I Honestly, mean, even yeah. the bash on creeps, you know, never hurts. I sure, yeah. Extra it's stun. Little, yeah. But you're still it, a carry that has a Kronos fit. Isn't that, that is always great. just going to creep he, back in not, because you have a, you know, you're a carry with a Kronos fit. He's not dead, but like he was nah. in most drafts. If not being picked, he was so yeah, often sure. banned in that second phase. And I think we only saw him picked five times yesterday. Now, to be fair, he won four of those games, so he still looks good. But, you know, we, we've got, you know, what, 32 games and he was only in like 10 of the drafts, 10 or 11 of the drafts. <laughs> Whereas you've got Chen and DK who are still in every single draft, either picked or banned. <laughs> Yes, uh, yeah, I think yeah, Chen. I think was pretty much in every ban for first phase that at least the, from the games that we saw on this stream uh, in the first it, two series uh, every time. But uh, I'm expecting, I guess, strength heroes, right? With looking across that patch, that's the thing that stood out to me the most, at least, is you're you're looking across like all these like Sanj and Yasha builds and everything. Just looks pretty solid again. That status resistance going up definitely concerns me. Uh, no, nobody likes seeing that uh, be, be a, uh, a viable option in a lot of the builds. It can be very frustrating when you're playing support heroes and you're wondering why that hero you're trying to chain stun just won't stay down. Uh, I, I'm wondering, you know, we're already seeing it in the numbers too, like life stealers going up across the board in terms of like top two pubs, yeah. uh, Chaos Knight as well. So I, I'd say some concerns in the, uh, the big beefy department of heroes. Did you, did you feel that anything wasn't nerfed enough? Like, uh, for example, like Mage Slayer. Do you think that was a good bit of tuning? I thought that was good. Down a bit? That's enough? Yeah. You think it's, 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 yeah. it's more, it's balanced now? Yeah, I actually thought that was pretty perfect. To have it just be yeah. at three seconds. Uh, it, I think it's difficult because the item is, it's always going to be a hard item to balance because of the fact that uh, these heroes that are able to apply to multiple heroes, like Sleight of mm. Fist or Acorn Shot, like, it's just always going to be kind of broken on these heroes, but you don't want to ruin it for everyone else. So I think the idea of lowering the uh, the debuff timer means that if you're an individual hero targeting a specific person with your normal attack, you can still do that, right? It's going to keep resetting the three second buff. But when you do these big AOE attacks, now there's not five heroes for a combined 30 seconds of debuff, right? If it was five by yeah, six, so it now it's just five by that. three. So we've cut that in half when you're doing Sleight of Fist and Acorn Shot. So I thought that was a really good solution. Yeah, and then the question then with that as well, do you think it's going to mean that we'll see more heroes? Like we we actually saw XM play yesterday, you know, he brought in the Leshrac, you know, and I feel that like Leshrac oh. was very much a hero that was really hard to play in this meta of everybody just having Mage Slayer every game. Yeah. He had a really good game with it. Do you think that was just sort of a, a just a stray lucky game or, or it does sort of the nerf on Mage Slayer allow these heroes to kind of be more prevalent? Well, there's also, you get the Bloodstone build change as well. Stones, it's just yeah, a little bit the better, regen. Yeah, you which is kind of nice. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think Lestrak is the hero that across the board, if you look at like all of Dota, he went up 5% flat win rate. Oh, yeah. Uh, which is, that's okay. big. He went from 45 yeah, to 51% yeah. win rate, 45.9, yeah. 50.9, you know. Uh, yeah, so he had a huge just buff. I mean, the hero is certainly better. Uh, there's no doubt about that. So... Uh, I, I am expecting we'll see him, but I do think Mage Slayer is still a, a super viable counter. No, like for sure. Yeah, it will be. It, yeah, it's going to be in every game that he is, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, as we saw, it was something that was played around. And yeah, I've seen uh, some high level pubs as well, just less players being able to pop off pretty hard. Uh, in, fa in fact, honestly, I think I was watching pubs this morning and I think it was actually Ori. There was a game that Ori was, I was watching a game that Ori was playing and he was trying his best to carry it. He did lose, but he was incredibly farmed on the lash and it was, it was a tough game for him, but uh, he, he was, uh, it, it looked good even when he was losing. So we may see, uh, see Azure actually try and pick up some lash today and we'll see. Well, apologies for the delay, delay, ladies and gentlemen. We do have some lobby issues at the moment. So uh, we're just waiting to see if uh, they're able to fix those so we can get the action on. Um, and it, it, well, as I've said, there's a lot of streams going on, ladies and gentlemen, the other games going on. I, I have, have you even, have you had a look at what else is going on right now, Trent, on this first? Uh, uh, across like the other streams? Yeah, here? yeah, what's on right now? Uh, no, I don't, I know the other matchups today, but I'm not sure who's first. I, I can tell you we got uh, Game Gladiators versus OG. 
Um, oh, yeah. So G2 good. IG versus Virtus Pro. That'll be an interesting one to see if G2 IG can bounce back because they, they yeah. went uh, zero wins yesterday. And, yeah, it was rough. Uh, I expected more from them. I thought they, I thought they'd have a better shot, yeah. but uh, it, it, we saw one of the games uh, over on this stream, and yeah, it, it didn't look too great for them. It didn't look too great. It looked rough. Looks like we're having some. I'm gonna restart mine as well. As well, please. Uh, I'm just gonna restart my Dota because oh, yeah. mine's also being a little Maybe it was funky. Trend. Yeah, uh -oh. I'm, I'm the one holding it. I don't want to be the I, one holding it up. So No, I can never tell, Trent. How do you know when it's you're the problem when it comes you're to You're the problem abilities? if when yeah. it's trying to load, if you don't get the waiting for players thing and it kicks you back oh. out and you get the reconnect button. Oh, and I I'll, see. So if, if yeah. I'm in and I see the countdown, I'm good in a dose. You're good, yeah. yeah I'm good. No. But sometimes if we join the lobby really early and then there's a, yeah. a little patch, it can mess up. So I just don't want to be the problem. Sure. Yeah, no, no. So hopefully they don't start without me. I did type. Right, we're into the draw. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're still good. We're waiting for Trent. <laughs> this is yeah, see, this is one of those points where chat can type. Cast to start the game, please. Like, Finally. Yeah, come on. I just Trent. wanted to start give them the their moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, we, oh, we should I be... have the wrong password. Oh. No. Oh, wait. Have oh, you got it? I have it. I got it. We'll yep. get him in. Yeah, I just read it out loud really clearly for the chat, please, Owen. Yeah. Oh. oh my god, oh, that was fast. <laughs> no, I was going to say, we just started, but Trent, you made it in. Holy <laughs> he, he made it in by the skin of his face. I couldn't face. even type I mean, back, thank you. you. Oh. Oh. Right, anyway, so we will have the draft screen uh, soon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we will load it in. The game is good. In fact, we're going to get it out for you right now, so you don't miss a single thing or a single ban. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for your patience. Bet Boom versus Azure Ray. Two game series, of course, as they all are here in the group stage. Ready to go. Let's have a look at the bans. We were talking about it earlier. Chen, first phase ban, pretty much every time by everyone. And uh, also mm -hmm. taking out the Enigma. Uh, Bet Boom, uh, probably just a more targeted one at Azure Ray, but actually prioritizing Naga Siren as early as the first phase ban. I like it. Yeah, I, I don't want to mess with this hero. She's inc incredibly frustrating to play against. I think we all know that for a while now. Uh, she wasn't targeted as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I, I don't... Did, was she nerfed? I don't think she was, right? She, I don't think she was in that patch at all, which is kind no, of surprising. No, I don't think Nagasaren was... No. Because she still looks... Maybe it's because it is truly a uh, competitive Dota thing where she, she doesn't seem as oppressive in pubs for the vast majority of the population. Uh, so she's not going to be targeted too much. But um, this guy, um, Tiny, I think has been someone who was starting to show up a little bit more in the past patches. I feel like as more and more fours get nerfed, Tiny just keeps going up because he's just he's just like a little good. Um, and then you've got players like GPK who will still boss them out in the mid as well. So maybe he kind of respects the power of the hero in that role too. So they just they just don't want to deal with it. It's going to ban it. And the DK, uh, another hero that still, for a lot of teams, is very much first phase pick material. Ten seconds remaining. He's, uh, yeah, he's looking pretty interesting right now. The, the position one DK, I feel like, was becoming more and more popular near the end of, uh, of Dacha, seeing it more in, in pubs too. So it's uh, truly an incredibly flexible hero and just a nuisance to deal with in the draft. We saw particularly from uh, Falcons, where... You, you kind of put people in this conundrum of are they going to pick Razor, Timbersaw, or DK? And they had just too many roles where they're flexing it to. You got DK going one, two, and three. So that, that's a, a real pain. But then you also have the incredible oppressiveness of Timbersaw and Razor, where they just destroy so many matchups. Yeah, you don't want to deal with it. So it uh, he, he can be a you know as much of a pain for other teams if they want to start adapting that too. So uh, and then there goes that Leshrac. So I mean, for all yeah. the reasons you said, you know, they Dude, they, they, think they yeah, Dude, it's I, I want to say as well. I, I can't remember whose stream. Whose stream was I watching? I think it was a uh, Tiger's stream, and he was playing. And I think it, he was playing against Ori playing Lesh. And I want to say I think he had Nightfall on his team. So I think Nightfall was in that game. <laughs> and even though obviously Nightfall, you know, they, they ended up winning. Uh, you know, Nightfall was probably like, you know, this guy's Lesh. I don't want to play against that because he, he nearly he, he was very close to making a comeback single-handedly on the Lesh rack Ori. So uh, I think. That, yeah, he, he did not want to go against that today, uh, Nightfall. Uh, Azure Ray, they're going to go with that Techies. Here we go. He's still he's still very much viable as ever. And uh, Azure Ray, 
I believe there'll, be a, there'll continue to be a team. They'll probably pick this quite often uh, during this group stage as, if, if it gets left in as a first pick material. Yeah, just an incredibly frustrating hero still. I mean, still has the shard yeah, doing its thing. damage. Yeah, crazy damage. Uh, very disruptive with the uh, the techie shard and, and having this disarm that can just like ruin your, your team fight. And it's really hard to, to track and manage. And we're already building a lot of like mantas and satanics and, and trying to keep these dispels ready for everything. Adding one more onto that stack of just something else you have to deal with uh, is a very big pain to handle. So um, the other huge hero right now, I would say is Puck. Uh, pretty big for both teams. It obviously shuts down a lot of heroes too. The DK is already banned. Uh, so that, that's definitely the big hero jumping out to me right now because like okay. Ori's super yeah. solid on it and so is GPK. Yeah, I, I, I like Puck. We were kind of looking forward to maybe seeing it towards the end of some of the drafts yesterday, but it, when it got to that point, it did normally get banned out in the final phases by a lot of teams. It's already so good too. It like completely disables both of these supports, right? You don't have to worry about blast off. You don't worry about like just leaping away. Just gets caught in the mix, so... It, uh, I, if it doesn't get banned, I think there's no chance that it uh, survives this pick phase. Someone will snag it up. Let's see, Azure Ray. Banning out the beefy boys on those previous phase of bans, the Timber and the DK. So if they want to take any further, a big tanky cores away from uh, from Pet Boom. So they've got that solid front line. For, for Miro to take to the offlane. They're looking very cozy on the camps, you know? They're getting all loosened up here. I, I like the, the room. Like, they get some nice natural light in there. It's very important for the gamers. That's true. They haven't closed D. the curtains. That's, I yeah. feel that's a rare one. <laughs> I'd have those curtains <laughs> closed. I'd have two layers of curtains closed, you know? <laughs> but uh, indeed, some Ten lovely daylight here. Remaining. Coming in for the Bat Boom boys. And uh, yeah, Puck survives, which is crazy to me. Uh, so I'm definitely expecting to see it here. And uh, Shao Demon taking out, I think, one of the uh, probably best, like, prepar like He's like a preparatory support. Like, of course, he he's a mega counter to some heroes. But I think some teams will often, like, pick the Shao Demon on the earlier end because they recognize, like, this knocks out so many heroes. Like, there's so many heroes you don't want to play into Shao Demon. Uh, we've already lost the, uh, what, Luna, Alchemist, Naga Siren. So you know, some of these heroes where we're often seeing the Shao Demon picked against already gone, but he's, he's going to be banned out. And they're going to grab the Centaur Warrunner, another hero who Puck's pretty good against. Just saying, you know, you try and yeah, stampede like, and save someone, not going to save you. Yeah, at least at least on this stream, we saw quite a bit of Centaur yesterday as well. Super popular still. Ten seconds remaining. And absolutely, yeah. yeah you, if you're Bet Boom, you're gonna have you want to have something that can be kind of a counterplay to the stampede, or at least allow you that chance to blow someone up before they get the ability to just get the free reset in the fight due to the stampede. So many strong heroes still left here, too. It's crazy. And, uh, I mean, we got uh, one thing about Toronto Tokyo as well is that he's, uh, you know, he, he's trying to widen that hero pool. It's, uh, I mean, he's been playing five for a while, obviously, but it's, uh, you know, he, he kind of slowly started branching out, I feel like. Like, when he first started playing it, it was like tree clockwork undying every game. <laughs> But uh, now, you know, uh, he's got this Marana, which which is huge. Because I think there's some teams where you see them pick Marana, and you're just like, eh, this is going to be four. Like, you don't really expect this more five style, something that, I mean, you got to give credit to, I'd say, Tundra, probably, with snaking. Uh, popularizing that to, to the highest degree, where it just feels like you pick this stun arrow combo most times, but it almost feels like you're picking more from Moonlight Shadow, and how much it ruins the mid game and the late game. And, you know, Bat Boom taking that, putting it on the five, and trying to get the same advantage. And they're just going to go with the exact same duo they had yesterday in their win over Virtus Pro. They had this um, five Toronto Tokyo Marana, and then just the, the easy four save Lion. Yeah, I think Lion, you know, talking about the recent patch, you know, sure got some nurse, but I think yeah, fundamentally this this hero still feels pretty good, right? Yeah, uh, 100%. I mean, he still, he still has the debuff immunity. I mean, yeah, it's, the, the numbers go down in terms of like resistance and everything, but it's still crazy useful in a team fight to just uh, dodge spells randomly. And of course, just like keep draining this mana it can be incredibly frustrating to play against. And you're uh, a hero with a hex. 
right? Like that, that's always going to be so valuable. There, there were years where that's all Lion got picked for. And now his other spells are actually all good. In fact, when you compare old Lion that would still get picked whenever there was like a Storm Spirit or something to this Lion, it is insane to see the difference. Like throwing out his Earth Spike now is, is total night and day compared to how bad it used to be. It's so fast. Uh, it is here is pretty wild. I, I, I don't know if he got tuned down enough in the last patch. Well, we'll see how, you know, how much he continues to win games in uh, his current state. Still, I think it's it's going to be pretty, pretty high win percent for for the old lion. Azure, they're going to throw out the carry. They know what the uh, carry to carry head to head's going to be, and uh, they'll take the troll in this matchup. Uh, well, I mean, a uh, historic Sanj buyer, I guess. You know, I'm thinking. Those combos, I don't know if that's uh, necessarily what we're going for here, but uh, uh, I think a hero most people kind of, whenever you see a combo, did, does everyone else just get this like icky feeling of like, ugh, troll, you know, like, are, are, is he going to get kited? Like, how well is the ulti going to work this game? Uh, it, it's better than it used to be, of course. You know, there's like some some slight changes there where you do have some control situations where you, you didn't have a target, so that's really good. But it's a uh, certainly a, a bit of a hit or miss hero, I would say, for most people. Yeah, really. I feel like probably one of the reasons they felt that they could do it this game is because they have the, the Centaur. Um, which was also interesting that Betboom obviously choose to have their carry something like the Medusa when there is a Centaur in the game. And you'd imagine that a good Stampede can outplay a lot of the kind of the Stone Gazers. You know, a lot of the time, Medusa wants yeah. to stand there, fight. Azure Ray, at the moment, they're going to have the easier time of uh, sort of resetting and, and kind of playing around the, the threat and presence of the Medusa. So we'll see how Betboom deal with that. Um, Azure 8, they'll uh, go for the Wim Ranger. Get that help. Super uh, so. flexible. I think Maybe so, right. Well, this is, could be the mid or the second support. Yeah, exactly. Very nice when you have this 10th overall pick. And you can't get a solid option here. So, like, let's say you want to go for the puck as Bet Boom right now, then you have to ensure that you are still covering any counter picks there on the ban. Uh, the DK is already gone, but, like, maybe you go for that classic, like, TA removal just in case. So, uh, other than that, though, it's not too bad. They're going to opt for the oh, Mars this instead, though. This, I think this, this covers the whole kind of they've got stampede problem, you know, having the arena. Yep. Is, is it's huge. I think it's one of the best things you can do against a, a, a Centaur lineup. Um, you know, Mars feels pretty fantastic. It's going to be solid in the hands of, of Mira on the yeah. boom. And it's just a great combo with the Medusa. This was, uh, if anything, yeah, I think Azure Rain, they must have anticipated this. I think this Mars was always going to come. So mm -hmm. we'll see what they do in response to that. Uh, but, but so far, yeah, having the, the Medusa and the Mars, I think Bet Boom are going to be feeling I, I, I'm pretty happy right now. I, I like what Bet Boom's got going on a bit more than Azure Ray with these first four picks on both sides. But we'll see how much the fifth pick changes that. Yeah. There's that point. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's perfect, though. Like, because the Mars is just a... Uh, yeah. It's a little bit better in a counter. Like the uh, your Mars tends to get your mobility a little bit earlier too. Like I mean, obviously if your puck snowball, like sure, but if your puck kind of has this, like middling game where they're like Witchblade, sometimes it can be a bit rough to uh, to get like the blink out and feel super confident with your Dream Coils and Mars players. You know they're, they're gonna get it. I mean, this is the fourth most contested hero so far after day one of the group stage, where he was just in, in almost all of the drafts. He only missed four of them, so. This is a hero that every single team is looking out for right now. And uh, it, it's just a, a classic counter versus that stampede, as you said, for a reason. Yeah. Uh, Wind Ranger also kind of has their own like mini stampede. So it's a pretty perfect pick here. And it, it's not someone who gets shut down very easily in that off lane. Yeah, last two bands, very on point though from Azure. The Puck, for the reasons you mentioned, and Kunkka. I mean, it would have definitely been a fantastic addition to the team fight of Bet Boom. Uh, they're, they're not going to get the chance to get their hands on. That boom with their final ban, probably going to look to just continue to prioritize mid bans. Take out that OD. Uh, biggest Ori players. I was going to say the biggest Ori yeah, heroes of all time. Test. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be the Storm. Uh, take care of his OD. Right. Take care of the Storm. And, and uh, we, we got the call. I mean, it's it's a bet booms draft. I feel like it ticks a lot of boxes. I think it really does. I mean, this this deuce is going to have mana for days. Um, yep. They've got great team fight to set up around the Medusa. I think it's really going to be down to Azure Ray if they can sort of break them down bit by bit, part by part, because when it comes to the point where Deuce has got farm and Bet Boom's ready to make a go at it, uh, they've got everything they need to secure the Medusa, these fantastic team fights in the mid game. 
Uh, and yeah, Azure Ray, they continue to go down there. We've we got to skirmish, we've got to pick them off, we've got to run at them, split up across the map. And uh, it's Ori, he loves the spirits, doesn't get his storm because of the ban, but he'll get the Ember. Yeah, it's, uh, it is crazy. He's actually played twice as many Storm Spirit games professionally as he has played Embers. That, that is how much this guy uh, plays Storm. He has like eight, 800 uh, games. So, oh, sorry. I mean, that's that's like including his like available pubs. Uh, yeah. But overall, Storm still his most played pro hero of all time, of course. And uh, Ember uh, a little bit further behind. But this guy loves Ember. It's good reason. Hero's still fine. Took a couple licks in the uh, the last patch, but definitely still uh, an extremely strong hero when it comes to the the competitive side. I think I think his pubs are going to hurt a little bit. You're going to have to do some coordination with your teammates, unfortunately. Can't solo carry the game. But uh, Azure has coordination. I think that's like their selling point whenever I'm watching them. They look like they're uh, always on the same page. So uh, I, I like this pick for them, but uh, I'm going to have to agree with you. I think Bet Boom looking pretty solid across the board. The Coddles may be the one that I haven't been the biggest fan of okay. lately, but uh, I, I can see the reasoning for it here. The, with the deucer. Yeah, and it, it, you know, it's, it's great hero to pick when you don't have that last, last pick for the for the mid laner. You know, it's because at the end of the day, I don't think there's a huge amount that Cole is going to be laning against mid that he's going to feel miserable against. You know, and yeah. he's always going to be able to push out the wave, shove the wave, get the farm, um, regardless of the hero. And I think that's definitely still going to be the case here. And yeah, we'll see if Azure Ray. They, they've just got to cause chaos, I feel. Like, they, they've got kill potential, absolutely. You know, you see this Techies, the FY Wind Ranger, you know, FY and Tian Ming, that If they can run around and get these early pickoffs to kind of poke and break down Bet Boom, they'll definitely stand a chance. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know what it is about watching uh, Azure lately, but FY is on, like, I don't know. He looks young, man. I don't know how else to describe it. Like, you would not think this guy has been around for so long. But when I watch him play, like, he looks so mechanically solid. I've seen him playing some of, like, the newer heroes. Like, I've seen his Marcy come out, and it looks great. Like, he, he doesn't strike you as one of these more, like, veteran players. Kind of in the same vein as Seb, to be honest. I feel like Seb also uh, has been around forever, but he still makes these incredible plays where he just looks like that, like, crazy new pub star who's coming out. And you're like, oh, they're 17, and they're so good. Like, FY is having a, a bit of a, like, revitalization here uh, whenever I'm, I'm seeing him play on these heroes. So if we get one of those games out of FY where he's <laughs> rotating across the map and, and hitting all his spells, uh, I think that's exactly what they do need to win this one. So no pressure, FY. Let's see what he's got. We see already Azure Ray very quick to slap down their first to observe awards, getting them both on Bet Boom's half of the map and getting that early vision of the, the potential stacks that will be being created. Uh, for well, either the Medusa or the Cottle. A lot of ways to clear and to create them on Bet Boom. See how Jure keep tabs on that, as long as that ward remains. The battle begins. <laughs> yeah, they're holding strong up there. I'm not giving away uh, either of those. So, two and two. Easy start here. Uh, Lion plus Mars. Got to be a little bit cautious here up top. If you're uh, Tian Ming, that, that looks a little bit scary to me. Like, easy Earth Spike into Spear, and then you're, you're sitting on level 1 Sticky Bombs. Could be a bit of a tasty treat up here. I think so. Definitely out of all the lanes, that's the the one where I'd expect the most action to be happening. You know, mid lane. I mean, ne neither should be dying here. GPK is going to be able to keep his distance, blast out the wave. I don't think Ori's going to be able to get close enough most of the time to bring GPK low. And then bottom lane. Unless Toronto, Tokyo, and Nightfall slip up, you know, is under attack. They're, they're not going to be getting any kills themselves, I feel. You know, it's hard to kill yeah. the Centaur Moon Ranger when you've got this Mirana Medusa duo safe lane. Has been Ooh, easy courier snipe there for FY. So Toronto, Tokyo losing on that one early. But yeah, no arrow setup means nothing that you have to be too concerned about there. And up top here, yeah, nice, nice defense here with the stickies. As save starts to try and contest this pull here, but the Vools are out and they will grab that wave. And uh, that's the thing about Vools, you know, they, they can really wreck a creep wave without, without even uh, being stacked here. Now save is, he's getting Tiamming down lower to the point where, I mean, both, both of them could definitely threaten for a kill. Especially with the play from potential blood grenades. We're going to see Tianming try and step forward, but save. Holding the stun. Ready to hold him back. 
one lane. That's why very low. Also able to burn through quite a bit of mana here from Nightfall side of things. Also has to be a bit cautious himself on the Medusa. Oh, FOI. Pushing in. If Toronto Tokyo can get the leap into the arrow. He may just find himself first blood. Just the leap alone. One more to do it. There it is. First blood for Toronto Tokyo. As uh, as I mentioned, FY, he was sitting around incredibly low on that bottom lane. And it cost him his life. Yeah. And that, that was one of those instances where he's level one with the power shot. So Toronto Tokyo took advantage of that. He, he kept trading with him constantly. Just saying, like, hey, I know you only have power shot. Like, great early, of course, for securing like, range creeps and stuff, but you can't get them. But you don't get these nice trades in the 1v1, particularly versus, like, these range supports, uh, where they can actually keep pelting you. And Toronto Tokyo took advantage of that. That's why he was so low there, and that's why he gets that kill. And he is the bunny mount, which is, like, automatic buff when you play Mirage. So. Mm. Park. He's going for this underneath the tower. Nightfall's out of mana. The arrow's going to hold back Bark. It doesn't matter. FY is still able to finish off the kill to take out Nightfall. Good aggression here from the two down bottom. That's a lot of creeps. That, that wave's under the tower. He already missed out on three of them. He, that respawn timer cannot move just any slower right now. Like, please get me back in this lane. But every creep is just dying. Not even the ranged will be there. <laughs> that hurts. Very good awareness of, of Bark to go for that. Dire structures are In terms of the mid lane, and there's just a slight edge for, for GPK. Only slightly, though. He's having a bit of an easier time blasting out the wave. Zori tries his best to dodge the Illuminates and get what he can without taking too much damage straight up each time and each wave with that Cottle blasting him. And then just doing his thing, right? Go hit some stacks here. I mean, it's Radiant side, so you get this nice double stack. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we obviously often seen teams come in and try and contest that too, where you want to get these like supports rotating in, try and pick these off. But Azure don't necessarily have the best heroes for it um, without a lot of help. Like Ori is going to need his level six to actually like assist and rotate with FY. You know, you, you don't have these. Um, like support duos that can, that can easily make the play so they have a lot of levels or something. So I think those stacks are pretty safe overall for GPK unless they get some good vision in and have the level six prep from Ori. Dyer's but uh, pretty quiet overall. Just one one here. People are getting their farm. Yeah, out of all the cores so far, just Nightfall that's slightly behind, but as to be expected with that very good kill. They got him in top lane. Ooh, nice. nicely held there by Miro. Keeps the gods rebuke to knock Tianming out of the blast off and keep save safe. Yeah, definitely uh, one of the things that I think we've all experienced versus techie players ever since he got that ability. Just any sort of forced movement there, ruining that blast off. Uh, I mean, I don't play techies because, you know, I'm not one of those kind of people, so... Uh, yeah, you just got to be ready for that uh, when you're playing against this hero all the time. I mean, that, that alone just makes this very difficult for Tianming to find any kill opportunity here. It's only ever going to really happen if Miro goes over aggressive himself and has already used the spear and the rebuke. And Ori, uh, unfortunately, walks right over that mid uh, observer ward to plant one up on the high ground. It gets pinged down and completely spotted as they wanted to get somebody to keep an eye on these stacks. And GPK doing a an attempt here with this rotation. But, I mean, he's a coddle, so his wave's pushed out. He's not able to grab. I think they wanted to, like, maybe get a quick grab there onto FY, but they'll just grab some neutrals. It's all good. Okay. Unless you do it, because you, you reckon as well that... Yeah, I mean, he knows the ward's there. Yeah. yeah. He said. He's going to deward it now. But then at the same time, he would have known that they maybe saw him go down there. We'll see up top. Low. He's in a bit of a, a, a dodgy spot there. Ended up having to take a bit of an awkward route, really, up into the enemy triangle. Uh, it cost him his life. He's dead. You, you don't often uh, play there as a uh, as, as role? I, I kind of... I, I don't even know how he ended up. He wasn't buying anything from the... Uh, he shop, he, he got speared into the Tier 1 tower. Looks like he got Earth Spike speared into the Tier 1 guess, tower. Yeah. Took three tower shots. one way to run. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that hurts. That's quite a kill for Bet Boom there. Very nicely done. This is going to propel Miro towards what well, should be a pretty quick level 6. And... Honestly, the point where he hits the six, they've got huge kill potential on this top lane back then. GBK is just keeping up the efficiency here. I mean, 
making his way up top here. Does this ward catch him? I don't think it did. I think he actually moved in the part of the darkness there. They didn't see this rotation from the Coddle. Yeah, they definitely did not. Set things up. Oh, oh, it's gonna be off the mark though. The TP's are Dude, coming in. He was so dead. Did you see how much damage that Illuminate did? I mean, they might go again. GPK. He's coming in again from a different angle, trying to continue to toy around with low. Look at that. <laughs> this troll's getting a right beat in here with these Illuminates. Poor old low. He has, he's going to be handed over a salve. He does at least have a couple of healing lotuses, but seeing the, the potential of these rotations from GPK. Not easy. Not easy for low here now. Get ourselves there. S pointed out there, a, a Wisdom Rune picked up there from FY. Save's going to get the other. As, uh, we must have it our seven minute mark here. GBK is just right back at it right now. Top of the board by a pretty good margin of this early. Solid like 500 gold above the next closest heroes, but those two heroes are the Dire with Medusa not far behind. As Nightfall has had a relatively quiet lane since his death. It's been okay, but in classic uh, center warrior well, fashion, top. that means that hero is also getting farmed. Low, he's trying to get some farming from the small camp, but save in Toronto, Tokyo. Nice they were able to easily set up upon that. I mean, they saw him sort of pulling the small camp creeps away. They knew exactly where he was, and they can step up and set up for that move. As you're ready, they've got to do something to secure this troll a bit of a safer spot, because this is a fair few moments now in which this top lane has been turned into quite a dangerous area for him. Yeah, and they go right through the twin gate, but I mean, it's a center war runner. I, I, I don't know about this one. <laughs> Maybe they were worried about a, a potential rotation at bottom, as uh, we do have a smoke here from FY up top. Maybe that's where they thought it was going. Yeah, this should get the kill here, Miro. It's going to get caught by the shackle. The rotations are success, but the same to be said down bottom as uh, Barkwell's ball. Yeah, they're just able to get him. They managed to land the full star storm on him and everything. Uh, consider me impressed. He's now level six on Toronto Tokyo at nine minutes. Yeah, he's crushing it. Well, yeah, every he's single kill zero, zero. Time to start building the carry items, I think. You know, when you're having a Mirana game this good. <laughs> we'll see what Toronto Tokyo does want to pick up this game. He's going to go for more. They're already setting up again with the Moonlight Shadow. And as soon as Bart comes back in with the TP, oh. they've got the combo again. The it's block. another kill for Toronto Tokyo. I mean, FY's also TP'd in. They've already got their eyes on him. GPK is coming in. With this Moonlight Shadow, they might just even be able to set up under the two of them. As the slow is there, the damage comes in. Unfortunately for Toronto Tokyo, he won't pick up that kill as well, but I'm sure he will not mind. 5-0-1. And yet from the arrow follow-ups to the instant use of that Moonlight Shadow to secure not only one kill, but both of the kills. It is, things are picking up here pretty fast here for Bet Boom. Uh, it's just the worst timing too there um, for Faith Beyond. Like it's this instance where you feel like you've just gone strong enough to survive. Oh, Look don't hit again. that. The stun. Save okay. the setup. I mean, you talked earlier in the draft about how good line feels nowadays with the quick, you know, the, the exactly. duration, you know, sorry, the, the distance as well with the Earth Spike. And we're seeing it here. They're using it perfectly. You know, save and Toronto Tokyo. At least two are just, they're completely breaking down Azure Ray's early game. I mean, this did not exist before. Before they upped the speed on this spell, there's no way you could run Lion Marana support, like pre-level six and everything, and just expect to get kills. Like You had to wait for like a Lion to blink before you get this stuff. But I mean, the distance that you're able to hit that spell now into a combo, it's still not free, sure, but they certainly make it look easy. They really are. Some fantastic kills here early on for Bet Boom. And there's, yeah, GPK. He is uh, having a fantastic time with the timing. Boots to travel. I mean, Spirit Vessel's only about 500 gold away. It's going to be a very, very quick time on those two opening items. They can put the pressure onto this tier one tower top. And if this kind of continues with this sort of chaos that Bet Boom's bringing to Azure Ray, it's going to be harder and harder for Azure Ray to just keep anywhere safe for their troll. Low is not mm -hmm. going to have an easy early game. Yeah, and then that's basically just going to have to come from aggression at this point. Like, we're, we're going to have to get these other heroes in the game. And that, that means Faith Beyond trying to catch back up. I mean, he, he's got himself the trusty shovel. Hopefully not going to dig this hole that he's in any deeper. But uh, Ori in the mid, trying to get this Mage Slayer. So, yes, nerfed for sure, but pretty solid across the board here. When you look at all this, like, AoE magical damage they're trying to get out there, you hit one of these Slayer Fists. It can be great. But here's a, a risky bit of tower pushing here. We'll see if they want to try and contest this at all here or if they're going to keep this push going. 
It's the uh, supports rotating on the far eastern side of the map right now, though. Oh no! If they get this set up, so they will. They won't go in for for Bark right now. We'll get the freedom to farm under his tower. A lot of potential burst with that finger. As you're right, playing a bit more cautious at this point. Spirit Vessel done on GPK, so 12 minutes bot Spirit Vessel. Fantastic timing. Yeah, and three charges to go here too, so... You can certainly get aggressive whenever he wants, and I mean, that's the thing, like, when, when you're built up like this, like, he's kind of playing this Spectre-esque role right now, where he's got this Boots of Travel. When it's this early in the game, he has Boots of Travel, a lot of action occurs, like, on the lane, right? That's where all the ganks occur, so you can actually just come in and defend. Uh, very quickly, like this down bottom here, are they willing to pop the stampede and just go right in? So GPK is going to be there to back up Nightfall if they do go for him and pop the Moonlight Shadow. Immediately in Azure Ray, they know that Bat Boom's going to begin to set up for a fight here, so they don't want to try and force it. Or he backs That's what they off. need, though. That, that is space for low. Like these kind of plays where you're forcing these Moonlight Shadows defensively. Right? They're like, oh, are they about to kill a Medusa? What are they doing? Let's go look down. Look, look how deep Tane's willing to go. Again, that's for a second time, they're able to wrap around that tier one tower with the Moonlight Shadow and get that set up for the quick and easy kill. That's Helm losing that one armor. You know, five armor. He lives, uh, surely. But uh, not not today. And FY's got to be careful. Save is on the high ground. Oh, sees Ori swinging back across. Toronto Tokyo has been caught by the chains. He's got one more leap to play with. Don't let him get out of here. They're not, they're not going to commit for it. They know that there's potentially a backup around him. As it was, there actually wasn't. Maybe they could have got away with the kill. But Toronto Tokyo is able to walk away. Azure continue to just being a, a bit cautious and a bit, a bit scared of what Bet Boom have. This guy's running around with a streak. He's 6 0 and 2. You got to catch this, Marana. You got to go for that. A lot. Yeah, that's true. You get quite a nice bit of gold taking this man down right now. Radiance middle uh, can they get a nice rune here on Ori? The push back. And the rune spawning up top will go to Miro instead. Uh, Ori really needed that. That would have been such a nice way to try and get back in this game, but he does have Stampede to work with, so he's got his uh, poor man's haste rune here. And they're going to smoke up the back of Tianming's smoke. And I mean, hey, there's your big juicy kill streak. He's got one leap. Whoop. And who's gonna who's gonna be the one to take it? It's gonna be going the way of FY. He'll uh, he'll certainly have that one. Easy kill secure with the power shot. That's a lot of you money know, for he's, him. He's, he's going, going for that defusal. defusal. He is. All right. That's the that's it's a great choice. Ah, absolutely. The way to play against this Medusa, and uh, even against some of the heroes like uh, the, the Mars. You know, you get on top of the Mars with the focus fire. Suddenly he's not getting out his full combo in the fight. Of course, that Mars is also going to be the determining factor in terms of how Dyer's effective you can be with this focus attack. fire, with the uh, the Radiant's wall coming up here. And maybe he can uh, mess up your positioning quite a bit, too. Turn of the smoke. Nero with the blink reveal. I know what's going on now. Too. Can they still push on? He's going to try. He's got eyes on Tian Ming. He'll take it. He'll drop the arena here to secure the kill. On to the techies. And Bet Boom know at the moment with the lead they have, as long as they can just keep kind of picking off heroes one by one, they're going to feel pretty good in terms of just holding the momentum, holding the advantage right now in this game. 9-3, to three, 2k lead. I mean, Ori Bomb also is, doing pretty yeah. well in terms of catching up. You know, he's only had that one death. Um, he's been doing a lot of rotating too to try and make space. That's partially why his net worth's a little bit lower. I mean, he's also competing against a Coddle, which is farming like crazy, but he's made room for low. I think that part has been very successful from Azareo over the past five minutes. Nero. Oh, that's going to hit. Spear, the arrow. <laughs> it's a lot of lockdown. And with the finger, it's a lot of damage. Bet boom again. Perfect coordination between the stuns. Chan Ming's not going to be able to connect here with the blast off. He might get chased down. We've got the jump forward from Mira, Toronto, Tokyo. There's the spear. Arrow's going to be up in a second. Easy connection once again. He never misses with the setup here from his teammates. 11 for three. Bet boom. They are coming in very hot this morning. They are styling right now. They actually look so good. These combos with the spells looking super solid. I mean, the, the four staff purchase as well here. 
from GPK. I mean, he could have bought anything. He snowballs so hard in this game. I, I just see a little four staff come out there to save Toronto Tokyo from that blast Radiant off. And sure, he's not going to lose his precious Marana again. He's, he's really thinking about everything right now. And that one defensive item up against like, troll, the Troll Warlord and helping people out of these um, slight into arrow combinations. He, he's just going to go uh, directly into the Octarine after that. Yeah, this, is, this is crazy stuff. I mean, the, you know, you look at sort of the state of the game and you know, for Azure Ray, low on the troll. He is getting farm. You know, he's keeping up there. He's managing to stay on par. In fact, with GPK's gold, which is pretty impressive. It, it's just whether you, you believe that a troll can carry this game against what Bet Boom have, because I, I don't think that's going to be easy at all for low. It always feels like a gamble to me when it comes to the troll. Like it's just sometimes you just get this insane team fight where it looks really, really nice, but. It can be very difficult to force those good moments, you know? It's, you would think that if you have the arena, maybe then you, you can have a good battle trance, but... Ooh! This is Why nightfall. not the catch that they the find here, Nightfall? It was on his own, and they tear through it. See, Bet Boom considering maybe a counter play. They're coming in with the Moonlight Shadow. Miro's in with the jump. He's got the arena onto the two, and then we'll focus Bark first. There's the arrow to follow things up. Bark getting blown up alongside Tianming there. Did the blast coming in from GPK. So they lose Nightfall, but they do make sure that Azure Ray continue to pay. GPK's damage has to be off the charts right now. I feel like this is some of the most hero damage I've seen from a Keeper of the Light uh, at, at 15, you know, 18 minutes into a game right now. Like, these Illuminates have been hitting so hard. He catches two that time. And we're going to see the, the sort of combo setup become even easier because save, he's what, 20 gold away from having his Blink Dagger delivered out to him. So further ways that they can just reach in and start off these fights for all this follow-up to come into play. I mean, to the point where, I mean, obviously with, with sort of like FY's build, going for the Diffusal Blade, you know, it's, it's, it's cool, it's fun, it's great against the Medusa and such. Uh, but there isn't any sort of like four stars coming in. I feel like this would be a game where a, a four star, it would go pretty far for Azure Ray's lineup for just saving someone from this stun after stun after stun combo they keep getting completely crushed by. <laughs> Oh yeah, I said I said the Marana stun for the uh, the Call of Force stuff. <laughs> Slight into uh, to shackle shot combos. That's that's what I was going for. There, save it. Uh, but yeah, uh, I can agree. Four staffs for both sides would be super solid. And oh, great, more damage here uh, for GBK. So he picks up the Whisper of the Dread. FY will run for his life right now. Uh, but that item, I think, has been uh, extremely popular. I feel like Timber Saws have been abusing it quite a bit. Like. Vision, who cares? You know, 10% extra spell damage. Yeah, I'm taking that every single time. It feels fantastic, yeah. On some heroes, you're keeping that over the Oh, there it is. Oh, the blink. Unlucky. See if that's enough. It certainly is. GPK's gone. See if they can move on to the next target. Well, if, even if they don't get the kill, they do get something else pretty big. They get Toronto Tokyo's Courier, which did have the completed Greaves on. So that's Greaves held back for two minutes. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's actually pretty solid, you know. First, I'll I kind of be like, all right, well, is that really going to help you? But, you know, this is 20 minutes and Coddle's dead. I mean, there's ever a chance to get map control and try and go for like, I, I don't know. I mean, it's a troll, so Roche is on the table. I, I think taking that away from Bet Boom could be super solid, though, because if they manage to grab that and they have th this Medusa plus Arena and then she also has an Aegis on top, are you ever going to win that fight? I, I don't think you are. <laughs> the next move is but, uh, yeah, decent shake up here from Azure right the uh, BKB timings Lowe's got his done After that diffusal FY trying to get his own BKB so he can have a better shot at just committing in with the focus fire without any interruptions they are gearing up to, to be able to fight and, you know, rather than sort of buy arms to save one another just buy arms to save themselves and be able to have their own individual presence in these skirmishes I think, the uh, I think Ori made the right read here going for the Maelstrom instead of the BKB. Because he had the BKB queued up for a little while, but I think it's more important you just dodge, farm up, and like, don't try and fight that boom right now. I, I don't think that's the best idea. I think you want to take away their win conditions. And to me, their win condition is just like the slow farming of the map. Grab the Aegis, grab the Tormentor, you know, and, and try and pick these people off as you advance in their tier twos. I would definitely want to dodge the fighting as much as possible. Uh, and Maelstrom, of course, you know, it does help in the fights, but... 
it would be nice for Ori to also try and catch up into this like this block of heroes above him where you have this Medusa, this Coddle, and this Troll. Like, I, I want to see Ori get a little bit closer to that. And this is huge. Grab this Aegis. Take it away from this Medusa. Now, this could set up Azure Ray for a, a very good fight to be had. The Aegis and the BKB. And this Troll can definitely turn up to some action now, look. Like, Super close as well to being able to pick up the S and Y. Like he is smashing the timings now. You're 2k ahead of that of, uh, of Nightfall. Let's we'll see what they want to do with this Azure Ray. Oh man, I mean, look at Nightfall though. Like he's got a Manta and a Butterfly. Backed up there by those Gardening Greaves, now delivered over to Toronto, Tokyo. It's, uh, it is going to be a bit difficult, but thankfully he doesn't have an Aegis. I think with an Aegis, there's no hope. Like no chance at all. Uh, they're going to pick up the Tormentor with the help of the uh, the Battle Trance there. And that goes right over to FY. Ooh, what a great game to have the Gale Force, actually. Stampede on your side plus Gale Force versus very positioning-dependent heroes. Uh, like this Medusa, trying to get in there. Using this arena here, too. That is interesting. That boom. I'm going to get away with taking the tier two by the looks of it. Azure not having any interest of taking the fight head on right now. They themselves will look for the trade of pushing onto the tier two bottom. bottom tower is under attack. Wanting to avoid the fight for now. We'll start to see some TPs coming back in for Bet Boom. GPK is here. But yeah, this is a pretty terrifying troll to fight into. Don't forget 25% status resistance as well. Already at the side, they find a pretty decent catch here on a bug, but do they have the damage? The arena's gonna get laid down by Mirage, got the BKB as well, low. He'll put the BKB and he's gonna get charge straight towards GPK. Nightfall, he's got the stone gaze, low turns towards GPK, he's gonna continue to chase him down, lands the root, but can't quite reach him for the final kill. Finally, GPK falls. Low's able to get the battle chance off. He's in onto Nightfall. They tear through the Medusa, Azure Ray. They'll kill off the three of them. A fantastic fight to be had there. Low not even losing the Aegis. Perfectly played there between the BKB and the Battle Chance to take him down. Closes the gap, gets in onto the Medusa. And just like that, 5k lead here for Azure. Unreal. People are going to look back at this game. They're going to look across like the, the match stats and be like, what happened? Because it, it's not like it was a, a total wipe. Until right now, you get this triple kill. But it's really been the actions over the past four minutes or so that have changed the entire game. Uh, the way they were able to not let them push into their tier twos and just like force these bad fights, right? Because uh, I bet Boo would have won most of these fights. Uh, right before that Aegis, it would have looked pretty terrible, I would say, as Azure to actually go and fight them. So they don't fight. They grab this Aegis. They, they grab themselves a Tormentor. They get all these new tools. They force this bottom fight. And he hits a pretty clutch route there, I gotta say. GPK almost made it out of there. Nearly, but, but yeah. the, the, the troll, he won his coin flip. I mean, yeah, yeah, low is just, he is just so insanely farmed. I mean, if it, it, sort of in any of us a game at this point, I think, you know, you'd see sort of like 13k on the deuce from the call, and it's like, well, these are pretty good numbers, but it, Troll, he's at 17k net worth. He's nearly level 20, 25 minutes coming in on the clock. There's SMY on top of that. He's finished up his defusal. Mm -hmm. you know, this Troll is terrifying at this point. You know, he, he has finished farming, and he, he's ready to just destroy these team fights. I mean, well, we saw the, uh, we also got cheaper MKB uh, as well, added into the uh, the pool after that Radiant last patch, but he says 35% evasion, it's okay. I, I'd rather just get this defusal, it's a Medusa. You know, Mr. Uh, Kevin Purge Gamers there, he knows. It's like, it's like so much more value when you're getting defusal versus these uh, Medusa players, so your damage just skyrockets. Hello, that is way top. He's ready to connect with the rest of the team. What's the plan here for Bet Boom? That last fight, an incredibly painful loss for them as they get knocked far behind. Radiance top tower is under attack. I don't think they'll have any interest in showing up, at least for sure, whilst the Aegis is still in the hands of Lowe. Still got a minute to push with it. He'll take the tier one tower. And I'll move on for the tier two here as well. Yeah, I'd say it's probably their turn to dodge. Honestly, until the Agnums is done on GPK. I feel like they don't really want to fight until they have that. It's such a powerful tool versus the Troll Warlord. Uh, once the BKB starts to wear down, controlling this hero can be a bit of a nightmare. 
because obviously you don't have control over the hero yourself, so you can't like wisely position versus it. Nice steal here from low. That's perfect. Now they have the Tian Ming going to grab himself the shard as well. And uh, he's still only working with the single dispel there on Nightfall. So could be a bit of a problem. Now he just and, is going uh, to... And what have we got? Oh, I was going to say, of course, Faith Beyond also immediately, like, you know, it's a Dusa. So now that he has some gold, Sanj gets buffed, you know? Time, time to grab oh, yourself yeah. the Halberd. And Nightfall's going to have a hard time swinging. But um, thankfully, that's why we have Disperser, right? Yeah, I mean, even the high ground, it's just not going to feel that safe for him. Because just how many ways Azure Ray have to, to dive... You know, they, they can easily get beyond these tier threes with Stampedes or Ember Spirit, you know, Ori just charging in, getting in on top of the Medusa. You know, it, it's, it's really going to be Bet Boom having to do everything to keep Nightfall safe, even when Nightfall's up in the high ground in his own base, because Azure Ray will be looking to go straight for him. I think uh, Gale Force is also going to have a lot of very interesting interactions this game, too. Like, yeah. it's like when you're pushing high ground, you can utilize it. But whenever they have, they throw out this Wisp here, uh, when Coddle gets his eggs, like you can also kind of do like a counterplay with a Gale Force where it's hard for the Coddle team to actually capitalize on it because they're, they're being like pushed away at the same time when they're trying to come in and fight and take advantage of that. So, um, And that, that's, of course, if GBK, GBK can even get there. But he has his Octarine now, so Farmer Speed increases and... Uh, you know, like you said, they do have good high ground tools. Getting high ground, still a bit hard uh, versus all this wave push, unless they just grab Nightfall. This chains aren't going to grab onto him. The Gale Force is pulling him back a little bit. He does have Mirror by his side, though. FY's going to turn towards Mirror instead, hold him back with a shackle shot to make sure Mirror can't come in with the counterplay. Nightfall. We're oh, lucky to live that. Alright, that was Super big close. Terrifying right now. <laughs> yeah, that could have been like, worth the where game. Can go, where can he farm? Yeah, he gets caught in that triangle. It very well, very well could be. Still very much playing the catch up game big time here between Nightfall and Low. Low just steaming ahead. Continually just item after item being flown out for him. The full dispersers now done on troll. That's actually wild. 20,700 gold right now. And, I mean, I, I would guess MKB next. I mean, maybe, maybe he feels like he wants, like, Satanic or something, which is certainly understandable. I just wait to kind of see how these fights start playing out, but... Dyer are scanning. Maybe even a, a Blink deck. Oh, they're going to try for something with the Moonlight. Too. Low is a little split from the rest of the team. Okay, now he's got Ori. Okay, Ori's still out of Remnant, so <laughs> Ori's ready to join us. They have the three of them here. Tron think it might be dead. I mean, Miro... Been spotted out and now that yeah they're, they're ready to fight Azure Ray. So the question is if Pepper really wants to stick around. Nightfall's trying to find the ancients, but Barks have to get in with the jump. The blast off there to follow up. Stampede as well. Nightfall will be able to put the manta. At least keep them away enough to, to sort of step back. You know, Lowe was holding back in that situation. He didn't want to commit on the Medusa. Knew that there was a bit bit too scary of a fight to go for straight up. They're going to smoke out after two. I mean, very interesting play from Bepboom. Like, they're clearly trying to bait them into a fight in this part of the map. Feeling like maybe this is a spot where they have a chance. Like they're probably not going to get this high ground fight for a little while. Uh, because if you're as a raid at this point, I would think you just push Hold waves, on. get items. This oh, they want to move. They get in with the opening. The arrow's there to follow up. That is the dream grab there for Bet Boom. They find and kill off low. Ooh, and you know what? That's because of where Tam Ming's been placing a lot of these mines. I mean, he's caught these Moonlight Shadows moving up towards like the northern part of the map, but there were no mines in that full direction where they went for that smoke this time. And that's what ensures you actually get a good move versus the techies. So parts of the map uncovered. They finally take advantage. Like the Moonlight Shadow doesn't work, so they have to do it the old-fashioned way. Just grab the smoke and move. But unfortunately for them, it is a very long spawn on this Roche. They're going to go check. But, you know, that, that could have been really what turns this game back into a, a chance for Bet Boom. Do doesn't give you the win, but taking care of that troll Aegis would have made their lives so much easier. And just grabbing it for themselves instead. Time and space, though, is allowing them to get their next items online. GPK close to the Ags. What a bounty! And of course, you know, Miro dreaming big. And uh, well, we hope it, it does get to that point. He wants to get the, the old Rapier Revenants build on. Oh, uh, yes. He, he's, he's committing. <laughs> I mean, I, I hope we get to see it. It's a lot of gold. 
<laughs> get he's the, the reference bros at least. I, th that's true. We're going to see the summer reference bros action, uh, which of course did get what a little better, right? Because now it no longer costs mana when you use rebuke. Yeah. Yeah. I, that was like the top comment I saw. Was just like, well, the Mars build. <laughs> yeah. Got that little bit of a buff. Uh, we'll, we'll see. He better not uh, pivot over towards a nullifier. I'll be very disappointed. All right. Not necessarily the hero you want, but they're going to try. It. See if they can do it. Have they got the burst? They certainly do, and that's the gem on the decks as well. Gonna be able to grab that. Nightfall is a bit awkwardly on the front lines to be able to force him back to safety. Put the stone gaze as well, just in case Azure Ray were going to continue to chase. And the question is if Azure Ray want to try and find now. They don't have Buck, but he does have buyback and stampede available. And there it is. The buyback stampede comes into play. They'll look to jump save straight away. Now low and Ori turn over towards Mira. Mira, he'll be the one left behind here as the rest of Bet Boom will go full on the retreat. The two kills are picked up it for Azure Ray, but the rest of Bet Boom will be able to escape. And they're going to get their gem right back too. What is that, Azure? And th that just went from oh my god, it spawns in Lowe's face as he walks on the page. Oh, thank oh, you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it, was, <laughs> it was basically guaranteed at that point anyway uh, for them. So, uh, and that's why it was so important that he goes to that buyback right away because that was a fight for Roche. You know, you could have put yourselves in a decent spot. They're gonna TP mid though. They they want this gold and Timming also lurking there, hoping that he grab a grab or uh, kill Toronto. Togo, who's dead? He oh. just walked into mines. There uh oh. Were, yeah. Happens to the best of us. Yeah, techies, it'll always, it'll always get you at one point of the game. It doesn't matter how good, good you are at the Dota 2 game, you're going to walk into mines at some point. Wow. It, uh, it happens fast, huh? 852 damage. <laughs> That's nice. Oh, the not working death summary rip. Let's see if... Uh, you know, what What do you imagine Azure want to do with this Aegis? Do they want to try for a high ground push or are they still kind of chilling? I think uh, low will be the determining factor for sure. Because if he goes for this blink build, because he had blue, the blink queued up for a while. And then the like, this is the choice, right? Do I go blink or do I go MKP? I think you go Radiant blink if you just want to like end kind of. Like you just jump in and go. I don't think they really have to. Um, I, I think you kind of play it out. You push the tier twos, you hold outside, and you see how do they play this Medusa. Like, is she going to try and come out of the base, keep farming agents and stuff? Or are we just doing like a, uh, a slow siege? I wouldn't say there's much of a rush right now uh, if you're Azure. Wow, what, what about you? Are you are you yoloing in here? Oh, I'm always I'm getting that blink and I'm jumping straight in past the tier threes and pressing on <laughs> BKB and uh, hoping that I get team wide. Yeah, yeah I've been that game. But he's been caught. They will catch him off to the side here. They'll kill him, and that, of course, is an effectively a dieback. He's out for 90 seconds. So 90 seconds now where Azure Rain might not be able to get as much done as they may have hoped to with that Aegis on low because they are without their Centaur. Dude, I'm taking notes. If you're playing against Bet Boom and they're, they're Radiant side, like, you got to just let them have this. This is their base. They, they, the high ground is not their... This is their true high ground. They just play here. Like, they've been trying to force a fight here every time when they're down. It's very interesting because, you know, Look, if you can start at your... Oh, yeah, okay. okay. They're, they're going to go for smoke because Bedbeam may not expect this because they just killed the Centaur. So Azure, they're going to go for the four-man smoke. They're going to look for the Shackle Shot over towards Nightfall. They're going to go straight for him. They know he's got no Stone Gaze. The Stone Gaze is on cooldown. He has nothing to protect himself. Bet boom, they didn't expect that one bit. They didn't anticipate that that sort of quick play would come in with the Centaur dead. Uh, what were they hoping for? Were they, were they hoping for like a someone just pushing this solo and they were going to get a pickoff or something? I, feel like there I, I think they just thought that, that Azure Ray were going to hold back and do nothing. But uh, it really wasn't the case at all. All right. Well, you got to make some plays here. Miro's going to run into Ori. And uh, Ogre Seal and try and get out. And there it is, the brooch. I mean, they, they do have the two of them, but yeah, Ori's yeah, not even going to play around. He's out. Uh, up towards the top lane, just trying to keep both of these side lanes shoved in over towards Bet Boom's side of the map. And Mira and Toronto Tokyo still hanging around on this bottom area. Bucks back in play, and Lowe's making his way down here. So if. There you go, they, they've got to get out of it. Toronto Tokyo's out with the TP. And Mira, he's out through the portal, in which he will find an Ori. And that will cause him to immediately BKB and TP back to the safety of his base. 
And you can see um, what Tianming's doing right now. He's got this off sentry combo down on the low ground. He's planting mines up here. And immediately, Toronto is coming back trying to gain control here. He wants... <laughs> uh, they want this outpost. Like, this is where they play. Uh, they want this kill. They're going to go for FY. They'll take the grab. So they'll drop the arena. They'll blow up the Wim Ranger. It's so simple. Okay, but... The idea is that they control this space because if you just try and play high ground, you don't get picks. No, nobody walks up to the high ground alone or as two, right? When they're when they're in an advantageous position, because that would be stupid because you'll just die and feed free kills. But people walk up here. I mean, they're just getting free picks. People are just walking up here thinking like, oh, we're winning. We're ahead. They're probably in their base. Like, I'll play a little safe, but they're not all going to be here. But they're just holding this. They're, they're all playing for this area. That's like, what, the fourth kill this game where they've been down and they're just grab, grabbing free picks up on this hillside? Like, they're actually staying in off of this. Uh, this, is, this is turning out to be a pretty wild game. A, a very, very exciting one here. You know, that 9k lead or such on Azure Rain. I bet Boom are definitely showing that that... It doesn't feel like Azure Raid that far ahead as much as the numbers indicate. Now, sure, there's a lot of farm on this troll, but outside of that, Bet Boom started to have a bit of a rocky mid game, but they're, they're getting back into control of this game. And they're making sure that Azure Raid, they've still got quite the test ahead of them if they want to close up this game one. Well, he's not going to have an Aegis either, though, for this next fight, which is huge. Yeah. Uh, he's got his Blink Dagger and he's got his MKB. So if he gets the right jump and the good ulti, Life's great, but he's dealing with a Keeper of the Light who has Octarine and Will-O-Wisp, and he will be Shockering, and there will be Will-O-Wisps in every single engagement, and uh, his BKB timing is pivotal right now. Like, I don't even know if I'm going Swift Blink. I feel like I just need a refresher at this point for this, this uh, Troll Warlord, because if he's not BKB'd, I don't know if he's fighting. We need to use the Will-O-Wisp to hold them back. Save. He's in with a jump onto Bark. It's a lot of HP. He goes for a very hopeful finger. He's going to stand his ground with a mana drain, but they end up getting both shackle shotted together here, the two of them. The two supports get caught. Nightfall's going to back them up with the Stone Gaze. And in fact, Toronto Tokyo is going to live. He's going to be able to heal up. They've taken out Tian Ming. Leap forward. They're still looking for back. He's got the Eon Disc. We'll protect him. Blink's going to be back up in a second. But no, Miro is in with the Gods Rebuke just in time. Spear to follow up to make sure the Bark can't immediately blink out. But FY comes back in with another shackle shot. Holds back with Miro and GPK. We'll give chance for Bark to still continue his escape. He'll get out of there. Ended up being for one for one on the supports. Bet Boom, of course, did use that buyback on save. A big XP boost, 2,500. Destroying for Nero here. He's level 20. Yeah. And he's, the, the, the dream's going to be real. You know, the rapier, it's, <laughs> yeah, he's basically halfway there in terms of gold. I should say, yeah, definitely one of the wilder games we've had, I can tell already. Uh, can he do in it? In the, the group, group stage of Dream League. He, he's right. going to get there. He's absolutely going to get there. Oh, and explain to the people why this is really good. I mean, it's great, right? Yeah, you, you've played this build, right? I, and you know what? I uh, No, I haven't. This I've really seems to. like a build you would play. <laughs> I, I think I tried to, and then I just lost too quickly. I've got to do I think it you were, again. You were too busy again. on Condo Sniper. Is that what it was? You, were, you had other plans? That's true. I've, uh, I've had too many Condo games. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why this build kind of went under my radar for a bit because there was no Condor involved. So I was like, that no, actually what, what, what's the point? Lot. What's the point? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I've course, seeing these pros do it, it looks fantastic. Yeah, just what crazy damage. You're buffing up your, your physical damage with the, the Divine Rapier, so that's therefore buffing up how much the God's Rebuke crit's hitting. And then you're turning that all into magical damage with the Revenant's Brooch. And then, of course, that's also getting amped up by the fact that the Rapier nowadays exactly. also gives you a bit of spell amp. So it's these numbers yeah. upon a numbers upon numbers is like this insane combo that's triggering all these big numbers to do the biggest number that you're probably seeing and a, a number that could be too big for any of Azure Ray's heroes if uh, Mira gets him with a big smash of a God's Rebuke. I feel like that's the best way to explain it. That, that's mm -hmm. actually excellent uh, because it really shocked me the first time I went into demo mode and really started like <laughs> messing around with so it because it's just big yeah. numbers. Like you're looking at the items, you're like, why are these numbers so big? But that's exactly what it is. It's just everything just gets amped and amped and amped. And it adds up very quickly Dyer's to big number. Uh, so if we get to this rapier, we will get big number. But that's uh, a lot of ifs. Uh, he's played fantastic, though. I, I think Miro's been super solid this game. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. All right, there's our timer. It's a minute 37 for the Roche. It will not right. be an instant one here for Azure. They're going to hold this position, and they have techies. All right, techies, incredibly good at holding position, and they have Central Wall Runner. So when you have Stampede and you have Mines, you are supposed to get the fight you want every single time. Let's see who starts it off. But now Toronto Tokyo's around us. See the creeps getting 
Taken out here by the Star Storm. Just hit an arrow, Toronto Tokyo. Here we go, Miro. The smoke's been dispelled. He's getting a bit cold feet now. He's backing away. They know this area that Azure is holding. It's very hard for Bet Boom to fight into that. They're going to go for the re-smoke. Shard. Just pushing the wave with Shard. It's so good, guys. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. We see the angle being drawn. They want to try and tackle it from a different angle. Try and cross past their... The portal area past the twin gate. Remember, there's no Aegis for low. It's just one shot. No. Ulti. There he is. They see him. They catch him. The spear straight away into the egg. They put the stampede. They're trying to get him out of there, but they're oh, going to save him. It's going to be enough. He's able to get the battle trance off. The ult's there from low, but the stone gaze came out from nightfall. It's keeping him out of position, but now he get blasted back. The battle trance comes to an end. Low will fall. He's going to buy back immediately in an attempt to get back up to the fight. The shackle shot from FY is fantastic. Catch it on to Mirror. Catch it on to nightfall with the focus fire. FY is able to take out the Medusa. Turns towards save with the power shot. F Fire will get caught by the Hex, he'll fall. But my Bones goodness, back. did he do his job there? He absolutely did his job, taking out the Medusa, locking down Miro. Low will come in with a buyback. He's going to look to clean up a further kill. He gets the mana out of Toronto Tokyo. Ooh, nice attempt to save here from GPK. See if it's going to be enough to get Toronto Tokyo out of there. It won't be. The root comes in. Azure get another. As the team fight, it's theirs. Cost them an expensive buyback, but it's at that timing again that we saw earlier. Azure, they know when to use the buybacks when there's a Roshan in the equation. They're going to be able to get the Rosh once again, Trent. Oh, it's so huge for them right now. Let's give them the banner. And of course, that refresher shard, which, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Lowe takes it. He needs this BKB. And I mean, this fight couldn't have started much better here. I think the status resistance, the changes here for Lowe, might have been why he gets off that ulti the first time. He manages to pump out quite a bit of damage before he falls. He buys back. He doesn't get back in the fight in time, but it doesn't matter. What he did, the positioning that he achieved for his team, they're somehow able to clean this up because, I mean, starting like that, you would think Bet Boom have it, but all this counter itemization versus the Medusa comes into play when she's in the midst of everybody else and they're able to clean her up and that, that kind of gives you the win at that point. Yeah, it's wild. It really is. I mean, it's just, yeah, as I say, FY with the BKB defusal, that's all that's needed. If he gets in in the mid game, in, in the mid, middle of these fights and just gets on top of the Medusa, it's just a huge pain for Nightfall. Our next fight round, we're, we're, we're going to get there. There's no doubt about it. The gold for the rapier on Miro is incredibly close. In fact, it's there. So if he can get that shipped out to him, we'll have the rapier revenants ready for the next play. And we'll see exactly how big of a number he will be hitting. I, I, I guess that's the question. I mean, sure, if you're getting rapier, you spend up, bro. You don't hold buyback. Oh, yeah. No, we're, we're spending. 100%. Yeah, surely. Yeah. I mean, his courier is on the way right now, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, it's not. I mean, maybe I'll just make the walk out there himself. Oh, no, he has. Yeah, the, where's, where's his current? I know. It's not it was moving. Oh, it's back at the base. Okay. So, yeah, he, okay. he might just go for it. Yeah. All right, a little bit of a They're breather gonna strategize here. They're going to here. For the trying two to figure squads. out how. <laughs> yeah, this is a... Oh, there we go. Really nice. Really oh, we're back in. Put lag here. Uh, okay. Trotsky is going for the eggs on the Marana here. That's kind of interesting. Uh... Why? Is that just a... I mean, I think just for anything, just to, to be able to probably push out these waves That's from all distance I can think a bit of easier. Too. You know what I mean? Step up to a wave, get an arrow down there. You're going to be able to nuke back and, and, and clear out some of these waves without putting anyone in a dangerous spot. Freeze up the sort of the status of the lanes in a way that allows you to take the fights a bit easier without worrying about any further pressure hitting you from the sides. It's very expensive, though. Compared to, like, smaller and, like, utility items and stuff, though, it feels... A little bit risky, you know, compared to like, I don't know, maybe trying a halberd or something. But I mean, it's a troll staff resistance, maybe doesn't feel as confident versus it. Four staffs to the saves, but he's, he's just going for the big one. And uh, hey, you know, these games tend to go very long, so getting this eggs, like you said, pushing out farming and stuff, yeah, helps you for the scaling, yeah, for, yeah. for sure. But there it is the swift blink, he's got it. Put that battle fury in the backpack, and uh, they go to where they like the most their outpost. Well, low. He's going to go in. He's going to get pushed back by the spear. They'll contain him for now with a will of wisp There's going to be the jump from Park. He's not going to be able to get the grab. It's just quick silence over the wards or he has to put the BKB. He'll rem them back to safety. Split back from this. I mean, Toronto Tokyo is looking for an arrow. Not going to quite find the connection here. I, I seriously, like, I think this idea of playing up here is really smart and working really well for them. Because when you're playing support, you know, or playing these backline heroes, 
There, there's a, like, you play thousands of games going high ground, and it's all so formulaic, but oh, this trade is changing it. He knows where Ori is. That's the oh, big, big damage, of course. 1,860 coming in. Ori immediately has the BKB and run. All right, they're, they're all talking about it now. He's got the item. A lot of minds here. This is not the, that, uh, the safe place <laughs> to step into. He's completely set up this sort of area around the map, Tian Ming. Very dangerous spot of the map. Yeah, bring back the mines movement speed, you know? We'll, we'll get those things going. As you're right, what's the plan now? Minute and a half left on Lowe's Aegis. But this is not an easy game to close up. As you say, this could definitely be a game that goes the distance. Both teams giving us some excellent Dota here to start the series off. So tense for the troll player. I, I don't know. I, I can't play this hero. I just can't do it. It's, 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 it's an all or nothing hero. It really is. Yeah. When you go, you go. <laughs> and it better be the right go, because if it's not, you're, you're going back to base. You're, you're out of the game. Your teammates better come with you. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess you last a while, though, so perhaps that's what helps out. I fall out here. Feeling confident with this team behind him, though. And the Ags is done for Toronto, Tokyo. And uh, he has no buyback. He has spent out for the Zaganims. Okay. Well, it looks I, like they I, I they don't know if I can condone point? this. Like, if this Marana's is on your team, like, are you okay what? with this? <laughs> this does not seem okay. Well, let's see. If he dies <laughs> and he doesn't have buyback and then they lose the game, then he's probably not going to feel too great about it. But, uh, it's a bold man. Prof he's a professional. So he's gonna be he's gonna be playing safe. In fact, he's just holding the base. That's his job at the moment. I think Toronto Tokyo sticks back and he just pushes out the waves. He'll let the rest of the team kind of step out on the map and put the moonlight for them here. Imagine he just cancels a game-winning blink with one of these like little arrow AOEs. He's just too next level for me. That's all it is. Love Get it. his aesthetics cap as well. I mean, so sort of between that, the pipe and the greaves, he's he's tricky to kill. You know, he's a slippery fellow here on the Marana, Toronto, Tokyo. So he should be able to stay pretty safe. Had a great game so far, 10-3-11. Only those three deaths. GBK also here um, trying to get the uh, as many active items uh, as possible here, right? He's got his E-Blaze, his Spear Vessel, his Force Staff. He wants to pick up a Scythe as well. Get rid of some of these other slots here, but... Uh, Definitely gonna have a lot of tools. Some clutch options in these team fights. We managed to pick up that scythe too here, and, and of course the E-Blade that we always have to watch out for. I feel like we haven't uh, seen a lot from Save here. It's, I mean, he's kind of just getting, oh, here we go, the big jump. Ooh, it's a two-man who stumps to start things off. Lowe's in as well with the shackles from F5. Comes in clutch and catches on to Mira and save. Mira's able to put the BKB, but f in on top there of it. The rapier hits the deck. Rapier on the ground. Nobody's picking it up for now. Low. It was a what big ravage of a stun coming in there. Save stands his ground. Mana drain. FY. He'll take the rapier. He'll pick that one up for himself. They've killed off Low. Low's out for two minutes. Nightfall's running out of mana. GPK will give him a little bit more help and get up to the high ground. Miro. Nightfall will be able he to get the back. He got the control. He wants his rapier back. If they kill off it. Wait, does it pick it up? He's he killed it. Go get your rapier, son. Go get it, go pick it up. There you go, Miro stepping back. He's gonna get that rapier back under his control. As my goodness, this stuff we saw earlier, some great buybacks from Azure Ray when it came to Roshan, but from Bet Boom when it comes to defending the base and keeping the game in control. They're coming in clutch, saving Miro there with those buybacks, ensuring that they could take that fight and make sure that that rapier ends back in the original owner's hands. And he doesn't have the gold for it either, so he can't join if they wanted to do a team buyback right now. He's close. He's only 22 gold away. Okay, if they get a bounty rune or something, he's going to tick into it pretty soon as well on the Troll Warlord. But, uh, I mean, that was just all about control and lockdown there. The BKB runs out and Troll can't do anything. He got stone gazed. He got slept. He got uh, stone gazed again. And then he got Marana arrowed and slept and hexed and stunned. Like, he couldn't move. Let's see what they can do with the push and see if they can force out that buyback on low. 50 seconds. See how much pressure they can put on during this timing. A lot of money on Nightfall as well if he wants to start picking up his next item. 
4k gold surplus on top of the buyback gold required. It's going to be the mid-brax guy on. See what more they can find. There's still a tier 2 down bottom. I don't know. In fact, the creeps have made work of that. The tier 2 is gone. Oh, it's another long Roche. Two and a half minutes. So they're going to back off. They're going to settle for the mid set of racks. They're not going to try and push their luck for more. We'll be happy with that one bet, Boom. It is guaranteed daytime Roche. And look at the mines down here as well. So I, I think Bet Boom hopefully get down here and start clearing some of this out. Because this is not where you want to take a fight. A lot of uh, control and just general vision options available to Azure because of that giant minefield down there. So, I mean, Tron Tiger's done a great job of getting rid of the mines. Uh, hopefully he won't die doing it this time. Oh, they're going to be so disappointed here. This is going to be a lot of waiting around for nothing. Now, do they wait around long enough to end up in this fight against Azure Ray? Because Azure Ray, they're heading over. <laughs> Look at Low. Low. He's ready to go at the front here with the ninja gear smoked up. See if he finds a jump. Power shot coming into play. They've got the ward down, bet boom. If they want to go themselves, they do have the moonlight shadow. Toronto Tokyo, of course, farming his buyback thanks to that Aghanim Scepter. Genius. He's ready to die now. As he holds the vanguard standing right up in front there. Ready to go. Smoke time. Smoke up. They have Moonlight. They might find a big jump, Miro. He's not going to get the spear, but he does sort of get the setup here with the vision to go on to Bark. They oh, need to traverse through the send jump, but they're not able to do so. Bark's able to put the BKB and the Stampede. You see Ori with his BKB goes straight towards the back lines, get on up a GPK. Low, he's getting kited though. He's getting controlled. Yeah. The Hex is there. The sleep pull back of the Willow is into the stun. The burst from Miro with the God Tribune takes him out. A Tiaming and Low will fall. Low's got buyback available. He's going to use it. Same to be said for Bark. They're going to try and get back into the fight, but they've got, not really got an easy way to access this. They're running down the lane, but they've not got any easy way to get here any sooner. So oh, Bet Boom, no they can reset. They're going to be fine. There's two buybacks coming out from Azure Ray. One buyback coming out from Bet Boom. Um, I mean, all of them big ones, of course. Bark and Low for Azure Ray. Nightfall with a buyback on Bet Boom. I mean, they can't fight, though. A troll has no BKB, and you're seeing it, right? Like, he's he's in these fights, and he's chasing after the Medusa, and he just gets stunned over and over and over again because he's forced to run at her, which, you know, you're not supposed to actually look at the Medusa, but Troll Warlord doesn't understand that. He's, he's like, staring at the Eclipse, you know? Just just let it go, man. Use the cardboard box, but he can't because he's Troll. Oh, oh, he's so oh, close. Oh, low. Oh, my goodness, that ninja gear. <laughs> he's running the Nightfall. Uh-oh. He's got to try and find a safe way out of this one. I mean, at the same time, the rest of his, his team may be in trouble. Bark's going to be found back of the river. They've got the catch, and he's gone. Low out for two minutes. No buyback, of course, available. As it was just previously used, this is a huge window for Bet Boom to try and take a, a good amount at the base of Azure Ray, at the least Roshan, and maybe even the game. Oh, how do they want to play this? I mean, they obviously know that he has no buyback. So they're not going to try and force anything too hard, though. They just want their free Aegis, and they're going to go take it. And uh, does, does Miro get this with his uh, rapier? Or are we just too focused on Nightfall here? I think Nightfall's got to take it because he pulled back. That is also We'll true. see. We'll see what they do. If any, oh, I, I would... Save. I think Nightfall makes the most sense. Dude, I would get the Refresher Shard for Miro for double God's Review. I think he's getting it. Is he getting it? There oh, we yeah. go. Oh, yeah. and literally the best spell to have two times of at this stage of the game with the Rapier Revenants. Double yeah, God's you Rebuke. You, win, you just win You win the series. Game over. Yeah. Now, it's what could time. happen, though, yeah. I think he should actually take off his Aeon Disc. Because, like, what if he jumps in to oh. do it and he gets <laughs> immediately popped on the Aeon? That's true. You got it. Yeah, the, the Aeon actually, Disc I might actually it. throw the game. Now, yeah, sure I would, it won't, but that would be quite funny. I put it in my backpack and then put it in my inventory before I jump. So I have like the six seconds, you know what I mean? I see. I mean, if he, yeah, if he's quick enough with a burst, he shouldn't be taking any damage to threaten that. So, yeah. But you never know. You never know. If they get the jump on him and the panic sets in and he's Dude, popping the gods with these, maybe it happens mind. during an Eon disc. All right, there. Now we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> he just pops it on mines. Dude, that would have been so funny if he blinked into mines, Aeon just popped and he did zero damage. <laughs> 
I mean, that it, it could have happened, yeah. And may still, this game may still go on because 10 seconds, low will be back in play. They're going to have another shot at defending here, as you're right. Oh, they, they jump Miro, he's in! But he's not able to get the catch. He didn't like it. This time, this time round, they're able to get back to safety. Now they've got to be careful because Lowe's back up. Now the full five man here ready to defend on Azure Ray. Bet boom, they'll settle for what they got. They've got a second set of racks. They'll step back and they'll reassess the situation and decide what they want to do now with the remaining three and a half minutes of the ages on Nightfall. I have an idea. Let's farm for tier five neutrals. What do you think, Owen? It's, it's getting close. You know, I feel at this point of the game, even the pros, they're like, you know oh what? Let, let's, let, oh let's let it be a 60 minute plus game. Let's get those tier fives. Owen, they've been fermenting over here on the left side of the map. Look at TBK. Look at this right now. Double wisdom runes. Ooh, who's taking those? Oh, oh that's, a, that's an oak barrel casket. Oh, look at that. 2240 XP. Yeah, yeah. GPK's like, wait, hold on. I should not be taking this. Who's close to 25? Uh, I think they're giving it to save. Yeah, give it a save. Give it a save. Oh, baby. He's like, do I get it? Do I, team? Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, AoE Hex. Damn. I mean, that is, that can be pretty clutch, right? If, uh, if I'm correct in a game that's getting close to 60 minutes and there may be mirror shields, right? Because now- 100%, yep. You, the Hex, who cares? They got a mirror yep. shield, who cares? I got AoE Hex. Yeah, because typically you're only thinking yep. about Lincolns, but yeah, we're getting there, so 100%. We're getting there, yeah. Oh, remember, they're trying for the jump back here. And he's going to get caught here by the spear. See them look towards Bart. He's able to put the BKB. He's getting a little low on the HP, but I mean, he's got a lot of HP to work with, of course. This Centaur uh, in, will run incredibly tanky. 6,300 HP on him. That's a step back and reset and get the mana back up, Bark. And it's given the space for Nightfall to push in and threaten the Mega Creeps. He's taking the melee racks up top onto the range racks. One more hit, they'll get it. The Mega Creeps are out for Bet Boom. Very nicely played. Nothing too risky, always backing up. Miro's waiting in the back, still holding that uh, refresher. Let's see how much more they can push. A minute and a 40. Left on the ages for Nightfall. He's onto the tier fours. You got the nice little shackle to start things off here. Lozen as well, offering up the damage. Maybe the Wind Waker. I see a jump out from the side. Toronto, Tokyo, trying to escape. He's going to be able to get away with the leaps. It's going to be the Medusa down the once, but it cost them Lowe's life. Lowe can't get quite back in for now. FY tries to focus Nightfall to take him out, but he gets caught by the Hex. He'll put the BKB. He's still tearing through this Medusa, of course, with the focus fire. Nightfall's got to be a little bit careful. Another stun connects. FY's doing his best to try and bring down this Medusa, but Ori gets caught by the Hex into the spear. He'll pop another Slight of Fist, jumping around with the remnants, but they're trying to hold on. Here. Three versus five. They'll look towards save, but the Moonlight Shadow's in play for Bet Boom, keeping them safe. Another Hex from save into the stun. He keeps Ori locked down. <laughs> 3,500 damage coming in here with a double rapier revenants. God's Rebuke of Miro. It is game over. GG is called. Bet Boom will take this game one. Oh, during that, Miro, while he's killing Faith Beyond, is buying the second rapier and flying it out. So we have it for the finale there as he takes down that Ember Spirit. Oh, Bet Boom. A couple different windows here. Uh, a bit of a uh, parabolic uh, win probability here where it looked really good for them. Something's looking really good back towards Azure. But in the end, it returns back towards Bet Boom. It really does. It really does. And I think it really was sort of, as you were saying earlier, just it's even with how much farm low has on the troll, it, it just felt like the ease of execution was always going to be in, in favor of Bedroom, right? It's just so hard, even when you're that far ahead on Troll Warlord, to find the perfect sort of game to close it up. They had so much done, so much control. Uh, and at the end of it all, you know, when it's down to a six second BKB, it just doesn't feel like it's enough to keep you safe in these sort of fights. I mean, time and time again, I mean, the battle trance, they just couldn't capitalize on it. Yeah, you saw it. Like, he's just chasing after a Medusa. He has no control of his hero. Maybe the BKB's running out at this point, too. Uh, when he was not BKB'd, he felt kind of useless, unfortunately. And, and such is the life of a troll, particularly in the matchup versus uh, many ranged carries, but Medusa in particular. So, really well played there. And uh, a GBK, too, like, really controlled the earlier parts of this game. Uh, and then he turns into this, like side utility hero and he did a great job i mean just you saw it in the end like he's like scything people he's got windbreaker defensively he's e-blading as well he's able to just purchase every tool you could ever want 
uh, in this game to, to try and make those fights hard for low. Yeah, I think on that last push, yeah, you mentioned yeah, GPK's win waker, yeah, that coming in clutch, keeping Nightfall uh, safe for a, a good bit of period where FY otherwise may have been able to actually kill him off that second time to focus fire. So just well played as a team. Azure, they, 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 they do. Yeah. Like, I, I'm right before this fight, I said, save, you know, he's been having trouble. He's getting bursted down every fight. He's dying all the time. But this fight, he comes back with a buyback, gets this massive stun, helps control up there. Poor Low can't do anything. And he's just finished off there uh, with GBK's damage in tow. So uh, that's really, I mean, that was a 23k lead right now at 49 minutes. And they come back and win this game. No, we've, we've seen, you know, Bet Boom, they, they do bring us some pretty crazy games. I mean, th this one was definitely one of them. Yeah, the, the, the fact that they had such sort of dominance in the early game, then the mid game, things started to look a little rough, but they, they just always knew that there was going to be some sort of way to bring it back under their control. And at the end of the day, just sort of the, the sort of a loss of a, a painful team fight just costed Azure that much more in the late game uh, because of just how perfect things really needed to line up. And uh, in our next series, Tundra here, as you can see. Tun we, that was uh, Tundra they there eventually. <laughs> My goodness. The, the, <laughs> yeah, we got Tundra later on today. They'll be actually yeah, the second yeah, series. That's just a little, a little uh, appetizer yeah. there. You'll, you'll yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm we'll the bush. Yeah, Tundra did not win Bet Boom versus Azure, uh, which would be rather impressive if they did. We are biased, but not that biased. Uh, we haven't we haven't gotten there yet. Uh, if if I had to go back, I go back to that Opo yeah. by their base, where they just kept getting these fights. Like they control it. I mean, how many times do Nightfall's just like farming ancients, and we're like, why is he still here farming ancients? But they're defending him. They're fighting, and, uh, and they're they're able to come back and, and claw this win here, Owen. They are. They are. Well, what a game one. Chat, we've got, we've got to head into a quick break because we're, they'll be ready to go. Tundra's, again. Tundra's trying to take over there. here. We got to hurry, you know? Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Tundra's probably looking at this series going like, my goodness, we get two two hour games. We're going to be playing a little bit uh, little bit delayed. Um, but we'll see. Maybe the next game is going to be a stomp. Honestly, with the way that game one went, I don't think so. I think we could be in for another banger here between Bet Boom and Azure. Uh, as it stands, game one, Bet Boom will take the first victory.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Dream League Season 22. I'm Eddie Pixel here with Trent, and we are halfway through, very much enjoying our first series of the day, which is, of course, Azure Ray versus Bet Boom. Uh, what a game one. Honestly, if you if you missed it, don't listen to what I'm about to say. Actually, you probably already showed it on the screen in terms of spoilers. <laughs> uh, but Bet Boom did win. But if you, if you missed it, you should probably go watch it anyway. It's a great, fun game. Really good start to the series. Um, the, the question is, Trent, after that, mm-hmm. what are we going to see changing? in game two you know if you're Azure coming out of that uh, what, what are you taking away from it the most well, you feel in terms of draft or play and saying well you know what we kind of made this game pretty hard on ourselves because of this or because of that like what's going on I think there's probably some viewers at least who've come back and they're like oh I, I left because I thought Azure were going to win I, yeah so probably it, <laughs> it, it, you know they're back and like what do you mean yeah. Beppu won and yeah that's not a good feeling when you're the team is actually playing uh, I imagine they might reevaluate some things in terms of like the, the troll and stuff, but like, you know, the, the hero, it's good. I mean, it is a good hero, as much as I hate to say it. It does win some games. Uh, they just, they got a little uh, outplayed there when it comes to the uh, the overall kiting and the, uh, the ability to actually make trolls successful. But I, I think that game was in their hands for sure. Like they certainly could have won it with the way they played. They just made some mistakes. They got outplayed and that's just Dota. I, I wouldn't doubt my strategy too much if I was Azure. I think that th- there's a lot from this game that went well. So yeah, absolutely. it's just come back and, and play better. And uh, Miro, maybe try not to ruin pubs so hard here as he uh, ends. Like, people are going to look at this scorecard and see that, uh, you know, oh, they were really far down. And this guy bought Revenant's Brooch and two Rapiers and they won. It was and good. you know they're not going to buy the A on this. That that item won't The BKB, no, that won't be there. But you'll definitely see the, the blink Revenant's Brooch and two Rapiers uh, in your next pub. So I'd recommend taking a breather here. Probably just stay here and watch the game. Don't Don't go play right now. It's a dangerous time to queue. Ah, yeah, no, it was uh, pretty, pretty brilliant stuff from him. Um, it did end up, I believe, with those last few God's rebukes, uh, and it ended up being the highest damage dealer on his team, which you know, that's what it was all about. Was able to just outdo Nightfall on his Medusa by about a thousand. Uh, uh, thanks impressive. for that second rapier pickup towards the end. So it yeah, ends up on top. I mean, I Ooh, honestly I even think have the I mean, breakdowns working. Oh, oh yeah. So got, oh wow. We okay, Any I can actually numbers? tell you how much damage Revenant's Broach did by itself. Oh, what, dear what, what, God. What, how did it add up? All right. His total damage was 41,000, I believe. Yes. Revenant's Broach added uh, was 27,800 of that. That's absurd. Yeah. That. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's something. <laughs> that, that is quite the build. Yeah, especially when you sort of consider that comparatively, like before he had the Revenant's Brooch, his God's Rebukes, the total of that was only 4,000 damage. So, yeah. It, a, it just, yeah, obviously he just gets to be crazy numbers. Uh, I think really is one of the, probably not what was initially intended or thought about when the item was added into the game, but Mars is genuinely the, one of, if not the best Revenant's Brooch builder right now. Like, it, it, it is absolutely legit in situations like this. And I'm sure we'll see Miro try and do it again. I mean, he's a level 30 Mars oh, yeah. player. He knows exactly what's up. And I think especially after that first game, I mean, I don't think he'll get to do it again because I would imagine that Mars is not going to be allowed into his hands, surely, in this game too, Trent. No, I, I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of really good offlaners. In fact, am I correct that I don't think Magnus was even touched in our last draft either? No, I don't think uh, it was. Yeah, I didn't see any Magnus fans. No. So right, both, I, the both thing about players, Mars is yeah. that, like, there's so, like, we're talking about Timbersaw, uh, which, you know, a lot of these heroes are also flexed. Like, the Magnus counts in there, too. Like, sometimes we'll still see it in the mid lane. So you have to deal with this, like, Magnus bands a lot of times, Timbersaw bands, Dragonite bands. It's kind of hard to remove the Mars because you're going to be giving up one of these other heroes that I would say are considerably stronger or at least have that flex potential. We can have the Mars mid, true. 
uh, but it is a little bit more specific to some players. I wouldn't necessarily be expecting GPK to bust it out, for example, these days. Uh, it's not usually his, although it suits his play style, uh, as far as I'm aware, I don't think it's a hero that he's wanting to uh, to bust it on the mid lane like uh, some other players will try and grab if they can. Yes. No, 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 for sure. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, we'll see. We'll see if it gets left in. I mean, from Azure Ray's side of things, I think some things are likely to stay the same. I think, um, honestly, to the offlane and the support duo, I think they, they felt pretty good. You know, I felt they were one of the reasons, those three were sort of the main reasons why this game was able to hold on as long as it did. You know, having Bark on a Centaur, F1 on the Windranger, Tiaming on the Techies. I would not be surprised if we don't see any change up from that, right? I, I feel like those three in particular, they played their part. Yeah, and then, I mean, the early, definitely the late game, I would say they looked really mm. stalled, but that early game, you look on the other side, we had that lion Marana combo. That was crazy. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. they, they from, did from amazing yeah. rotations. At 6 0 0 for Toronto Tokyo yeah. at the start of the game here. Got first blood in the lane, training with FY2, so uh, I don't know, Lion, yeah, I, you know, he got a little bit nerfed, but still looks to be a, a pretty good hero here. And uh, yeah, I like. Probably not too many changes at all uh, in the supports uh, unless it comes down to the bands. Yeah, I feel like uh, if you're going to break up that combo, you pro would you take away the Lion or the Mirana? Uh, I mean, I do find Mirana to be pretty annoying with the, the Moonlight Shadow. Yeah. So yeah, probably the Mirana because she enables yeah, just, like yeah. you know, Lion can be replaced by a couple different things, but it's pretty hard to find that long range pressure on the mid lane. That's fair. And, That's fair. Uh, from a lot of other heroes here, as uh, we get a uh, we get a no load into someone immediately asking, "Is he coming back? Oh. Why, why, do we need to ask that about one of the players?" <laughs> yeah, I think so. he'll be back. I don't think we're busting. There we go. Handed. <laughs> we got him back. We got him back. We got him in, and the game is loading. So we should be able to get the draft on your screens, ladies and gentlemen, very very shortly. So we get ourselves ready for this game two of Vet Boom versus Azure Ray. Let's see how this changes from what we saw in game one. Honestly, hopefully not too much because it was a fantastic game one. So we'd definitely be down to see more of that action to come. First bands, Enigma. Over last time we, we saw obviously the Chen. Imagine we're going to see that again. First phase. There it is. Vet Boom will take it to, to there on the, themselves to ban out. And, yeah, it's uh, looking like we're going to be fairly similar. Oh. Yeah, I think so. First phase bans probably not going to change too much unless they really feel their specific hero for that last game that they don't want to deal with. But as for now, it remains the same. Tiny's out again in the first phase. DK's out again. Uh, what else was out last time? I think what well, the, the the Naga the, was the uh, oh yeah, that's early. true. That one the might timber. Be. maybe they don't ban the Naga. I feel like they they can maybe leave that one in. And we are uh, swapped here, I believe, right? Bet Boom was Radiant last time, but they were ninth pick instead of. Uh, yeah, pick. I think so, right? The orders, yeah. So same sides, but different order here. Yeah, because last game they picked the GPK Cottle, and then Ori got the final pick with Ember. Oh, they still yeah. stick with the same. Naga Saren's out again. Now, yeah, I think it's really more an Azure Array if they want to add something in like the Mars or the Mirana here with the first bands, or if they would just want to take one of those to themselves. You know, in their past nine games, they have yeah. been first pick in uh, eight of them for Bet Boom. So they are a team that definitely okay. likes first pick. What's, what's their win rate been on those last nine games? Ah, uh, they've looked pretty good. I mean, they yeah, uh, winning that, that was when they got well. knocked out by Liquid. So they, ah, you know, they true. lost that's, their... Yeah, that's true. That's hard. At the back. end of a tournament, it's hard to sort of value yeah, how much but, that loss counts. But like, yeah. Game and Head last pick both times, uh, and they, they beat them. And then uh, they also gave it up uh, in the last game versus Virtus Pro, and then this last game. But uh, they did lose that game where they had last there pick we go. versus Virtus Pro. So. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, look at that. The Mars ban and pick the Mirana. They don't want. They don't want to let either of those heroes get into the hands of Bet Boom a second time round. And yeah, I don't think there's any surprise there. This is a, a good shake up to what Bet Boom's going to be uh, allowed to throw back at Azure Ray uh, by taking these two away. That does leave in the Leshrac. That was the uh, also um, early ban of our last one. It we was actually, wasn't our, it? Our discussions. Yeah. Yeah, that's and true. Look at Bet this Bet Boom ban last time. They're in the reserve time already, too. I mean, I mean, Azurea, I guess, already spent, but 
Perfect. We'll grab that lion. They liked it. Yeah. Always a solid one. With or without Marana, you're still going to be able to do a lot. The question is if you want to go for that Medusa again. You're not going to have the Mars. You're not going to have the Marana. I wonder if not having either of those heroes to to sort of create the fights around the Medusa is enough for Bet Boom to look to go down a different angle uh, with the uh, carry pick. She was pretty frustrating to play against. Sometimes yeah, you it, just, it felt pretty good. Even if it's not like a super broken hero necessarily, you might just not want to deal with it again. I mean, they, they tried to play it as well at Dacha and uh, with, with other top tier carry, like even though Medusa doesn't get buffed, you know, when you have other top tier carries getting nerfed, then it can still bring out these situations where like, oh, it just makes Medusa better because by contrast, everyone else got worse. But uh, they're going to take care of the Morphling and the Weaver. Interesting plans okay. here. I'm getting rid of those slippery carries. Bet Boom having the uh, ban into pick here before we go into our, our flurry of six picks straight. And how do they want to set the tone here? Do they want to just like pick up their support, support duo and then react? Or is there something really broken they want to grab? Typically, if it's something really broken, uh, it, it's going to be something that's got a little bit of flex, generally. Uh, that would be the idea. Like those DKs or something. Obviously, he's banned, but something that you can put in multiple lanes, but it's still considered super strong at the moment. Last time they did this, they went for the Doom. Uh, in fact, it was the exact same drafting situation where they had Lion and they were up against the Marana and they chose to pick a Doom here. They're taking a Crystal Maiden this time. They want to keep the draft a little bit more open. Okay. Showing out the two supports to start this one. Let me see if Azure Ray wants to follow suit and also open with the two supports. They're well, oh. close up with the Shaman and an immediate Razor to follow up. Okay. I mean, this his stocks are on the rise, it would appear, the Shadow Shaman. Definitely been seeing a lot more of it here. Uh, was, was a I think, a classic save here, if I'm not mistaken. He's played that a lot for uh, for Bet Boom, so, I mean, he's going to have some knowledge here. His, this will be handed over to Azure in, the, in this chance. Um, can be a five, can be a four. We've seen a little bit of the five Shaman come out. Uh, it largely just depends on how much you think you're going to move around. And FY, like if he has really good arrow pairings, you might give FY the Marana because when you play four in the Marana, it's a little bit easier to like snipe couriers and rotate to mid. But if this Razor ends up being mid, might not be the best combo necessarily. So yeah, that, that's the value here. It's just being able to flex it between the two lanes. And you can also do the same thing with uh, Crystal Maiden and Lion too, but probably going to be Trial Tokyo on the Crystal Maiden and save on the Lion. They grab right. up the, the TB, who was the other hero who I think he was like third in terms of overall win rate buff immediately after the patch. When you looked at just all heroes flat, cross Dota, all brackets, just raw data, TB went up like 4% or something. Five seconds remaining. Just a happier yeah. lad now. Always, always a pretty nice carry to have against the Razor. After sort of the early game, you, you know, you're able to put that meta in highly likely with the illusions able to do enough damage to kill him off before he's able to build up any sort of significant damage with the static link. Uh, they do have their three probably available for Azure. I don't think we're rocking the three Razor on their team. Uh, so they could theoretically go for that like that Darkseer hard counter, but they have a Marana and a Shao Shaman they're committed to already, so the pairing isn't really that great. Uh, so like, I, I don't think it's what they're going to do. But certainly a hero most people are concerned about uh, <laughs> when they think about Terrorblade. Five seconds remaining. But uh, they're going to have Centaur Warrunner, who's also just been looking great. Uh, the Mars is banned, of course, as they took care of it themselves earlier. So they're not going to have that counter pick that they just experienced available to them. They're going to find something a little bit different as this Centaur wants to just pull people away from that link of the Razor. Do they have any way to try and keep them in? The puck is still there, but we got ourselves a, uh, a lion. Crystal Bane can be a little bit annoying there, too, which is uh, a very spammable route that's always up if you happen to come in vision. Obviously, yeah, you can blow up a CM, but if she's in range of you in the middle of a team fight, she probably is frostbite up, and you're going to be pretty upset. But, I mean, mm. it's puck, so uh, and I would not hate the pick. Kunkka, maybe, as well, could be another option. Wouldn't be the worst here. Pretty good with Marana. 
uh, you're getting last picked from Bet Boom, so you got a safe mid hero. But the question is, Trent, mm-hmm. what is Razor? I don't know. I, I don't. I, I don't go with this hero. It's <laughs> uh, I mean, that's probably their three. That's going to be Faith Beyond, more than likely. Yeah. Uh, I think I mean, it's, it's going to be the safe flame, right? What, what is it? Sorry? The Razor. Yes, presumably, because you haven't seen the, the Bet Boom mid. So one one has to assume that Bet Boom would pick something that doesn't get bodied by Razor. So you're probably going to put your Razor safe line, and you have to pick first anyway. I mean, we saw Team Spirit play a position one puck for Yadro yesterday. So if they want to go uh, really flexible and pick puck next and then send the Razor mid in the puck safe lane, maybe that's what we'll get. Right, that'd be pretty wild. I mean, I'm, down, I'm down to see some puck. Man, just get some puck going on. I mean, they won that game. It wasn't looking too good at the beginning. I tuned back yeah. in after it. I saw they won. I was like, oh, all right. Nice to see Don Yadaro. Oh, look at that. There's some respect for the troll. Trolls are actually going to get banned out. I mean, Lowe did farm up an absolute treat that last game. I'm sure he didn't win it, but mm-hmm. like, and they have he, when he was given space, control. he farmed in a manner that you know not many carries can keep up with. I, th- I think uh, picking it into the Medusa, maybe. Yeah. Certainly, I mean, you can see some of the good parts of it, but the second the BKB was gone, he just could not play the game. <laughs> like, he just kept stone gazing himself, so. Uh, nah, it, it, dude, it, it was such a hard game for him. It really was. It was. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate that, you know, he probably felt like that he he had it on him to take up the challenge of playing the troll and going with the troll that game, but it was not easy. Like, it was a difficult game to play. And he gave it a good shot. 60-minute game pretty much came up on the clock, and it was uh, an entertaining one, and they definitely had their moments, Azure uh, in that first game. No doubt about it. Some yeah, great Azure Dota from both sides. Uh, I just got to ban out the Sven, a hero we're starting to see a bit more recently. And uh, They, they are nice. respecting the Razor mid, or Razor 3 mag mid. They, they are. They, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I might, yeah. Well, Razor, you think Razor 3 and Magnus mid more likely? Or? Well, it's just, no, it's just possible, I would oh, say. I, I don't okay. think it's more likely. I, okay. I think the mag's probably three. Yeah, I feel like it, you got you got to let Bark play as Magnus. And yeah, Faith Beyond. That's a classic. And as you're right, looking for those mid bands, it oh, will be the Wind Ranger. I actually wondered if maybe they might opt for that because it would also be really flexible too and pretty safe mid. But uh, I mean, that means GBK spirits are all in. Which is yeah, kind of cool. I guess so you you have to pick something that's good versus Spirits mid. Ten seconds. Yeah, which which could be something like the puck, but then at the same time they do obviously have decent Five lockdown seconds. of the line, the CM, and the Centaur. So it depends how how ready you feel you're going to be able to dance around all of that. I wouldn't or say it's a bad puck the game. I, I yeah, just wouldn't just call it a carry. free. Yeah, so they'll just kind of send it. Because like Razor, again, it's fine. You can go Razor mid. It's just not like a... Ah, this is an insane Razor mid game. You know what I mean? It doesn't have that like feel to it. I mean, I do feel that this this life stealer pick though is very very Ten good. Mm-hmm. It's you know life stealer. He's his stonks have been rising as of lately. Yep. The win percent has been going up, and uh, you know you look at the two supports of Bet Boom, and uh, they're what are, what are they going to do? Uh, they're going to have to help that the Stampedes are going to be coming out to help them kite this life stealer. But if this life stealer, if Lowe's able to get anywhere. Uh, near the farm rate as he did last game, which he's likely to do so because he has the Magnus within power. Like he, he's going to tear through these supports. There's you know a fair few heroes on Bet Boom's lineup that just don't do an awful lot against the Life Stealer. And, what and there's the puck. Here? There we go. Puck we wanted to in. see it, and he gets it this game. So I mean, yeah, he had total freedom for his pick for GBK. Yeah. This, this is a very rare situation. I feel like uh, you know having tenth pick and. All spirits and puck available. It's pretty crazy. So, uh, FY, it's on you, bud. Hit those hexes. <laughs> he did. And last game, he, he was certainly hitting the shackles and the focus fires. You know, FY was on point. So. Yeah, they, they, this time it's going to be uh, kind of down to Azure Ray to do very similar stuff to what Bet Boom did earlier, right? You know, with the Lion, the Marana. This time it's going to be the Shaman and the Marana. See if they can set up some good early action, some early catches, and indeed trip up these key heroes like GPK on his puck. But uh, yeah, all things said, last game, I, I did prefer Bet Boom's lineup. Uh, I think this time round, 
I, w I would actually go with the, the power of the lifestealer Magnus. I think, uh, you know, Lowe played really well last game. He was just on a hard hero in a difficult situation. I think this game on his lifestealer, he's, he's more set up for success. So I, I think Azure Ray's got the upper hand on this one, Trent. I, I don't know if they can slow down. Because um, I feel like GPK got slowed down a little bit last game with the uh, the Ember Spirit. You know, like these Lion Gangs mid, the arrows that kind of hit him a few times. He did play a bit more conservatively. He did manage to go for the Maelstrom, which was probably, uh, looking back at it, a really good decision since they did manage to dodge a lot of those fights. He farmed up. He managed to stay, like, kind of close to those top heroes. But I don't see the same deaths occurring. Like, how do you set up for an arrow on, on mid? I feel like there's no way you're going to kill this Puck. Uh, but now, that, that being said, Puck not as reliable when it comes to like farming up neutrals and staying in the game like an Ember can. Puck, I think, needs to have some of these rotations. So if you're, you know, I would be cautious diving under the towers right now, I guess, as Azure because GPK okay. is going to be hunting for that moment. Let's, uh, let's have a look. Very much looking forward to this one. And I'm sure you ladies and gentlemen at home are as well after that absolutely fantastic game one to start this series off. Game two here now. Ready to begin between Bet Boom and Azure here in the group stage of Dream League Season 22. Start. Let's see if we get any action on the first blood. Smoke up from Azure. Pretty good potential. Look at the, the arrow connection. And Tian Meng. And they missed a play around this Observer Ward, just in case any of Bet Boom step up to check out the Vision situation. Bet Boom, they're going to come in with the smoke themselves. Look to get the high ground advantage. Azure, they do seem to be seemingly aware that this sort of move could be coming in, with how deep behind their tier one they're, they're playing at. Bet Boom, can they find the catch? It's up to save with the stun. Ori, he, yeah, he might be found here. They see him. That's a little too oh, deep, though. It's not going to connect. I'll turn over to Wars back. They have got him with the Hustom. He'll take the skewer to separate himself from the rest of the team and allow him to get away. Arrow comes in and it connects. Tian Ming is able to get one in throughout all the sort of chaos that Betboom was trying to bring. It connects. They get first blood. Can they get Toronto Tokyo as well? They can. Two kills here for Azure to start this one off as Betboom. They hunted pretty deep for that, that attempt at a first blood. They whiff their opening sort of rally of spells, and it gives Tiaming all the chance. He just throws a pot shot in with the arrow. It's going to hit he someone. Does. It does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were definitely fishing a barrel at that moment. Someone's getting caught there. So, And uh, uh, one certainty in life is that Crystal Maiden is not walking away from that fight. You went to a 0% chance when you're moving like molasses here. So a couple quick picks here. And great way to start game number two when you're already down here and see if you can catch a 1-1 one, one in these two game series is Nightfall. A skewer into quite a bit of early damage. Toronto, you're trying to dissuade that a little bit with the Crystal Nova. Yeah, we'll definitely have to be a bit careful how they play and hold the lane down here. Because if it gets anywhere close to that tower, they've got easy setup for the skewer back to FY's uh, Shackles or, or Hex once he's hit level 2. So, they've got to hold the lane in a safe position. Toronto, Tokyo, Nightfall. On the, the side lanes, I mean, on this top lane, do you think there's any kill potential for either of the squads? Well, I'd say, no, not quite. <laughs> they had almost close enough there for a, a stop here. Uh, I mean, it's level one for Tian Ming, and he got a little bit close there, so that's definitely your best chance before he has the uh, the leap here, as Miro's going to catch that arrow so they don't get the free kill under the range creep. Nice job. And he actually forces out the rage. Just so low can grab that range creep. But there it is. He has the leap. And, ooh. That's definitely your kill potential. Yeah, very close to taking a double edge to the face there. But Tian Ming, he's quick enough. Oh. And save just gets there in time to throw down that sentry. Like 159, he blocks that out. Taunts in his face, too, because. Bottom lane. There's the combo, the old shackles into the skewer back, trying to take a tries for the TP, he's going to make it! Ooh. Oh my goodness. Always a risky one to do, TPing as low HP as that, but he takes the shot at it and he makes it back in time as well to get too. the pull. Very oh, nicely, nicely done not. there by Toronto. 
Oh yeah, I'm, I'm panic TPing home for sure. Unfortunately, he has left his TB alone. Let's see if these two have enough damage. Can we get the uh, reflection out to slow them down? Will be enough to allow him to step away, but still he's getting bullied away from the creep waves and has been left rather low. And he has the fairy fire to rely on for regen. We're gonna want Toronto Tokyo to pass over his last tango. We've we got more regen coming in. Oh, it's just the band of elven skins. They're gonna be left a bit low on resources for now in this bottom lane. Allow Azure to keep the pressure on. No way. Yeah, that is a, a stressful one here. You know Bach wants to keep up this pressure here. I won't give them any breathing room and well, meanwhile uh, mid lane going relatively even as the uh, GPK had a bit of a lead to start but it's evened out here only a couple CS ahead and no surprises here at all in the uh, the build well, unless GPK actually buys two witch blades but you know, I think just one's good at the bottom again, Bark. It's not going to go for that one. Hesitation with the skewer back. It's going to be a bit harder to do now if Toronto Tokyo is quick with the frostbite to sort of hold him in positions. Bit of slow down to that combo. And with this pressure, it definitely means that, similar to the last game, Nightfall, having the slower start in the CS. Not as easy of a lane for him as it is for Lowe and his Lifestealer, as Lowe is farming perfectly fine. Are Very difficult for them to find a chance to make another go down bottom. As, uh, the wave pushing in nicely for Nightfall, close to his tower. Not leaving him at any sort of distance of a threat of being dragged under the tier one of Azure's. Five seconds left, turnaround potential. So once the meta's back up, makes it even riskier for Azure Ray to try for any aggressive play into the Terra Blade. Top lane. They've got the lockdown with the Hex. He's able to get the Rage off just in time. Low lucky to live. Yeah, and uh, Tenming not believing in it either in terms of like trying to rip out the level one Star Storm. It's not too much damage, and he's also just sitting on the healing Lotus there too, but wants to make sure he keeps as many resources uh, <laughs> available as possible here. In terms of these leaps, because if he runs out of leaps, he is just free food to this combo. A two points in the Earth Spike gives a, a decent window for Miro to just walk on in there and hit you with a stun. And they are under this tower and applying this pressure. Catapult wave coming up next here. That makes a lot of damage. Oh, and that'll do it. Very well played here between Safe and Miro. As you say, just sort of maxing out the lockdown. No mana drain coming out in the early levels here this time because Save knows. That point in the hex. Now we'll get it at four, but the level three, the two one build, it's enough to crush the life stealer. Down bottom. Yeah. They'll lose the CM, but maybe Nightfall can find something in return. No, okay. TP out's there and Bart. He's back under the tower. I mean it's interesting too, because they barely had the mana for that play, and that's one of those instances where Radiant it's the uh, invisible help fortified. of Crystal Maiden. Because he didn't go for that mana drain, and he did get yep. a relatively like quick point into the arcane aura, so all that harass that Save's been doing. Just helped out even by that tiny bit of mana regen. It certainly helps us early in the game. Oh, Tianming, he gets the deny. What a play. Bottom lane. Bad boom, they get the kill. Nightfall in Toronto, Tokyo, chasing him down. Oh, settings. Does it after the kill, respect, you know? Do they know, can they see this? Oh, they actually haven't seen Razor yet, I don't think. Well, that's true. I mean, Frostbite's up in a couple of seconds, but Razor, you know, Ori with the Stalling, oh yeah, Nightfall's very dead. They've also got the Shackle. So, it'll get the kill as they dive in for Buck, but it will cost Nightfall his life. A very needed rotation there from Ori to make sure that Azure Ray gets something in return. Dyer's middle tower is under GBK, attack. though, I mean... Razor's gone, so he's going to pressure here. He has his treads all finished up here, then into the old Witchblade. Just a, a chill puck game, and uh, unfortunately, he fights away from the tower, so he doesn't have a chance for those uh, TP ins. He also has no TP, so that's uh, another reason why he won't be TPing into any fights. Radiant are scanning. Let's see where Ori looks to head next. Back towards the mid. Gonna leave some of the pressure on the tower. And 
at this point. Yeah, for low, I guess the, the lane's a bit scary to step up to. I can only really do so when it's being pushed in under the tower. And even then, the mirror getting close to the six. Dive potential could be there. They're going to bring in a plus one as well. Toronto, Tokyo. Turns up to the top lane. Three points frostbite too. Oh, see, they're going to go straight towards low. Caught him with the hex. TP's coming from FY. Toronto is the shackle. On to Miro. Toronto, Tokyo. And he's just getting no. yeah, beaten down here by the two of them. Tian Ming and low. So, Azure Ray were prepared to deal with that. And they'll be prepared to clean up even more. Save. It's caught here by the cutoff from Ori. That boom not getting away without attempt on a kill. No, that was uh, disaster. Uh, and you're trying to get this rotation through the twin gate, but he gets blocked off there by Tian Ming. I mean, you got three points frostbite. I got three points Starstorm. He got absolutely shredded by this Marana. He's trying to get that frostbite in here, but now Miero, arrow's gonna hit. Move moves here from Azure right. In the mid. They should get Ori. They've got the coil drop down onto him. And easily enough locked down. So Bet Boom. Once they do continue to lose heroes on the top, they come back in with the respawns and make sure they set something up mid and put a bit of an end to quite a nice opening to the game Ori's had. Was yet to die. That's the first time they've been able to take down that Razor. Yeah, despite the uh, last hit here being uh, in favor of GPK and some of the heroes on Bet Boom, it is certainly Ori who's at the top of the board here with this 2 1 and 2 kill score as he heads towards an early Yasha. The buff Bark. item. They've found him here. And get again just this lockdown. Frostbite into the stuns. Oh, They've got man, so much to keep them in position. And I mean, can they bring anyone over here to do anything about it? Now they're just gonna have to let this little stack go to Bet Boom Nightfall. We're very happy with this one. Easy farm yeah. for him. He was probably hoping that he might get killed by a neutral, considering the giant swarm that were around him in that situation, but. Not able to find it, unfortunately. Uh, Stampede is picked up here for Miro. He's going to be a, a little cautious here, but it's going to take three. Like They're going to need the, the Shaman here, and he's too far away for that. But doesn't have any <laughs> vision gonna... to help him up here. Did he, you see, are you seeing this as well? There's Life Stealer. He's just gliding about the place. I think we see it on the mainstream, too. Are you seeing that? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, he is the stun he's, look. Yeah. He just oh. looks at the creeps, and they take damage. And he doesn't even menacing. need to hit them. Look at this. Look at him go. <laughs> uh, okay, well, we'll see how long that lasts on him. But, uh, That's a good one. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway. Oh, we've got level six now and save. Let's see if they want to smoke think, up and uh, go for finger play. Yeah, he's, he's got smoke on him. I mean, him and Miro could definitely go for something here. After he's cleaned up the serpent wards. We got a lot of trusty up. shovels Radiant's since that buff, huh? Well, last game, all trusty shovels. This game, lots of trusty shovels. 15 more HP. That's all everyone needed, apparently. <laughs> and more importantly, the nerfs on every other item. I, I guess, to be more accurate. I don't think I've seen a safety bubble. No, I think that, that item sort of rest <laughs> in pieces. <laughs> Can they kill low here? Radiant's no. Uh, yeah, they can't. Yeah, yeah, they can't get close enough, especially during that? the daytime. That was the... Did that guy have a blink dagger freak out? That's what that was. Yeah, you don't yeah, want to be messing that. around. You, you see a hero <laughs> step up out of smoke, you pro, you're popping rage immediately. Like, I just want to hit my creeps, guys. Leave me alone. But down bottom, the moonlight in. Toronto out. Oh, Nightfall's going to pop the meta. They get the coil down. It's only onto FY. Uh, it's enough to set up for the kill. Maybe they can find more. Hexed out onto Tian Ming. Fingers there from Save. They've taken happened? out the two of them. From, they've got the ult from Toronto Tokyo coming in on towards Ori. Ori taking huge amounts of damage. The Stampede is there, allowing Nightfall and Toronto Tokyo to close in onto the Razor. They'll take Ori out as well. Uh, a disastrous fight there for Azure to try and force themselves into as they approach this half of the map of Bet Boom. Bet Boom easily prepared to turn that. Hard to believe you win a fight where the Shadow Shaman is the one who just gets coiled and killed and everyone's throwing their spells on him, but then it just means they had nothing else to follow up after. They were really counting on this Shackle into Arrow, and now he's caught again as he tries to control the runes right now. I think he's dead. Oh, he missed the orb damage. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's structures right, are fortified. He'll live. 
And unfortunately, GPK finally gets a, a solid rune here, and it's a shield rune. Not, not what he's hoping for. Yeah, especially, yeah, considering he, he, he hasn't been dying yet, so survivability has not been a problem. 102 on GPK. I'm trying to get some further pressure on the mid. Or in FYR watching FYR. He's got the wards ready to go with if they get a chance at a grab. Dyer's top tower oh, meanwhile, up top, Miro successfully pushing. Has that veil. Lost uh, quite a bit there, you know. Regen down, armor down, attributes down, but, I mean, you're still a, uh, a tanky offlaner, and then, of course, the uh, the build into the Shiva's Guard also pretty brutal now. This is way more expensive. Oh. Have they got the burst? No, not quite. Not without the finger. They need finger to, to have a shot at that. Still cool down for 40 seconds. And Ori also coming in here has the Yasha, so he's a bit speedy, but not speedy enough to put any threat into them. And they do have this ob sentry combo that he's running through right now in the mid, so they, they have good eyes on where FY is going, where Ori's off to. And hey, there's a safety bubble on Tian Ming. They, they look like they're angling for a smoke right now. And there, there it, it is. Goes. I believe was indeed under that, that ward that they had to kind of clip FY stepping out with the smoke. Okay, so. Nobody, who dies from this? I don't think they're, they're not going to find anything. What, there's not even a tower to smoke gank right now. Maybe the oh, maybe the moonlight. Wait, I mean, they, they can maybe wait. burst Nightfall. <laughs> oh, they're going to they're try and go for GPK. Yeah, there's no way. How are you, you going to kill GPK? You have to hit the luckiest arrow. I mean, the most skilled arrow. <laughs> Great sentry coverage there, mid. And now they're pushing mid. Yeah, they're just ready to take the tower here with the metamorphosis on Nightfall. I've got the fortification, but especially with the meta up, there's just no chance of Azure Ray fighting into this sort of push right now. They have to let it go. And low. He's doing his best while this is all happening again. Very similar to last game when he's on the troll. This time it's on the life stealer, so. Kind of similar in terms of farm speed. Doesn't doesn't feel amazing, but even a little bit worse perhaps this time, being a, a life stealer. And he does want that radiance though, which uh, got a pretty substantial buff. To uh, I was not expecting that. I'm not sure why that happened. Five percent extra evasion on talisman for some reason. Uh, so that's cool. Yeah, I think de definitely the right iron for low this game. It's gonna be really nice against the terror blade in the fights. Even a lot of time to focus him down. Yeah, yeah. It'd be very annoying. We're just getting clipped. Can force out bad phase shifts because you have to get your blink back. Yeah, okay, he should be able to get it online at good time as well. Still a good farm once again on low. And we saw what he was able to make at the map last time on his troll. He was farming very, very well. And yeah, he might be on a worse hero, but he's got a power if they ever meet up to. So that can be uh, one way to speed this up here and speaking of speeding up here the bongos all finished for Toronto Tokyo classic crystal maiden item feels good you're slow get faster and nice with T being all those illusions I mean, want to try and get here. do they have no, the damage it's hard oh who's stomp into the silence and the finger and the freezing field that'll certainly do it they drop everything to kill that life stealer and it's definitely worth it that's low gone the radiance farm is going to be slowed down and look at Save having all the confidence in Miro. He purchases his uh, shard. So not going to save up for the blink. Goes right for it. He says, my, my buddy can do the initiating. I want my cool spell as Nightfall denies an arcane rune here. Nobody getting fun runes this game. No fun allowed. Ori with a Manta and a Great Healing Lotus, which is crazy powerful uh, when it's 16 minutes into the game. 400 health and mana. Might as well be a Thunder at this point. Like that's, The spells start to run out of damage, and you pop that thing, can be a free fight win. Now, Moonlight time here for Azure Ray. As Ori looks to lead in from the back lines, trying to get the wrap around onto oh, Batboom. Batboom, they're going to lead in. They're going to try and burst through low before the backup arrives, and they're able to do so. They take out the lifestealer, now Azure Ray turn up for the fight. They'll look to go for save first. Save, he's going to be able to turn with a bit of a mana drain, but he will fall. They get the kill on the lion. Toronto Tokyo's going to go for the TP out. There's nothing to stop him. He'll get away. 
So a trade, the bet boom, absolutely take. They take out the life stealer, they only lose a lion. Oh, that could have been so good for Azure. Like they had the plan, right? They knew what was happening, but unfortunately not able to get the survival there. Uh, the silence is just too fast. And, uh, you know, you don't have any tools against that right now as that life stealer. And Faith Beyond also going the cool item. Orchid first on the Magnus. We're seeing this a lot on the offlaners. If it looks like any decent game for a, uh, an Orchid, people are grabbing it. But GBK, he's in the know. He's already got his Yules ready and we'll go back for the blink. And pretty common thing for Pucks these days not to get the blink in the first two items. You know, we, we got Maelstrom. Sometimes they want to grab depending on the uh, the patch. And, uh, and this Witchblade is really important. So... Just good defensive option here to make sure that uh, he's not going to be uh, free food for the Orchid. Oh. Speaking of free Silence, food. Toronto Toke is able to follow up with a freezing field. Takes down FY. And with Nightfall coming in from the side, they can look towards Orion. Oh, whoa. Okay. Whoa. Oh, he's Dude, still that was dead. So but sick. I, I, that would have been pretty crazy if he was able to live by illusion, uh, ruining himself up to that little spot on the high ground. But uh, the, the coil was there. And uh, he's dead. Uh, another big kill for Bet Boom. They're starting to rule the map right now. 3k lead. And this is something that they weren't able to do last game. Oh, um, oh again? All right, arrow to save. And the burst from the Hoostom. It's enough. I see FY turn up. He's got the Serpents. Drop down on towards GPK. The grabbers are well with the Shackle. Silence to follow up. And indeed, as you mentioned, the Yules is out. GPK is able to remove the Silence. Jump away from it all. He's perfectly fine. And Miro, he's going to jump back in on them. Gets the close in on to Bark. Takes out Magnus. Bet Boom. Continue with the outplays. Azure Ray suffering even harder in the early game this game too than they were in game one. This one is definitely going to be a much more difficult one for them to try and pull back and, and prolong the duration of it. Bet Boom getting quite the lead. Yeah, they just didn't even see low last game. Uh, right? Like, he was just in the jungle doing his thing for about 10, 15 minutes, it felt like. But this time, yep. Low is just being found out everywhere. I mean, he's part of it is that he's more reliant, I would say, on the, the lane creeps, right? Like, he doesn't have a battle fury, so... They just go into the tower. Look at that reach there from save. The stun into the finger. I mean, sure, they lose Miro, but they do not mind at all. Anytime they can kill either Ori or Low, it's completely yeah. worth it for them. Sorry, production's big Ori fans. They didn't want to show you guys when he died again. They want to show the really cool man to high ground play. So just don't worry about that. He died. And again. I think, dude, I think if you're playing against Bet Boom, this line's got to go. Save in both of these games. It's just, you lose count of the number of kills that he sets up with these, uh, these Earth Spikes every single time. And he's blinkless this time, so he's, you know, he's very confident. He just walks up and stuns you, catches you perfectly on the tip. And there's, there's always follow-up. They draft and play around this lion pick just so well. Azure, as, as we see, in the last game, they were able to pull back what was you know, a game that was off to a pretty rough start, but this one, definitely a rougher one. It's not going to be as easy for Low to catch up on farm, as you say. He's been shut down much more this time round. Needs a lot of time with this Radiance and, and the Empower to try and build up farm that's going to be anywhere close to comparative to that of Nightfall, because Nightfall, this game, fantastic spot. He's got the lead by a mile. And 21 minutes in, they can look for the Wisdom Rune, and they can look to take the Tormentor as well from the enemy. There's a smoke coming in from Azure, but these fights, these smokes, they it seems so hard to sort of envision how they can find a good fight off the back of it. They've got to try for it. It's got to be perfect. Anything less than it is not good enough, and it's not even going to come soon enough. The TP out from the whole squad, they're all away. The smoke finds nothing. Oh, that is painful. Right back to their own Tormentor. Easy. Okay. Jeez, grabbing all the wisdom runes here too. All right. So we got uh, Toronto with the shard, Miro with the shard. Wisdom runes all scooped up. This is a solid lead here for Beppo. Devastating, actually. A couple of minutes here for Azure. Uh, all right. Well, you know, to be fair, last game they were in somewhat similar of a predicament where it felt like. They were, they were pretty far behind, and they brought it back, and then unfortunately, they, they couldn't close it out. Can they find a way back into this game? I, I guess it's got to be Faith Beyond, right? We got 
We got Blink. Got Orchid. It's a Magnus. It's got to be your hero. Well, let's see. But there made a bit of magic happen last time, Azure. Can they do it again? I think yeah, Lowe's not going to want to turn up to any fights for a long time. Let's give him space. Bet Boom. I'm probably not going to be allowing that. So I imagine we'll see Bet Boom continue to hunt for action. And Nightfall absolutely ready to turn up to any fight each and each time Metamorphosis is available. GBK wants to keep that streak going with a potential Lincolns here as well. With a FY being the, the only real concern, so he does have that Blink Dagger. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Pretty safe choice here for him, and they're just going back to what was working for them. Pressuring into these towers with TB Illusions and trying to pick off heroes that are on the lanes. Rotate in behind. Nice hack. And there's the jump. I mean, he was gone before you could even see him. Low just completely evaporates. They're going to be able to catch onto the side. Tian Ming as well. They're just not finding the space or position for Low to get farmed this game. It's, it's a completely different story to his game one performance. They just... He's not getting the space and he's not finding the places to be. And, and if he does, bet boom, they find him. Did I miss vision that they had or something? There? That was a crazy hex. I, I feel like that was like, like the, the fastest reaction. Dave was just bloodthirsty. Now, I'm telling you, this lion is, I think it, it, you got to be prepared to play against it. If, you, if you're going up against bet boom in this tournament, saves lion is just doing so much. Fate beyond uh, farming nearby. You're going to see a courier go through. Here's the, the Roche. Damn, he's sticking around. He wants all their gold. He's like, I'm desperate right now. I need everything I can get. And TP on out of here. Does not TP on out of here. I mean, to be fair, it's very unlikely to come back and chase them. under attack. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I wonder if we're going to stick around and try and cut another wave, but it definitely would have been risky. Yeah, I mean, to try and like go back through these neutral camps, though, because like theoretically, they get Roche. You assume they're going to play more on your side of the map, and there might not be anyone down here farming, but Tron Tokyo, after clearing out that there's no Magnus down here, he's the one who gets the farm. Uh, this is the this is what every support hero wants to do right now uh, in all of Dota, is just farm every camp as, uh, as fast as possible, because there's so many camps on the map, Everyone needs to be farmed now. If you're not farmed, you're losing. So make sure you're picking supports that can just kill neutral creeps at this point in the game. Time to get back to the high ground here for Azure Ray because the smoke's out here from Bet Boom. Low. Look through. They see that these camps are empty. Oh, no, they know low. They were... Oh, don't, don't go back. The smoke go dispels. Back. They know he's around. Low. Oh, Why? they've got the Why? silence. They've got him. He's out. Why? Why? He's having Why a rough one, though. What is there to gain out here? I mean, I guess he was just sort of hoping to maybe sort of linger there and just check if the creep wave was going to be free for him to take. But well, it comes to your high ground. It's, it's true. I think Lowe's, he's feeling the pain. He had a... Oh, my goodness. Tian Ming, he's also certainly feeling the pain after a burst like that coming out from Miro. Not quite the game two as your Ray would have hoped for here. It's bet boom. Up to the high ground here. 26 minutes in. He's got the fortification, but as your Ray, can they get any sort of lead in on this? Even if they do, GPK still with many minutes on that Aegis. Can we get Nightfall an RP? basically untouchable at this point. One RP. <laughs> Stuff with the melee like racks. Yeah, they got the one that counts and they'll back off. Top they know they're in full control right now, Bet Boom. And that Lincoln Ori? is out here and an Aegis, so. He's gonna try they and start to something this. here on Ori. He's been caught by the Hex and Mira's back in with the burst. That's Ori dead. Low. I don't think he wants to fight this. He tries to lead him with the rage, but he's gotta run. 
The last bit of the Dream Coil catches him after the rage ends. There's Ooh. an RP onto the two of them. Maybe this is the turnaround. They're looking towards GPK. Look at what's safe. They'll get saved. GPK is up with the Yules. Stuart there for the follow-up lockdown, but the phase shift is back up. Mirror tries oh, to get out, but the Hex is there from FY. He's got the control. GPK's got the orb onto the side. The silence will stop FY from being able to get off any further control onto the box. So GPK is fine. And now they're going to go back in. The Stampede's there. Mirror closes in on towards Bark. They take out Bark. They take out FY. The Hex was out onto Nightfall, but there's no damage to threaten the Terra Blade. Four dead on Azure. The Frostbite onto Low. Rage still on cooldown. It's game over. Over. GG is called Bet Boom. No messing around in this game, too. It was a quick one. Under 28 minutes. Absolutely on fire. And Azure, I, I don't know what was so different about this game, too, Trent, but it really did feel like they were all over the place. They, I guess they were just that much exhausted after that long game one. Yeah, a game that uh, it looked like they had come back and they were they're probably going to win. I mean, it was, it was like 70% chance by, by how they were playing and controlling so much of the map, but that boom, they managed to call it out there with Nero, fantastic plays there on that Mars, the Rapiers, and uh, again into this one, just uh, they really took that momentum, it feels like, and brought into this game because uh, they, they just felt ahead the entire time. And uh, as a Ray could not get into their groove, really. Um, it never really got anything going with like arrow setups necessarily. It just kind of felt like they were always chasing it and struggling to uh, to get back into it right after like minute 10 almost. And also GPK. 10-0-10 10, baby. Top damage. Top player in this one. And, uh, yeah, no doubt about that. And uh, one of the reasons why both Joss, we were sort of saying, you know, we've got to think about the puck. When GPK sees his chance to grab it, he will have a good game. And we see, uh, they, 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 I mean, you know, this game, unfortunately for Azure Ray, they just, there weren't really any moments where they were able to shine at all. This was uh, quite the stomp trend. No, they, they just couldn't go into the lanes. They, they went trying to push it on a tier two, thinking, oh, this is okay. And the ganks were just there. So, and, and that all comes back to the Terror Blade as well, because this hero, he's sending all these illusions. He's helping push these waves into the towers. And that's where you have to respond as Azure Ray. Last game, they weren't forced to respond. They never found low. He, he just jungled the whole time as Strong Warlord. He's chilling, no cares. But with the help of Nightfall on this Terror Blade, he sends out the illusions and pushes it into the towers. Someone has to be there. Lifestealer, a bit more dependent on the lane creeps as well. So he's showing and he just got blown up over and over. I feel like he didn't even use this armlet for combat at, at the start of this game. It was just a, I'm just dead. There, there was no armlet plays. There were no chances. Uh, he was just getting absolutely eviscerated. Well stuff and well played for Bet Boom as Bet Boom will be able to take both victories here today against Azure Ray. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to hop to a short break and then we will be popping back for a, an exclusive winner's interview with one of the players from Bet Boom.
deserves just as much help as Bottom. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we do indeed have a winner's interview uh, coming up. We're now uh, ready for you here. We're going to be uh, getting to speak, I believe, to Miro from Betboot. Hello, Miro. Thank you very much for joining us. And of course, uh, congratulations on the 2-0. And of course, uh, in particular, that fantastic game one. I, I just want to know what kind of goes on with the team comms, you know, in a game like that where you're playing Mars, you're picking up these rapiers. Um, is it, does it sort of become sort of your game to, to make the shot calling because there's so much value on your hero in particular? You know, w what's going on at sort of the 50 to 60 minute mark and that sort of crazy game? Um, I think the first game was uh, uh, kind of rough in the early. Like, uh, they uh, played well and after middle game it was uh, doing the right things and uh, just uh, farming and outscaling them, that's why. Oh, yeah, it was great to watch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys looked great. Uh, you know, talk about, you know, obviously, it was very important for you as the Mars with these rapiers and everything to make these big plays. And I mean, you are, you're still the new guy on the team now. I mean, you've been there for mm -hmm. uh, a month and a bit. Like, how, how has it felt sort of slotting into to this whole team? Like, did you already know most of these guys pretty well? Was it, was it easy to kind of move in with them? Or has it been uh, a lot of work to sort of like feel like you guys are, are all on the same page and playing well together? Mm, I think last month I did a lot of work like with them. Um, mm. I'm getting uh, new things. So they explained to me some some situations in the game, uh, how they see it. And uh, I'm just uh, adapting to them. So like in a yeah. hero pool and uh, even in uh, game uh, game style. I uh, I actually did take a look back. I noticed you've been you've only been on like playing pro Dota since about 2020, but I noticed you've been playing Dota since about 2014. Uh, did you ever think that you would become a, a pro Dota player? Like right away, did you think like this is something I want to do? Because I noticed in some of your games you really liked picking Ursa and buying about four vitality boosters or uh, or point boosters. Like, did, did you ever expect this is where you'd wind up? Mm, I uh, didn't understand the question. Oh, I'm so. sorry. Uh, I saw that you played, uh, you started in 2014, about yes, yes, like, 2014. like 10 years ago playing Dota. Yeah, yeah. Did, uh, I noticed that you used to um, buy four uh, vitality boosters on your mm. Ursas, just like all of us, you know? Mm. Uh, did, did you ever think you would become a, a pro player? Mm, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah. No, that's uh, fine, that's fine. Like uh, I started to play uh, pro pro Dota in uh, like in uh, 2019, I think. Like I was uh, thinking about it only this year, and so mm. I'm just training a lot and uh, became a pro. Very good. And in terms of your recent teams, obviously last year you uh, mm -hmm. played, I think, for about half a year out right, with nine pandas. Is the sort of the vibe and the feeling and the way that the team works very different uh, now in Bet Boom compared to what you experienced in Nine Pandas? Mm. I think uh, in Bet Boom team, uh, I'm doing uh, much work. Uh, like every player in our team uh, talking about Dora more than uh, in Nine Pandas. Like uh, every tournament, uh, we talking about uh, a lot of th things, so we're just uh, working a lot, and uh, it, it did much, much more than uh, a previous team. Okay. 
Okay, well, yeah, definitely seems to be paying off. You guys have had some great results recently. And we will let you head off because we know we've got, you've got more games to prepare for. Thank you very more much work. for joining us, Miro. Really appreciate you. you popping on. Yeah, thank you, Miro. Thank you very much yeah. for the interview. And, uh, and well played today. <laughs> thank you, bye. Yeah, more, more Marses and more Rapiers, please. Thank you very much. Anyway, hell yeah. <laughs> No, thank you very much. Well, that was wonderful. We had Miro, of course, there. Very nice of him to join us for a quick chat. And uh, that is it oh. for that series, Trent. Yeah. I, I'm always so impressed when players have to come in and, you know, not speak in their native language. You did a great job, you know. Miro crushed it, yeah. That, that's so hard. I, I can't yeah. I can't do that, you know. I, I'm a Canadian. I'm supposed to speak French. If I, if I got interviewed by a French couple of casters, I'd have no idea what to no. say. It, it would be bad. Trust me. So uh, very appreciative of him coming in and uh, speaking to us there. Absolutely, Good to yeah. get some insight. Yes, yeah, clearly, as you said, putting in the work and very much putting in the work with BetBoom is looking uh, better than ever on uh, this BetBoom roster. I think we're going to see them uh, continue to do very well in this group stage in the tournament as a whole. And talking about, all, uh, talking about the tournament as a whole, we've got to move on with the show because we have yep. another series ready to go uh, very, very shortly. So don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. It's only going to be a very, very short break. And we're going to be back with Tundra versus Shopify Rebellion. Give us a quick word to sum that one up, Trent. What are we expecting? Uh, the memes, memes. Uh, to yep. Thompson versus Yopage. You know, Thompson, obviously, yep. he went there to see for, for a while, was playing. I'm sure they yeah, were yeah, clashing. Yeah. Now, Yopage coming to Europe, right? Meeting them on, on Thompson's home turf. So we'll see how the matchup goes now. Hell yeah. I mean, I know you guys and girls won't be going anywhere, but I'll say it anyway. Don't go anywhere. Tundra versus Shopify Rebellion coming up next. Thank you. 
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Dream League Season 22 Group Stages. I'm Odie Pixel here with Trent, and we're getting ready for our next series of the day. Apologies for the delays, but the game, the mm. draft, has started, so we're going to be able to hop you in right now. It's Shopify Rebellion versus Tundra. Of course, as I'm sure most of you have known and seen, there have been some last-minute changes. We're not sure why. I'm sure if you check the social medias and stuff, you'll be able to keep yourself up to date what exactly is going on. But Tundra, they are not playing with mind control, and they are playing with Lays, who maybe some of you will know, maybe some of you won't, but Trent, to uh, give uh, our viewers an idea, where may they have seen Lays before? Uh, yeah, you might have seen him. He was most recently playing for a team, Klee, uh, and that was in the EPL, which I believe they won, so played really well there. Uh, was on Navi Jr. a long time ago. I had his Wikipedia open a minute ago, but I don't now. But yeah, pretty sure that's what it was. Uh, but he's a really solid player. I mean, you've probably seen him before. Lots of different, um, uh, like, attempts for, like, open qualifiers and stuff. He's always on some pretty strong stacks, and then he manages to get a team that, like, goes to a couple things, but... Um, hasn't had his chance in like the bigger events, uh, at least not for uh, a longer time. So it will be uh, interesting to see how he performs here. And he's currently tagged up as destroyed, but uh, yep. yeah, you'll be uh, familiar with him for many of you. Okay. All right. And hopping into the game and the draft, we'll just uh, do a quick overview of the team so far. I mean, looking at the, the scores in this group stage at the moment, coming up to this point, what do we have? What's Shopify? We've won three games. They've lost one. And looking at Tundra, they've lost uh, three and they've won one. So the inverse of one another. We'll see if Tundra can catch up uh, to Shopify Rebellion or if Shopify Rebellion can continue to just push themselves towards that, uh, that top part of the, the Group B where they currently sit right now, level with uh, three other teams. So let's see what they can do here today. The draft is flying oh. out in front of us. Uh, what are we getting here, Trent? Any surprises or standard stuff? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's surprising to see a draft this fast. This is crazy. We have no reserve time used by either team. Uh, our, our normal bands are all accounted for here. I mean, that Puck hero we talked about is still out there right now. Uh, but out of the most popular heroes, kind of the, the biggest one to be left in the pool at the moment. And we get an absolute banger of a classic, the Arteezy Sven. Certainly a fan favorite here. No doubt about that. Just got to watch for those trees, you know, get, gets a little bit tough. And then the, uh, the Crystal Main counterpick to the Enchantress. So those earlier rotations uh, of the creeps aren't a major concern. And uh, the interesting thing about CM2, when, when you play this matchup, depending on like where the Ench is playing and stuff, you can often do like a, you know, you could do four CM here or four Techies. Uh, both of them pair pretty nicely with the Centaur War Runner. So Tundra are fairly open here in their, their lane settings. And, and now they're just trying to get this one pick that obviously, you know, the, the bands are going to come out after. So this is either the, we need a safe hero for mid because there's not many left. But in this case, I'd say that the pool's fine. So if they could just go for their carry to carry matchup here. Uh, and they're going to grab there the Alchemist. Yep, get the Alchemist out. Oh, we got to run away here. we got door. Okay, so food being delivered, obviously. Very important. That's the only reason a Dota player gets up from their chair. It's either bathroom or food, so we can make an assumption on that, I'd say. Hmm. I see Thompson's been relegated to the luggage room here, as you can see in the back behind him. So the symbolizing luggage. that he is here to carry the team. Yeah, look, look, all the bags are, are back there. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I've got about three suitcases. Wow, he really is a, he can carry a lot to have that many bags. Now we got final bands. There's uh, Tundra. Still looking, of course, towards uh, Topson's hero. And Shopify Rebellion. Playing themselves, needing that. Uh, I, I imagine it will be the offlane, right? What Yo Page will take the Pango mid. Or is Presumably, like playing some offlane Pango yeah. recently. Uh, I mean, the hero's okay. We've seen some people try and make it work offlane, but it, yeah. it is tenth pick, right? So with that final last pick, that is a situation where you're most often going to see the offlane Pango. Is when someone's like, ah, I can make this work because of you know this situation. So if you if the counter pick mid is that good, it can be worth sending the Pango to the offlane for sure. They're just taking their time here, really considering this last potential Thompson hero. What, what's he been up to lately in the pub? I mean, Thompson's uh, he could be up to <laughs> pubs are, are so enjoyable. You like you just go through what he's been playing. And you're like, okay, he's played ten matches of Oracle. Okay, all right, calm down. In the last eight days, that's his most played hero. Forty uh, I mean, percent that, win that's rate. That's available. It's yeah. not a bad Oracle game. <laughs> you know? It's a bit spicy. I, I'm down I for say. that. <laughs> Let's give us some uh, Oracle mid. 
I don't know if you could do that without it being a counter pick, though, because like he has to he has to go first, you know. Sure. Thompson doesn't like to play a lot of the safer mids, though. Yeah, he don't care if he wants to play Oracle. He'll play Oracle. He, yeah, you put put whatever you want against a mid. He doesn't mind. Uh, that's actually true. You're not wrong. There. I mean, good thing they used. Uh, or rather, they didn't use very much of their reserve time early on because they got a ton right now for Shopify to try and set up this perfect game-winning last pick. That's an important series. Tundra at the bottom of the group right now. At least level, it, the group, of course, it perfectly split itself. The top four teams went, you know, they they won a game, they draw, drew, uh, drew a game, and then they drew a series, and then the bottom four drew a series and lost a series. Uh, let's take a look at the Wyvern. That's a great ban. Uh, that hero, definitely still strong. Uh, like, off lane potential is there, mid potential is there. So, uh, I think that's a, a perfect snipe for a player like Thompson, where he, he would have really liked to grab that. I feel like he might go Zeus. It's Thompson. I don't know. I feel like kind of looks okay here. Good spacing. Yeah, always a fan of kind of the Zeus techies. Crazy amounts of burst. Kill any of these heroes. Even the Sven early on. Turn out the Get Kunkka. The... Oh, so Ooh, it's going to be... Draw. So this is going to be all the, the mid out. Could be, or could be mid troll. There's no reason why you can't just do that. I mean, I mean uh, all right. Yeah. I okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll see, see what we're stopping you, right? Yeah. Which way they want to flex that around? Exciting stuff. And then Shopify. So we do imagine it's going to be their off laner, mm, unless Sableye wants to take the Pango. Yeah, they already banned out that Kunkka. Just, uh, of course, could flex to mid as well, but solid option versus the Centaur Warrunner. We talked about that last time, where you might get these X marks so that the Stampede isn't this big save, so they don't have to worry about that. Uh, what offlane heroes are left? I mean, the, the Tide is still in there. There's like these larger heroes we sometimes see versus the Troll, if it's going to be the Alk mid, since you can get a, uh, a Dispel off there with the Kraken, maybe, can, can sometimes save you. Oh, the Axe. Oh, the axe. Oh, yeah. See you on a battle trance. Well, I'll chop your yeah. head off. That's what he says. He's ready to do some dunking here. This is the uh, the go-to pub counterpick, but not something we see very yep. often in pros, even though we've been seeing a lot of Troll Warlord over the past couple of months. Compared to like previous years, the hero's kind of fallen off a little bit. Uh, and uh, whenever he does pop up in these little flavor of the month kind of tournament things, we haven't seen the axe counterpick because overall the hero has still looked, I would say, relatively weak. Um, but, you know, he's he's on the rise now. And uh, other offlaners have been nerfed. Of course, he still has Berserker's Gall. It's an amazing spell. If you, if you hit the good calls, you can definitely win the game. Not for sure. Yeah, Sableye has potential for some big plays this game. Let's see if he can pull them off. It's going to be exciting to see. Shopify Rebellion against Tundra. I say Tundra playing with a stand-in. We'll see what Lays is able to bring. Just, I've not seen him playing a long time, but you... You, you remember him back in the day and you think he uh, did indeed show some promise when you saw him? Oh, yeah, 100%. And uh, yeah. I, again, he's recently been playing a lot in terms of like these other like tier two, tier three tournaments and and winning some of those. So, I mean, that's that's the proving grounds where you get your shot. And uh, he is here as presumably just a stand in. Not, nothing is guaranteed. As far as we know. This. Yep. Yeah. The, 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 you know, this could this isn't a permanent thing, but. Uh, certainly on short notice, presumably, uh, having him come in like this is super solid. I, I think that he's someone who's very well practiced right now, has been gaming a lot, so... And you give him Centaur Warrunner. So. Oh, so you give <laughs> him a solid hero, right? This yeah. is uh, a good I hero. that to, was very intentional. Yeah. Like, if you have, like, your, your regular offlaner or something here, yeah, you, you got a little more play in the draft, some other things are more important, but when you have a stand in this situation, and with it being the offlane too, you just want to get them a solid hero that everyone knows is kind of broken right now, and you don't have to worry about him too much. And I think they've done a good job by giving him the Centaur. Let's have a look as we get ourselves loaded into this first game. I mean, overall then, did you have a, a draft here that you feel has sort of just played itself out a little nicer in the way that's been picked and counterpicked? Uh, I mean, we got Troll again. I'm not gonna lie. We, sure, we you're not a fan troll of the troll. Last series, you know, I think having another troll game and also deal with the battle, tra uh, the battle trance into the uh, the culling blade is a bit worrisome. Uh, 
and I like the, I love Edge. I, I think Edge is still an incredible hero. We'll see if the Crystal Maiden can try and stymie that a little bit and slow down that early pressure, but I feel like much like Chen is banned every single game, I think Edge can, can reach a, you know, a fraction of his power uh, with the enchant, but it's power nonetheless. I mean, those kobolds, they got buffed. All right, we got to watch out here. So I, I definitely like Shopify's a little bit more, I'd say. Well, let's see if they can uh, do it. Continue that good set of wins they've been picking up so far, Shopify. Three and one right now in the game score. Let's see which team wants to try for, for maybe some first blood action. The other core just checking out to see if the ward gets placed right now. Oh, see so what sort of a time they have in the mid lane here. I mean, Topson on his alchemist against Jopaj's Pangalir. Is this does the Alc do all right in this situation because of the Asus brand the ability to push out the wave, or can this be a tricky matchup for him? Do you think against the Pango? Uh, I'm definitely expecting more of just the push it out, you know? Yep. I'm an alchemist. Uh, Uncivil Concoction is pretty ridiculous as well. That that spell is still very nice. For, I mean, we've, we've seen all this play. Like, we don't get too many mid alks anymore, but uh, one of the more recent innovations, I would say, about Alchemist, of course, is this ability to just, like, use your Concoction while you're farming and, and just, spam, you know, just self-implode. So it's, uh, I don't know, he's a fun guy to watch. He's going to be utilizing that, I'm sure, for kind of like a DK, right? Where you're securing lasses and stuff. You can just like chuck out a stun every once in a while. He's going to be mad chilling. First wave, yeah, just seeing the punches straight from Topson with that acid spray. It's a lot of damage for the Pango early on to take. Looking at some of these side lanes. I mean, whilst there may be issues for pure down the line in terms of playing the troll into the, the axe, I think the, the laning phase you should be pretty okay with, right? I mean, pure and white mon on this troll CM combo, they themselves might be able to go aggressive for some action against Teal, the Corn and Saberlight. And likewise, though, of course, the uh, we talked about before with that Earth Spike, like, I don't know, you're kind of slow on CM. If you utilize a Crystal Nova, you try to go aggressive and you get caught by an Earth Spike. Between a Battle Hunger and a uh, couple of spins there, you might go down, but. I'm on trying to prep for that by just getting the damage out on Teolico right now, who does go for a, a pull away here. Grabbing those back. Small camp is available for Whitemon as well here. And now the block does come out from Whitemon as he takes care of that sentry. Um, Thompson continues to have just a slight edge here in the mid. Push the wave and just make it a bit more difficult for Yopaj on the early levels to clear those waves up. And down on the bottom side of the map, Arteezy on the Sven, a classic. Good old school one, good to always to see a patch where is able to bring his Sven into action. Up against the Centaur Techies lane. At least as the Sven, you're pretty beefy, unlikely to get burst. Especially with the fact that you have the Enchantress as well, ready to help out and hold them back. Yeah, at the uh, same time though, hard to uh, to get that kill, yeah. as. Centaur not a very easy hero to bully for an inch. Uh, probably gonna be looking more towards like some twin gate plays. Potentially, if she gets a really good creep, you might be able to get a chase down with the help of a storm hammer. So maybe we'll see that come into play. I mean, there's a ghost available. Also, yeah, pretty solid versus the techies to like maybe force a blast off. But for now, we're just concerned about last hits. And uh, still no first blood on the table quite yet. I say that as the old core is getting very low up top, but as the team. I mean, I feel like yeah, this top lane is definitely where somebody's going to take the the first blood. Biggest kill, kill potential from both sides up here. I've oversteps the mark too much. We'll get punished. Now mid lane, if someone dies here, someone really messed up. I'm sure Yopaj is going to take a bit of har harassment from Topson with this acid spray constantly pushing in, but with the shield crash and swashbuckle, he should always be able to save himself and keep himself fine. And then bottom lane, likewise, I, I just can't imagine the burst from Centaur Techies is going to be enough to kill this Sven at these early levels. Arteezy should be fine. Yeah. yeah top anything, lane it would be like is where blood is going to get maybe. spilled. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Maybe if Kirat gets something good going. That's the only way that someone's going to die, I think, in all three yeah. lanes. I'm going to have a, a first blood for quite a while. See, I was trying to see if that curse would work, but everyone's still alive, so I guess not. Oh, so how you there. doing, chat? You know, you guys, you guys having a good day here? 
Oh, that courier's not having a good day. Oh, oh there you go. Yeah. The courier gets killed, at least. A little bit of action there coming out from 9 class. So, all of this is uh, giving RTZ pretty good space. You know, he's continues to freely farm down here. 77 for Lays. You know, it's just a trade of farm between the two. And neither of them find a position to go for any sort of early action. And nobody, nobody out of all the cores is getting zoned out of the lanes. Everybody's getting their farm on. That's the pretty good news for an axe, you know. This is one of those heroes where you can have some problems depending on the, the laning matchup. Obviously, I don't know, he's a lot better than he used to be for a lot of these situations, but like now he's in behind the tower, waves are coming through. He's level three with two in the spin, so he feels fine. The next goal, hopefully, would be to get some stacks for him, honestly. Oh, mid! Right. That's the first blood! Topson with the outplay. It's enough. He catches him. He wasn't able to get out. That is painful. Just Topson things. That is, uh, yeah, Yo Patch is not going to be feeling too great about that. That is quite the first blood solo kill to be getting here as the alchemist. Topson. I mean, if, if you look, too, like, they both did almost the same amount of damage. It was, like, almost 900 damage each to each other. But it's one of those situations, too, where when you throw this acid spray in combination with the concoction, it, it's quite a bit of damage. Yeah, that's that's a bad news for Jobaj here. Here's the replay, and yeah, there he is, caught inside that acid spray. You see the big boost in the damage, and he just thought he had enough, thought he could get the W and Top grab the kill for himself. But at the same time... Yeah, to get Saber Light. He was trying to kind of pull the creep wave and farm it beyond the tower, but as I say, with Troll and CM, it's these heroes, they can go for you. They're able to chase him out, take him down. Mm -hmm. A couple of kills already now in the early game here for Tundra to start things off. Looking at the mid again. Topson, He's cooking up a concoction. The connection is here. there. See if Kit Rack's able to help turn this one around. Topson's able to put the chemical rage. Swashbuckle out into two of them. Yo Patch. He's got the six. He's got the rolling thunder. Comes crashing across over nice. towards Topson. They turn it around. They take down Topson. And with Arteezy also rotating over from the bottom lane, they're able to pick up two here. Yeah, so they get yeah, Topson and also able to take down nine oh, on the And he saves the regen rune up top too. Tealacor guards it from White Mon, and that means Yopash gets to bottle that up. He needs that so bad. After dying and then getting this return kill, that's going to feel so nice. Now, what doesn't feel nice, though, is they have to watch Arteezy take one of their stacks. Stack. Yeah. He's a bit hesitant about going for the last creep because TP's are coming in. He's got to start bailing out of this one, and he'll manage to do so. A nice little bit of bonus farm for Arteezy picked up from the enemy triangle. Top lane pure. He's been left on his own. They're holding on to the stun. It's not enough damage. Pure's going to be fine. TP backup comes in. Steal the corner stable. Like they've got a split. Yeah, still has quite a few raindrops there to help out as well. Difficult for them to whittle him away here with these spells. But we finally find our action here as we've caught up to five kills by seven minutes. Oh, and they want another one on the saber light. I think he's going down again. Maybe he's got the stick charge. He's trying to get a bit of extra armor here from the cool. It won't save him. Goes down again. Yo Patch turns up. But 9 class is also here, so Yo Patch has to be a bit careful about how he goes about pushing for a kill. He's got Theo Lacour by his side, but not soon enough that they're able to punish them. Pure's able to back off, get under the tower, should be able to cleanly get towards his level 6 now with these couple of waves pushing in. That's just some good kills for the troll to get involved in early. Saberlight having a bit of a rough start after kind of a first few five minutes of free farm on the axe. Two deaths back to back now. And you get a, a nice play there from Yo Patch, because... You know, with the changes of Shieldcrash now being a barrier, he just gets to use his regen in the middle of that. They weren't able to cancel it either, despite him taking a few hits. So, gets the full value as he walks back to the mid lane. The other core, he's got that long stun. Oh, they're going to try for Topson. They've got him in a good spot here. Around the steps where Yopash can get bounce after bounce. The Stampede oh, will come into nice play, though. Timing. It's going to give a chance for Topson to get on the retreat. Yopash jumps in with a shield crash, swashbuckle as well, but Topson with the chemical rage. He's going to be fine. In fact, he's thinking about potentially turning this one around. He goes in with the concoction on towards Yopash. Jump forward with the blast up from nine class. The disarms out onto Yopash. He's not enough damage to kill him straight up, but here's the further back. A white one's in with a frostbite. Double edge from Lays. They take Yopash down. Topson, oh, now stay see if he can chase him for more. Pure. The whole gang's here. Tundra's ready to run them down one by one. Saberlight, he's going to go down once again. Another kill for Tundra, 6-2 to two now. 2k lead. Man, that was fantastic play from Laze on that stampede because he, he waited for the perfect time where he could stop the chain stun. If he does it too early there, when he's caught a little bit closer in between this uh, fjord of the, the river, he wouldn't be able to get out of there, but really nicely played. They turn it around. Dilcor will survive this. Has the stick here too. 
Topson, he's got he's got alt again. Yeah, it just came back off cooldown. So Topson's ready to go for another round. He's got the concussion cooking up. See if he's able to get it out in time. Throw it off the way of Yo Page. Further TP's coming in. Saberlight coming over towards the mid lane to just try and scare Tundra off. Doesn't want Tundra to continue to get away with this aggression that they're bringing around the mid lane. And uh, I think the only person who didn't join that was Arteezy. As he uh, was stalwart at staying down bottom, farming up some neutrals and now catching the wave at his tower. As he tries to catch back up towards Pure, and then of course Thompson being on the Alchemist. There's always going to be a little bit ahead here. Stun hits on the lies of the wraparound here. Lay's going Let's down. See if they can get it. They've got good control here. Into the hex, and indeed. Ooh! Oh. Is it? No! Oh. He's getting oh. out! He's still got a stampede! Oh. There it is! Oh. He's out of there! They couldn't get him! That was a good choice thing to go for that, because the Earth Spike was coming back, and that thing still has the distance. Uh, Saber Light up top now. To level five. I mean, they can keep their distance here. Pure can stand at range. A few more axes, not enough to bring down Saberlight, but still to keep him in a pretty, like, painful position. This is not an easy game for Saberlight to get himself into now with the back-to-back -back deaths that he's, has been occurring. It's going to take quite the recovery from this axe. And not a hero that, you know, not one of those offlaners that feels good to be playing from behind. Oh, and again, this ward once more. Just gonna let them see that someone is messing with their stacks here. Can they punish this time as Thompson to get the haste rune up top? They're not gonna be able to get a good use out of it here. And Radiance I mean, they're really doing a great job of controlling these runes too. Is Ooh. Ooh, Saber Light? It's a, it's a decent call, but uh, nothing to follow it up. But uh, I mean, they need these runes for Yopaj. Pangalier is a, a great hero with the runes. It helps him get into position for the Rolling Thunder. You can make use of just like DDs and everything, of course, because he's relatively tanky. You can hop in there and get some right clicks off but they're not getting the runes. Your axe is behind, and you have a Sven who just wants to farm. So you have this Ench, but it feels like they can't get like that full aggression that they want, because she doesn't have a great oh, core to pair with right now. See if they can get Lays this time round. I, I don't know if they can. He's holding on with the Hoostom. He's able to get the Stun onto Yopaj. Swashbuckle oh, Impetus. <laughs> That'll do it. My goodness, they needed that. They've tried a couple of times now to bring Lays down. This time, they will manage it with the three of them. And they're going to come back up here again and see that, like, there, there's another stack here. Those Ancients are triple stacked right there as well. I, that That's a big bounty. All right, Arteezy has popped the ulti. Are we playing over here? Is Yopaj going to come over with an ulti? Are we feeling brave? I mean, they have the Observer. But not sure I, I don't think now's the risky. time. Yeah, they no. can't step up there. I'll tell you, who wants those? It's, uh, it's Saberlight, man. You know, he, he does not have the gold right now. There you go. He's managed to dig up a cobalt. <laughs> okay, there we go. Yeah, game's that that, That's the start of his recovery. Get that aura. I mean, he's dug it up, but now he's got to walk all the way to lane to him. You know, he just wants his, to give him some money. Help him out a bit. Oh, over the mid. Oh, deny the DD. But they may... Can they catch him? No, they can't. He's speaking. He's out of it with a pig pole. Almost into a pair of treads there as well here from Kitrax, so. We're catching up to Saberlight here pretty soon on the old net worth if he doesn't find something. And now stack time here for Thompson. Now let's clear out the Ancients. We'll put him very close to pretty much having the Radiance. Gold available. Question is, what's Shopify's next move going to be? I mean, Yopash, he's, yeah, we've got the full Diffusal Blade, so real sort of spike up in the, the power that he offers when he goes for these plays, and they'll look to use it straight away. Smoke up here for him and the other court. It's a hard um, game for a Pango, though, because usually you rely on the Inhibit, but they have the Stampede, so... I mean, they might not pop it for something like a CM, but if you go for a bigger kill, the Stampede's going to be there. So you need to find this Chain Stun into the Rolling Thunder, and when you come up north like this, there's not the most things to bounce on. I mean, they won't, but yeah. he's getting closer to the wall. Well. He's just going to go into the trees and TP out. He's away from the four of them. The, the, the wolves they found him, but they didn't. It, <laughs> including Arteezy, and they, they don't find him. He's out. All right. And uh, Kitrack, at least, still holding mid here. They're not going to transition to an immediate push. But at the same time, Thompson wipes up that ancient stack and gets the Radiance. Oh, look at this as well. Now Tundra know that Shopify went for that sort of move up top. They want to try and use that to their advantage and look to fight back themselves. Maybe at a point where, you know, Shopify start to split up. Yeah, they're, they're trying to bait Thompson. getting a kill. I, I think they were Shopify. hoping they were going to stick around. 
Yeah, Shopify made the right call though. As soon as the play doesn't work out, the tower's gone, they split out of there. They don't leave themselves hanging around just in case this sort of move was to come in from Tundra. Oh, look at Saberlight though. Big stack done up as they're coming in here. This oh, is his recovery. Good. Leave him alone. Oh no, he needs these stacks. Let oh, the man farm. They're not going to. He's dead and so is Ancients. As pure on a killing spree. Tundra, they get into that ancient area at just the right time and continue to make sure that Saberlight is having a very painful game. 0-4-0. Zero, zero, and uh, no blink dagger in sight. Still 1,400 or so gold away from it. That ward minutes. from White Mon up on the pillar, right? They, they saw it all go down, so tip your support. Thank you very much, White Mon. That is true pain. And, I mean, that's just, uh, like, playing off the state of the game. Like, you know that's what the Axe has to do. He has no other choice. The top lane's gone poorly. He lost his tower fast. He's not going to get that, like, forward pressure where you're playing in the dire jungle. So where, where's every Axe going to go? They're, they're going to play on those Ancients, so you get the ward down. I mean, they still haven't got their Wisdom Rune right now for Shopify as well. Okay, we got to get a, a boost here. Get some levels, get some power here. And it is only a 4k lead, and it's an ALK lineup, so it's not the worst situation right now, but you're, ju you're just seeing this Radiant ALK grabbing these neutral camps, and you're just thinking, when does this turn around for Shopify? What, what does that look like? And uh, I don't know if I have a great answer for you. Uh, it's going to be some sort of five-man call into a five-man Storm Hammer and a five-man God Strength cleave hit from RTZ. You know, that's what we're going to be looking for. Just like they drew it up. All right. yeah. Perfect. That's I mean, what they're the going to be going for here. Uh, the Blink will have to come out from Saberlight. He's at 1,300 gold. The Blink potentially from Theolacor. He's at 1,700 gold in, in a second here. So they're, they're trying to find these turnaround items. And at the same time, we obviously already saw one Troll Warlord game today where he did struggle. But that was versus the Medusa, and the Stone Gaze was really given a hard time. Troll versus Sven, I would say, is quite a different story. Sven wants to turn and face, and that's pretty bad versus a Troll, obviously. Um, but, like, missed chances and whatnot. Oh, bottom. Well, also dealing with Radiance. Lays, he's in with the setup. The Who's Stomp into the Stampede Slow. They're going for Arteezy. They've got Concoction ready to throw. Thompson's able to get it out on towards him. Jump forward with a blast off. Arteezy's dead. Not looking good. And that is the Techie Shard now flying out on the Courier. Purchased up here from 9 class. One of the best shards in the entire game. Particularly when you have someone like an Alchemist. Because he's going to get this early blink. He's going to hop in. And he's going to be disarming. Like, what? It, Sven just will not do anything. A little bit of a pause here. But, uh, yeah, very, very good start for Tundra. Of course, some of that gold lead a little bit inflated due to the Alchemist, but it's not like Topson's doing nothing with it. You know, this is a very involved no. Alchemist. Topson is getting a lot done, turning up to action after action, 2 1 and 4. <laughs> Playing exactly what you would want to see when you, the Alchemist goes to that mid lane. He's, he's been everywhere and in pretty much every fight. Yeah, I think uh, new Alk is a hero that... I mean, we still kind of hate on Alk a little bit, I think, because we, we have these memories of like, oh, he just goes in the jungle and gets super farmed and rich, but yeah, they're way more active now. Like, the Blink Dagger comes out pretty fast. It's generally like Radiance BKB or Radiance BKB Blink, if you, you can't, or sorry, Radiance Blink. Uh, and that Blink's out now. He wants to be aggressive. I'm actually surprised this hero's not played more in, in pubs. I feel like he gets free gold. Does, doesn't this seem like a hero everyone would want to play? What is it that stops people from wanting to be Alchemist? Don't, I thought all carry players just liked getting more gold. Why is he the 89th most popular hero in Dota 2? Yeah, that is oh, just, surprising that he's that low down. I mean, I he, definitely, if Topson keeps bringing it out on the mid and this becomes a thing, you know, Topson is a bit of a trendsetter, so I, yeah, I'd imagine true. to see those numbers rise after a good few Topson mid-out performances coming out here. It's funny, of. he sold the blink. He, he actually pivoted. He went for the Sanj instead with the buffs. He wants that stash resistance. He's gonna go for an S and Y. He thinks like, you know, I don't need to blink fight right now. Oh, it's easy. I, I want to farm too. Take it. Ooh, good storm hammer. He's able to get the stun off to make sure that there's not gonna be a long duration of freezing field coming down upon him. They're considering going for him underneath the tower. Team is coming in. Thompson might still get him. Dude, the corrosive. He's just beating him down underneath the tower with the burn of the radiance. Arteezy goes down. At the same time, they are able to make the play top to take out pure in return. So both teams able to take out the enemy carries. So Shopify Rebellion this time around, able to find that sort of a trade. Deal the call, able to TP out. So they get the one for one across the map. A carry for a carry. And that will technically favor the team that's behind. 
So, somewhat good news for Shopify, but at the same time, it kind of feels like Tundra have two carries in the Alk and the Troll Warlord, but for Shopify, they really just need like this spend to, to get huge and be that uh, that big damaging for us, because Pango's a hero that uh, tends to have like volleys of damage, you know, every eight seconds. You have these swashbuckles, but he's not as consistent as the output you can get from a Troll and an Alk, who can just jump on the target and the target will die. You know, sometimes you're just dealing with spell cooldowns, and, and that's all it is um, for a Pango. <laughs> Dilcar has been constantly managing him this game as well, really trying to keep him up and active on the map, uh, which was really helpful when he was missing out on a lot of the runes, but this time he's holding that arcane rune. Great item for Pango. We're talking about how much he relies on these cooldowns and these team fights. So if there was a desperation revenge fight that you were going to go for with an axe, blink dagger, and maybe a smoke, I feel like that time is now. I saw what they got coming out in the couriers. Yeah, they do. Oh. Yeah, smoke on Theo. They just watch him run away, though. They just see Tofsen zooming away on this ward that they have down bottom. They're going to know where he's farming. But they got to make a call if they want to go for something. And it looks like they're, they're choosing to play defensively instead. Yeah, Sibylet's going to TP over towards the mid to join them immediately. And uh, so it's actually going to be the jump from Lays first. He gets him with a two man. Who stopped the blast off the disarm? Big call. Over Joe Page. Joe Page turns with the Rolling Thunder. I mean, the call grabs them, but the damage is just not there from the side of Shopify Rebellion. As soon as he jumps and gets the call, he's dead on the axe. Sableye's out of the game. Yo, Page is getting dopey on the tier twos. Toxin. Oh, he's coming. Oh, he's, he's coming. going for. Oh, okay. He's holding back. He's holding <laughs> back from that one. A little bit of mercy there from Topson. Radiance middle tower is under attack. They take the two of them, Radiance and yeah, not the... I mean, this is what happens, right, when you get behind on the axe. You get your blink, you get the blade mail, but you're jumping in at 19 minutes in. You're jumping into your own death at this point with how far the enemy is. See if they can get tops in it. The tower's gone. He's just going to go for the TP out, but the other core's there. To put a stop to it, they'll bring Topson down. Yo, Padge, to get the kill. <laughs> All right, getting one back here. Very much needed. They, they just got to get some, like, morale boost. A little bit of momentum going on their side. It probably feels worse than it is. Because, like, we, we can look. It's a 6k lead. It's 20 minutes. It's an alchemist. It's actually not that bad. But I feel like if you're playing in this game, it's felt worse. Like, I feel like Saber Lights just kind of, like, moping around a little bit. Like, oh, wait, look at this call I just hit. And nobody died, you know? That doesn't feel great. But... If they can keep finding this action, if, if they could just get some like deeper vision too, I, I think that would be a huge one for them because they, they need pickoffs right now. They got to make some space for this spin. They need to find a way to enable this axe, and that's probably going to come from some forward vision. You can use edge summons to try and get a little bit of that, but ideally we got to get some wards down over there. Oh, they're taking the twin gate towards top. Now see lays. Gonna try and start something, but he immediately pops Stampede. And as soon as their sort of presence is known, he's out of there and Shopify won't get anything with this. It's pure no just gonna go do to the found. Tormentor here, I think. Yeah, he's got his ulti, so who's getting the shard? Another thing that we did, we didn't really talk about that much when it comes to the troll, especially the pick this game, but this is something that we're seeing often. This is one of the reasons why TA came into flavor when she did was the ability to just like freely do the Tormentor. Um, it's very beneficial to your team, especially when your supports pick up early shards. So because the techies purchase one, they win the coin flip, they get the shard onto the uh, Centaur Warrunner instead. Pretty helpful. As much as I love the Crystal Clone. Likewise, though. Shared for the Radiant. What do we got? <laughs> the Olegor gets it with, with the dunk. Yeah. I mean, they, they kind of needed to as well. They were running out of the damage, really, to burst it. So dunk is out for uh, 70 or so seconds. But they get the Torment. Shard is there. And the hero they would have wanted, I would say, out of the two, right? I'd rather have the Lion than the Inch, as cool as Sprunk is. But we all, we all know that Lion is uh, the big Shard here. All right, so the Echo Saber returns here with the BKB. And there, TZ, he's ready for that big fight. Sure, he's not the highest net worth, but he's got the, the magic trio of items that says that if Sven plays his cards right, the fight is yours. Doesn't have the Blink Dagger, so he's still dependent on his allies for sure, but he's got Axe Call, he's got Lion Blink, and then he's got himself Pango with the roll. So like, if someone gets locked down, they should stay locked down. Uh, but they're going to have to stay locked out, obviously, because they have the Centaur War Runner. So the chain stun is incredibly important right now from Shopify. Or they're oh, going to be stampeded right out of there. Here's the smoke on smoke. 
somebody's gonna die. Especially if you're smoking. I mean, that's that's just hazardous. Don't that's smoke. True. All right, put them away. Smoking kills. Especially in Dota. Roche knows that. Oh, no, not Roche. Leave him alone. I mean, do they do Roche quick enough? I don't know if they do. It's not it's super pretty quick. Pretty slow. I mean, they have Stampede it's too. I don't, I don't know if they can get away with this Shopify. Tundra's on the way over. Oh, this does not look good. Yeah, they can't right. commit for the Roshan. Reset, They're gonna get out. There's gonna be the jump here. Khalees able to find the setup onto Kibrak. They'll look for the Enchantress first. Stabilize him with the call. He's caught the two of them. He's caught the troll, but he's dead. Pure's got the BKB in the battle chance. He's ready to take down Arteezy. Arteezy's gone as well. As Tundra more than happy to bring the fight to Shopify around the Roshan pit. They kill off the four of them. They'll kill off the Roshan. That, I would say, was not the game-winning moment they were hoping for. Uh, I mean, that, that, that's an example of a fight where Troll just has nothing to worry about. He just pops the BKB, he swings, the axe goes down early, so some freedom there for the Battle Trance. Doesn't have to be super concerned. There was a, an amazing uh, Techie Shard in there as well. Forces the BKB out immediately from the Fed, or else uh, he's not going to be swinging for too long there. And they just get popped and... No real opportunities for Shopify to do much of anything in that one. And now there's even a four staff he's to deal with from Whitemont. So drums, stampede, four staff. It's going to be very hard for RTC to stick on them if they don't have perfect chain stuns. It's just not an easy game to play from this sort of position with the heroes they have. You now Axe and Sven playing from behind, it it just feels super tough. Ooh, Jump everyone's... onto Saber like bottom, he's dead again. Slowly but surely. Thompson, it's, he'll take uh, the kill. Also time to count your Gossamer capes here, right? I mean, we're versus a Sven. It looks like they only got one on Alk though, so not, not super lucky. Thompson. He's found Kitrak. <laughs> Very slow, but possibly painful death. No, he's got uh, the Kitrak might be able to run. What a hero. He's burning. Oh, he's dead. He gets Thompson. out of there with Sprank, though. Uh, hey, true. That's <laughs> maybe one of those situations yeah, where he gets the high ground you know. Uh. I don't know. What, what, what is the comeback plan here for Shopify? I, it's hard to see it at the moment because you know, Thompson and the team, Tundra, they're just that far ahead, Trent. 16k lead. He needs uh, like a saber light. That's true. You know, need one of those. Uh, it doesn't have the same sort of ring. Uh, it doesn't, it. does it? Yeah, maybe for uh, good reason. <laughs> That's been a tough one for them here. Yeah, pure. It's just massive. What's he got coming out next? Is that a full... Yeah, it's the, it's the Mjolnir done. It's got the Mjolnir complete. I don't know how they deal with this troll right now. Troll in such a prime position. Topson basically unkillable. And he's going to get the jump. Saber light. He just wants to farm some ancients. I think he at least got a couple of them with the spin. <laughs> but once again... Killed off. I mean, that kit rack. It's just all over the place right now for Shopify Rebellion. This is uh, one of those painful, painful crumbling moments where. What, what do you do, Trent? It's a what? It's a what do you do kind of situation for them. Uh, it is indeed. It's a uh, think about. Uh Maybe not next game necessarily, but you might be thinking about late game. You might be thinking like, we got to draw this out somehow. And oh, we got ourselves another. Oh, look at this. Running yeah. around now for pure. Yeah, yeah. Had a few of these today. <laughs> it's back in full force. Now, look at him the original cause the of place. this. Was it like if you got stunned during a movement spell, this would happen a lot. Like you have having to snap fire during like cookies and stuff. She was always was one that snap, was. It was a snap fire thing originally, wasn't it? Yeah. And I'm trying to think what it has be, been this time. Radiance it's got to be the new patch because this is we already had a life stealer and now a troll too. I feel like it's, it's lion stun that's doing it, isn't it? Ooh, was it last game? It, it was a life stealer against a lion. And, and, and it is movement, movement, right? Yeah, that could be it. Well, Topson getting richer and richer here. Farming the enemy area of the map. 21k net worth gold. He'll look to treat himself towards an AC as his next item. Scanning. Saber like using that new and improved bull whip here. Get away as fast as possible. It has not brought out the Spirit Breakers yet, though. I, I know everyone was pretty excited, obviously. Great item for Spirit Breaker now. Very cool. You can just be charging and whipping yourself for bonus damage. But Saber like, Oh, is he going to get away? 
Oh, no, don't Ooh. go that way. Don't oh. go that way. Oh, he's great with the bling. <laughs> All right, that was thick. Oh, yeah, this point, Tundra's just running wherever they want. Yeah, well, don't worry. Arteezy safely farming up north here in the tundras of his homeland of Canada. He hits creeps far away from the enemy. What's he going for? I did have the blink queued up. I think we just changed it and wants to go for the agonims instead. Yeah, let's wants to just try and get that ags done. You can uh, dispel the techies buff that's on people. Although then it explodes, so still an issue. Uh, Saber light. They see him. Oh, maybe not. He's in the trees. Do they see him there? Oh my goodness, they don't. What? He's lucky to get out that time, Saber Light. He'll live this one. Oh, maybe even pick up a kill? Can these these two probably just want to get out of here immediately because the rest of Tundra are running over here. Yo, Pash and Theo Lacor, they need to get out. They'll be able to split. Theo Lacor heads out to the corner of the map. He should be fine. The both of them, they'll manage to escape. A little cheeky little pick off and a cheeky little retreat. Oh, these are the exact kind of plays you got to make if you want any hope of winning this. Thompson's feeling feisty. He blinks oh. in mid. Pure's here to help. He's ready with the follow-up damage. That's the dead Pango. That's you. Distill to your essence. All right. Oh, no, no. okay. They get another one. Okay. Nice. A freebie here for RTZ. Uh, that's probably going to put him pretty close to the Aghanims. Yeah, okay, so we've got the Ags done. We'll see what he goes for next. Yeah, he disassembled the Echo Saber so he could get that Ags done uh, as soon he as does. possible. He does. I have the Vindigator's Axe, too. Obviously a pretty great item when it comes to yeah, Axe Madness. Lovely neutral. And in the mid, he needs everything he can get. Kit Rack, very determined. <laughs> Thea Lacour, dead in the base. They got, they got to head back and provide some sort of defense here. Because Tundra's taking the high can. ground. I think they can just get this tier two. I, I think they just let mid go. I mean, they don't even have the god strength to commit for this either, so... They could get two sets of racks if they want to, Tundra. There's still no Pango and no Lion for 10 or so seconds, yeah. and they push fast. So they'll take the mid, they'll swing around towards the bottom. AC's now on on Topson, so it's, the, the push is going to come in even harder. And the buyback comes out, and it very much respected it. Pure, he wants to stick around and finish with the melee racks. He'll get it. And there's the jump. Ooh. Well, it's going to be dodged just in time here. Yopage with the roller. He'll look towards Lays. Here with the Rolling Thunder. Stampede, there's enough mana for, still for Lays to get the retreat going, and he's out of there. Saberlight tries for the blink, but the Acid Spray puts a stop to it, so he couldn't get the jump grab. Still, they might have a chance to kill off Lays. There's the jump, and there's the duck. They take him down the watch, but the freezing field's out. Is there anyone able to stop it? There isn't. And Pures him with the BKB in the battle chance. RTZ completely surrounded. Double kill for Pure. And indeed, that is it. GG is called Tundra. Quite the stomp here in this game one, Trent. Yeah, most certainly here in the pure looking pretty happy about it. I mean, can't blame him. Had a pretty easy game there. Oh, he's laughing. Oh, he's having a time right now. I am, yeah, that smiles Full around here. Chocolate. Yeah, 9-1-7, and seven, he finishes that game. Spent a lot of time in the jungle and that troll warlord, but then he came out and he got the, the lion's share of the kills in this one. And Thompson casually takes a sip there. He, uh, enjoyed that he had a great I mean, game the, too. The mid alchemist was a great pick to, to bang out. I mean, we saw him respond you know, on the other side of things. Joe Page from the mid on his pango. He's just not able to come anywhere close to matching what Topson uh, was able to do this game. 8 2 and 12 on the mid alchemist. Uh, a very, very impressive showing from him. And yeah, just all round. All, just a well oiled machine here in this game one. Tundra, Shopify. It just, it just didn't come together. And I think, unfortunately, really, you know, Saberlight, he definitely was the one that had the toughest time at the start. Just didn't get a player's game as, as the Axe, fell very far behind as an offlaner. And without that offlaner, everything else starts to just completely fall apart, right, Trent? Yeah, 100%. Like, because if you lose that top lane, your tower goes down like his did relatively early, then you only have one option. It's Farming Ancients. And uh, he was not able to, to safely do that. Great vision placement there from White Monk consistently throughout the whole game. I mean, this, part of being ahead in the game, of course, is you want to get this aggressive vision to keep that lead going. And it sounds very basic, but White Monk, White Monk did a great job. Like, they always had the vision. They got the good jumps. They're able to ensure that Saberlight is not finding them, because that's their way back into this game. It's some solid axe plays. 
So really well done for them to just like keep the momentum going, which is what you need when it comes to an outline. Absolutely. So well, we'll see if uh, if this can continue here for Tundra. Of course, they had a bit of a rough game, uh, rough day one, uh, where they went one and three. So they'll be able to pick up another win here in this first game. With, uh, Shopify betting compliance with the magic that they were bringing yesterday. They had a very good first day of the group stage. But uh, as it stands for now here, this first game of this two-game series goes to Tundra. Dun, 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 dun.
Das mit Otto. Welcome back, ladies and gents. Coming to Dream League Season 22. I'm Odie Pixel, and we're getting ourselves ready for what will be the second game of the two-game series here between Shopify Rebellion and Tundra Esports. Game one, uh, Trent was uh, it was pretty stompy, right? Tundra, yeah. they turned up, uh, and of course, are playing with a stand-in today, playing with uh, Lays, uh, and they, they made it look pretty easy. Um, Shopify Rebellion, they had a rough one. They certainly did, yeah. A little, little cheeky Alk in the mid lane there. Not something we get to see all too often, but perhaps uh, threw off Shopify a little bit there. Took quite a bit of time at the end in the draft trying to figure out exactly how they're going to handle it. And uh, their solutions were not that successful. It was a bit risky. You know, I would say going for the Axe, that is definitely a hero that tends to be a Feast or Famine style. And unfortunately, Saberlight found the Famine there. Uh, he, he was quite hungry up in that top lane and his, his hunger was never quite uh, filled unfortunately. So uh, perhaps they'll go with something a little bit more stable in the next game, or, or maybe we won't be seeing this uh, troll warlord come out once more as even though he's lost some games, it's a uh, it's pretty frustrating hero to play against, I got to say, especially when you don't have uh, a lot of control to sort of stop this battle trance from just running wild over you. But the Alk was more oh, the yeah. problem, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the, the pace being set by, by Topson from the mid lane was uh, too much to deal with. Um, as I mentioned at the end of the last game, you know, Yo Patch. Uh, on the other side of things, on his Pango, just wasn't able to do anywhere near to as much as, as what Topson was being able to do with these early rotations. So yeah. Topson really got that edge there and knew exactly how to abuse that to keep the, the game very much in Tundra's favor the entire time. Um, no, but yeah, every reason to believe that we'll see a closer game two or maybe even a favorite one for Shopify because I said their results yesterday were the superior ones. They managed to get the three wins, only the one loss yesterday. Um, so we'll see if Shopify uh, go back to, to sort of what they were doing in those games. Uh, do, do you imagine that in this game two, there'll be some stuff that they will just look to do completely differently from game one? I mean, what, what do you feel didn't work the most? You know, obviously, there was that last pickaxe that they didn't manage to get the edge mm -hmm. with in the way that they hoped for. Was there anything else that you didn't really like about their approach to that game? Against I, Thompson, I, uh, against I do think... I think you go back to the axe first. Like, I, I know you already said it, but like, I, if that's a hero that I'm going to look at and a role that I'm going to look at as being very, very pivotal. Like, it's not often you go for a last pick offlaner anyway, right? Like, it's kind of, it, it's not something that we see too often in the drafts and, and kind of for good reason. Like, we have this really strong pool of offlane heroes that are hard to deal with. And uh, the way that uh, Tundra drafted out, like, because they had first pick, they banned out some of these stronger options. We got rid of the Mars, got rid of the Timber, got rid of the DK. Then they picked the Centaur for themselves. So at that point, you're thinking, okay, the best offlaners are kind of gone. So we can leave our offlaner for later. And we're going to find this perfect snap pick that's going to be that's going to be clutch. Because there are heroes that exist outside of that top three or four, sure. And you can get a really good counter pick. And that's what they tried to do. But, you know, it was a risky counter pick. It didn't work. Uh, you might want to go back to something a little bit more like, oh, let's just get Doom Centaur or something ourselves earlier on in this draft and uh, and try and have something a bit more reliable because having a, a mid laner and an off laner that are somewhat unreliable, like a Pango with a Diffusal Blade trying to play against Stampede isn't guaranteed kills, isn't guaranteed snowball. And that all comes back to sort of punish a Sven who's just trying to chill and farm for a while. Yeah, I know. It was not an easy game for, for our teasers to, to be able to carry, uh, without a doubt. Uh, we'll see how things change up, though, in this Game 2 draft. The draft has begun. We should be able to get it on your screens, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, we get ourselves into Game 2's draft of Shopify Rebellion and Tundra Esports. Let's see what they change, and maybe if we see some of the bands from Shopify Rebellion go towards those heroes that Tundra got through last game. And we have a, uh, a full-on switch here. Tundra will now be Radiant with the second pick, and uh, Shopify will be Dire with first pick. So mixing that up here. 
Uh, previously, with the first pick so far in this tournament, Shopify have opted for the Mars, the Centaur, and once the Rubik. So generally going for more of these uh, super strong offlaners and uh, a bit of an unusual one to, to grab the Rubik. I mean, it did work for them in that game versus Team Secret. from Tundra it will be that Mars Pretty yeah hard to uh, right now hard to ban out as many off laners when you have second pick because if you leave the Chen in the other team's gonna take it for first pick and that is something that uh, nobody really wants to see I think Chen only got picked once and won the game if I'm not mistaken and every other game he was banned that was as of yesterday uh, but I imagine it's still fairly similar here today Let's see. I'll take an updated look at our, our stats here. Uh, Chen has actually now been picked twice. He's been picked or banned in every single game. So 44 bans, two picks, and he's one and one. He did lose game. He's not okay. undefeatable, apparently. But yeah, still the number one concern across the board here for teams. Um, the other hero that joins him in every single match is Dragon Knight. And he's still in. And they do have first pick here on the side of Shopify. Yeah, that might be a good call to leave that in and grab that then, yeah. Are they willing to run the Arteezy Dragon Knight, though, as, uh, you know, we have Falcons running? I feel like that's, like, the big strength of Falcons is that they play it and they're willing yeah. to put in all three. So that'll be the determining factor here, I think, as to how solid this pick looks. Tiny here for Tundra. So they do have that versatility. A few players that can play this very well on their team. A few different roles. No techies this time. Getting rid of that ET as well. Something that's been popping up a little bit here. Uh, it's uh, ET's, somewhat surprisingly. Yeah. It's pretty uh, insane. You know, this it's is actually... It's the, the game they lost yesterday was to a, a last pick ET versus their Meepo, of course. Uh, as I mean, that being one of the most so classic counter picks. Every, I mean, it just completely, that matchup is just so impossible. ET is insane. I mean, ET is already like, it can be a really good hero, but yeah, especially against Meepo. You just get so much, so much damage. The, the buff yeah. is insane that you pick up. And RTC was spamming Meepo in pubs, I, I noticed last week. So it, you know, he obviously, yeah, he picked it and he lost to an ET, but I'm sure they would like to go back to it. Oh, I would wait, think I that you I ban it here as Tundra. Easy Meepo. Yeah. Of course, I actually tried to watch <laughs> This is true. I was streaming and I tried to watch one of his games live because I, I saw a game come up and I was like, is that RTZ? And I went in, I was like, RTZ is playing Meepo? That's not something we see all too often. Anyway, he got first blooded and immediately left the game. So it was definitely our well, No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. It's true. He just I, left the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, it was great. Well, that's a bit naughty. Surely he just had to go, okay? Surely okay, there was sure, another meant, reason. Yeah. Might have been an emergency. Could have been an emergency. But, but it, it was it very happened funny. after he got first blooded. <laughs> oh, no. yeah, yeah, he immediately oh, quit. No. It was great. I was all excited to stream this Artezy yeah. pub. Yeah, but alas, it did not happen. Uh, but other than that, yeah, he's, he's been trying to bust it out. So we'll see if we get one here as they did not opt to ban it. And uh, I mean, I think they might. It's like, yeah, sure. ET is good in other situations, but unless it's just like sort of like a, yeah, you're, you're playing to the bluff of, oh, we banned ET. You need to ban the Meepo. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Tundra don't fall for that and don't essentially waste a ban on it. I mean, you got to be careful too, though, because it is final pick for Tundra. And with all the heroes that Thompson can play mid, there's like, I'm sure Pure has also been practicing his Meepo because there was a while where Meepo was looking oh, disgusting. Sure. Now that, yeah, they can that, do it. that being yeah. said, Disperser got nerfed. And I feel like that, you know, that was a nice little ability there for the Meepo in the end. It's not nearly as crazy on him now, but we'll see. Oh yeah, he has played four batches of, of uh, Meepo on Pure recently. So there you go. Yeah, Pure would definitely, he'd be able to do it. Very uh, well-rounded support of the Phoenix. Gives you some team fight, gives you a little bit of healing. Doesn't have the best pickoff potential. Probably one of the, the major flaws, but the laning's generally pretty solid. And speaking of pickoff, the Marana comes out. Long arrows, combos well with Dragonite, especially with a uh, an earlier blink if it's the offlane DK. Can help uh, enable him to uh, facilitate some kills across the map for your team. 
And then, of course, you just have Moonlight Shadow the whole game, which is a total nuisance. Ten seconds remaining. Maybe the lion here? Five Marana, four lion. I mean, it, it looked solid. really good when Batboom did this combo. I think it's pretty good versus Phoenix as well. You have to play a little bit different on the hero. You can't do these cheeky little dives. Ah, likewise, though. Yeah, yeah let's just go back grab. to this again. Okay, and that, uh, yeah, much like Lion has the power to dissuade you from picking certain heroes because of mana drain, mostly like the illusions, Rubik, of course, with the spell seal, also knocks out a sizable amount of the hero pool because you're just a little bit too concerned about certain uh, spell steals being a little bit better on him than they are on you. All right, so we got Phoenix Egg. We have Avalanche to help cover. So that can work just fine as a support duo, but of course this could easily be a, a tiny mid if the game calls for it. How else are we going to help out this Phoenix? Well, we're going to grab his, his buddy in the TB. So that's probably our five and our one right there. Oh, that's a pretty solid line. Oh, well wow. They grab that. I like that. Make sure that, uh, I mean, they, Shopify could have probably still found a way to slip a snap fire into their draft. Would have been very good against the egg. Yeah. And the kisses early on could be very devastating for a Terra Blade. So they'll protect that by grabbing it themselves, and uh, could be uh, could be Topson's hero, right? Yeah, could also um, potentially be for Lays as well. I mean, that's true. Yeah, they've got uh, there's still a lot of ways to switch this round here on Tundra. And uh, I mean, that is a bit of a surprise here that his hero might be the last pick. Because I do think it's most likely Topson Snapfire. Uh, Lays must be wanting to play Snap, though. That's all I can imagine. If... I mean, check his, uh, give him last we had, pick. A we had his Dota buff up, right? What's he been playing in pubs? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check to see if he's played. Yeah, he has I mean. not been playing it in pubs at all. Okay. Uh, and I have not looked at his pro games in a while, so let, let's see if he, he had a history of this, perhaps. Because that's, uh... That's quite the hero to bust back out. Uh, Luna for easy this game. Okay. Band out that Shadow Demon nice and early there, too. Uh, he has played the Snapfire before. Let's see. But it hasn't been for 10 months, so. But he, he busted it on old G the last time it was good, when we just had, like, Greaves builds, BKBs, Blinks, Four Staffs. Maybe he's going to bust it out again. We'll see which roles Shopify end up targeting with their final bans. They still expect to be picked here. I, yeah, I think you banned gonna go Darkseer. For the I was, was yeah. going to say, I, th I think Darkseer is just like, when you think Luna 1, you immediately think Darkseer 3, and they have a tiny. So that makes sense. I don't know if there's another offlaner that's more valuable than a potential mid counter pick. Like, it depends what they want for mid. You know, if they're picking something that has like one or two hard counters also we still have Meepo just kind of hanging around here but might be hard to squeeze in yeah I guess now with the TV and the Luna it's a bit weird for both sides very big hero even if it's played mid you know you, you still need a, a lot of space you don't necessarily want these like greedier cores on your team Brewmaster, one of the most successful heroes at this tournament, if I'm not mistaken. I was looking at the stats yesterday, and Brewmaster was absolutely crushing it. Um, we were seeing a band quite a bit, but... Oh, wait, maybe that was Dacha I'm thinking about, actually. Because uh, we haven't seen him all too much here, by the looks of it, actually. Which is kind of surprising, because I feel like when uh, we have seen it, it's looked pretty good. But yeah, only... Uh, only two picks so far in this tournament. Wow. I saw 3-3 three, three played it, and I think he rushed the Orchid, but it wasn't enough to take down the Yadaro Puck in that game. Primal Beast to be taken out. Uh, the Magnus is still hanging around If in terms of the big offlaners that remain here. Is, we're just getting them all targeted in these fans. Yeah, so many offlaners getting knocked out. It's going to be very limited. Guess we're picking Axe again. <laughs> I mean, there's no way. <laughs> They're not going to... No. No Axe. No Axe. <laughs> 
Maybe for Lays. I can say you could, get, you could get away with Axe on Tundra side of things, but I don't think Saberlight's going to want to play Axe again this game. This game in particular is a bit, a bit more difficult. He's going to pick Underlord. I know, Saberlight's in we just trouble. We see a lot of Underlord. But it uh, would be a pretty nice aura builder. I feel like Saberlight gets, gets in trouble and, you know, his mind just goes back. Like, wouldn't it be nice to throw down some big magic damage here? There's also got to be someone that can maybe put a bit of pressure onto the Terra Blade in the lane. Underlord or will it just be that. DK chilling It'll over be DK there? DK often gets me out for Yopage. They will. They will They'll indeed. put DK off, take the Invoker mid. So now Tundra, do they want to, does Topson want to take one of these heroes mid against the Invoker or does he want to play something else? I mean, I wouldn't say Invoker has been uh, that easy to just obliterate for anyone in the mid lane lately. Generally, like these catchier heroes are pretty good, like your, your Pucks or something. Um, we've seen the Void Spirit counter pick a lot versus the Pucks and the Invokers. Uh, Thompson was also playing a lot of Void Spirit recently. Uh, it would set up fairly well for the Snapfire too, right? For like the big ulti plays to come in. It's got that mobility. Any, any big downsides to him this game? I don't think really. I'd like to see a Topson sniper. I don't know if he's done that recently, but <laughs> the sniper. Oh, Busted it's out. the viper! Oh, it's the oh other my viper. gosh! Oh, that's nasty! Is Ugh. that the viper? He, off, he missed. Then? Heard you? Mid snap? Yeah, it is. No, they're gonna switch it around. Lazy's gonna take viper off. Topson to the mid on his snap fire. Oh, he's got the the ice frog as well. Very good. Oh, he does. Very big cool. blue froggy with his cosmetics here, Topson. Guys, will, you'll get to witness that in a second here, so don't worry. All right. Okay. Well, that uh, it will be interesting to see. Obviously, you know, Lay is standing in. Let's see how the coordination is and, and how well they can just really abuse just how much damage they can kick out in that off lane uh, with worried. the two of them. I gotta say, and, uh, Avalanche and like yeah. the poison stacks, and all you have yeah, is pieces to throw them off. It could be That's a tough lane for RTZ. Like if you're out of position, that can be very troublesome. It feels like the the creep yep. wave control is gonna be super important in this one. Like if you let nine class get away with a pull, right, and it the, the gets out of balance, and then like if he goes and grabs the wave and, and loops it around, and suddenly the wave pushes back out after the tower, and the the wave's in front of Lazy's tower, I think you're gonna have a hard time. I would not want to be chased down there because like post telekinesis, there's not a lot to help you. No, this could be this could be difficult early game. So Shopify they had a rough game one. See if they can be a bit more solid with their opening performance. I mean, one thing for sure, you know, this time around, Saberlight, he's on the Dragon Knight. This hero is just incredibly solid. He's gonna have a better game than game one on his axe, Trent, right? This is yeah, Saberlight's gonna have he's gonna surely have more of an impact. He's on a Dragon Knight. You, you, you can't go wrong with this hero. Well, allegedly, he's the, uh, you know, the most broken hero in the game alongside Chen. They're in every single draft. The only two heroes so far this tournament, so has to be good. Clearly. Well, see. It's going to be exciting to see and uh, not too exciting for, uh, I think, Arteezy. You know, any carry that has to lane up against a Viper, you're going to be feeling pretty sad. It's never fun, especially when it's paired up with a, an aggressive position for heroes. It has been hit. Yeah, I think Nine Class has also been looking great since he joined this team. Uh, I think he's one of the, one of the more impressive uh, like jumps onto the scene that I've seen in a while. So I, I think that uh, give him the tiny here. It's a, it's a hero that lets you really pop off. You know, you, you can make some really cute plays with toss and everything. For now, he's stuck with just the tree throw. So he wants to beat somebody down with some big old logs. Calls that his combat log. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Oh, get rack. Nice. Oh, they're not. Smoke pops. Yeah, not. They still get the slow with the scatter blast. But it's a bit of an awkward spot to continue to chase, so they won't get the first blood chance here, Tundra. The battle begins. Now, it should be the two for two on the bounties. We'll see how these lanes end up going down. So yeah, mid, Malfoy's well, going to have Topson against Yopage's Invoker. <laughs> always, happy, always happy to see some Invoker. We don't. I feel like we don't see it that much. 
And Saberlight makes the correct read that no one is down here. I got the bounty rune, so I'm going to go block this wave. Do a little dance here. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is good. Yep, 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 yep. Get my wave right in there. Nice. Come on, tower. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good start. All right, well done by Saberlight here. So I'm talking about the top lane. They're bringing in a third hero to maybe try and... Guess yeah, we're going on the both sides. Yeah, it is indeed. They're going to turn towards Tio Lecoy. He's got to skill the leap. Has to skill the leap here to get away. Don't worry, I mean, no one's of, dying. A lot of damage, though, from these fire spirits. Not the, the way you want to start things here on the Mirana. Yep. And uh, we just have ourselves a little technical issue. Hold on. We, we got uh -oh. this covered here. It's Trent, all right. You, we'll get it back. He stepped on a cable. We, oh, wait, Laser's in trouble. He's going. Oh, he's got the stick charge. Yeah, he's, he's big and green. Oh, uh, lucid he beef hit by RTZ. a lucid beam. <laughs> RTZ had to chase so far for that, though. He's getting punched back here by nine class. No one's died yet. You haven't missed mm. anything, chat. No. Uh, we are up top near the yep. Lotus Pool. Kit Rack's low. Okay. The old core, he's jumping in. They're, they're hitting nine class, guys. Radio Dota. It's on. I was, on Everyone's RTZ. alive. How's he doing on the region? He's still got, he's getting tangos passed over to him by Kit Rack. The pressure's going to start coming in again, though. Fire Spirits are back out mm -hmm. from White Mon. I could live update his HP. It's at 260, 270, 280. He's tangoing. He's tangoing up. Uh, and he's got the tower safe. regen as well. So he's healing up, but still has the, the three members of Shopify Rebellion up here. RTZ, Kitrak, and Theo Lacour. And same to be said here for Tundra. Three versus three on the top mm. lane. Even the bottom lane is a 1v1. Pretty boring. Nobody want to watch yeah. that. It's Terrorblade no. versus DK. Nobody. I'm falling asleep talking about it. We're watching this top lane. Yeah. And the cosmetics, I know you can't see them. They're beautiful. Everyone looks great. You know, I want to make sure and they paid for these pixels. I want you guys to just know they look fantastic. Everyone's really glowy. And, uh, and this 3v3 tri-lane on tri-lane action is it's continuing. still everyone alive. The level twos are going to be when it, you know, that's mm. when we're going to potentially see a first blood. We got so level uh, two start to trickle in. We got uh, sticks on all, oh, two heroes on the dire. Okay. Only one hero on the radiant. Of course, very important when we're in tri-lane versus tri-lane. You got to count the magic sticks. Everyone remembers that from your tri-lane days. Yeah, neither neither side wants to break the try lane, and I think for the most part they won't because both have this solo hero down bottom that's farming perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. If anything, I think though that is good news for Pure. He's getting solo lane farm and solo lane XP on this Terra Blade to start the game off. I, I think I'd be more scared about a Terra Blade getting that at the start of the game than a DK. So I, I mean, think Pure's pretty happy with the situation. That's true, but DK also needs this, you know. This is a pretty good start for him. I feel like he's the, the hero who has to do a lot in this game. Like, he's playing with his Quaswex Invoker. He, he's going to have to help him out. And then, then Arteezy just gets the jungle. So as long as this power and this, like, availability farm gets transferred to Arteezy at some point, it'll be okay. Uh, the level twos have come out on everyone. And we finally have a death. But don't worry. Well, it's just a neutral It's not kill. a first, but no. Fear the core <laughs> no. has to deny himself to neutrals. He ticked down really low to the fire spirits and the blood grenade. So he goes yep. and takes himself out of the game. Gets the reset. Gets himself back to base. No. It is a big punish, though. It's like 20, what, 27 seconds or something? He's been gone for a while. But uh, they don't take advantage of this. Not able to find a kill. As Phoenix has finally left, broken up the tri lane and come to the bottom lane. I see what he's able to do to bully Saberlight back a, a little bit. At the same time, Theo Lacour, he'll actually TP out towards the mid lane and look for the jump. And they're going to try and go aggressive onto Tops and leap forward the cold snap as well. Tops and turns with a cookie, tries to go back and fight against Yopaj. Won't be able to do so. First blood for Theo Lacour with that TP up towards the mid lane to team up with Yopaj. It was very nicely done. Yopaj was incredibly low on health and mana, but he had just enough to offer up a cold snap. That combo with the fact that the Murano was leaping in and attacking fast uh, meant the Tops and didn't stand a chance. So first blood wave. finally found. Yeah, wave goes all the way under the tower here. He's going to miss out on everything but the range. Oh, he even missed the range creep. And uh, Yopaj gets both water runes here, secured with the help of the old core on this Marana. So a great minute there uh, for Shopify. It gives him a bit of an edge here in this mid lane. And a Radiant Courier gets killed as you still get to look at our lovely faces. Yeah, apologies for this. I think we're having a production issue, chat. We're, it, we're it trying was to see if we can fix this up. Bottom lane. 
They've got the dragon tail stun into the arrow. White Mon's got the dive ready just in time. He's able to get away. Theolicor's going to try and chase him down. He's got another leap, but the White Mon's quick. Gets the fire spirits out. Gets them out onto Theolicor. So Theolicor's trying to get these last couple of hits in onto White Mon, but it's taking Ooh. ever so Ooh. low. And as White Mon's duking around, he'll finally get taken down by the dragon tail, but he did get off another fire spirit onto Theolicor. The metamorphosis comes out here. Oh, he made us the illusion. attempt to get that <laughs> extra reach from his illusions to get the kill, and he will. They get the one for one. As Pure will be able to take so down good. the other core in return. Oh, that was so risky, though. Imagine if he doesn't get that kill. That would have felt like such a waste. But he metas the illusion, gets the return kill onto the Marana, and is able to help control this next wave here for Pure. So it, it is just Pure and Saberlight here at the top of the net worth, 2,500 and 2,600 respectively. And uh, they, they are just farming up a storm. As the other core immediately returns, tries to hit an arrow. Oh, he hits Ooh. the illusion instead. They got the dragon tail and jump forward as well with the star storm. It's a lot of damage. Pure, he's just got a TP out. He's on 75 HP, 30 no HP, way. 0 HP. They kill him. Saberlight and Theolacore there able to burst through Pure. So not only dead, but also with his TP on cooldown. Also a failed attempt to TP out. Back over towards the mid. Cookie thrown out from Thompson over towards White Mon to try and get him to bounce onto Yopage. But Yopage turns at just the right moment, throws out a tornado so that the Cookie connection wasn't going to be there. Yopage, he'll have to take a walk back to base, but he won't Up be top. going down. Nine class also getting chased out here with the blood grenade, but they're going to let him go. No mana left for the Lucent Beams on Arteezy, and he doesn't want to let the magic wand rip quite yet. So it's now uh, three to one here, folks, in favor of Shopify Rebellion. Yeah, Currently, uh, yeah, Thompson is holding those Mortimer Kisses, though, in the mid lane. So lo looking for a potential setup there, but yeah, his yeah, support man. duo of a Tiny and a Phoenix, not the best at getting that setup early. He's going to TP down towards the bottom, Thompson. Wants to use his first Kisses to try and oh, kill Saberlight. Oh, by a ward, indeed though. A really nice ward, sort of just in that spot beyond the Tier 1 on the Radiant side, just down towards where the Creep Camp is. Now, Topson's going to start clearing up the creeps here, but yeah, they, they completely see him. So Saberlight's perfectly safe. He's not going to get caught by surprise by this snapfire rotation. Has opened up the mid lane to allow Tundra to put yeah. Whitemon there, get some levels on the Phoenix. Level 4 right now. Uh, very important on a Phoenix, of course. Have to get these earlier levels, but... I mean, this is the classic Beast Coast move, where they would rotate the mid snapfire to the lane with a stun. That's how they always picked these stuns for Hector when they did it, with the spin or the CK, but... Nine class has to set it up, and there it is. The only there hero that is. can really give him the free Mortimer kisses, so... Nine class oh, he's got those Thompson. I forgot that you got those crazy kisses with this uh, cosmetic set on the snapfire. You know, yeah, they blue look wild. Ones. Yeah, they, dude, I'll tell you what, they're harder to see as well. They're, yeah. I think they do more damage. <laughs> I think they do. Especially when they're in the hands of Topson. I mean, to be fair, they did do more damage there because he had an amplified damage rune. So <laughs> that's that's yeah. true. Don't, <laughs> Maybe that's why they were blue and glowing. It wasn't actually the cosmetic. No, don't give them that. That would make get the game very confusing. Yeah, if, so if you have an amplified damage rune, all your spells are blue. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, White Mon continues to pick up XP. RTZ, I don't know how he's ended up here, but he has. And he's in fact ended up by sort of like a triple <laughs> stack that they have here over on the side of Tundra's bit of the map. And White Mon has to dive away, but RTZ is now clearing the camp that's by Tundra's Radiant side mid tier one tower up on the high ground. And he's Excellent been able to get it. description, Owen. Yeah. That's quite yeah. a nice a lot of money for them. The, the TPs are coming in, you know. Tundra, they don't want to have any of this. Topson and White Mon want to get Arteezy and Theolacore out there. They're both incredibly low. Topson will be able to come in with the Scatter Blast and at least secure some of the creeps left in that stack. I think he got the most. was clearing. Yeah, he got most of them. I mean, oh, Arteezy shares the XP, XP, but Thompson kind of gets all the big ones there, and then Arteezy's forced to run away. And when he runs back to his own side, unfortunately, no Ancients here for him. He has his Morbid Mask. He's got three points in the Lunar Blessing here at level five. And he picks up his neutral item. What's Arteezy going to get on the Luna? He doesn't know, which means it's probably not very good. He's Mid -lane still deciding. <laughs> Tries for a bit of setup here with the Tornado, Cold Snap, EMP. Nine class is coming over from the top lane. So Tundra, they've got the three of them in. Nine class, Topson and White Mon. They set up with the Avalanche. They get the toss back onto Theolicor. They grab him, pull him back into the river. The Marana's dead. Tundra, they've got the kill on the mid lane. Settle the score right now. Three for three between Tundra and Shopify Rebellion. Shopify Rebellion still with that slight gold lead of 1k. Mm. And Arteezy ends up taking the Seeds of Serenity mid-fight there. I think trying to help save uh, his Marana, but uh, not able to do it. The Elkor will go down. And oh, hello! We're actually going to oh, replay the last 10 minutes. There and we go, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Apologies for that. We did have some production issues. Thank you very much for bearing with us. And uh, again, I'm sorry that you had to spend the last nine minutes watching our ugly mugs. But here we go. We're back in the game. 
And uh, just like that, the sort of Saber Light is taken down. Thompson, he really wanted this kill. You know, we saw him, well, we saw him, you didn't see him, come towards this bottom area of the map trying to get him earlier. Wasn't successful. This time with the kisses, he was. They take him out. Back over towards the mid. This time it's going to be Nine Class that was trying to pick up some XP, pick up some farm. Shop of Fire Rebellion, they're having none of that. They get him with a grab, and they're able to burst him down. Yo, Paj, again, making some good magic happen here with the Invoker around this mid lane. A couple of assists. They've yet to be able to get on top of him. And we'll see what Yo Paj is able to continue to do, because now with the Ghost Walk, with the Urn Charges, he's ready to make some moves around the map. And it's all pretty even now at this point, so, you know, it's, it's like uh, no rush 10 minutes here. You, you didn't miss anything. We're all good. There isn't a, a sentry ward here. Scouting out what Yopaj is trying to do, so they're trying to bait Laze. I mean, Laze is very work. quick there with a the Viper Strike over towards Yopaj. Yopaj was able to burn the mana through well, for the Viper, but Laze has still got enough to get a few hits out onto Theolacor. Moonlight Shadow's there, and I think Theolacor is going to be game. fine. He's able to sneak away under the cover of the Shadows. He's, he's, he's out. He's alive. It's every game, dude. You always get one. I don't know what it is. It can be Invoker Ghost Walk, it can be Moonlight Shadow. I feel like even in a pro match, you, you always get one escape with your invis, you know? And that, that'll be it for him. They didn't come quite prepared for that one. That Topson here with all the success early on. He has his Midas heading in towards the Boots of Travel after. Uh, he now takes the top spot on the board, surpassing that Saberlight DK who got this 1v1. Again, the, you, you, I know he's, you guys missed quite a lot of it, but he was firing up a storm down bottom. Oh, there's the revenge though. up top. Yeah, you're not getting out of that one. The other core toss into the Viper Strike. He's out. <laughs> All right, well, it's a night and day difference here for Saberlight as he's again going to move in here. Last time it was Arteezy trying to mess these stacks. Now it's him. And he's hoping to have a better performance here. He went from, uh, you know, started from the bottom, now he's here in game number two. A much better start. Can he translate that to a win, though? That'll be the question. Oh, pure. Gonna look to get involved in a bit of action here. Cookie forward on top of Kitrak. It's a Deb Rubik. Same time on the mid. They will lose nine class. So Shop and Fire Belly and continue to keep the, the trades pretty equal here. Yeah, Tornado into Arrow set up there. Very cool. And Saberlight will tag the tower a bit there with that corrosive breath, which just does so much damage to these towers. I'm sure he wants to go get another one. So far is just the, the sort of difference in farms we're seeing on the carries. Pure right now does have a, a pretty decent lead ahead of RTZ on the Luna. There's still a bit of time or play required to allow RTZ to catch back up this game. Yeah, we talk about Arteezy making all these moves, being across the map and everything. I mean, he's 0, zero, zero so he hasn't died or anything, but all that time we're talking, of course, Pure just had the, the 1v1, and then he's a Terror Blade, so he moves into the jungle. And then uh, life feels pretty good, because it's very hard to actually achieve these kills versus the Terror Blade, because he has all this vision of the illusions just getting him out. It requires these dedicated smokes, and a lot of the times the DK has just been visible. There's no, like, looming threat of some offlaner or something, because Stable is trying to get as much farm as possible as he heads in towards his Blink Dagger. And it looks like the uh, Spirit Vessel is on its way, though. That's the power spike for Yopaj. Feel the core. Can't really afford to dance around with this Phoenix right now. Might want Fire Spirits. Doing a lot of damage. He has indeed got Yopaj by his side, and they'll use the Moonlight Shadow in an effort to set something up top. See what they can find. Yopaj? Does he want to go for the Viper, though? It's a bit of a tricky one. And there's further backup coming in for Tundra. And they realize that, Shop of Fire Rebellion, so they'll pull back. They won't want to, to lead in on this area as such now. With the presence that Tundra have up here, the... The four of them ready to fight. Radiance middle tower is under attack. And while they're getting ready for this fight, of course, you know, you got White Mon on the back. He's just stacking it up right now. Thompson comes in with his mind. Look at all this gold just sitting here. These are some happy cores on the side of Tundra. Not easy, really, for Shopify Rebellion to make a move to find Pure. He's getting a lot of space down here. Well, Shopash has made a few moves up towards the top side of the map, yet to see them to sort of attempt to sweep down bottom and hunt Dyer's the Terror Blade. Is under attack. <laughs> they really need this Blink Dagger uh, on Saber Light, right? That's where everything kicks off. 
Oh, Kit Rack. Yeah, he's going to have a bit of a nasty surprise here. Nine class and Thompson waiting for him on the high ground. And with the kill and the wave pushing in. He'll be able to set up to try and take down this tier one. Same time inside the jungle. White Mon has been found. And he'll accept his death there. No chance of a supernova to save himself. And of course, the good news about that Kit Rack death, death is that he's playing like purposely in between Arteezy and where he thinks the enemy team is. Like, yeah, he goes down. Not ideal. But Arteezy is farming up these Ancients that whole time. And that's what they need in this one because we weren't able to give him this in the last game. Now Yopash is going to run to Pure. This Ooh. is the one they really want, but do they have the damage? I don't know. I mean, he's, he's got a TP out straight away. Yopash, he'll get out of there. A very quick escape and a needed one as well. There's no chance of having the damage to threaten Pure in that position when he had the backup that he did. And now Pure, 9 class and tops, and they can turn over towards the mid and starts to go for the tier 1 tower mid lane. And they realize that very quickly. And of course, one thing, like, I mean, Terrorblade, a hero that is known to come in here, use these metas and everything, but he's working with the Vlads too. So in combination with like the Vlads, this early Snapfire, having this crazy damage with all these levels, this feels really solid, right? I mean, he's two levels ahead of the Invoker. I mean, and he's still and get holding the, that level two Kisses right now. Yeah. I mean, he could just kill Theolocor, but he doesn't want to waste it. I, I think... You know, one or two leaves, you're still catching up with those kisses if you wanted it. I'll let him go, though. Bottom white, Mom. He'll pop the supernova, but they've easily got the attack speed to take it out with the Mask of Madness on Arteezy. The Deb Phoenix. Allies disappear. Now in the mid, Joe Pash. Trying to go for Thompson. And Thompson's got the haste rune. He's out of there. They're going to try with the stun strike. It was close. Good effort, but not quite getting the connection. Thompson, he's fine. Tower is under attack. A relief there for him as he gets this four staff delivered here too. So many uh, item choices just synergizing very well here for Tundra. Like if they go into a 5v5 fight right now, they just feel so strong. And Mage Slayer there on Lays. Four staff available for the saves on Thompson. I mean, it looks greedy sometimes when you go Midas bots, but I mean, that just means that he's ready to group up when they want to. It makes like using this flat Thompson? easier. Surely he doesn't have something here. No, he can't do this. Yeah, he's, he's not going to try with the kisses. We wouldn't you know have been he wanted to, though. He was definitely <laughs> doing the math there. He's like, can I solo kill RTZ here? But uh, it would have been, uh, he probably would have had to land every single kiss. And uh, also RTZ had a TP available, so would have also had the option to just TP out after the cookie. Arteezy. All right, a little bit better luck here. Gets the Gossamer Cape. Feeling good about that. Keep himself moving around the map. And of course, that safety of the dodge. And the nerfed specialist array. Still good enough for Topsil. Things slowing down. Oh. Definitely. I mean, this, this game much closer than last game. Both I mean, they brought this back too, the right? Like, I feel, I feel like the gold keeps wanting to get away on Tundra's side. It feels like they're stronger, they're ready to fight, they pressure in and they pick up uh, these more important kills right now, but it uh, hasn't amounted to a, a very large lead, and part of that being just Saber Light still staying neck and neck and ahead of the TB even. <laughs> oh, look at this sneaky ward in here from Theolacor. Can he get out? TP in one. There it goes. All right. Oh. Lays. He's been caught. That's an easy one. They're leaving a drop and eclipse for him. Do not cross the dark moon. Bit of an awkward spot for him to be walking in on his own there. Felt safe on his half of the map. Oh, Topston. Ends up cooking straight back in there. Bit awkward. I think he wanted to jump out. He ended up jumping in. Okay, uh, that those are humongous kills to just grab. I mean, the DK Blink Dagger just opening up with ease. Stun into arrow. Catch a second Radiant kill right after. There's no way you're going to fight this right now. And uh, Tundra, they're, they're kind of just waiting on nine class here. I, I feel like he spent a lot of time being super active this game and not prioritizing his own farm. So that Blink Dagger is still really far away from him. And it might get further away here if he manages to hit this arrow. They want to feel really bold, but... Oh, look at this. They get white mon as well. They're just killers across the map at this point. And they'll TP out. There's nothing to stop them. Kitrak, he might get left behind because um, unlike the rest of them, his TP was on cooldown. So Kitrak, all he can do is run. Illusions are out. Actually, 
And Kirak is gone. I wondered if they might go Atos on the Viper this game. Because uh, they, they really have no disables. Like, they have three heroes with no stuns. So in those situations, if they just realize, like, oh, hey, we can just bail. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities. It also gives a lot of freedom to someone like the Luna to fight here. But nine class, that blink dagger. <laughs> Looking far away. Shopify Rebellion, absolute killers this game. A lot of moves that they have the, the luxury of being able to make now. With the, these sort of early items, early levels they've got in these, in these heroes. They just, they kill much easier than Tundra can at this point in time. It's Tundra, more focused on just trying to hope the Pure gets the space. In fact, Pure is playing very aggressively here, trying to head up towards Saberlight. They did have that uh, TP coming in potentially from Topson, but I believe the target he was TPing over to was taken out in time. So I couldn't join Pure for an attempt on Saberlight. And back they go to catch Wisdom Runes, farm it up, and go for the Tormentor. Die. See who gets this on the side of Shopify. <laughs> <laughs> Not even close, of course. <laughs> no, no concerns there. Kirak will get himself some help there with the Telekinesis Shard. Uh, Yopaj moving in towards that BKB after this. No surprises in the build. Just wants to be a stable team fighting force. And then Saberlight, is that done on the Manta? It is indeed. So this is DK. I mean, this is why we're seeing it in every single draft. Pretty standard items here. There, there's some flexibility you can go for with the build, but what we all know is that he becomes a dragon. He hits really hard and he tries to get this Aghanims, which uh, of course recently did get improved just one more time. Feels pretty solid. Uh, did get a little nerf though. Uh, I believe, right? Yeah, uh, on the last C patch, but still feels good. Dyer are scanning. That should help. Oh, it's easy with these moments. Just yeah, caught right back up as well to Pure. Good farm now on the Luna. Good timing with the Mantra into BKB. Just about 800 gold about getting that recipe out and done. DD Rune in the river. Topson. Ooh. He's actually oh. just going to be able to cook in and take it. The other core is trying to protect it. But he ends up dying for this. Maybe at the least they'll get Topson in return. And you know what? They will. So if anything, the other core is more than happy with that one. So what? He died, but he baited Topson in. And it ended up costing Topson his life. And even better than that for Shopify Rebellion, it's Arteezy that's the one who takes it. Yeah. Uh, that's exactly what they need. They get this BKB and they can really start forcing themselves in towards that Roche pit. Whitemon, he is investigating the area. I don't think he's got any obs to drop down, though. So he can't get anything here, because ideally you want to get some wards in this area to try and scope for like potential Roche fights and stuff. But they're not going to get that. Now Saberlight on the hunt. Raiden Observer Ward did spot him, so Whitemon's going to dive the other way <laughs> and even just go for the uh, Sunray TP. Things looking good so far for Shopify Rebellion. Really getting a good hold on this early mid game. I think they're aiming for a clash here down bottom. Maybe knowing that Shopify are, are close to roaching. It feels like the time of the game you want to roach the Luna lineup, right? With this BKB. Oh, what the easy. He steps up, but he's got the reliable. He's got the, at least the protection of the BKB to rely on to run this one off. And this is one of the best steals as Rubik these days. I mean, it used to be Ice Path and Fisher and stuff, but unfortunately, you know, we don't see too much of the Jakiro, but we're getting a lot of tinies, and grabbing Avalanche just feels fantastic on this hero because of everything you get with the uh, the Spell Lamp and uh, Arcane Supremacy. So being able to just chuck this thing nice and far away and control the team fights can be very disruptive. And you can see this straight away from Tundra. Uh, as soon as they know the Manta, well, the BKB in particular is being used by Arteezy, they go for this smoke. Shopify Rebellion, they are, they are, they're aware oh, nice of this. They scan damn. it out. So they know exactly it, what's coming and Dyer's whereabouts it's coming from. Oh, they might still get Kit Rack here. Radiant's top tower has fallen. Oh, the blink. Oh, nine class. Oh, wait. The blind avalanche there into the tree line oh. will stop the TP of Kit Rack. But whether or not they know to search further to try and find him sticking around, probably not going to be the case. So Kit Rack, not going to be able to TP out of this one, but he's not going to die. At least oh, not for now. They don't even have a uh, scan to throw down either, so can't know for sure. Uh oh. The sound died. Rest in peace. 
Ooh, Arteezy, as you can see there, looking towards that uh, lovely shard. No! On the Luna. I, it's versus the TV, so it's not as crazy in some of the other matchups you get where you really get the value out of it with the uh, the Whirling Blades, but it's reduction nonetheless. Well, Thompson's trying to start something here, but the man to dodge. Wow, Arteezy man to dodge. We always love to see those. Dodge of the cookie stunt. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Potential out of there for maybe like a, a toss back or something as well. Could have been bad. Uh, his PKB is back in five seconds. So that would have been the perfect time to get that kill. Sunstrike. Oh my, he gets three or four there. <laughs> He's scouting out everybody on the side of Thunder with that one. I, I'd be throwing down another sentry being like, where is the ward that this guy just hit us with that? Uh, it is out in the lane though. Uh, it is the vision they have. All right. Now, uh, Roche, of course, uh, has migrated to his northern home. And that will mean that the TPs are available for Shopify if the fight happens there now. I mean, Shopify want to oh, take the old core there. with the ward. He hits those. He hits those. Whoa. No. Oh. <laughs> no. No. Everything's missing. Uh, they should still get him here, though. As Lays, I don't think he's got many other options. He's surrounded. So they'll find him. Another kill for Arteezy. Up top. Saber late. Get him with the control there. Good position from White Mom with that supernova as well to make sure they have the damage and further stun to lock him down. And at this point of the game, with how far Sableite was on the they're DK, gonna take it. they're going to take they the Roche. certainly will. You, you, oh. you lose Lays, you take Sableite and Indeed, you take him Roche down. They've got the meta up. Pure stepping into the pit. Oh, Not only a good trade in terms of offlaners, now they're getting the kill on the Roche. I, I really think this was Shopify's Roche. It felt like everything they were doing and playing towards was was leading this, but they just took their time. They they didn't really push it down bottom when it was raining there, and they had the BKB. I mean, they, they might still have a chance because they're walking over. Roche isn't dead quite yet. Arteez is on the high ground. They're gonna look with the avalanche to take down White Mon. Nine plus jumps in return with the stolen avalanche. Right they get the toss back onto Arteez. He's put the BKB. He's gonna get grabbed back to safety here by Kirak, who uses the telekinesis. They're back at Roche. Arteez. They're looking to finish it off, and they'll do it. Pure's got the Aegis. See, he's nine class being focused by the illusions. They'll get him. But if the rest of Tundra can get out of this, they'll be okay with that. They lose their supports, but they got Roche and they got that Aegis on pure. That was a crazy tornado from Yopaj. Uh, at first I was like, that's going to whiff on everyone. And then he hits Thompson as he had just started the Mortimer Marquistas. So desperately needed because they were pretty clumped up there. And uh, although RTZ had his BKB, he might not have ended too well for some of the other allies. So, uh, I mean, good steal there from Tundra because this is a Luna lineup who was looking to grab an Aegis. And that, of course, could easily mean your Tier 2s are probably all gone, if not a Tier 3. And they are going to steal your Tormentor still, though, after. And that's going to be Yopaj who grabs it with that EMP. Boost it up. Just and see what they'll do now. They still have that lead, but they're playing into the Aegis on pure. The Shop of Fire Bellion wants to try and force something now, despite the fact that Pure's got that advantage. Or do you think they sit back and wait to see what Tundra do in turn? Uh, it, it is a tough one, right, when you have this Aegis. Because it's... Uh, playing with the Terra Blade's already kind of annoying enough with the Thunder, and now he feels like he can play a little bit more wild. But... Uh, there's no real reason to rush it. It kind of ruins your momentum when you see this, you know? Uh, like, do I really want to fight into the Aegis when I have the advantage? And uh, they have enough of a Goldie thing, just like farm up the map. They have this now. Aghanim Scepter flown out to the DK, so... I wouldn't necessarily rush anything if I was Shopfire Rebellion, but I'd still be feeling like, you know, we're winning. We're, we're doing really well. Maybe some aggressive smokes just for super solid vision as the Aegis is expiring would be great. Try and get some good lingering wards down. That's perhaps what I'd be hoping for. I mean, Kitrax, he's throwing out a couple of illusions here. See what's going on. Saber light, hopefully not going to get caught here. Observer Ward on the high ground does see his movement, but they can't quite get there in time. I should they want to try and push on for the tier two. And pure. Very close to finishing his next item, getting that butterfly complete on top of the Scardi Manta. This, I think, is really good. Getting at this point in the map right now for Shopify, this is where I'd want to be. I'd really want to try and get a, a good ward down here that doesn't get taken away. Because when this Aegis ends, this is exactly where you want to be playing as Shopify. And 
Tundra, they're probably going to try and force this fight with the Aegis. I mean, they need a fight at this point in the game, right? If the Aegis runs out, it's just going to be worse. They don't want to defend high ground versus these guys, so this is it. Top goes in first. And then Mulan to start a shot for Fire Rebellion. Sableye is going to look for the jump. Gets it with the Dragon's Tail, but the force out of the side of the Mantis. Arrow? Tops is able to live. He turns now with the kisses, but again, the angle of the tornado is there perfectly. He puts the top of the kisses. The supernova's out. Shop of Rebellion. They've got to start retreating. Pure's in on top of Sableye here. Disarm for the pushback of the Deafening Blast. Will slow down the damage output from Pure. He's but it won't slow it from both Lays and Topson as they focus Sableye. Take him out. Yopaz is trying to push forward with the BKB. Pure's getting low, but the Thunder's there. He's able to get back at about two thirds HP. Arteezy's in on top of it, though, with the Eclipse. Beating down on the Pure, but he's ready for round two. Aegis is going to be in play. Yopaz will be able to pick off White Mon. The arrow, oh, the arrow. perfectly timed for the Elecor. Comes in on the Aegis response, straight onto Pure. Pure pots the Manta, but he's out. They kill off Pure, they kill off Lays. Shopper fire a belly and take the team fight. Oh, he wanted it bad, Owen. He wanted it. He went for it all before the Aegis popped. He's trying to find that good thunder. He pops that meta thinking, this is my chance. If I die, they're either going to retreat and I won't get my fight. So he laid it all on the line there. And uh, unfortunately for him, Shopify played around it extremely well. Nice arrow cover up there as well when he comes out on the respawn. And Arteezy holding that BKB till he really needed it on that one. So we can get the, get the lead in. Kit rack. He's looking for Thompson. He's able to get the telekinesis, but at the same time, the avalanche is there from nine class. Holding back Yopaj and Theola Core. The MP's laid down. They get the space to finish off the tier two tower. 15k lead now for Shopify. And they're fighting at the perfect moment here too, because, you know, we talk about like how fast you want to go and everything. If they delay a little bit, sure, they're still getting gold and stuff, but then those levels come out on the Snapfire. I mean, this is the whole point of the Midas. This hero does get a little bit crazy later on here with the multi uh, and the attack damage not not quite as crazy as you speak because you know the, the swapping of the talents but it nonetheless is a very item dependent hero or sorry um experience dependent hero oh and, uh, lays that's a familiar experience not the place to be there they're looking towards the high ground conda online here for Arteezy, uh, very frustrating hero, can kind of like poke and prod you with that Lucent Beam, especially with the Shard, so you're trying to do these like little defenses and stuff, like throwing out spells, and sometimes you just tank like four or 500 damage from a Lucent Beam. This push comes in hard, Luna and DK, Arteezy and Sabrelight taking down the buildings very easily onto the barracks, and we'll get scared back a little bit now, so once damage is done, they weren't able to fully commit for the push, and they do respect the respawns coming into play from Tundra. So, Tundra, able to keep their barracks alive for, for another day. They'll smoke up themselves, Tundra. See what sort of a hit they can find. Topson leading the way. That should help. Who's the one to be found first? I mean, Shopify, they've been pretty aware so far of these kind of moves coming in, and they will be again. They've got the Moonlight Shadow. Arteezy setting up in position. Do they see him in time? No, the Dragon Tail Stone's going to come out to Tops, and Tops is caught on the front lines. Arteezy will get broken, but the BKB's out. There's just no damage coming out of this Luna, but Arteezy's perfectly fine. Pure's getting kited here by the illusions of Sabrelight. He's straight up dead. The three of them are gone. <laughs> They only get kit rack. It cost them three lives, maybe more. Nightclass will be able to TP out. Lays will not. Four dead again on Tundra. As Shopify Rebellion, they are just a step ahead of them this game. They knew that move was coming. They were ready with the Moonlight. Gave them ample time to set up for a fight. And BKB comes out on Arteezy. No one's touching him. He's full HP no. the whole fight. Yeah, they, they just do not have the damage right now or the, uh, I guess more importantly, the positioning. Like, they're taking these fights in areas where, I mean, they're forced to. They, they have to take fights in bad spots because they're so far behind. So you have to try and catch your enemy unawares, but they were aware uh, in this one from the side of Shopify. So sometimes you get these really ugly looking fights in a game where you're playing a little bit desperate. And uh, those desperate measures, unfortunately, are not working out too well here for Tundra. As Shopify just looked great in this one. This tricore of the Luna Invoker and DK, and I feel like they all did a great job of keeping their farm up. They, they fought when their items were there. I mean, there were some times where it felt a little bit stressful to me, where like waiting for the DK Blink Dagger, uh, maybe like waiting for this Luna BKB. They missed out on getting that first Aegis. So even though a few things didn't go like maybe perfectly with how you want to play this, they, they kind of just chilled out. They looked very solid and uh, kind of just like cruising through this one. They're not falling into any of these traps of like uh, some sort of a, a crazy Thunder player or something. 
and they're just making it look like nice and easy breezy. I really need that BKB on pure. Oh wow. For Thank them you. to have a chance the next fight. Dota Plus hitting them with the big 0% right now. Not zero. a believer. Right zero. Oh damn. Okay. Zero. Uh, That's hard. I'd give, I'd give this a cheeky 2 or 3%. I'm, I'm pretty surprised I, I, it's zero. Zero is, I think that's, uh, yeah, that's very hard. <laughs> They've still got a chance here, I think. No, apparently not. It's Mathematically, not they don't know. <laughs> According to the numbers, no. Well, we'll that, see that'll come back up to 1% be before this game ends. Surely. I mean, if, if, if Pure can get his BKB, and if they, because we've got to remember as well, all these last few fights have been taken in a way where Topson is kind of just dying at, at the front. We haven't really seen a fight yet where Topson's BO now, but to just lay out Radiant's huge kisses. So that could attack. still come. If Tundra can just set the fights up in a better way, and they'll definitely have a chance to do that, of course, from their high ground defense, then maybe they can uh, try and keep this game alive. But everything else so far indeed does point towards Chopper Fire Rebellion being able to claim the win here. 27k lead, and they're ready to push for the final set of barracks. They get the jump in, they've caught Lays, immediately with the telekinesis into the Dragon Tail. Nine class will offer a round launch. In fact, Lays is going to be able to break away from them. RTG tries to chase forward, they'll turn with the Viper Strike, but the Mantas pop and shop a fire belly and they can have a quick poke and they can back off. The kisses are baited out, nothing's to be done there, no damage to be found. Shop a fire belly and they walk away with barely a scratch on them. Uh, but at least they didn't get that kill. So, TP in, good save with the cookie. I'll keep them up. Are they willing to come back again though? Yeah, probably. They have. They have Dragon Knight in his final form here. That's Black I mean, Elder Thompson Dragon. It's getting that point. Of course, the level 20 talent's been hit. Mm -hmm. You know, with the switch around from what it used to be in the past, it's it's not, you know, it's the level 25 that you really need to be able to do the crazy kind of kill everybody with your little shredder. But the level the 20 is still good. You get the three times multi shot. Yeah, that, that's when that's when that 0% it doesn't look so much 0% anymore. If Tundra can prolong the game to the point where the snap gets 25. At the moment, Shop of Fire Belly, and they're going to be doing everything well, it's a to make sure that doesn't happen. Let's see if they can make the jump on first. Yopaj is able to put the BKB. Same to be said if a Sableye, they turn, they kill off Nine Class immediately. Nine Class buys back. Shop of Fire Rebellion back, backing off for now. Pure pots the BKB. He's looking towards taking down an illusion, trying to see if he can get his hands on the deal of core, but the leaps are ready. And Shop of Fire Rebellion, again, they're just able to dip and dive out of the team fights as they wish and make sure that Tundra, they once again get nothing. And they immediately head towards the Roche. They're going to stun strike, and then he appears. There's the ping. So they're going to know that it's up. Arteezy appears to want a little bit more farm, though. Says his team's a little bit too slow. Okay, fine. I'll come back. Pops the Manta. And uh, no hope of them coming to fight this. No BKB on the, the Terror Blade. No quick smokes or something. This is guaranteed shop fight. And that'll be Aegis and Cheese going their way, so... Oh, the Ancient Guardian, though, for pure. That's nice Maybe one. that's what they that's need. A nice one. That's a lot of damage. This time's pretty insane, just the amount of damage it gives you. I see, uh, I mean, for the record, it, it also works for both Ancients. I've seen people not realizing yep. that a lot in, in chats and stuff. So it, it works offensively and defensively. Of course, it's very likely it's going to be uh, defensively for pure. But maybe in a certain situation here, is some sort of a trade. Perhaps it comes into play. Pure. He knows what needs to be done. He's got that rapier queued up. They have to have some sort of way of killing off the RTZ Luna through the BKB because as of now, those each and every fight, they, they can't touch him. 909. Arteezy had a tough game one, but this game, it's been perfect. Yeah, he's played pretty exceptionally here, and he's got a lot of help to cover him. You know, you look at this Marana, four staff, the pipe was picked up recently, Guardian Greaves. The other uh, had quite a few deaths in the early games. He was kind of running around a little bit, scouting things out, but as they've taken control of the map, now he's just your little friend sitting behind the help. They come a bit too far out of the base here. They want to grab White Mon. But uh, Lays, with the help of the Hurricane Pike push, will scoot him on back to the base. Dobson is on his journey to level 25. Uh, Pure appears to have given up hopes of a rapier and is instead queued up a Daedalus. Apparently, he's not as Aww. desperate anymore. 
We'll see. We'll see. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. We'll we'll maybe get the rape here from Tops and Snapfire if this game goes for another 20 minutes. Oh, jump for Stabilite. He's ready to go for Lays. Same time, Nine Class tried to get him, but he immediately gets Telekinesis. They had to put the BKB on RTZ and Stabilite. Great Tornado coming in a hold back, both Lays and Pure. Pure's getting low. The Deathwing Blast, the combo. He's out of the game. Dyer's middle tower. They burst through Pure. He does at least have buyback available. And BKB. Well, they're going to need to Good use news. it. Arteezy. Oh, he tries to blink in aggressively. They've got the Yules. They've got the Cookie. There's going to be the buyback from Pure. Quick Limit Cape and a Force Pack to get Arteezy back to safety. Sableye. He jumps in deep. The Cataclysm comes Whoa. out. Takes out Whitemon. Whitemon has got buyback. Lays puts the BKB. Tries to focus Arteezy, but Arteezy's able to step away. Tornado over towards top somebody forces himself off to the side. Will be able to dodge it. Back to the fountain to heal up. But the barracks are in trouble. Shopify Rebellion. Should be able to easily get the Mega Creeps. And in fact, they'll get the game. GG is called Shopify Rebellion. We'll take this game too and settle the score here in this series. One to one against Tundra. All right. Kind of a, uh, an answer back here in terms of how these games went. Very one-sided both times, really. Uh, it didn't necessarily feel like it was a, uh, an even match here, did it? Felt like it was, uh, I mean, even in one sense that they both end up one and one here but kind of felt like in one game shot by had the big edge here just had it all sorted out and sort of like ran with it and then game one it was just the opposite there for tundra so and in both games perhaps it was the off later picks <laughs> Dude, i think it really was that was kind Let of the down a bad path really. yeah you know game one we have a lace on the center he did clutch <laughs> yeah. and then game two on his viper it didn't really do a lot it's kind of all over the place uh, yeah, game one on the other side of things. Saberlight's axe. Well, you know, with respect to Saberlight, we won't talk about it. But his game two, lots of very good jumps and great farm on his DK. Yeah, yeah. just uh, really kind of 50 50 performances from both offlaners today, Trent. And odd enough, it was both times where it was an offlaner that got picked last. If this was supposed to be, in theory, your best hero of the draft, you had all the information when you made the axe pick, and they had all the information when they made the Viper pick. Uh, and yeah. both games, those yeah. were the worst looking yeah. heroes, to be honest. Yeah, true. I mean, I think so. both teams will probably take away something from this series with regards to yeah, maybe saving the offlane of that last pick in the draft. As, uh, it, it definitely was not used to its potential both times. Yeah, but maybe it's time to, uh, to stick with broken offlaners, I think. I don't know if we want to go too far down the, uh, the old hero pool. No, I think so. Get that center early, or get that DK early, and then job done. That certainly seems to be the case here in this game. And obviously in this game too, in this series, and in this game too, uh, good to see some other sort of uh, really nice CEO Page bringing in his Invoker. Um, I feel like we don't get to see this hero as much as I, I'd hope to. Very flashy mm -hmm. stuff. Great tornadoes and really made a, a lot of problems for Topson's snap fire this game. Um, yeah. So many the, times the, the, the tornado was there. Yeah. It really helped controlling these fights. I mean, we've, we've all had our uh, fill of defusal, it feels like, over the past couple months, and Invoker just adds on to that. Very, uh, very much a big nuisance when you're trying to handle all this, this mana drain here. So, game winner indeed. Shopify. Look, look how happy they seem. They do. They're pumped up after that. When they're going to be in a good spot on the uh, scoreboard now, I believe they will be in terms of wins, losses within the series. They're now, what, four and two. Yeah. And Tundra on the other side continue to be the opposite of that. They will be two and four, I believe. Uh, with both teams having another series to play, I believe, probably later today. So keep a lookout for those ones, boys and girls, uh, for, for the upcoming series. As for myself and Trent, that is it. Uh, we are going to have to move on with the show nice and quickly because, as you're probably aware, we're already pushing back a bit into the next series game time. So we're going to be able to have a very short break and get back into the Dota 2. Trent, any final yep. words to close up the series we saw ourselves here this morning or in the first half of the day? That's just, it's good Dota all around. Nice to see teams adapting to the patch here. And uh, I'm hoping to see uh, a few new heroes pop out. So uh, perhaps they will when uh, Ares and Fear take over. Indeed. Indeed. Ares and Fear will be here to join you, ladies and gentlemen, for the upcoming two series on this channel. So don't go anywhere. We'll have a short break and then it'll be straight over to them. From myself as Trent, we'll see you tomorrow.
Welcome back to Dream League Season 22. We're going to be bringing you the second half of the action here for Day 2 Fear and Aries. And with us, we're going to have OG taking on Bedroom for our third series. Fear should be a very exciting blockbuster between these two teams. Oh, definitely. I've been keeping an eye on OG ever since they made a couple changes. They added Tomato to the roster, so bringing in another South American talent on top of Whisper. And very excited to see what he's going to bring on the side of OG. Without a doubt. And of course, their opponents being Bet Boomer on a bit of a roll currently. Really good showing at Bet Boom Dacha with the addition of Miero. Um, and I mean, that was a third place finish where, of course, they got knocked out by Liquid in the lower bracket finals. And then so far, they're five and one. Their only map they've dropped was to Virtus Pro. And that was a pretty crazy game. They went 60 plus minutes. There was a Mars having like a Revenant's Brooch and triple rapier to, to close out that game as well. So uh, currently yeah. Bedroom look, looking very good with this new team. I mean, Bedroom always looks good, right? They're a team that is always in the talks of winning the whole thing from the beginning, right? And they've always just, always just a little bit short, but maybe with the addition of Mero, this could be what has been missing for them, right? Before, they weren't able to make it work with Pure. They were still like a top three, top five team in the world. And there's oftentimes we think that Boom were going to win multiple tournaments, but they always fell a little bit short. So perhaps change is something that teams need to get over some hurdles. And maybe with Miro, they can finally get to the point where they can win a tournament. Yeah, we'll see if this could be that tournament for them, which gives them a lot of momentum. I'm going, of course, you've got some other ones coming up in a couple of months, being Birmingham, really that big one in particular. And uh, unfortunately for OG, they, they weren't able to qualify to Birmingham, but still with this new roster, like you said, Tomato coming through to South Americans. I mean, Tomato's also previously played um, with Ari before on TSM. So there is some you know, previous history with these two guys. And you know, OG looking really good, man. Four and two have to be very impressed with the results they've had so far. They they had a 1-1 tie versus Falcons and today versus Gaming Gladiators. So some, some pretty difficult opponents that they're able to get some, some victories against. Yeah, and OG's a team that for a while now, they've been reforming and trying to find their new identity since their TI win. Seb stepping back into it. I even had the chance to talk to him, ask him where his passions are at, because sometimes after you win a TI, not to mention two, your motivations can kind of dwindle. But he seems as hungry as ever and really just wants to win again, playing with some of these new young bloods, as we see Whisper here, coming from the South American region, has played on many good teams, Beast Coast, EG, etc. Always the standout player, I'd say, for almost every single team he's been on. And I don't think that has changed as well, moving to OG. I saw him yesterday play a game of offlane Rubik, where he just rushed Dagon 5 and just completely destroyed the game against Falcons too, who just won the most recent them to land so that was also very incredible to see so whisper definitely one of those players that you have to keep an eye out and the hardest part about playing against whisper is he doesn't have a small hero pool he can play just about anything and he's damn good at just about everything yeah which really enables you in the draft where you you're not you're not too worried about his heroes getting banned out where you have to prioritize his heroes early in the first phase. You can you know, potentially give him a counter matchup, which we did although speak about yesterday, where at the moment, a lot of the picks towards the end of the draft are, are being more tailored towards the mid lane just because of the tempo control. But this is something that Whisper has the capability to, to be able to take over a game if he does have that good matchup. Yeah, I think it's really risky to give your offlaner a last pick. like. Most of the time it doesn't work out, but for some reason, Whisper seems to be one of those players that can make it work, right? He's one of those players that can really just like have that deep hero pool and know these weird matchups to find that perfect hero that you can actually throw into the offlane. But you also have a mid laner as well who can kind of like allow you to do that. And BZM has been a player that at first I thought was pretty greedy. He would play like this Tinker, Arc Gordon, like wants to like play super high macro heroes, but over time, he's been shifting and playing a bit more of like the tinies, the primal beasts moving around the map. And there's been a lot of versatility that will help Whisper as well kind of shine on the team. Yeah, of course, that's going to take time for, for him to be able to grow and um, build that hero pool that, that requires in, in a competitive uh, scene like this. And you know, like you said, we have seen him be able to play some of those tempo heroes and always Storm's very good. And but always you, you think of the puck as well. Earlier today, he did play one of those greedy heroes in the Invoker. 
whenever he plays that hero, he goes for the Exhort Invoker, and he completely popped off in that game earlier today. So, uh, yeah, he's been looking good. The boy's been looking good as well. But again, this is going to be a very difficult opponent. Bedroom, you know, maybe this is that honeymoon phase, like you were kind of saying yesterday, that some teams get when they're when they're newly formed because they're they're on a bit of a roll. And I I, just, I really wonder like how different the atmosphere is like um, communication wise and just in game too because a lot of people were brought up maybe it was a critique that they were a little bit too farm intensive with pure being of course previously a carry then going to the off lane and now you have more of like a, a traditional off lane so to say in, in Mirror. Maybe, but I never really found Pure to be very farm heavy as an offlaner, so I think that'd be kind of like a cop out kind of excuse. I will say Pure's hero pool may have been limited. That's about it. Like he would play a lot of like Legion Commander, Axe, and I don't. He was just running around the map getting kills, and a lot of the times he was MVP of the match by doing that. But perhaps, yeah, you have your traditional offlaner. With that, you get uh, probably a more diverse, wider hero pool. More specialist heroes can come out, and maybe as a drafter, it allows you to draft a way that you previously couldn't have drafted. So we'll have to see. I mean, the shoes are pretty big to fill because that old Vet Boom team, they were really good. <laughs> they were a very, very good team. They always owned the the laning stage and it's just kind of like the mid game lane game where they kind of fell off maybe they can find that stability here with Miro and be able to like keep that strong laning stage but also transition it into more of like a stable mid game and a better late game yeah and, that, and that's always been the team like bringing up late game where they've really shined in because you, if you take a look you know from from one all the way down to five you mentioned yesterday like you really need support to be able to have impact in the late game and you don't have really better supports in Toronto, Tokyo and, and Save to be able to do that. I mean, Save has been known as you know, one of the better position forwards in, in Eastern Europe in particular and then just the world in general. And then Toronto, Tokyo, of course, previous TI winner in the mid lane, he's very mechanically gifted and, and we do see some like very interesting ideas in regards to him trying to scale. I know when he plays his Undying, like late game, we see like his Ag Scepter and him having like 10K health and then just running yeah. to the middle of the fight so you know th this is a team that that really has kind of the full package all around but it's just at the end of the day are they going to be able to get the job done i mean that's always the question and like let's not beat around the bush when it comes to bet boom team tilting has always been a, a factor for them and we've seen it before i think gpk is one of the players that is susceptible to that a lot where if things don't go well for him sometimes He'll start to play a bit worse. That has gotten better over time and the team in general. They need to be able to just find their composure. We all know they're a team capable of winning a LAN. Like nobody would be surprised if Bet Boom won a LAN. It's just they have an issue getting there. And there's something that's a mentality thing with them where they just can't cross that finish line. And OG, of course, not talking a lot about them winning tournaments yet. It's just they haven't really shown too much yet that they are in the running right now. Right now, I would say they're kind of in like the phase of building the roster up. They have so many new players, even recently made a new addition. They're trying to find their footing still, where they still need a lot of groundwork to be laid until I feel like this is a team that's going to start winning championships. But that can happen, honestly, overnight, if you really find that right like success when finding like what the right hero picks are going to be for the team, what the right chemistry will be. It's all about finding that. And some teams just can find it very quickly where others might struggle to find it. Do you feel like with like new teams getting formed and even just one play coming in like Tomato, for example, that it can be, is it like a really big reset in the groundwork or is there not as much work that they need to do? They've, they've already got the kind of the foundation set. It can go both ways, right? Normally, if you make a roster change, there's a reason that you probably won't know unless you're part of the team, right? And that small reason can most likely make everyone's mentality better. It's like, oh, we weren't winning because we could never do this. And then this new guy's eager to jump in and be like, oh, I can do that. Like, that's no problem. That's something I can do. And then everyone's like, all right, so we can finally do this thing that we couldn't do before. And now everyone's like mentality will start being better. And then the new player just has to pretty much like fill the role of what was missing. Because you don't bring in a new player unless there was like an issue that needed to be solved. And that player thinks they can solve that issue for the team. So the, it should start off good, right? If, especially if you come out winning, the team will be like really refreshed and feel really good about going into all their matches. But it can also just be abandoned. If there is more underlying issues, just replacing one player isn't going to like completely fix that. If it wasn't, if you weren't completely sure that was the one issue that you had, right?
and I continue to stay on the topic of Tamaru here. What do you feel like his biggest strengths are? Because like if we, we were mentioning yesterday, like speaking about mm-hmm. carries in particular, you know, Ame being very farm intensive, like your classic late game carry, Durachu more very aggressive, able to get involved in some of the early game fights. Like when, when you when you think of Tamaru, what do you think his kind of style is as a position one? I mean, his overall style is stable. Like he doesn't do anything out of the box. Uh, he's very quick. Like, I remember I played with him for a while ago. I was really impressed. Uh, his APM is really high, where he's always clicking around, looking at things. His understanding of, like, what is happening in the game is very, very high. And I think that's through his strength of where his stability comes from. He knows what item build. You're not going to see him build the wrong items, right, in most of the games. He's going to go right item build. He's going to have those timings. He's going to know where to do what and when to do it. So I think his biggest strength is just he's a stable carry player. He doesn't make many mistakes, and that's going to be very important to be able to win tournaments. Yep, um, and that's one of the key attributes, right, in any competitive scene is just being able to every single day show up and be able to put your best results in and and have that stability and and consistency as well is going to be huge. So, um, you with that being said, we do have a draft getting underway very, very shortly here. OG is going to be on the Radiant side. They've got second pick, Bet Boom on Dyer's side with first pick as well. So let's get that one up on screen. See, not too far through it at the moment. Don't have our picks just yet, but it does look like the bands. There's nothing too crazy. Yeah, it's just taking a look. I was looking at the picks for this tournament in general here, and there's a lot of interesting heroes that are coming out. So pretty much the most banned heroes of the tournament are you know, the Chen, the Dragonite, Timber, Mars, and Batrider. And I think so far going into this game, doesn't look too different. Maybe Enigma snuck in there. But those are the top five, and all those are going to get banned out. A lot of the heroes like Venge kind of got nerfed out, and we were not seeing a ton of. But the interesting thing I did see, you know how I talked about Slark and how this hero got nerfed really hard this patch in almost every single way? His win rate is 11% right now in the tournament. And that is insane to see this hero just fall off so hard. Kind of crazy to see. But yeah, these first phase bans were still kind of like shifting through them. We're figuring out like what's good here, but we definitely still know Dragonite, Chen are still good Dota heroes as they're continuously getting banned and Timbersaw as well. I think those are like the big three right now and I think we're seeing a lot of Mars too because it's kind of just a it's a popular hero. But out of the heroes that are just banned all the time, their win rate isn't even that particularly good, which is interesting to see outside of like Timbersaw. What, what do you think about when you see Mirani getting picked up? Because I feel like at the moment, I know... Falcons are really prioritizing. I mean, of course, snaking previously with, with the success on Tundra, that was a, a key strategy for them. And uh, I know Toronto Tokyo really likes the, the Mariner as well. I'm not really seeing many other teams put as much priority. I guess actually looking at the pick rate, I see 15 picks on Mariner so far. Maybe we just haven't yeah. covered that many games, but like, is this just a stable hero overall? Like, what, what do we think about the Mariner? So I'm still trying to figure it out because yeah, it is. Okay one of the heroes that is getting a lot of attention it's doing really well it has a pretty good pick rate it's not like 100 percent on the radar for every team right it's just the teams that are picking it are doing well with it some games it gets banned some games it goes untouched some games it gets picked but i think the biggest reason for why mirana is seeing some more play is a lot of the other position fours or fives from the last patch like the venge like i mentioned kind of got nerfed pretty hard lion got nerfed really hard too so these must be the next heroes going down the list that didn't get nerfed that still seem to be pretty good or there's something else that I might be missing. So I'm glad to be able to cover a game with the Marana so I can keep a closer eye on it. it what, like, it is also partly the Moonlight Shadow that just adds a key element to unlocking like how a team is able to play across the map? Because I'm, I'm just trying to think of what some of the other things are on this hero. Well, a lot of your offlaners right now do have a stun, so it's Marana's always been a classic support hero, and the Moonlight Shadow has always been a very good spell. I just feel like we haven't seen Marana in a while because Lion and Venge were just too good, right? Sure. And I think without people picking Lion and Venge anymore, you just 
as I mentioned before, you just kind of go down the list. It's like some Rubik, some Techies, some Marana, what's better? And I'm not playing position four per currently, so I don't really have like the insider deets on like what the tier list of position fours are at the moment. But it always seems to be around the same cycle of heroes that I kind of mentioned. It's either some Line, some Rana, you use some Skywrath occasionally, the Techies will come out, and I took both of them in this one. Rubik is another one that's always going to be in the discussion. And whatever one just has the better spells for that patch, the sports will just kind of gravitate towards. Okay. Um, let's see what Seb wants to pick up in particular. Of course, there's going to be no Wind Ranger, no Io. Uh, we did see OG early today. They ran the Tiny for BZM. Uh, almost certain. I'm like 90% certain it was OG that played the mid-Tiny. But of course, there's going to be flexibility if Ari wants it. So more than likely, you're going to probably reveal where this Tiny... Go I mean, you've got Invoker. So, so um, Ari is going to pick up the Tiny. But, uh, very intrigued on what the offlane is going to be for Whisper then. You know, no Enigma. O often we get ranged heroes to be able to combine with the Tiny. Whisker, Whisper can play most all the ranged heroes. It's not going to be Enigma, as you mentioned, but we saw his Rubik the other day. Of course, he can play <laughs> Snapfire. His Bat Rider is pretty legendary. That one's also <laughs> banned. There's a, a Rubik coming out, so that's like... Normally, you'd be like, oh, that's the support, but now nah, that's a flex pick for sure. TBD. There's... Let's see how much they want to flex it. If they pick a carry here, they really want to flex this Rubik. Okay. Well, there are already carries that come to mind, seeing the Centaur probably Techies lane. Luna. Luna's the normal one. Wraith Ooh. King? Okay. Ooh. Well, that Good. hero is... Uh, I talked about Radiance Carriers, right? So I'm a little excited about this, but I also feel like this hero is still garbage. So <laughs> it goes both ways. I mean, this hero is definitely good for Centaur. I say definitely. It's, it's pretty good because normally you get spammed out really hard with double edge and kicked out. With the Vampiric Aura, you do have the ability to sustain a little bit more. You're pretty tanky. I think Luna was like more stable that I see a lot versus the Centaur. But I am excited to see the Wraith King, but he is going to be playing versus the Pango, which obviously is not very fun as a Wraith King because you have no way of hitting the Rolling Thunder. You're playing versus a Diffusal Blade. So that's going to be kind of annoying to play against there. Tough game. I mean, I, I, they say it's a tough game, but you know, I said Tomato is a stable carry player. I wonder if he can make this work, and let's not forget that Wraith King technically can be played in the offlane. There was a patch where we did see a lot of that one, so I won't rule it out, but I think more than likely, this will be Tomato playing this Wraith King here, and let's see what he has to show us. I think Radiance is for sure the build, but we'll see if his other abilities are good enough. I just always kind of look at Wraith King, and he hasn't got buffed enough, and he got nerfed really hard from when he was good, That I don't think there's been enough buffs to justify this hero being strong, but maybe there's some new tech out there. I'm ready to bust out the notepad here. So I I know Skeeter played it earlier today. Apparently they also have a second game on the Wraith King so far that I have not seen. So uh, two games they've got and 100% victory, uh, percent rate okay. I should say. And um, he did go Radiance, of course, that game. And that was with a less rack, at least the game I saw. So there was, of course, a little bit of value with the um, Braith Fire Blast to be able to set up for the Split Earth. Um, but that was that game, and, and Skeeter has always been known as like a, a Wraith King specialist. So um, yeah. let's see how Tomato is going to be able to perform with it. I mean, I think it just goes to show you that Radiance is really strong this patch. If Wraith King is back, it's really all there is to him because this is just a natural item for him. And I also believe if Wraith King's back because Radiance is back, so is Lifestealer, so is Spectre, so is every other hero that. Radiance is just a natural item on. And it's just like we kind of talked a lot about the Yasha, not the Yasha, the Kaya being strong this patch and Sage and Yasha being stronger. Radiance SNY is a pretty standard build too. So these heroes like Wraith King can also buy this if they want to. So yeah, I think we'll have to see if it, Radiance is really that strong of an item with the Mage Slayer being nerfed. I think that helps it a lot, and plus it getting buffed. Very curious to see what they're going to do here. And we don't know yet where this Rubik is going still. They they have a lot of faith in Whisper. And they're like, okay, buddy, we can either let you play this Rubik or we're going to give you last pick. And we were just singing his praises earlier about he's the type of player that you can give last pick and he can perform on. And they're going to stick with that. They're going to give him the last pick. And we will indeed see how he's been able to perform with the last pick. And Bet Boom team, their job is to 
make it difficult for them to be able to punish that. And there is still an alchemist in the pool. I feel like that has to be an auto ban hero whenever you're playing versus a Wraith King. But they decided to ban Terrorblade and Sven instead. Maybe they have a plan. If you do pick the alchemist here on Bedboom team, OG has something to punish it. But I'm not entirely sure what that would look like. What what else is the because I I'm just thinking of the the skeletons for the Gravers grade. What what else is it with the Wraith King and the Alchemist? Well, that's the big thing, right? Like you just get giga farmed. You just follow the Wraith King around and you just keep killing his skeletons and you just get so much net worth. But on top of it, you can just man fight the Wraith King, no problem, because you have that region. You're big and tanky, so when the reincarnation goes off, you're not the type of hero where. You just used your whole skill set and combo and you commit like a faceless void where you commit everything for one life. That's not how like Alchemist goes. So you respawn on top of the Aliston Cloud again. You respawn with the concoction like still off cooldown. So you're able to just fight through two lives pretty easily on top of just getting incredibly farmed. Uh, how does a life still also fit into the potential here for Bet Boom, if that's something else they're considering. I guess they got the pick, and all right, well, we're gonna see if Phantom lands us. So this is a hero coming from the grave as well. I guess protected a yep. little bit with the with the Doxy getting banned. I would consider the Offlane Phoenix for Whisper here. Or would he pull out his signature Tinker? I don't know if he would do that, but that'd be pretty cool. So yeah, PL is really good versus Wraith King too. If, if you go the other route of burning his mana. But that hasn't been as big of an issue since the shard introduction. There, of course, there's a timing where it's really annoying. And Wraith King obviously doesn't kill illusions. So from the side of OG here, they need something that can kind of deal with illusions a bit better. Oh. And Bristleback will be the choice. This is another hero that I have not seen in a previous patch. Not sure if it's good this patch. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Whisper thinks it's good versus the PL, and they think this should be enough to deal with illusions. We'll have to see if that's true. I have a weird feeling. Yeah, they haven't played it so far, actually, OG, in the, one of their games first, G2 IG. Let me check what the build was for Whisper. He went. Actually, did he play it? Who played it? I clicked on the wrong Dota buff. Um, sorry, one second. Because I remember them see, uh, remember seeing them play it. He went. Uh, uh, Scepter, BKB, Blink, and that's it. So nothing too crazy, pretty stock standard. Uh, I, I've kind of heard from the last patch that the Mage Slayer was one of the big issues with the Bristleback. I mean, the, the, this hero relies pr pretty much solely on, on all his spell damage. Sure, as the game yeah. goes on, there's going to be a lot of right clicks, but um, maybe with the Mage Slayer, of, uh, of course, being nerfed like it was, still there could be value in it for, for GPK if he wants to go down that route this game to really minimize the effect out of the Bristleback, but um, it's potentially popping up on the radar now for, for some of these players, some of these teams with that Mage Slayer nerf. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. You're seeing a lot of heroes come back from the dead just because of one item, right? The Lestrak, the Bristleback, Wraith King, a lot of heroes up by the Radiance are coming back. So I, I honestly think most of the time and the patches, items kind of dictate the meta more than the hero changes. Like I always look at the item changes and I think what heroes can use these more so than the individual changes that are done to each hero. And it's kind of like shows them you know, this patch as well. Mage Slayer getting nerfed, a bunch of new heroes that didn't really get touched in the patch are just coming back. Well, we're going to be in for a tree. We've got a couple of new heroes from, from either side. Phantom Lancer, of course, for Bet Boom, OG, with the Wraith King, Bristleback as well, of course. And, and really what I'm excited for is BZM's Invoker again earlier today. Absolutely popped off for OG. Uh, they, they've still got some stuns to, to work with as well. Ari on the tiny, of course, down bottom. We're going to have a double stun to be able to set up. And seems like BZM is still one of the few invokers that really prioritizes going down for the, the exalt route. So we'll see how much the sun strike is going to be able to provide some assistance in these side lanes early on. It's a late smoke for Bet Boom. Oh, this is interesting. Looks like they're trying to catch some right on the runes here normally you do pop that smoke right away and just drop a ward so your enemy can't see it but this is creative but it looks like they're only gonna bring four players this nightfall to stick behind so if there's a set set up a trap set up for og could be bad for bed boom oh 
auto. They're going to be fine. Pops of smoke, they got this ward. It's in a relatively decent spot to be able to scout them out. And Nightfall is going to get the top bounty and the second one as well. So four bounties to start from Bet Boom. All right. Well, I guess they ended up... They didn't get a kill, but that's even almost better than getting a kill. Nightfall realizing that they can't really kill his hero if he skills his W, so he's able to get both the bounty runes there and kind of like playing mind games there, I want to say. I think uh, Panga was another hero, actually. I know when we were bringing up the win rate before on the, the Slark being like 11%, I know Panga is struggling a, a lot at the moment as well. He's got... 10 picks and only 30% win rate for this hero. Yeah, that's not so good, but if this isn't the game for Pango, then maybe Pango was not the hero to be played anymore. And I think, did they change anything about the hero itself, or was it just like the Diffusal Blade and Mage Slayer nerf? Uh, just the item nerfs. I see. Maybe he just struggles with mana. I mean, 50 mana to cost your Diffusal Blade, it's a lot. It does add up over time. It's going to be nice to finally see the, the Pango potentially falling out of the meta. <laughs> yeah. That'll never He's, happen. Uh, Wait yeah. until next patch. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be back. <laughs> yeah, someone, had, someone, one of the dev teams, one of the individuals there obviously likes Pango enough to be able to keep him for such a long time. I will say, I, I find him a very interesting hero to watch just because he's someone that can control the tempo, but he, he's been in the meta for, for far too long. I like some yeah. other heroes to be able to come back. That would be nice. I've been waiting for Klinks to come back for a long time, but I think I'll just keep waiting. Do they? Does he need a rework, or is that... Oh, and again, does he need another rework? <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. He needs this 20th rework. When was the last time... Besides the support that he was actually mm -hmm. viable. Tomato? Oh, nice get up save. Jump it over the tree line, Tomato. Not gonna get the double edge just yet, although the damage over time, not enough as well. Tomato will be okay, has a silver ready to go. It'll help for sure, but this lane is not going well for Tomato. This is a very strong lane to be fair. Like Techies plus Centaur is an absurdly strong lane. So no matter what he plays, he might struggle a bit. But if you are playing the Wraith King and this one specifically as a melee hero, if things go bad, it's going to just get worse. And he's even missing, unfortunately, a little bit of free CS on the tower, which I feel like he kind of desperately needed there. But it happens. Bot lane, I think, is just officially won here for the side of Bet Boom. And it looks like dead. Some, yeah, the, he's just He's just uh, playing with him. He just wanted to get the Lotus. He didn't really want to commit into there. Sometimes it's better, like, because the lane control. Oh, well, top lane, though. Right. Nice arrow. Toronto Tokyo somehow sneaks that past Whisper. I don't know if the Ari's still going to be okay. It'll be fine for now. And mid lane, how that one's going. Pretty much even, right? On this side. Neither one of them are really taking a huge lead, so... As to expect, I would say in most mid lane matchups nowadays, it should be about even, unless there's like some Huskar or Viper pick and play. And Tomato, is a, he's in big trouble here, potentially. Dave, going to be able to connect with his spells. Seb's doing a pretty good job to be a bit of a nuisance here for Miero. Now they're going to have the Sunstrike as well. First spot will be picked up before BZM is able to get some revenge. Nonetheless, sir, and Vokos hitting the board, so nice injection of gold. Uh, of course, Betboom, who finds that first blood bounty, will be the Centaur. Yeah, really big for Miro there. And still, Tomato on this bot lane, like, he's caught up a little bit in the CS, but he's not going to have lane control anymore. He's going to be pushing into the Centaur. Centaur now has Helm of the Iron Will. It is a little bit nerfed, so it's not as obnoxious as it was before, but oh, still very, lane. very strong here. Hey, this an aggressive TP from save. I feel like the Centaur is going to be pretty okay by himself, and... Blast off sets up for the arrow. Whispers survivable. These ones oh, are making too. them work for it. It's like nonetheless. Man, he's not okay, like bot. <laughs> okay, never mind. What tomato with the stun? Telekinesis to set up another stun strike Dying kill for BZM. Very similar to earlier today. Actually, he didn't get the kill that one. It was the assist. 
And that's a really big kill too, because Centaur dies with his creep wave under the tower, so he's gonna miss a lot of CS there. Going from, that's how you pretty much kill your snowball, is when your support leaves and then you end up dying. But I think Miro just did not expect the sun strike. We talked about it before, that it's just a different style in Tomato Bot lane. Oh, oh what nice a telekinesis. <laughs> Still got the reactions on point last second for the blast off was able to connect. Yeah, that was quite good there. But yeah, Miro probably just doesn't expect the sun strike as much, even though he saw it already. And this is the difference between BZM and other invokers, right? He's playing with that sun strike build, three points in the egg sword already. So you gotta be careful on these side lanes. Y'all really seeing top lane get very difficult for Nightfall as well. I mean, we've spoken about Tomato having a, a rough time bottom as they're gonna dive him out of the towel. Wraith Fire Blast is a bit of a, a deterrent, but yeah, we're seeing top 33 and four compared to the 23 and two. And this doesn't get really any easier for Nightfall anytime soon. It'll get easier at level six. And the reason for that is then he'll just go jungle. <laughs> And then he just won't interact with Bristleback anymore. But you can see at least Nightfall does have quite a bit of armor. So he's going to tank these. But there's no way to dispel these. All oh, the Sun Strike will miss. But they're chasing him out of lane stage. And that's going to oh, GPK is here. Are they killing him? This bird is, of course, away from any of the walls. So it will be a little bit difficult for GPK, especially if he's going to miss that first roll. And we see the quills really starting to stack up, so Toronto, Tokyo, and Nightfall will not be able to help out in that attempt, and that is a wasted rolling thunder. It did, however, buy a little bit of space for Nightfall, and now Whisper is out of mana, so... There's something, but not ideal, of course, for sure. Bottom lane? Another attempt on Miro. Looks like he will be able to sidestep the Sun Strike, so we'll take up Another a lot of damage there. nonetheless from the Skeletons. And you've got this Catapult Wave as well. I don't know if I've ever seen Bezium miss a Sun Strike before, but he's missed two in a row now. Very uncharacteristic from him. <laughs> it is the reason we don't see the Exorcist Invoker, right? It, these Sun Strikes are not easy to hit. Ari's going to poke his head out of the tree line. There we go, that's that stun strike to connect. Makes it much easier. We got three stuns down bottom to be able to set up for BZM, so Ari. Recognizing it really needs to do nothing top lane. Whisper we're perfectly fine by himself, so can start to influence some of the other lanes. You've got the power runes up in not 10 seconds, so he's also gonna be able to, to help out BZM here. Yeah, and BZM already has his Midas online too, so he's Straight chillin'. I think Invoker's worst spell by far. Oh, hold on. Good arrow, I guess. Just <laughs> right to the face. <laughs> Taking a range up. I think Invoker's, I don't know if you agree, worst spell is probably Forge Spirit, right? Yeah, it's not mm. kind of what it used to be. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's the reason why we don't see a lot of the Exort Invoker. Oh, Sunstrike again? Didn't see if that actually as well. They're making a jump. You know, timing out of the cold snap, and now we're seb teeping in. That boom, gonna have to think twice. The uh, initiation is a little bit messy onto onto BZM. They're still making it go down bottom, but without the stun strike, extra damage. Miro is gonna be fine. Radiant when is that back up though? Because he could die if he gets a random stun strike. Looks like they might need it for the kill to save potentially. Stampede to help get away at the moment, but the toss goes at the distance. And again, the Sun Strike's gonna be on the mark. They're also going for Whisper in the top jungle. This time, GPK's in a much better spot. Again, the roll's gonna miss. It's not gonna matter though. Finally, they're able to get a pretty big kill onto Whisper, slowing down what the Bristleback has is, is been able to pick up in this early game. So I was a little concerned that this PL, like, what do they have for him? And he's. He's picking up his farm now, and he's level 6 now. He's going to keep it in creeps, go straight for the Aghanims, and become a threat. And I was like, how can they deal with this? But meanwhile, the Ari... Yeah, he's dead. Well, right click is dead indeed. Are they going to be able to get some revenge, though? You've got Whisper actually nearby. 
They're going to be able to deal with the Bristol back now. Seb Swashbuckle from downtown secures the kill. Even Nightfall is going to TP in a Phantom Lancer. Looking to get involved 10 minutes into the game. It's a big kill if they can get a second death on a roll into Whisper. Tornado is going to make it a little bit more difficult now for them to continue the chase. And yeah, looks like Beth Boom nonetheless will be happy with the kills they've gotten onto the supports. Hold that though, GPK is fine. Oh, he denied it because he was in mid animation. Oh, he did get it. Oh, I thought yeah. he. What? It says he denied it on the yeah, screen. That's a, a weird one. Same that is frame. a weird one. I don't, know, I don't know what it is. I've seen it before. I don't, I don't remember what the reasoning was. All Same right. frame kind of stuff. Beta that's game. It's all right. Yeah, that's fine. As long as the game's unbeta, it's forgivable. But yeah, I was getting to the point that BZM is incredibly farmed this game, and he's going for his normal, like, I'm going to carry the game kind of invoker build, which I think he's actually in a great position to do so. And he might even be able to out-carry this PL in some regards so with all the spells he'll have at his disposal. You have to keep in mind, yeah, PL, you can dispel, like, the Cold Snap Urn combination, right? But you're not even going that if you're on BZM, right? He's going for an Orchid. He's just going to go straight for the jugular here and play more of, like, that right-click style, play around the Alacrity, and the strength of his Exhort spells. Double Forge Spirit is up. The split push game will commence as well. So even though Tomato is really struggling, and even Whisper isn't having a great game himself, BZM is in a prime spot to kind of just like take over this game once he does finish that Orchid. Yeah, and I really wonder what the item progression is going to be after for the Invoker. I know there are some people, um, you, you can look at like the the Witchblade into like Hurricane Pike. I know maybe if there's a PL in a game, there could be arguments for Mjolnir, or you can just go for your, your, your classic, like your Boots of Travel, Blink, BKB, Scepter, Refresher, Octarine, whatever. So I um, wonder how BZM is going to feel it's uh, required out of him for this game. Because like you said, he, he's got some cores that will need a little bit of time to also have some involvement in the early game. You're really relying on the supporters once again. Power room will be taken away from GPK. <laughs> and yeah, on the other side of the coin is GPK. He's also not having the best game. He's still doing better than the other two cores, so I guess he's on par, which is fine. I think what I'm really going to be looking out for is what can GPK do with Miero once they have their Diffusal Blade slash Blink Dagger online, because I think the tempo for Bepboom team should be higher in a very traditional sense of like they have more stuns than the enemy that can control team fights because their other cores are gonna be a farming wraith king invoker hard to quantify like what his impact is going to be with this orchid because they could change a lot but one thing is clear cut is like when you have blink on centaur and you have diffusal on pango you want to go fight Radiant are yep. scanning. see if they're going to be able to get those items that are quick enough rate to be able to contest OG because this scepter is very short. They completed for Whisper. 1400 gold should be able to get that pretty quickly. We've got some stacks at the moment towards the triangle as well. And I guess either side, more OG, they've got a much easier time with being able to open up the map and, and take these objectives. Bedroom definitely do struggle with that, just naturally with their heroes. So we'll see how they're going to be able to find these objectives early on. just gonna play the PL game I think you just only react to what your opponent does and make sure that you're continuously farming but it looks like they want to contest the stack positioning though. great position from Seb acting as that smoke block also splash buckle and, and gets away so I mean they're probably still gonna be able to take a decent chunk of the stack OG actually want to take the fight are right, he's gonna get the toss before the shield crash it's a pretty good avalanche as well, making it a little bit frustrating for, for Bedroom to, to get a quick and easy kill and look for their secondary target. This Whisper falls pretty low, but importantly, they got the stack. And they just lost R. Yeah, pretty good. 3k net worth lead now for Bedroom team here. Mainly, most of it coming off the back of just Whisper kind of struggling and mainly Tomato struggling really hard in the supports. Also, I guess more than anything, the supports are really struggling and just the net worth department. This Marana is incredibly high net worth at 4k, Techie's at 3k as well. Stampede, there's the blink reveal, that's oh, a big one as die. well. Top net worth on OG, Bing B's Yems. Gonna be shot down thanks to the blink on Miro. 
a prime target for them. They're going to be able to transition this into a T1 tower now. And that's exactly what you need to do if you're Bepoon team. You already shut down the Wraith King. He's not going to do anything explosive this game. He's going to sit back. He's going to farm. Same with Whisper. You see, he just wants to farm. So if you can shut down BZM before he becomes a threat, and it, you're, of course, it's, it's going to take him a bit longer to become a threat because he is playing that X Sword Invoker. He doesn't just need a Blink Dagger and go. So he needs a little more time. If you can stop him from getting this Orchid, if he dies one more time, his game will pretty much be ruined, I want to say. So now is a really good time. Blink Dagger online, Diffusal online. They're going to feed nothing. Them. Feels so bad for Ari. I'll hold that whisper. Five heroes into the Bristlebacks domain. I got the Spirit Vessel. Actually, still not even picked up just yet, but it's not going to matter. The overwhelming amount of damage with all four of these heroes nearby, and they're able to bring him down that fast, even without the vessel completed. Which I believe he now has enough gold on Toronto, Tokyo. He didn't have his back turned, unfortunately. He was walking to go down the ramp and turned right into the centaur. And this is. Not like the Bloodstone Bristleback we saw before, where all these BBs were doing one point on the Bristleback. That way you can get more kill shots. He actually maxed it out. So this is a game where he is going to be a lot more tanky if he has his back face towards him. So finding a way to turn him around is going to be pretty critical or ignoring him. I think PL is another reason when you get that Diffusal Blade, it'll be pretty difficult for this BB to enter these fights because you're just going to constantly have your mana burned away. Radiance uh, how can OG find a way for Ari to actually get a little bit of farm? Like, this blink dagger. Impossible. Like, okay, it's just it's not even a hope now. It's just like maybe you know, you 22, you know? 23 minutes in. Like, the only way they're going to find his farm is if they get kills. Maybe here they could pick up a kill. Here they're with the last remnants of the stampede. Still going to be able to get some separation. Whisper is going to be cautious, man. This vessel is out. We see how much damage they're truly able to pump out, even with the back turn. Knight tossed away. He just sets up for the double stun, though. Miera, no hesitation. And now BZM's going to be next, even with Nightfall showing up to the team fight. Tomato, he TP'd in. There's nothing the Wraith King can do to offer any assistance for OG. He'll die the once, and without a doubt, he should die the second time as well. As Bet Boom, they're going to be able to continue to chase him up the high ground. Ari, he will not be able to escape as well. OG are crumbling. It's a 9,000 net worth lead for Bet Boom. Yeah, it, it's getting really tough to play this game at this point. This Bristleback, that was kind of like his timing to play this hero. He did not shut down the PL. Like, we were hoping he had the capability as the last pick. The mid lane, it's just, BZM had a great game, which is he didn't have enough time. And it's like, the timings were too fast. As now, the wheels are just falling apart. Seb, good jump to the high ground, but I don't think that's going to save you, buddy. The damage is just too much from save, and he's going to go down there. And you mentioned Ari, where is he going to get his farm? The What map is there to farm on? <laughs> like, the Wraith King is pushing out every single lane. He needs farm. You got an Exord Invoker with a Midas. He's farming with Forge Spirits. He's taking all your creeps as well. And of course, Bristleback, a very farm intensive hero. So when it comes to just creeps on the map, there is no space for your supports to hit any creeps. It's a pretty good ward they can work with in the mid lane. Looks like they should be able to get pick up a kill into the techies. But... At what cost, though? Uh, they're ready to react on Bet Boom and, and Whisper again. He just cannot stand in the middle of any of these fights. And now you're going to have a Diffuser Blade on the PL starting to deal with the backline as GPK connects with the Rolling Thunder. They even want to go for the kill into Ari too. Looks like the rest of Bet Boom waiting for the spells and the Blink to be back up for the Centaur. They even get the connection onto Seb. That arrow perfect from Toronto, Tokyo. As there is no stopping Bat Boom. Yeah, uh, I, what's going through my mind, honestly, is like you call it. <laughs> like, you picked a draft that is very, very strong timings with the Bristleback. You picked the Exorn Invoker. I guess the Exorn Invoker is your one hope left in this game here. Like, maybe he can do some crazy plays in the late game. But you're going to be bleeding really hard, and it's very difficult to get on top of the. Not get on top, but just get on the map right now. Getting on the map is a very big struggle 
for the side of OG is the centaur. He's always I there. Look. No, no way. He's no always way. There. They're dying under a T2 tower 20 minutes in, even with multiple members of OG behind them. I mean, it's four deaths in a row for BZM and Bedroom. They're not even going to retreat. With this vessel, just gives you so many more opportunities to be able to target down Whisper. So we see they need to play defensively. Even on their side of the map, OG having a difficult time. I mean, you keep talking about this tiny and the, the importance of this blink, right? You, they need something similar to what Mira is providing. Something that can just catch a hero that's out of position and without a blink on tiny, it's just not happening, right? Like blink dagger might be something that Tomato wants to pick up, but he realizes he cannot pick it up right now. He needs to get this Radiance online. He needs that shard, so he won't be that frontline initiator. So that's just something OG just doesn't have and won't have for some time now. And it's just going to get punished by Bedlam. Is there an argument to be made for Tomato should have gone blink off the armor with one, how rough of a game he had, and also how late of a blink you were going to get from Ari? There's an argument, right? But it also... It's a big sacrifice you're making because the moment you do that, you kind of like tell you like, it's a big tell of like, OK, if I go blink now, I am no longer playing carry. That's pretty much what it's going to come down to. So I'm going to just like try to win this next team fight. And if I don't win that team fight, you kind of want to just drop the GG's because you are now in a situation that's really bad where you bought an item doesn't help you scale and you just died again. So. It's desperation, and they are not in desperation mode quite yet. And of course, the big thing, Radiance also addresses PL. So if you, you right. go down the blink, and like you said, you don't get a couple kills, and all of a sudden now, you know, who, who is going to be able to address Nightfall as this game goes on? And his net worth is just continuing to rock it up. 303, it, it almost has this Manta completed, and in fact, will now off the back of the Kree wave. There's a gem for Toronto, Tokyo, and they're going to smoke us three. So this map. Well, they're going to see Nightfall here with the smoke. The real question is going to be, how do they kill him? Because Seb, he's got a little four star storm, which is good. Not enough to kill him, but good. Crystalback they... is okay. I don't, they're close though on that boom. And it looks like they're parthing down. I don't know whose line. I think that was actually Ari's line that was drawn down to bottom. So uh, well, let's see where Bet Boom go with this smoke. Oops, Seb showed. Nightfall. Instantly, the team's going to move on over. Stampede to try and close the distance. They're not going to be able to get the kill on the All right. Nice sun strike, but you get the PL. At what cost, though, is the ultimate question? Because BZM, there is no escape. GPK easily catches up to the Invoker. Really, the one person's had a pretty solid game for OG so far, continuing to be slowed down throughout the past couple of minutes. Five deaths now for him. It's a beautiful sun strike, but you need to do way more than that. It, it's something. I want to say even at this point, those trades aren't necessarily bad because guess what? Ari just grinded out that blink dagger, I think, during that time. Didn't even join the fight, so at least now they have a tool to initiate. Auto? Okay, nice sidestep. This blink is in his backpack though, are you gonna... Oh, there you go. Hopefully it won't matter. We'll scout it out though, the cliff ward. By the way, Ari now how finally has this item for him to be able to get involved inside some of the fights. This will help pick off supports, I think, for the most part. Still killing a core. It's going to be pretty difficult, and the Radiance is online for the Wraith King. Uh, he definitely needs a shard. You're playing versus PL and a defusal, well, a double defusal blade, right? So you're for sure going to need the shard, and then the Blink Dagger will come after that. So time is what Tomato needs. Lots and lots of time. And I don't even think these that items are going to, like, turn the game, right? They're just going to be tools that he just 100% needs to play the game. Until then, I just think he can't play. All right, so we're looking for you know, two, three items after these until you know, maybe they're going to be able to stick around long enough and, and Bedroom potentially make a mistake. But they're going to play this very disciplined. Look to get Roche. GPK almost getting killed to Seb as well. Well, he's not required at the pit, so 
Now with this Aegis bet boom, you got some towers it takes. Still all T2 towers out on the map for OG. We already see the name of the game and for them starting to split up the map. I'd really like to see BZM and, and potentially the Tiny looking to group together. You know, if they do see a support by themselves, maybe there is this opportunity for them to, to get a pick off because we, we have not seen anyone play with the Invoker so far this game. Yeah, I mean, just the laning stage is when Invoker looks the best, right? Just throwing sun strikes at the, the side lanes. But yeah, for every item you do get on OG, feels like PL is getting two. So that's also going to be a concern. And the ultimate end game is how do you kill this PL? Maybe this Bristleback can do it. I'm not entirely sure. What does he got? So working on the Eternal Shroud for, for Whisper. Of course, has that shard. Starting to move back down to bottom for Bet Boom. In what BZM TP's out in front of the face of Nightfall. The rest of OG getting stalked. Miro. Did I Seb? Where is the gem? Oh, not gonna matter. They got the dust. So I'll catch out, Seb. Will they get more, though? There's a pretty nice observe from Toronto Tokyo behind the T2 tower. Arrow will just miss. So they'll just get Seb. It's something. I think he's doing their best go rat Easy mode. M. Oh, they got detection. Oh, still without the goal for the BKB. That's a big one. Yeah, definitely. You're fine with losing Seb down bottom like that to make some space, you know, for Tomato to, and, and Wisdom to be able to catch up the farm. But speaking of Tomato, once again, under the pump, Miero and Co are going to be able to close the distance. What's the call, Tomato? It feels strong enough, or, or maybe that's the only play he really has to stand his ground and fight. Whisper, he's going to try and come through, but I mean, they're just completely avoiding the Brissa back, being able to address Tomato. Now they can go for Ari as well, dealing with some of the control the Tiny can output. And after all that is done, you've got Whisper left by himself and Bet Boom find the easy triple kill. And these are just the plays that I feel a little bit like you have to do on OG, right? Like bottom lane, you have to push it out. And then you're going to see in this fight against Tomato, he just doesn't stand a chance. Even with this Radiance, there's just too many things hitting him. Too much mana being burned. At this point, the mana doesn't really matter. He just gets melted. He just doesn't have enough farm, simply put. And they just don't have ways of dealing with GPK. They don't have ways of dealing with Nightfall. I mean, hell, they can't even kill, like, Toronto Talkyu at this point. I feel like the only hero that kind of is killable is Fave. But he also has, like, a, a Guardian Greave, so he's pretty tanky himself, as another kill will be happening in that bottom lane here. It's just rough. It's just really rough here, and... I feel like they're just hoping for Bepum to make a mistake on OG, and they're just doing their best they can to just stay in the game, play, see what happens. And Bepum, unfortunately for them, they're just not making any mistakes. It's been a, a, a very clean performance for them so far, and continuing on from oh, BZM. <laughs> Don't pop out of the trees at this time. Savers? Maybe sniffed him out. No way. What's going on? How does he know? I guess Wisdom Rooms are off in 30 seconds, and yep, he's going to run into the Evoker. Greaves gets rid of the Orchid, and these are two supports! Those are two mm -hmm. supports that just mauled the Invoker. I mean, he's not very tanky, right? He just has Boots to Travel, Orchid, Midas. So this is not your tanky Invoker build. And when he gets DKB, he'll be a bit more tanky, but his first three items he bought give him zero HP and armor. All just attack speed and mobility. Vlad's online for the techies now, so and plus that techies is very tanky. Like you orchid him, right? But he has griefs. He just took it off immediately. Dyer's courier has been killed. Mata's gonna show in the lane. There's always ready to go now. Whisper as well. It's being a bit of a nuisance his nightfall, looking to try and burn as much mana as he can. But the lane's in a great position to be able to capitalize and get some objectives. I mean, even look at GPK he, on the opposite side of the map, and he has such an incredible read off the back of the respawn on BZM. I mean, no one's here. So I mean, how's he going to kill him? <laughs> I don't really know actually what's going on. Maybe just force him to receive reactions down and yeah. you know, they get the tier 2 tower and you know, he's, he's stopping them from farming. I'm still playing with your food right there. That's the uh, mental damage. <laughs> oh, the spy on Ari. This observe what is still there behind the T2 tower. And as a result, they're going to lose multiple members. Miro gets the clip onto BZM. The avalanche is going to be a little bit frustrating, but nonetheless, Nightfall can easily close the distance. 
It's good spell casting out of BZM. Is it going to be enough to get him back inside the safety of the well? Looks like he'll be okay now. Is Bepum... They haven't gotten an early kill to start the fight. Aegis will expire now on Nightfall. Is that that missed opportunity, potentially? That mistake they've been waiting for in OG. Sunstrike will fly out. Not enough damage to be able to get the kill onto the Phantom Lancers. Ari is slowly just getting burnt down from the PL Illusions. They'll finally be able to secure the kill. The first one of the team fight. There's going to be a buyback coming out. Tomato, along with OG, isolated GPK. And they might even be able to get the plus one as well. As Savers also stuck around. So it's something. You get the buyback out of Ari, but of course, without a doubt, that is a, a worthwhile investment out of OG. As Bepboom just... Um, a little bit too aggressive there with that attempt deep inside the base to to get the invoker. Yeah, that was the the first mistake of the game here from Bepboom that I see, and it's nightfall. He could taste that invoker kill. He, he was he smelled blood in the water. His Aegis was expiring. He dove into the enemy base, pretty much compromised his positioning for the team fights, and his Aegis expired, was threatened of dying, and he wasn't able to sit there and safely spam the lances, and his team kind of paid the ultimate price for that. Ooh, they're going to continue heck? to go on the hunt here. <laughs> there was no one they were hoping for. Toss okay. the first blood of the tower, lose Wisp and lose Ari as well. They wanted to make something happen with two heroes being dead, but instead, now they have two heroes dead, and that boom will probably go on the aggressive here. Or they could farm. But we're kind of seeing, like, if Nightfall plays it nice and safe and stable, he can't die. None of these heroes can kill him. So they really just have to hope that Nightfall just kind of dives them and puts himself out of position. And that's, that'll happen sometimes. When you're having a really good game, you're like, I'm invincible, I can do whatever I want, and... Sometimes you get a reality check that that's not truly the case here. As Nightfall is going to get the Cornucopia online, probably going into Bloodthorn, I would imagine. Yeah, the Orchid is going to be online. That Bloodthorn, obviously very good on PL, as it does work on all your illusions. And of course, the Radiance Mischance now, not going to be effective. As you don't have a way of taking that off currently as the Wraith King. And it doesn't look like he's going to be even close to us. He does have a Mjolnir queued up. But I think he's gonna have to pit stop a BKB after he sees this orchid. What's that boot? Nothing they really need to fear. Getting this boss out of town. And we'll see how they look to play the next couple of minutes with Roshan still being down for quite some time. They will Moonlight Shadow and sweep across over to Radiance Triangle. Simultaneously, OG. We're gonna try and force the issue off the back of the smoke. They only have Whisper currently showing. Very difficult to convert with these smokes, just mines littering the map. I see a couple blown up. Yeah, you're down 20k this. gold as well, so you gotta find the perfect positioning to find these heroes and good vision. Uh oh. I mean, smoke pops on top of the lane. Tomato. I splink away, however, but they are disconnected from Ari. Who's in a very interesting spot inside the tree line. Oh, Miro, did he? Oh, yep, yeah, they found him. Okay. I see the tidy of the trees, and yeah, GPK's not going to mess around. Instant rolling thunder. Just in case OG want to continue to jump in to protect their tiny. Now there could also be a, a target onto Whisper's back as Bet Boom. It's a great tornado to disrupt momentarily. Is it going to be enough to get Whisper back to the safety of high ground? Miro's falling pretty low. The right clicks from BZM's enough to secure the kill, but it means that nightfall. No, he should be okay on the Phantom Lancer to continue chasing. We saw what happened last time with them going deep inside the base. It looks like this one could be a different outcome. They'll deal with the reincarnation. Arrow's going to connect as well. It's a good four start to get him back, but it will not matter in the end. There's a buyback out of Whisper. They'll be able to get the kill onto the techies. His bet boom should be happy to get the retreat. Tomato ball back. Nice dodge. Nightfall. Leave it with the Manta. Stops the Ray Fire Blast and... Do you want to go back in? The poke and prod is always the potential with the PL along with the Pango. There's OG. I mean, you need to get more kills out of this. It was such a costly investment to hold the defense. Ari, triple toss. Where's the fault though? BZM's going to be ready with the spell casting. Another jump in from Tomato. GPK will go down inside the river. They'll get through Hondo Tokyo as well. But Nightfall, that is the big target. They need the Phantom Lancer and they should be able to get him. Nightfall. 
He'll do what he can to escape. It's a doppelganger over the northern yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. Under the cover of the shot as well, Ari... He sniffs him out. The Invis, it's about to expire. No way. Nightfall. Looks like he will be able to escape. But again, hang on. Are we done just yet? Double buyback. Bet boom. Another cost investment for them now. But it looks like GPK should be able to roll in. Create the chaos required to enable the PL to hunt down the Invoker. BZM behind the T2 tower. They're going to lose Ari as well. I mean, it was very similar to, to what happened a couple of minutes ago. You know, OG, they have a successful team fight. They killed two heroes, and then they, they lose two heroes after a minute. And almost the same thing happened there off the back of the buybacks from Beth Boom. Man, I feel like you just have to go for that play, though, if you're OG. You were so close to getting that PL, and you desperately needed it. But unfortunately, maybe they didn't take into account that the shard was picked up by the PL, which gives them the ability to go and visit himself now. And that was a difference maker. They just didn't have detection for that. And Nightfall was able to buy a little more time to just for his teammates to respawn. Of course, in hindsight, maybe you once you see those respawn timers coming back online, you need to back up a bit on OG. But they were in the moment. They realized that they had to make something happen with this opportunity that was given to them. And they went for that. And I respect that. But unfortunately, they weren't able to get Nightfall. They lose their Tormentor. And it goes to Centaur of all heroes. And this is one of the reasons why this hero is absurdly strong. Is once you get to that harder Tarras plus Shard stage, you just start having like 8,000, 10,000 HP in these team fights. And everyone just has to ignore you. Radiance top tower is under attack. Kai is Sanj on Centaur. Okay. That's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I mean, it works well with the shard because he's going to be doing a lot of damage with that double edge. Got the robe as well, so it's a little bit of less magic resistance. He's going for the damage build, but however, we did see in that last fight, he died pretty quickly, so maybe survivability should be higher up on his list than damage. Ari might run into me. Oh. Okay. Or do we do we like that Nightfall got the ages instead of uh, instead of maybe Pango getting it off the back of the previous buyback? Uh, well, with the buyback in play, did he buy back last fight? Is that what happened? Oh yeah, he did. The Pango did, yeah. I just think Nightfall just has to play like a Giga Chad now and just be in front of everything, and you just got to pick and choose this GPK, play a little more carefully. He shouldn't die with his Yules available with Rolling Thunder, so yeah, I think I'm okay with it. Here. Run into R inside the tree line, and, and as soon as the tiny gets jumped, you just need to get out. BZM should be able to BKB and TP. He's okay, and R is going to be up in 45 seconds. Yeah, this now gives Nightfall the ability to just play really aggressive now. If he dies once, A gets there to cover him. He's got Cheese available too. Might want to see that Cheese be passed over to GPK or something, but... It's still fine for now. One of the nice things about Eternal Shroud is you do get some mana back, so you can't burn Whisper's mana that easily. The Lotus now as well, that just got completed. BCM is going to use the combo early on, along with GPK's Rolling Thunder. They want to try and target down with the Bristol back. Won't have the damage. Miura does find an angle to connect on the jump in. Bristol's falling incredibly low, and they're able to secure with a kill onto Bet Boom. Cheese has moved over to the Centaur as well, so they're just going to keep poking. Do what you can on the Invoker. And you can see Nightfall is super aggressive on Mato. He does not want him casting spells. And Ari as well finds a, a pretty nice toss back under the tower. It, it's probably going to cost him his own life. Gets some separation. Meanwhile, Miero also found BZM onto the back line, slowing down some of the Invoker's spell casting. I mean, the buybacks are going to be very important here for OG off the back of the defense. You don't have one on Whisper, and means it's still going to be a 4v4, and, and Nightfall's continuing to hold the ages. They're going to go for the kill on the PL. Toss doesn't drag him that far back into the base. Not just a lane of racks. Didn't even use the Aegis there, so they could just rinse and repeat if they want to here. Gonna be a very slow process, because as we all know, PL 
Oh, yeah, very close by our shield does not push buildings very quickly. I feel like that PL shard is like one of the most underrated shards in the game. It is so Why obnoxious. Why is he got an invis? Yeah, What's it's the, so what, obnoxious. What is this? It's more than an invis, too. Like, it makes a clone of you, too, as you press it. So people actually think it's your hero. Oh, and plus, you get another clone to play with. Okay. Oh, Kill the Toronto Tokyo. That's a dieback. Can they still take a fight? They're GPK with this rolling thunder. They still don't have everyone just yet, but Radiant don't have this information. They're gonna try and stand and take this fight. Ari with the toss back. Nice jewels to be able to give GPK some, some breathing room. Gets the distance away now with that blink as well. And finally, it's given time for Nightfall, importantly, to, to swing all the way down to bottom. Two Invis heroes running past each other. Very nice. I like these plays. Yeah, they're keeping them in the game here. And this is what you need to do. Like, the biggest fear I had for this game is that it might end really early or the net worth would be completely out of control, which it is, technically. <laughs> 30,000 gold is uh, to be down quite a lot. But they do have these buybacks to play with, right? Or lack of buybacks, I should say. Toronto, Tokyo, he's going to be dead for another minute here. And I think Nightfall's like... Still got Aegis, let's just go fight. We don't really need this Marana. We can get a surprise jump here. That surprise jump should be able to net them a, a pretty big kill into Whisper. OG support's gonna do what they can. Whisper's actually still alive. They stole the Stampede, but Seth can get it off before the death. He won't be able to. Where's BZM though? He's been so vital to some of the, the previous success inside the team fights. Miero's gonna recognize that as well. A big beacon onto BZM's back. They've got a little bit of control onto the Phantom Lancer, but the damage is the thing in question. Nightfall, he's still got the Aegis for another 10 seconds as well. Can they stall it out and find him at the last second? It's not going to be enough, though. OG, they'll lose the Bristol, they'll lose the Rubik. As a result, they'll need to cut their losses there. I will say B seems doing a really good job this game, just controlling Nightfall as much as he possibly can. And again, GPK, he's got something for BZM here. Another solo rolling thunder. It is with an Octarine core though, so maybe that's why he doesn't mind using this. The, the cooldown as he comes out of it will only be 34 seconds. And that's that's big, that BKB being on cooldown now for BZM. Yeah, we seen how important he is. it's literally him inside the team fight that, that is it bcm has to go absolutely huge to be able to give o og this slither of a chance which is one percent and like you said he's been doing incredible but the bkp is really going to make it difficult for his spell casting now he has to be perfect there is no room for error and there we go really bit, maybe found a little bit too far forward and now without the bkp there is that error they were waiting for and down she goes and with the death, the hopes of OG somehow clawing their way back into this game should be gone as well. They're going to be able to get the full set of barracks down bottom. They will look to mid next. And as you said it, without Invoker, I think this next fight is absolutely hopeless. What can you possibly do with what you have right now? Got to try something, though. They're not about to just give up. But they won't, but maybe after these kills, <laughs> Might see a couple letters drop pretty shortly after Bet Boom. This was a hell of a performance from them. Really, from start to finish, uh, the, the only lane that went well and the only early game really was BZM. Bet Boom had their number in this game one. Very, very convincing performance. With the Gs getting called, they're going to be able to take it in 43 minutes. Yeah, it was a very clinical game here from Bet Boom. Like, the only time that things went wrong for them were just kind of them diving the enemy base and buybacks are coming out from the enemy side here. But a pretty much clinical performance here. The offlane Centaur, it did really well with the Techies. Unfortunately, the Wraith King just, it didn't have a game. They counterpicked it with the Wraith King thinking this would be a good lane matchup. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Tomato just did not have a laning stage whatsoever. And Whisper, he had a good laning stage, I want to say, but unfortunately, 
it was shut down by the rotations of save and the rotations of GPK just kind of like made it sure Whisper couldn't get out of control. And I think that's what you have to do when you play against this OG team, the more I think about it. They're going to give Whisper a last pick hero that's probably good for the game. If you can put more resources into shutting down the hero they pick and make sure he doesn't have a good game, that'll put OG in a very weird spot because it feels like that is the way when OG looks best is when they're given Whisper some kind of unique hero that we don't see a lot and he just kind of pops off on it. And there was no popping off this game for Whisper, unfortunately. They really shut him down. I think he ended up the game with what, 13 deaths, I think, was the case. Yeah, he wasn't able to... Yeah. yeah, 3, 13, and 6. Not something you will almost ever see Whisper with a scoreline like this, but it's all because of that boom team deciding to shift the resources to make sure that they can go ahead and just shut him down. And I talked in the pregame as well, BCM can normally not be greedy to make sure Whisper can get some space on the map. Unfortunately, this was a game where they, he went greed mode, right? He went the Exord Invoker, no boots, until the Midas. He wasn't able to make any rotations to Whisper's lane to kind of secure his game outside of the Sunstrikes, but the Sunstrikes were not enough to repel him getting ganked. That they weren't indeed. You, you probably couldn't ask for a better hero to have early game net worth as well, being the Marana and, and going for that Spirit Vessel. That really, really helped out with them being able to shut down Whisper. And in the end, Bedroom start to finish a incredible five-man performance from them. They're going to be able to take game one up against OG, but of course, it's a two-game series. Let's see how if OG is going to be able to call this back after a quick break.
Welcome back to Dream League Season 22. We're going to be closing out our third series. OG currently down one a game. Bet Boomer, a very slow performance from them to be able to open up and feel. What are we going to see a little bit different from OG in particular? Well, what are we hoping some of the adaptations that they go with heading to this next game? I mean, I think on a very basic level, there's not a lot that I want to say that they need to change because it's their style, right? Like you're going to have BCM playing Exord Invoker. It's just something he wants to do. I think you just have to polish up the laning stage a little bit. I think it comes down to that. Their picks and the way they played the game, it all seemed fine. They were just too far behind in gold. It's just because the lanes went really badly, right? So either you can do a couple things. One is you can draft yourself some easier to execute heroes for the laning stage. Bepoom has always been known as a team that is incredibly strong at the laning stage. So that might help. The other thing you can do is kind of a fallback. If you want to give Whisper that last pick, maybe get BZM on a hero that can maybe roam around the map and make things happen. You mentioned like the Puck, the Pango potentially could work, some Tiny. These type of heroes might be more suited for playing against a team that is really high tempo like uh, Team Bepum is. So that is where I would start, I think. Okay, well, I guess we've got to see then what the draft priority is looking like heading into the game. OG, they have first pick, so... Uh, Bepum being on the Radiant side as well. Do you feel like your first pick... Well, I guess we can start with this. Do you even have a preference at the moment with, with first pick and second pick now that we've seen at least the draft order for a decent amount of time now? I think I always lean a little bit towards first pick just because I feel like so many games now that I've been unimpressed with the overall last pick of the game. And I think having the first pick of the game is really nice. And also I think on first pick having the 18 pick, which is basically the fourth pick, where you get to see four heroes, right? And then you can do two bands. I think that is also a very powerful pick right now, more powerful than the 24th pick of the game, to be honest. So yeah, overall first pick, I think is just a bit easier to draft around. Second pick does have its advantages. If you can get that gotcha pick on the overall last pick, then it can be very strong. But Dota's just a game now where it's really hard to surprise people with a hero. They, there's so many hours spent into playing this game and knowing what's good. And there's so many bands that it's very hard to get that very perfect hero for the game on that overall last pick. Yeah, we haven't really seen for, for quite some time that gotcha hero. I mean, I guess really the ones that come to mind very recently is I know Liquid at Vetboom had some sniper last picks. I know we've seen some Huskers, <laughs> Falcons have, have been playing that. So, um, but besides that, you know, we're, we're, we're not getting, you know, Meepo is getting first phase banned if it's even, you're know, getting banned. So we're not seeing that. Yeah. You know, the Tinker's not really around at the moment. You know, there's no crazy Arc Ward or Necro. So yeah, like you said, I mean, everyone's put a lot of time into Dota. They, they're well, they have a great understanding of what the really bad matchups are and, and what they need to ban out. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how the draft is going to change in particular for OG heading into this next game, though. I just think the Wraith King against the Centaur just didn't work out the way they wanted it to. I think if they would have just done something more stable, picked a Luna, a ranged hero against the Centaur, they would have been in a situation where they could have had some more tempo. Because, like, yeah, you had a great game running for BCM, but both the side lanes really struggled, and you had the counter pick matchup. And I think. Whisper wasn't struggling with lane. He won his lane, right? But the problem is because the save lane didn't go so well that save was able to leave. And save now made Whisper's game bad. So effectively save won two lanes for his team. And that's just kind of like what he's going to do if you give him a good laning stage. So you really need to make sure save has to stay in the lane. Can't make the rotations if you want to make this work and make it so your support can also make some rotations too. make sure Tomato can be a bit more independent. All right, well, let's see what the adaptation is going to be heading into our second draft. Like we said, it's going to be OG playing with first pick. They're going to be on the dire side. We've got Bedboom on Radiant playing with second pick as well. So previous game, I know it wasn't first phase banned, but I believe it was banned in the second phase where Bedboom put priority onto the Naga Siren, which is something that OG and, of course, in particular, Tomato has been having a lot of success with currently. So... As we get further into the draft, that's something more we could look at. But so far, again, no real big surprises. I think Naga hasn't lost a game yet at this tournament, if I recall correctly. Uh, yes, you're Pretty right. Sure eight eight games, 100% win rate. Yeah, so Naga is definitely one of those heroes that 
you don't have to ban it out every game, but when it's a good Naga game, you gotta ban it out because it is a really, really strong hero if you don't have the correct means of dealing with it. Wow, that is like Bet Boom Team's bans are literally just the top meta of bans right now. It's like <laughs> Ch Chin, Bat, Timber, DK. If you just look at the chart, of like what's the meta for banning in this patch and just look at Bet Boom Team's bans. It's all there. And Mars is the one here that didn't make it through. Yeah, last game that, that was one that they actually banned out, but I guess last game they had three bans instead of four and they could have first picked if they wanted to. They didn't. They banned it. This game, they don't even touch it. And OG get it. So, of course, Whisper on his ever so comfort marks. Yeah, pretty strong. The hero in general. And we're going to see the Rana taken away or just they think it's worth picking at this stage of the game. Which they might be correct because I think all the S tier offlaners and like the DK, the Timber, and the Mars are already gone, so might as well take one of the best supports on the pool. I'm okay with that. There's, um, is Mars enough of a deterrent for the Centaur not to be considered now for the Bat Boom? Because with the arena just kind of mitigating a lot of the stampede effectiveness, or is this hero still, you're not as concerned with what he can provide in other areas? I think you can still pick the hero. I think Centaur versus Mars is playable, but of course it is playing a bit into Uchi's hands because the arena is very good against Stampede. And Stampede is definitely a spell that you do want to play around with. Uh, we could look at he more heroes like the Magnus, I think would make a bit more sense if they want to go down that route. Uh, Doom, unfortunately, has been nerfed into Oblivion to the point where it doesn't seem like any of these teams even want to attempt to make it work. I saw 33 try and play it and make it work. Outside of that, most teams are just not even batting an eye at the hero right now. So we'll have to see what Bet Boom team thinks of it. 11 picks, 27% win rate. It has been... So they are picking... Pretty rough so far. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just losing. So I, I saw, at least on day one in the first couple of series, teams were still first picking it. And maybe there's, you know, now with, with a day and more statistics showing up, are recognizing and this hero probably uh yeah hopefully in the dumps and we're not going to see it hopefully anymore. in the dumps okay oh come on man like, well, right this there doom with doom and slark doom and slark to the dumpster it's just dumb like what, what, it what, is, what is this hero like whenever people pick doom it feels like you just have to as a carry you just play medusa or you just can't play the game it's like you can do your best to try and come up with a, an idea to, to nerf Doom, you, you you make it so you, know, <laughs> you can use items still, but you can't heal. Okay, very cool, very cool. And you know, the hero still gets picked and you have a, a great way to be able to find farm. Wow, who would have thought Devour is a, a relatively, you know, a pretty broken mechanic, but um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy we're not going to get too many more Doom. traumatized here. It's not, but it's it's more like it, it's more just as a as a viewer. I would, I would like a different, I would like more heroes to be viable and ones that have been viable for a long time to maybe have a bit of a break like pango right well luckily yes. it's banned this game so there you go and they're gonna take the naga pretty early this is a hero that is incredibly good against the mars as mentioned before you can either just sleep during the arena and it's really hard for not only mars to find the naga but you do have manta you have illusions it's even more difficult to spear the naga so that, that's going to be a great ability for them to have right there. But they are pretty much showing that they have a very early Naga. So all the AOE counterpicking that you can hope for is now your choice at OG. You need to pick your strongest counters now as they ban the Leshrac out. So that won't be an option anymore. And I think for Bet Boom team and Offlaner, the more I look at it with all these being banned, I could, I'm glad to see that line come out. I know it got nerfed a lot, but supports that can kill illusions are invaluable when playing against Naga. They get so much farm by dealing with the split push. And it, or of course, the team fighting will feel much better as well. Ten seconds remaining. Probably just expecting them to go for their secondary support here as well for OG, so see what route they want to cover really, really would like just a strong laner because again you mentioned before bet boom you know one of their big strengths is just 
off the back of the lanes and that was something that we saw OG kind of struggled with in the, in the previous game. Crystal Maiden's been getting a lot of play. It hasn't been winning a lot, but that is a hero that could be strong in the lanes. They're just gonna pick a core, so. They're just gonna pick Invoker, straight up. I mean, it's OG, right? And we, we get something this game that we didn't have in the last game. Whisper is now playing a stun, which will set up for even more sun strikes, but more importantly, the team fights should be a lot better with this arena as opposed to what did the Bristleback really offer in that last game? That are, it's some cool sprays, the hair ball, you know, it's all good and stuff, but this arena with Invoker makes a lot more sense, especially if you're going at Exor. And BZM's just obviously feeling the hero. Like again, he won early today on a last game. There were some moments where he struggled a little bit, but I think that was just you, you have a, a Pango and, and a PL and a Sentinel who have a net worth lead and you don't have heroes to put in front of the Invoker. So you know, if you give him heroes to enable him to, to play in front, allow him to spell cast, we did see in a lot of those fights, he was still pretty much the only threat that OG had. So... Um, I wonder how bad Boomer got a real respond though. You will not have the Pango, which uh, GPK played to, to a great effect in the previous game. I want to see, like, for offlaners from Mirror, like a Tide Hunter in a game like this. I hear that can just kind of sit in the front line. There is a lot of mana burn, which is a little bit annoying, but you can't chain stun a Tide Hunter in a game like this, which could be pretty good for you. But they're gonna pick up the tiny, but this time on Bed Boom team. I have a feeling that's gonna be the mid laner going against the Voker. That would make a lot of sense for me. And then now you have your choice. I think you just pick your support here. I think you have overall last pick. I don't think you want to last pick a support. So <laughs> simple as that. But I guess wow. I guess they are going to save their last pick for offlane. So kind of showing that Tiny is the support now and then picking up another hero that is also good versus Invoker. I mean, Tiny, I think, should win in the CS department against the Invoker and be a bit of a threat. But Void Spirit, he has the ability to go in and out of the fights. Not really. I don't know how well this works against uh, Exord Invoker, but, you know, the Quaswex Invoker, the Dissimilate was really good to get out of trouble whenever you get Cold Snap EMP'd. What kind of... Oh, I guess we'll find out here. What do they go? They go the Alchemist. Okay, so very good hero with the Naga. Are there any concerns on the potential greed of Alchemist Invoker more than likely um, going Exort as well? Um, are there any concerns that it might be a little bit greedy or is that not the case with, with the heroes they currently have with the Lion and the Mars as well? Uh, it doesn't work that way anymore. Like, Alchemist is not really, a, in my eyes, a greedy hero anymore. Before, when you would level, like, Grievel's Greed was a passive, not a passive. You had to level it up. Then it was kind of like a different story, right? But now Alchemist, he still has spells that, that he can fight with. And his timings are so fast that they don't really interact with each other. Like, I don't consider Alchemist any greedier than a Luna or a Terra Blade or something like that. In fact, I consider it less greedy than those heroes because it comes online even faster. So I think this hero is actually really good with an Exord Invoker because he's going to have a timing of a Radiance plus Blink Dagger if he wants to go that pre-20 minutes. And then that can play really well with the Sun Strikes around the map or just the split push play. We are going to be looking for some position fives would expect for Seb, so yes. Uh, maybe it has to be brought up. I mean, his wind range is available. Um, there's that crystal maiden that you suggested earlier on as well. Are there any other like maybe strong laning supports that you can see for Seb to help out? Strong laning supports for Seb. I mean, hmm. and there's always Enchantress, I suppose you could pick, but not versus Murano. It's probably tiny, actually, in the offlane, most likely. Do you feel like that's even something you need out of, out of the five? Or is there something else I need to kind of cover here with Seb's here? I have no idea. Like, it's Seb. He's okay. just going to play one of the heroes that he likes playing. <laughs> I mean, he played Rubik last game, but that didn't really work out too well. And this isn't a great Rubik game. 
Uh, I mean, Theum was the one that looked the best to me. I mean, Pugna made a lot of sense too. Any supports that have a bit of AOE? I have no idea. I think in this point, like any just ranged hero should be fine. That doesn't get completely crushed by Naga. You could go the. I mean, you already have everything your team needs here. You just need something that can help the Alchemist in the laning stage. And I think that will be simple enough. And yeah, Lion's already taking. He could play the Lion himself too if they wanted to go another four. But it seems unlikely. But he's going to take his time. They're going to take Techies, which makes sense. It's not like a wow gotcha pick. It's just a ranged hero that has a stun that can just like be strong in the laning stage. And now you kind of like give your offlaner now the option to counter pick an alchemist in the laning stage. Doom is banned. Razor is banned. Let's see what else he could potentially cook up against the alchemist here. How does Viper look? I'm just thinking of ranged heroes with the tiny. It's, it's really all in. If you want to do, is there a Death okay. Prophet in the pool? Did that one get there banned is a death out? Prophet. No, I would like good. that one quite a bit. That'd be cool. And they're going to go with the Omni Knight. Okay. This hero is incredibly strong if you get to a phase and where it's good. There's like, there's a player in NA in the pubs I play with, like, who spams this, right? And either it looks really bad and he feeds in the games, or he just gets this harpoon and shard and it's just like two shots to everyone. And it looks absolutely insane. And that's kind of like the strength of the hero. It's, it does a lot of damage. It's not like that support that sits behind you and heals you all the time. Well, he does have abilities to do that, but you are playing versus Invoker, so I suppose he can kind of shut that on that play just a little bit. But you want to be a core. You want to get to that Harpoon. You want to get the Shard, and you want to do a lot of damage. And the laning stage is very strong. You just keep throwing the hammers at the enemy carry and just keep zoning him out. You have the heal on top of it that also does a nuke and heals you. So damage output is pretty high. So I think this is a hero that could potentially exploit the Alchemist. He, there is a lot of options. I said the DP was one of them. Slardar is historically really good too. Omni Knight is one of the newer adaptations offlaners like playing to punish some of these melee carries. So we'll see if it works out though, because this is definitely a matchup where it can go really well or save leaves the lane all of a sudden you're playing versus a lion that's draining your mana all the time and an alchemist that's stunning you and the lane could get hard so at least they are addressing the fact that save most likely will have to stay in the lane with miro okay we'll see how much they're going to be able to get out of the lane though because i mean still Omni Knight has always really been that hero in particular as a, as a core where if you, you don't have that potential to be able to keep up in farm it's always been one of the bigger critiques of this hero, so... Tiamia is going to be able to perform on the Omni. We can pull out with the, the last pick from them. We are going to be heading into game two, of course, final game here of our third series of the night. Getting the, once again, the ever so staple BZM Invoke up, the Whisper, Mars as well. Intrigued to see also how GPK is going to be able to perform on the, on the Void Spirit. It's something we've seen in the past to be able to help slightly counter the Invoker, just a natural way to be able to get on top of him. And this hero, I, I wonder, I saw a lot of Ooh, people in Void Spirit. You see? Oh, that Nog Illusion just saw the smoke. And that's why everyone's all <laughs> chatting, like, oh, well, that's... Copying someone. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Plus plus. <laughs> oh, big brain, well done. Yeah, so this smoke should wait. not surprise anyone. I guess, what, is he saying copying because of the late smoke from last game? From Bedroom? Is Maybe. that why Tokyo is saying it? Guess so, I don't know, but it'll be funny if it actually works this time for OG and it didn't work for <laughs> Bedroom. All right, this game is going to be a, a bit different. Two for two. Not all four runes are going to bet boom this game. That's also probably that's why, why the won. laning stage yeah. didn't go well either. You know, you lost four bounty runes. That's got to be devastating for laning stage. You can say that having a extra chunk of gold in the lane is going to be very impactful. I mean, we know how important like getting a first blood is on a, on a mid lane or something like that, even a core in particular, and then. Yeah, full bounties for, for all the team to be able to work with too. So we're going to have a, an even slate to start this game. 
where we're going to see some of the aggressions and spokes harvesting coming out in the lanes. Looking probably more even, would we say, than the previous game. Like, it is a really lanes in particular you feel like it is going to be a little bit more chaotic or, or vulnerable? Uh, maybe the Omni lane. I think that's the only okay. one. I think bot lane should be just free farm for both heroes, unless Toronto Tokyo hits like some crazy arrow. And he might be able to with the net as well, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on for that. But the real question for me is going to be, of course, how well is this last pick Omni going to perform? You mentioned it yourself. If you don't have a good laning stage, this hero is kind of known to just have issues with getting his farm up. But right now, a skilled level one heal seems to be doing just fine, but so is Alchemist. We'll see when the levels come online. Oh, they're potentially going. But uh, not a level two on the tiny, so no avalanche quite yet. I have to see how those Sunstrikes come into play. Of course, for Bezium, like you said, it's a much easier game, especially with having Whisper on a hero that can stun. You got two stuns up top. In fact, all side lanes have two stuns. So we're going to see Tomato starting to cook up the concoction. Seb's got the Earth back to be able to follow. It. There's the Sunstrike, and there is our first blood. Quite good, and. We haven't seen a lot of line, but I feel like this line hero can make Omni very sad because he has a lot of spells that he wants to cast. And if he's going to have no man on the laning stage, that could be very problematic for him. Going to have to keep the stick charges up, maybe get some Lotuses. I think Lotus will be pretty critical in that lane, so we'll keep an eye on that for the next 30 seconds. And mid lane, wow. GPK, he must know this matchup pretty well as he is cruising through it in the CS department versus Invoker already. Is this normal for a lot of at least first couple of levels on Invokers until you get especially some stats as well against Amelia here? How much uh, mid Invoker do you think I've played with especially <laughs> Eggthor? <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> well, no, I, don't, uh, I have uh, no we'll idea. There's some things that I just, I'm just not sure about. But I, Tomato? Void Spirits have been something that Ooh, are Tomato. kind of strange. Okay. okay. It's gone. And that's the strength right there of like the Omni. You see how much damage that does? It's a lot. Even against a big strength hero that's nice and tanky. You get hit by this hammer a few times, we heal pure, all this is pure damage, by the way, so no matter what, how much armor you accumulate, it will not save you. I'm telling you, this Omni offlane, damage-wise, is like, it. it's in levels of broken. I, I really okay. think it's like broken levels of damage. It's just getting there is the hard part. It's like kind of like you play with your friends and unranked and they like to meme around some real clowny stuff right and normally they're pretty right about it but like sometimes getting to like these really broken things in dota is really hard to do and i think that's omni's one of them getting to that level where you can just be completely broken is not easy to do but if you do get there it is okay. sure broken mirror nicely done i mean recognizing of course that sunstrike he's going to be coming in pretty shortly so except for the tiny what have you been going up against in regards to the early itemization, in, in particular in the lane for, for the Omni Knight? Is like double bracer and, and phase boot something that you've been versing often? Yeah. And then you just go for the... What's it? The harpoon. You kind of just play it like a, an abaddon, right? You just get on top of them. You get the shard. The shard is very critical for this. So you get the shard and you just start popping off damage and you start killing people and after that i don't know what the item build is after that just whatever's good for the game right something that keeps you survivable and continuing to fight i think i've seen some change in yashas and stuff like that btb if necessary you're just like, pretty much a carry at the end of the day gpk is continuing to body this lane they are going to need a, a lot more attempts on the side lane to, to help bzm get involved because he, he needs that code, he needs that experience, because currently 29 and 15 compared to the 16 and 3 from the Invoker. So like you said, GPK is very comfortable in this matchup. One Bracer and the Gloves of Haste as well. And I wonder how much of this matchup is swayed by Sunstrikes going off on other lanes and the Invoker not getting the kills. Or just, yeah, just not getting a kill, right? Because you're using a lot of resources to help your side lanes. 
And that's not a resource that you're using to help win your own lane. So if you don't get the kills, which he didn't get, right, for the first blood, and the second Sunstrike he used, he just didn't get any kills whatsoever. I think a lot of that could be hurting BCM's game in the mid lane. Six minute rune coming out here. Is he GPK? Is he actually going to be in some trouble here? The combination from OG bringing GPK down, but it's actually not enough in the end. And that boom with the double support, Toronto Tokyo sneaks that arrow by, of course, save. We'll still go down nonetheless. It's going to be a one for one. Uh, BZM, again, we're saying he's, he's going to need as many kills as he's going to be able to get. And he's able to pick that one up. Yep, definitely helps. The rune will go the way of GPK though, so... But he has to use it right away, so he won't be using that to punish the side lanes. Just get his farm back up and a bottle refill for his troubles too. Didn't miss any of the CS under the tower as well, so... GPK continues to be on a tear here with this Void Spirit. In the first seven minutes of this game. Very impressive. Top lane, is there going to be a Sunstrike to temp here? See if they're gonna have the damage though. Double bracer again, like we said, very, very survival on Amir. So he's out of resources completely. Only two stick charges. Save hasn't got anything as well to help out. Bottom though. They're not gonna have the stun strike for this attempt onto Nightfall. Nice spell casting though, nonetheless from well. OG. It's almost enough. Back and top. Yeah, Tomato. Okay, Tomato does still go down. So we almost see Nightfall die, but it's not gonna matter because Mira even having minimal health it, it didn't matter in the end well tiny came by and mangoed him and then tiny just stun tossed him and dropped a heal and tomato just died so supports making the difference here because that's exactly what tomato thought right and he's like oh he has no mana it won't be a threat in mid lane sure. saves combo to be able to set up for toronto tokyo We'll find a pretty big kill onto the Invoker as well. Who's going for a different item build this game as well? We've seen previously in a couple of games he's gone for that Midas into Orchid. This time it's the Treads into the Witchblade. But you get the kill and you get a Haste Rune now for GPK. And this is going to be huge. They're going to be able to continue to invade. It is under an Observer Ward. So OG will have plenty of time to respond to this. And in fact, Sebi's just going to TP to the opposite side of the map and potentially look for their own play. Yeah, I think the, the item build is just a result of the lane going so poorly. He's got one more leap. And he's up. Good read there. And Tomato just has to sit in the trees top lane just... Because he knows GPK is missing. It's like, ah, uh, this is my life now, I guess. <laughs> not level 6, not farming. How long are you willing to sit here is the question. Yeah. And TP's on cooldown. Might have to walk back and just give up top and start hitting some neutrals. Doesn't feel good because you're not pressuring bottom. You're not really pressuring mid either. So it feels like you're kind of giving top up for pretty much nothing here. And Omni has had that good start. Or are top of the net worth. Saber is being worked on and he's going to have it at a, at a pretty rapid rate as well. It's also a bit of a different game where we've seen at least, wait, save? No, okay. Just, <laughs> not going to be able to get Tomato, but uh, yeah, it's a different game where we've actually seen Tiny get involved and he's got an okay amount of net worth as well. So this could be a, a much early blink and he along with GPK is going to be a lot of the initiation for Bet Boom. We're going for Nightfall here, but this is not an easy kill. As mentioned, Nog is always going to send illusions out. They just desperately, you can see they're all down here. They want to get this tower, but it's not particularly easy because Omni can TP in at any point. GPK's having one of those games where you feel like you don't want to run into them, right? So they're going to play this very cautiously and carefully, which is really going to be advantageous. That's a good deny on the Arcane Rune, making sure GPK doesn't get that for a future fight. It feels like you just can't make any big moves right now if you're OG. You have to sit back and farm. You still have this Invoker that is going the same build, right, outside of the Midas. He's still going the Exhort. He still has Forge Spirits. He still wants to farm. Feels like time is not your friend right now. And Tomato also being haltered quite a lot by GPK's rotation. And they're not going to stop now in Bedroom. They're going to walk mid. Whoa, whoa, that's an aggressive jump in. 
They still want to try and take the fight. Whisper's going to come on over with the threat of the arena. It's a beautiful combination that nests the kill onto GPK. And we're going to see OG really for them. It's the, the responsive game from them. You know, they're not really going to be proactive. We're going to see Pep Boom putting a lot more of the attention, you know, moving across the map, potentially trying to take these objectives. And, and that's where we can see, you know, the TPs coming through to help defend on OG. And that's exactly what we get out of Whisper there with that first arena. That was beautiful. And also Seb's positioning there really set up that arena. Just getting the Hex, getting the stun on top of the Void Spirit. This is the one hero that they picked the Void Spirit into that is quite strong. It's the Lion and Seb playing it perfectly, just disabling the hero that he needs to disable this game. I mean, Seb has a lot of impact potential in this game, like clearing Nog Illusions and disabling GPK. He pretty much counters both the mid and the carry. This time, it's going to be much different with the Omni Knight being here. And especially without the Mars as well. So they'll TP Tomato. Concoction at the ready. Toronto Tokyo doesn't have any more leap charges and should net them another kill. So even without the arena, they're able to at least keep the Invoker alive from the burst potential from GPK. And once again, Tau will be defended. Hmm. I was just thinking in my head playing with Egg Sword Invoker. You just have to settle the fact that you're never going to get a kill because invoker is always going to steal it with some strike <laughs> so it really does have to be a nice payoff because like tomato's making these moves right but he's not getting rewarded for them because the sun strike is kind of nabbing all the kills mirror top lane highest Finger. net worth from the boys onto bed boom and it's not going to be easy though okay never mind wow omni knight is a very tanky hero Important because it drags them away from mid, which we've seen prior. They've been able to defend with OG and do Whisper has no TP. It is coming out of the Corey along with yours, and that glyph should buy them enough time for OG to be able to respond and, and, and bring their forces back to set up a defense if it is required. Alright. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Much more even game though than what we saw last time. Really, the last game for OG was Whisper had a, a decent start, but again, really it was just BZM. And for the boys on Bet Boom, you had everyone that was having a, a lot of impact. Still, I, I'm trying to see. I was saying early, like Savers actually had a decent amount of net worth, but with all the fighting we, we've seen going on mid. He hasn't really had any alone time to work towards his Blink Dagger, so I guess it's okay because you do really have GPK that is still going to be able to initiate early long, but I do wonder how you're going to be able to get the farm for, for save. I wonder what's going on with Nightfall's net worth too. Like his net worth as a Naga, which I feel like is a lot lower than it should be considering his team has been fighting away from him. Very bizarre. But yeah, Nightfall's struggling a little bit in the net worth department here. Really quickly, nicely done from Toronto Tokyo as well with the Moonlight Shadow. Popped the smoke from OG and they were connecting from bot to mid. Very good. And Whisper, he went the Yule's build. Playing versus a Void Spirit. It is online, ready to go. And I think with the Witchblade being available and the Yule's and of course just generally Arena being online. They can start moving around the map with each other. And I think this is something we didn't get to see BZM do in the last game. Just walk around the map and just do things, right? It felt like he was just kind of farming and they're just sitting back passively. But they need him to play like a mid laner, right? Walk around, make some space on the map. That way Alchemist can play like a carry. And that's exactly what he's doing right now. Wouldn't be sad to see him walk on. bottom. He even said oh, but it's daytime tough. and they are, they're getting surrounded. Toronto Tokyo from the south, even Nightfall's going to look to get involved as well. They'll assassinate Seb, and they'll also be able to catch up the Invoker as well without any forces to act as a bodyguard. Now, GPK also took a lot of damage inside the arena. Whisper looking for the finishing blow, but he's not going to find it. And now, Tomato also shows up as well. Are they going to be able to avenge some of their deaths prior? It's a big jump in from Ari, but they're going to be cautious, man. I mean, this chemical rage, half duration left. What's the call from Bepboom? You lose two supports and you're probably happy just to, to cut the losses there and, and look to get out. Yeah, they got the big kills though on Bepboom there. And didn't really cost too much. Naga gets to go back and farm. 
I mean, they kind of just got outplayed a little bit there on OG at the beginning of that. They tried making two plays at once. They tried going on mid lane while still trying to hit bottom tower. I think I would have liked to see them just go bottom instead and go for that tower. But instead, they got caught with their pants down there. And when Volker goes down, Mars goes down. Those are some big net worth heroes that you just traded for two supports, right? Not really the best trade in the world. Damata. I run Brian to save. Pops the chemical rage before the combination's going to come through. Seb's in a pretty decent position as well to protect him. And the initiation, not enough to blow him up. They're now a little bit wary of the potential of extra heroes to come nearby. Oh, Bepper tomato. Sticks. Wow. All right. Uh, Vero with the first couple of tips. Well deserved. Tomato will give his own as well. I will connect on Ari. Has some of the shield rune, I believe, still to work with, but it's not that much extra health. And yeah, Vero is going to find a double kill. Fun hasn't even begun yet. I'm telling you, once he gets the shard... Under attack. It gets really wild. Are I, I know people have been trying to cook with this hero for a little bit of time. I think even maybe not last stream league, the Radiant's one beforehand, that Talon at that stage were, were trying Savage, I think in one or two games, even tried to play an Omni Knight one. So yeah, people have seen the potential of this hero, but... Oh, shards uh, online. So I think it gets really fun when you finish the Harpoon because like you just can't run from him anymore. <laughs> 50 base damage. <laughs> what is his talent? No yeah. one has a talent like this anymore. Like, what, why is he the only one? The shakers get removed? I know a shaker had one. I, I believe it's not. Let me there. check it out. 30 base damage. So okay. shaker has a 30 base damage at 10, and Omni has a 50. That's not fair. If it makes Omni, like, semi-viable, then... I will take it. Until you see it too much. Yeah, man, well... <laughs> no, I'm telling you, this too much is not, done. not fun. <laughs> well, looks like already OG Nun having too uh, fun of a time up against it. 6-0-1. It's going to add another kill to the tally as well. OG, they are starting to sweep across the mid. They've got this blink on Tomato. It's going to run straight to GPK first. I mean, it's a little bit messy though of Evan Avenue, especially not with the concoction charge up long enough and the Omni Knight playing behind the Void Spirit. Tomato still feeling like they can take the fight. Tornado, it's, it's messy again. It's going to disrupt some of the stun locks. Steps in a great position, however. Finds the damage. Nightfall a little bit too late with the song. Will help them nonetheless be able to TP out and get everyone else away. It tried there, but a little bit too much magical burst, even if it wasn't a perfect symphony of skills there. And Seb, a little bit of trouble. But yeah, Omni has a built-in BKB too, by the way, pretty much with Repel. Just gone full circle back to the old, well, kind of the old Repel, I guess. Yeah. It's close enough. Close enough indeed. I mean, this one's dispellable, so... It's the only difference. Radiance top tower is under attack. So when you play versus Interesting. Omni, you kind of do need to get a nullifier. Deal with the GA plus the repel. Top lane, charging up the concoction again. GPK is going to be the target. They have so many stuns. <laughs> it's just so frustrating to play into as a spirit hero. Everyone this game has got... <laughs> Tons galore to be able to have some impact. That's a kill that goes into the tower. And, and GPK, three deaths, bottom net worth out of the cause as well. And, and I, okay, obviously it was the voice that was the issue. He wasn't able to communicate to the team <laughs> that they were making a go on him. He got caught out without anyone nearby. Miero wasn't there. But he bodied he mid lane in regards to the CS and, and, and denies. But yeah, he's really struggling with these deaths. Yeah, that's why I thought they'd play a Tiny mid, because Tiny is much harder to kill in a game like this than a Void Spirit is. Lion is historically known for being really good versus pretty much all the Spirit heroes, right? And it's kind of showing, like, he's getting chain stunned. And the Shard's going to Whisper, of all heroes. Nice which one. It's a good one. It's definitely one when you play versus Naga you want to have. Very nice one indeed. He even had the Ag Shard queued up himself. And wonder if he's actually 
what the call is going to be if he does really want this Octarine this early on into the game. Shall see what the Mars God does himself. A smoke off from Bet Boom. They've been OG kind of making a lot of the plays ever so recently, Radiance but wherever Miru is and save as well with the blink. Seb, not the most ideal target. I think Smoke Ducks have popped in a position where they got a glimpse of the Omni Knight. So Seb should be able to dance over to the right side and he will not be caught. BZM got the other one. So some pretty decent A shards for, for the OG cores. That's looking good. Still, this Omni is having an incredible game. There they go. Whisper? Nice jewels. Dodges the arrow. It ain't gonna matter in the end. There's your Omni. <laughs> What's your... <laughs> Look at the damage. That was 2,000 damage, by the way. Ah, yeah. Continuing to go there. They've got a pretty nice observer around the remnants of this T1 tower. You have to be cautious running to a choke point. A again, with all these AoE stuns and especially the spells from BZM, it could be devastating for Bepum. And it looks like they're well aware of this as well. They are not going to run to where OG are currently set up. Be Tomato, though. Is this bait? What is it? He's got Chemical Rage at the ready, but that toss back into the burst from Miero might catch him off guard. Not going to try and give them that opportunity, though. How do you itemize into the Omni? I, I know you brought up the the Nullify, like any any purges. Is there anything else you can even kind of itemize to, to deal with this hero? Is it, is it more just like play style and, and shutting him down in the lane? I mean, I'm not sure what item deals with pure damage. Like Blade Null shouldn't even work either because he can repel himself. I mean, yeah, you just have to keep your distance from him. Like stun him, pretty much. And nullifier. Oh, save. Stuns with nullifier. All right. Speaking of stuns, that's a good way to start. On to two, they'll get a easy kill onto Whisper. And now you've got Nightfall as well. He's in a great position to be able to follow up and also try and target down Tomato. Chemical Rage is about to expire and they're going to be able to get the kill through the HP region. Now the song as well. I mean, they're going to catch the, the TP in from BZM. The arrow will fly on past, but it does not matter at all. BZM will still go down. It gets a combo off on his dying breath. So you will get a return kill onto Nightfall, but Vepboom have nothing to fear now. A charge up to the high ground. He's beyond gold like this Omni Knight fear that you were mentioning as soon as it was picked up. You said if it got to the stage. It looks pretty broken at that end. I mean, we're seeing that 10, 0, and 2 is Miero on the Omni Knight. Yeah, the, the damage output this hero does is absolutely absurd. You have to be able to stun him. I think the game plan changes from the Lion. You have to use all your stunts on Omni. Like, who cares about the Void Spirit at this point? I mean, they did manage to kill Nightfall, which is good. But Nightfall is like the, the second carry of this game. Uh, Miro's the true carry of this game here, and GPK is the offlaner. <laughs> I think that's how like this game is accurately represented in one to five positions. Okay. <laughs> Alright, Miro the carry, let's see what you got in store for us. 20 talents can uh, look pretty nice. Yeah. What's this 20 talent? Six second hammer purity cooldown reduction or two second repel. I, you definitely go for the hammer, right? That definitely makes a lot of sense. Because minus six seconds, so it's only a lot. Wow. It's a lot. On a ten second cooldown spell, are you kidding me? He's a hell of a talent. 25 wouldn't be too bad as well with the percent damage. If that is what you go down. Imagine it would be with the right click. Bet boom. Smoking OG, they are very disconnected. You got one hero down bottom. In fact, two heroes up top now with the portal. They They're going to try and smoke and go through, but uh, Bet boom. They're ready. They're, they're antsy for a fight. BZM is going to be able yeah, to stand his ground. Turn with the BKP. The Omni Knight falling low. Miro tries to play around with the Guardian Angel, but it is not going to be enough. OG, they get a massive streak. Can they get more out of this, though? Looks like save in a compromised position. Whisper's going to be able to find the speed back onto the wall, but the rest of Bet Boom, they're still ready to go. They'll get the Yules, be able to set up for the eighth remnant. Whisper's taking up a lot of spells. He's not dead just yet. Oh, it just showcases how much damage this Omni Knight really pumps out for Bet Boom, and they couldn't even get the kill. Somehow, Seb 
I don't know how we got in range for the Earth Spike to catch out Toronto Tokyo's TP up, but nonetheless, OG, I mean, there was three heroes there to start the fight, and they actually come out on top. What happens when you kill the carry of first? You know, Miro, he goes down, gets caught by that arena, doesn't repel himself, and just ends up going down. So that's what they need to do, and Miro's kind of realizing that he needs a BKB now. As Nightfall, it's not an easy Naga game. They early pick the Naga, you're playing versus the Radiance, they're playing versus Theb with a shard, right? So your illusions are dying in these fights. They need the Omni to stay alive. That's for sure here. That's also the other downside like of this Omni here. I feel like once you die once, you kind of feel like you lost. <laughs> okay. Well, I feel like it's a little concerning for heroes in that position where you have, like, I know some people have mentioned, like, uh, Queen of Pain, for example, has got, like, a four kill, like, death quota. If you die, like, more than that, maybe even three times, it's like, all right, it's like, GG, my, my hero does nothing now. If you got, if you only have one death you can give up uh, on a hero, I don't know. I, I don't like that margin of error. Okay, it might be higher than one, but it's definitely one of those heroes that can't die, for sure. Okay. This Roche is not going to go down fast enough. Can they get set up on OG? What's the call? Do you want to continue, Mio? Jumping on the line. They're going to try and deal with a lot of the control out of Seb. A defensive arena, but it catches no one. And now what is the call? Do you want to buy back on Seb to take the team fight? Concoction doesn't even get chucked out as well. Tomato stuns himself. It's the buyback though from Lion. We're looking to reset. Spear's going to connect. Do they want to jump in? Ari sees an opportunity with a burst potential. It's there. OG. They'll blow up GPK. Tomato's ready to go as well. It's only onto an illusion. It's like they're still going to be having second thoughts, OG. Do you go back for the pit instead? a very slow fight. Seb surviving for that long is really critical. And of course, he did go down at the end, but he had buyback available, which was also critical. So all those things considered, he had fast reactions. He got his Ghost Scepter off before he got hit by the Omni. So didn't get instantly deleted because if he would have got hit by Omni two times, he would have for sure been dead there. Oh, but he is with no buyback now, but that may have just secured him Roshan, which it did. So well worth it. Man, OG. Two fights now. I win probability is bugged. It says OG 100%. But 100%. nonetheless. Because Omni died once, that's why. Oh, you were right. <laughs> oh, you're right. I mean, you, you said you know, this Omni night. You, you get to that stage. Yeah. This hero looks pretty goddamn good. He's been looking good so far, but one death all of a sudden. And he gave him says it's GG and. It's over. <laughs> I don't know. This is. 3,000 net worth lead, two fights, all they needed from OG. And that boom is still posturing very aggressively, though. And, and Whisper, with that shield rune, uh, is actually still going to be able to get the blink after the avalanche. And, and now save. He'll try and TP out. They got some stuns. Uh, wh what? I got uh, repel. Okay. Yeah, he was. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he makes it out. You know, they are still chasing arenas there. Nightfall is going to be nearby, so at least he can play around with the song. Is he going to get hit by the concoction? Okay. Oh, far out. I. Does he have the talent? He does. It was really close, though. I mean, Nightfall was just like peace and TP'd immediately, and Miro almost got stunned after that just because he wasn't under protection of the song. But I think they're just waiting for Omni's BKB. I guess one counter to Omni, if you think about it, is probably going to be a BKB. So more BKBs, the better. Which they have. Only one on OG, as Alchemist opted for... I, they Instead of buying BKBs this game, OG bought Octarine cores on Alchemist and on Mars. Okay. I know. More spells. Can't, can't go wrong with that, right? Of course not. Octarine core is a fun item. Help out with the stats. Get some cooldown reduction. Continue to play on the map. See how they can use it, though. So far, spell casting has been pretty on point for OG. But not out of it just yet. I will say, really, I, I think you, I mean, mentioned it perfectly with the uh, with the with the Omni Knight being the carry and then Nightfall kind of being the position too. We really have not felt the impact so far of the Naga, and maybe that's going to change shortly with this Bloodthorn 
soon to be completed, needing 500 gold just for the last component in the Hyperstone. I just feel like Nightfall's positioning in this game has been a little less than desirable. He hasn't been able to find the angles to really sneak in and assassinate some of the key heroes in this game. But Is maybe that... with the Ghost Scepter, it's hard because he is playing versus a line with a Ghost Scepter, right? So normally you'd want to get back there, you kill a support. But if you don't kill the line, he just kills your illusions right away. And I think that's why we generally don't like seeing people play Naga into Lion for that exact reason. It can make playing team fights very difficult. So what do you feel like is the call then? Is does he need to itemize to deal with this ghost scepter, or is it on the rest of Bepun to, to get the lion first? It's definitely up to GPK's void spirit to just assassinate this lion in the okay. fight. So that way the Naga can get in there. And have to I think see that's, if that's what the they should do. See if they can do that this fight. Whisper is gonna charge up the higher ground and Bepun, they are ready! A quick and easy kill into the Mars, and they already want to transition for a plus one, and they'll find that. GPK gets the connection onto Ari on the retreat, and I think they spied out BZM. They're pinging the area. We're going to see the courier as well. Let's see if Toronto Tokyo continues to stalk, but no. They're going to be happy with that. Now, Tomato mid lane. So looking for him. So this Omni Knight burst is... Quite literally, I think if he gets all his attacks off and both his spells, it's 2,000 pure damage. Which he, Mars Very has cool. 2.8k HP, both supports Dyer's instantly die. Even the Alchemist only has 2.5k HP, and same with Invoke at 2.5. So he, he's like Tomato. pretty much just, means he just melts everyone. Uh, are they going to be able to blow him up before the respawns and TP's in with Mira here? It's all the damage they need. Tomato's able to slip out of the Riven side. They will deal with Seb. I mean, that's heavily going to enable Nightfall inside the team fights, but the song, they want to get out. Pep Boom, they want nothing to do with this team fight, or they just reevaluate and how do they can take the angle. BZM flying to jump in with the spear, connecting onto two of the Invokers, having a free fight, starting to get all the right click damage out they would need, but it's just not enough. The damage isn't there at the moment. OG. They lose three, they got to lose more as well. BZM leaps down to the low ground. Tomato, though, they're still going to be able to catch up to the Alchemist. There's Bed Boom. I mean, what a team fight. <laughs> BZM reveals himself. He's got Hurricane Pike, harpoon. dude. BZM popped out. Is it going to matter? Nine Force is trying to swing all the way around over the ice wall. I mean, Miro might go down, but it seems like it's a worthwhile sacrifice. <laughs> I mean, OG being able to build up so much momentum, back-to-back -back fights they've been winning, but Bep Boom, out of nowhere, find a five-man wipe, and now all of a sudden, the high ground is in shambles. Yeah, I mean, he died there just so that the Invoker can't defend the base. I mean, he can buy back if he wants to, but that's something he probably does not want to do. But do you get this barracks is the question. I'm not so sure you can, even so. Because, yeah, you are respawning on Whisper. Lion's also alive. They're gonna do some damage. Probably in hindsight, they should have taken the range tracks, not knowing they had enough time, but sometimes you just don't see these things in the moment. I see we'll now chip away at it with delusions. Oh, interesting. Water is gonna go shave us, so a little bit more of a not your stock standard position one elk. I know, of course, when we were yeah. seeing 33 play the, the alchemist. Um, I mean, again, that's an offlane alchemist, and, and he definitely was going for pretty much the exact item build that Tomato has this game. But it will put you in a situation where your physical damage is going to be lacking a little bit. I think the reason why he's doing that is he thinks BCM will be that right click threat. And he might be right about it too, but this Ooh, is very one? similar. Okay. Uh, that's a quick and easy kill. I mean, you, again, Nightfall here with Bloodthorn now. A butterfly all of a sudden completed, and they're, they're already ready to go. I, I do believe that was underneath the cliff ward, so we already see OG starting to react. Oh, that's nasty, actually. I didn't know this is an item Omni spot, but it makes sense. He's going for Conda. Even more of that magical burst damage. On... That's that's dirty. I can't wait till he's level 20. <laughs> It'll be fun. I mean, that's a huge target. Already uses the Harpoon, so BZM is going to be fine. 
They'd love to be able to force the buyback out of the Mars, but with that initiation not going the way they would hope, this was going to be able to hold his buyback. Yeah, it's hard to go on BZM. Like, that's the one thing with the Omni Knight that he doesn't do. He doesn't have a stun, right? So you can always just Hurricane Pike away or use whatever spells you need to to disengage. Can they get an eye for? Hang on, this Cliff Ward. And they need to be perfect, though. 2,900 health they have to go through to prevent the song. And with all the stuns, they should be able to do it along with the Evoker's damage. They dump everything for the Night Phil Kill, and they will be rewarded. Very, very good kill. I mean, their lanes are really garbage still, but they actually... No, okay, they will save the mid-barracks. I just getting quite low. There was a catapult wave there. But it will be saved for now. Uh, but the question is, what can you do after that kill? And then the answer is probably going to be not much. Maybe get another kill could be good. But Tomato... How do they know? Oh, oh wow. Quick. Great reaction. And OG coming in, I mean, it's still 40 seconds of 4v5. This is that window that OG need to, to get themselves back into the game, but... Pretty solid retreat. Whispers ready though with the arena. Eclipse up to two. Both supports under the T2 tower, but where is BZM? They need the Invoker's damage output. He's going to come in towards the tail end of the team fight. An aggressive jump into the middle with a combination laid onto the deck. They're going to be rewarded. Now, Miero, he's in trouble as well with the BKB soon to expire. There's the spear from Whisper. And all they needed was one death on the Naga, and they could catapult that into multiple extra kills. I mean, Nightfall this must be so bad about his death now. His death snowballed into his entire team dying and now his barracks dying like all they had to do is just wait for naga to respawn and it wouldn't have been that big of a deal but now it's an absolute disaster this might be potentially two sets of barracks not there's too many tier twos up but they're definitely going to mop up that tier two and they're going to keep hitting top lane until this omni knight is closer to respawn for sure hex just getting delivered bzm as well See what the lion's been able to do for the Void Spirit. Now you have the Hex in the hands of the Invoker as well. This is just um, so you. much. Well, now you're 5k ahead is OG. You got a mid barracks, so it helps with creep equilibrium. Hex is online, as you mentioned. Alchemist. I mean, I guess he had the Shivas. He just got another couple thousand gold on top of it. A lot of cool items to play with here. And Refresher, I think, is going to be the big one for the Mars when that one comes online. Having two arenas, two BKBs, is going to be absolutely huge. And the next no. fight is going to be Roshan. This one could determine the game. A Whisper needs to go huge. Let's see what he's going to be able to do with the arena here. Some mines nearby to be out, potentially scout out. Toronto Tokyo is going to lead the charge first. Whispering an aggressive jump in. Look at the wraparound over the right side. They're onto the Invoker. BZM tries to get the PKP, but it's not enough. And he doesn't have a buyback without their main damage source. What can they do on OG? They'll be able to respond with a kill on to save as Nightfall once again, using the song to look to reset the fight. Can they still end up turning this around? Tomato looking to try and target down with the Omni Knight as he got the damage bike himself, though. The stun control. They get Miero and Nightfall was unable to enter. So in the end, even with the Invoker dying first, OG will, will make it somewhat of a decent trade. Yeah, that's pretty good, but you're starting to see like these fights, the longer they are, the better they are for the Alchemist. He's actually getting lots of stacks of the like, corrosive weaponry on them making the stun duration like removing status resistance right and you have a line a techies and of course a mars on your team that omni was just stunned for like 10 seconds by one concoction just because he was able to hit him for a long duration of time off of a lion stun and miro without a bkb i've been watching him very closely in these team fights and what he could do and when his bkb is on cooldown he's very scared because he's playing against a lot of stuns here and repel it does have a long cooldown so you can't just like throw it out there and have multiple uses of it in team fights the team fights aren't long enough to have multiple repels here but roshan is instant. up now Everyone goes down to bottom to try and get themselves set up. We're going to have a 5v5 once again for this Roche. 
Will it be fast enough, though, without the Omni Knight here? OG? No, nah, they're not going to get there in time. Nightfall rips it apart. Jesus. All right. That's Bloodthorn for you. No, they still want to fight. Tomato. Can he find the angle, though, with the aggressive jump on the high camp at GPK? He's the one with the ages. So you're trying to target him with the Void Spirit, but he's got the second life inside the team fight. As now it's looking messy for OG. Tomato gets blown up. How can they respond? Again, it's all on to the Invoker, but Whisper, he'll drag them over to the left side. It's a great tornado. BZM continuing to provide the chaos. The EMP is devastating, but Nightfall with the song resets and they can look to go back in afterwards with the arrow connecting. Now they'll turn to Seb and it looks like OG. I mean, you just have to hope that BZM somehow is able to escape as well. BKB, he will not be able to TP though. Blink is there, getting some separation to the north. GPK has no more ults, save maybe a blink into the yours if he can catch up. Nonetheless, though, OG, they've got no buybacks. The lanes are in an okay position. They do have Glyph at least. But they weren't even able to get the Aegis there. And the amount of damage that was coming out. I mean, yet again in the team fights, it's the Omni. He's still, if he's able to hit heroes, doing the most damage in every single fight. And this Parasma now finished for the Void Spirit, also makes him a big threat. Shenanigans can BZM go up too. I was wondering if he was going to look to cut bottom, but maybe instead he's just going to go for his own trade. And he does do a lot of damage with this build. It's something. Yeah, I think this is the most impact he can potentially have. He's not defending. I'm surprised that no one's going back for this, but I guess they're just going to let him have that side. One's going now. for the rest of the base. Oh. Save so he got the blink. Is BKB up? Still on cooldown. And they've got the gem as well. I mean, this is going to be a dead invoker. He doesn't have gold for buyback fear. I mean, BZM going for the Hell Mary play and they, they, without a dash, should be able to secure the kill. Okay. Are they? No Are way. They? Wow. Omni's dead? <laughs> wow. BZM. They only lose a full set of barracks bottom. I, I guess they did get the melee barracks, but like you said, Omni's dead and. They are hunting. Now, they're going to be cautious, though, because Bedroom have regrouped and get Seb just he runs straight to his death. And, and BZM, he's not with the team currently. It's really going to be up to Tomato for the damage output. They're still going to try and make the attempt, but this is an Aegis Void Spirit. You are bumping your head against. GPK will shrug off the initiation. It has given enough time, though, for BZM to be able to reconnect with the team. They want to deal with the support. Toronto, Tokyo. Aeont is going to be able to protect him, finally. They'll deal with the first life out of the Void Spirit. How can they get set up for the second? Arena still on cooldown for Whisper. And importantly, the Chemical Rage has only got a quarter duration left as the Arrow will connect from downtown. And they should be able they to get the kill onto Tomato. No buyback. And again, OG need to get out. Yeah, no money for the buyback here. That's going to be big. I mean, they're trying to make plays happen on the map. They got the Omni buyback out of this, but unfortunately, Tomato just doesn't have the money to be able to buy back here. It's costing a bit too much at this stage of the game. How do you this fight without Tomato, though? Do we have Refresher this, online? Not yet. This is an ultimate test of BZM's Invoker. <laughs> and I've been working on... Oh, Mission I Impossible. <laughs> Can they have the perfect chain control? Where's Seb? Jump in for the song. Oh, Nightfall. And now this could be devastating for OG. They are all clumped up. Importantly, BZM doesn't get caught, but it's not going to matter. These supports, they are lacking buybacks. Yeah, I mean, the only two heroes of buyback are alive right now on the side of OG. And all they can do for now is just kind of watch here as their base is just going to crumble down. Not much you can do in this situation as the Mars or as the Invoker. None of your spells are available. I think Whisper's wishing that he had his nice refresher orb right about now, but unfortunately not close enough as he will go down here. Let's have a buyback at least. Yeah, they both I mean, have Tomato's buybacks. They just need to buy time. And they're doing that. They might be able to get the kill into the Tiny as well. Mio. What? Where'd he Where go? Where'd he go? <laughs> Where'd he go? What? He's got what is the Omni damage? And how the jump whisper though. Again, I mean, he just bought back. How much space they can they provide? BZM, he's going to be free inside this fight now to the north, being able to spell cast. But you continue 
to make space here for the support to be back up, surely. It might be too little too late, though. You've lost the Mars. Tomato's in some danger as well. Miro gets on top of the Alchemist. Chemical Rage is out. And soon his health pool soon to follow as well. And now GPK has also been able to get on top of the Invoker. Bad boom. It was looking shaky for multiple portions of this game. But it looks like in the end, this team is going to continue with their very dominant run so far in Dream League Season 22. Yeah, they're looking quite good from all the games so far. Yeah, it got a little bit shaky. JPK died quite a few times on the Void Spear. Got caught out by Seb's Lion. But at the end of the day, the offlane Omni Knight, it really worked out when it needed to. Like, there's phases where you're just like, okay, he died. Uh, a couple of the other heroes died. Nightfall died. His team died. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> like, <laughs> his barracks went down. I mean, at least they're having a good time with it. You know, it's always good to see players when they have not their cleanest game ever still be like pretty happy that they still got the win and not just like disappointed that they didn't play perfectly. And you got to keep in mind as well, this is a OG team that was four and two heading into this series now. So actually with this loss, they're, they're going to drop down to, I mean, they are tied technically, but they are in the bottom four currently. I think Heroic got a, a much needed 2-0. I think Gladiator's got some wins as well. Yeah, they 2-0 at VP. So regardless, there's some other series, but this really puts OG in a position now where their remaining series, like they've, they've got to go pretty huge and we have seen success from them, but really the, the interesting one when you take a look at the KDA was uh, Miero 21 and five. Like you're saying, you, know, you can get to that stage here. One death, it was okay. Even though Dota Plus was saying 100% for OG, we still felt <laughs> a lot of impact. And I, I really wonder, like, is this a hero we kind of need to keep a, a little bit closer attention on now in, in this tournament? I mean, I don't see why not. I, I definitely, after watching this game and playing against it myself, I'm a little inspired to play it. And that makes me believe it is kind of broken. But you need the right conditions, for it, right? So you have to keep in mind this hero is now a... It's not only a damage hero, it has save aspects, right? Like, he saved his teammates multiple times with their Pell, with a Guardian Angel. On top of that, he has the ability to do, like, way too much damage. But the one thing he does lack that most offlaners do have is like control. So if you do want to play this in the offlane, you need to make sure that they had a tiny this game, they had a void spirit mid. I think these are the right conditions to make the hero work, but it should definitely be on the radar as one of those considered offlaners that are a bit greedier. If you have space to have a lane dominator and you don't need stuns, yeah, sure. Pick on that. It looks really good. Okay. Oh. Miero has been having some Chad performances so far. We've, of course, just got to bear witness to his Omni Knight. We have also seen his Mars with some you know, rapiers along with the Revenant's Brooch as well. So he, the new addition to Bet Boom, and all the other boys are on a tear so far in Dream League. And we're going to be able to get an interview with one of them after a short break. We'll see you guys soon.
right, welcome back. We should have an interview very, very shortly with one of the Bet Boom members. Looks like it will be Save joining us. We get to hear from the position four of the team that is uh, currently dominating at the moment in Dream League Season 22. Like we were saying, there are only one defeat so far in all their games, which is on day one. And then you know, we've seen they've been able to close out today with a 4-0-2. So um, some incredible performance from the, the boys on Bet Boom. And you know, this is, I suppose, a team that people need to be keeping their attention on now. As uh, Actually, we do have the interview ready, so we'll jump into that straight away. Dave, thank you, uh, thank you for joining us, and, and firstly, congratulations with the victory as well. I'm um, I'm intrigued on kind of who who is asking for the Omni Night loss. Is this something that you guys have been you're cooking up as a strategy, or is this something that Miro asked for on on the last pick? Uh, hey guys, hey guys. thank you. Uh, I mean, Miro play, played like ten pubs on Omni Night for the couple of days. So we decided like it's a good Omni game, so we just pick it. Yeah. Fair enough, good Omni name, and he's been playing a lot of it. Also with um, Bedroom Dutch, I think you, you, your team as a whole, I think was very enjoyable. What you guys had uh, incredible performances with that third place. What were kind of the expectations coming in as a team? Of course, with uh, Miro coming and, and Pure um, leaving for the team, were you guys, was it disappointing with the result in the end? Or were you guys pretty happy nonetheless with, with that third place? I mean, of course, you always want to get more when you like make it to the top three. But overall, if we say, of course, it's a decent result for us. It, it was first top three for us in this uh, roster for like one year. So, of course, I mean, it's pretty good uh, for us. And now, I think, yeah, we're coming into Dream League as the favorites now. I think we're a bit any team. So. Definitely proving to be the case. One more quick question for me. Um, uh, what, what, what's your opinion at the moment with the line? I, I know you can't reveal too much on, on how you feel about it, but just you've you've always been someone that people have looked with, looked to for the line and have always had some incredible performances. Do you feel like this hero is still one of the better supports at the moment, or not as much with the letter patch? I think it can be like one of the best still, but actually the shard got nerfed. I think. Uh really hard honestly i'm not sure if it's written like in the patch but like your range finder of the third spell with shard it's like uh, really low right now but before you could just press e and you just uh, hit everyone in the like in the like 1050 uh, like 500 range but now it's not like this it's in a small aoe so it's kind of nerfed but i mean you can still play maybe even like without shard just get fast blink and play I think still like one of the good supports, but not not an imbalance like it was on the bedroom dash. Okay, cool. Thank you for your uh, responses. Uh, Fit up to you. Yeah, sure. Also speaking about supports, we've seen less of the line as you mentioned, less of the Venge, and we're seeing we're having a talk earlier about it. Like we're seeing a lot more of this Marana now, without revealing too much. Like how come Marana is popping up, being a more popular support in this patch? <clears throat> I think it's uh, I think snicking uh, made it work on the Bedboom Dacha and everyone is like copying the Falcons because they won the last tournament obviously so that's kind of it. I mean it's a it's a good laner. It's it can farm a lot from by arrow, buy some support items fast like Greaves or whatever any team item that you need. So it's a pretty good hero and everyone like started copying Falcons. Gotcha, that makes sense for sure. And then I have a question about Toronto Tokyo. So whenever I did interviews with him, he oftentimes will say his goal is for uh, Betboom to be an undefeatable team, the best team in the world. How is that like as him being your captain? Does he instill that into your training that you guys are eventually going to be unbeatable and that's what you're working for? I mean, I mean of course we want to be an unbeatable team, but... There's still like a lot of work to be done. Like we need, we need like a lot of time, like to be a really good team that can like win tournaments and uh, be undefeatable. I mean, I mean you can always lose. I don't think you can be a team that always winning. Like you just need to be like a stable team that always uh, have the good chances like to make it to the top three. I mean, this is my goal, like to be just a stable team throughout all the season. So. What do you think the secret is then to being a stable team that you guys feel like you're missing? Uh, 
I think we're kind of getting into it. I, I don't think we miss much to be a this stable team. Just need more time, I think, to play. I mean, to be a stable team, I think you need everyone in the team needs to play a lot of pops, be in a good like personal form, uh, and just like take it serious, honestly. So that's kind of it. They take it serious, like, but it also goes uh, to the screams, like as a work, you know, as a professional. I think that's the secret. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dave. Thank you for your, your answers and congratulations on your victory. Thank you, guys. Thank you, man. Okay, there we go, Fit. Third series of the day complete. We're now going to be able to look towards our fourth series, which... What we got? We got Secret up against Spirit. So going to be a very exciting matchup between these two teams. Secret 3-3 three and three currently in the standing. Secret... Two and four. So towards the towards the bottom over in Group B. Looks like both sides really needing to get some victories under their belt. But um, nonetheless, should be very exciting to see these team, two teams go up against each other. It's probably been a little bit of time considering we haven't really seen Secret, um, I suppose, at a, a land setting for a bit. Yeah, I mean, we definitely don't see them as much as Team Spirit, right? We've seen a lot of Spirit, not as much as Secret. So Secret definitely have a lot to prove here. It's showing that they're still a team that can hang with the, the big dogs, right? Because that's going to be Team Spirit. Everyone will still regard them as the, probably the best team in the world after TI still, just doing really good things. And definitely going to be underdogs here on, on Team Secret. But I'm very curious to see what this new roster can cook up and if they can kind of find their groove in this patch. Yeah, because this, this has been a team so far with this new iteration we've seen Secret. They they can cook some things up. I think Eki in particular yeah. is really someone that comes to the table with some very unique strategies. Uh, of course, we've, you know, we've seen Centaur 4, we've seen him run of the Doom, I believe even recently in, in Dream League 2. So this is a team that definitely has a, a unique playstyle and idea of how to play Dota. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves just yet. We need a send break. When we come back, we've got our final series of the night on the Ember Stream. We'll see you guys.
series to close out day two of dream league season 22 we've got a quite the banger of a series as well it's going to be spirit taking on team secret these two teams haven't faced each other since june of last year so it's been quite some time since we've seen the powerhouse of eastern europe go up against the well-known organization in team secret who have been a staple in uh, dota without a doubt they've been having a, a bit of a tougher time though the secret going through multiple iterations of teams of course the the recent one with with cordon coming in over from southeast asia but firstly let's uh take a bit of more of a, a deeper look at team spirit who currently are looking a little bit shaky you know they, they have not the greatest performance about boom darcher they just got 2 0 by extreme as well yeah but i think this is a team that if you look at last year as well before they won the international their early year performances sometimes look a little bit shaky and then that's where the term that we often use spirit is in ti form comes from because for some reason at the end of the year this is a team that really decides to pop off obviously a little bit early to be saying things like that and it's not to give an excuse or anything but there's definitely it happens right where you're winning and then sometimes you're like i'm gonna take a break right i'm not gonna play seriously i'm not going to grind as many pubs it, and those things can happen but once you lose enough times you kind of get a wake-up call and a fire kind of lights up under you and you're like i want to win again i want to feel like what it feels like to be a winner and how long will that take until spirit starts to like play a hundred percent who knows and patches change and sometimes your heroes that you're good at just aren't good and therefore your team can suffer as well. But we'll see what Team Spirit, if they can bounce back from their loss. They're playing against Team Secret. You mentioned before, they haven't played in a long time, but I think that's more pressure for Secret than this Spirit, because Spirit's been on the big stage. They win all the big matches. They don't feel like there's been any team that's better than them, most likely, when they're playing 100%. Or Team Secret, they got a lot to prove. They aren't having the greatest results either at this turn, if I recall correctly. They're not getting like stomped or anything, but they're definitely playing against a team that we know if they're playing at full power is very strong. Yeah, they're two and four currently in regards to the map count. They have gotten a 1-1 one, one versus extreme, a 1-1 one, one versus one win, and then Shopify 2-0 them as well. So you still got some difficult opponents against Spirit. You've got to go up against uh, Aurora actually looking pretty decent, which I mean, they're top, top of the table. They're five and one. They look incredible, I should say, not just pretty decent. So yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see what Secret are able to do. But uh, again, I mean, this is a very newly formed team. Corden coming through, if you've got some Southeast Asian blood in them, which I suppose Secret have really always had, you know, with you know, Sunbe a long time ago and, and with Heen as well. So now, now, of course, you've got Afu as as the coach and uh, Corden as Got mid one. Yes, I'm true. You know, mid one was. <laughs> you, they've always had Southeast Asia. They've always yeah. had it in in their blood. So yeah, I mean, mid one was with them for a long time. The little success as well. So, 
Um, we'll see. But the one man on their screen, the Dutch man, Chrysalis, has uh, yeah, been very impressed with at least his progression as a player. And I know a lot of people have always critiqued him for his hero pool towards like the start of his career. But he's really starting to develop quite the diverse hero pool. And uh, he's, um, he's you're transforming in, into quite the carry player. Yeah, and I think that's when he first came to the scene. That's kind of how it goes, right? You play pubs, so you're going to be spamming a couple of heroes that win you your pubs. And that's just how you come up as a player, right? And he's getting to the point of his career now where he's going to really have to start proving himself as a carry player and making sure that he has that diverse hero pool. No more excuses. There's been enough time. It's time to step up and play the game. Yep. And well, let's see how he's going to be able to perform along with all the other players, all the other nine players we have in the lobby as well. Game one draft ready to go. It's going to be Spirit on the rating side playing with second pick. We've got Secret on the die side with first pick as well. And like last game, we saw the Mars as the first pick from OG. This game, we're going to see it out of Secret as well. I mean, this hero just has everything you want from an offlane, right? If you have pair it with any range position four that's in the meta right now, whether it's Mirana, Rubik, Techies, um, I don't who knows what else I'm missing there. But either way, just pair it with any of these guys. No matter what you play against, you have a chance to not only dumpster in the lane, but at bare minimum go even. And that's pretty invaluable. And you have a stun, your initiator. It pretty much checks all the boxes of what you want from your offlaner. Just do well in the laning stage and walk around the map and be a threat. So whenever there's a hero that can be first phased and can do that, it'll always get picked. That's why Timber Saul's banned every game. That's why Dragonite's banned every single game. And this is why we'll continuously see Mars because it's right on the cusp there. And it's not quite as good as Timber. It's not quite as good as DK. And therefore it's not making it into the bands, but it's good, just good enough to pick right away. And we're gonna see a first pick Kunkka as a response to a Mars, which these heroes have very little interaction with each other. So it, I don't fully understand this one, but it's definitely cool. This could just be a read when Kunkka was pretty popular in the offlane, you'd often see it get picked pretty early on. And with Monkey King being one of the hardest counters to it, and that being banned, that might be something that they're thinking about is throwing this hero into the offlane. But I do know Laurel is someone who really enjoys the Kunkka more than anything. So this could just be their first pick mid Konka here, which looks pretty exploitable, to be honest with you. But it's Team Spirit. They have an idea um, why this hero might be good, and we'll just have to see what they're cooking here. Yeah, they played it earlier today, Collapse Runner against Team Spirit. It was, sorry, against Extreme. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. he, you yeah, know, we've been speaking a lot about Radiance, and that was actually the, the item build that he went for. And this oh, is kind okay. of your your old Conquer build, right? In fact, that it was um, almost certain it was no one that, that really pioneered, at least the first person that I really saw, that maybe was another person that was running like your know, double brace or treads and, and radiance or phase boots in some games. You're just super, super tanky. So um, let, let's see if that's something else they they want to go down if they do still, you know, if they give it to collapse. So like you said, I, I feel like Lal is one of the best Conquers at the moment too. So um, let us see. And I think that's just gonna be their flex pick. They're gonna just first pick it, and they're gonna be like, all right, we're gonna save this until the very end of the draft, which is gonna put Yatoro in a situation where he'll have to pick a bit earlier. But if you give Mars away, you kinda already know your lane, right? You already see that you're gonna be laning versus Mars. This hero has some flexibility. Uh, I don't know if Eki plays it, but I know Eki likes to play like Centaur on POS4, so maybe they do have the potential to run this as a support. We'll definitely have yeah, to see about that one. I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know. Apparently he likes his melee fours though, because again, you, you brought up Centauri. He played the Doom. Seen him play the Tiny. So I'm quite sure if Yeah, I checked his pub profile or... too. He's been also dabbling in the position four Terror Blade. Oh, he's one of those enjoyers. Okay. I, I've been yeah. hearing some some uh, murmurs about this, this hero getting uh, attempted as a support. I've tried it myself too, and with great success. Well, what is the work in a pro what, scene? What is the item build you've been going for? Usually, it's urn into drums, maybe a vessel. Vlad, usually after that, just you know your generic support things that also kind of help you as a hero. But it's, you're mainly just playing around your reflection. And the first thing I think that is really strong about the hero that is, goes underrated, it's he actually 
since he has really high BAT, really high armor, can trade with a lot of supports. Like, you can't actually fight him when you get reflections and he right clicks you. So he actually has really good trading capabilities against other supports. But we don't know if we'll see it. I'll talk about it more if it actually gets picked. But for now, we have a, a Batrider who actually made it through the banning phase. I've been seeing this through banned almost every single game. But it does get through on this one. And Crystal Maiden, a hero that has been picked a lot, but a very low win rate in this tournament, is going to be the spirit option. How much do you look in particular that Crystal Maiden win rate? Because it just feels like, uh, I know Bedroom Dodge, like the Enchantress had a very bad win rate as well, but I don't know if this is just because you're first picking this support and maybe there's a lot of other factors that go into it. You know, I usually talk about supports and can they be a threat on the map? And I feel like Crystal Maiden can never be that, right? No matter what point. you buy, like this hero just never becomes a threat. All it really does for you is it generally wins you a lane. And then after that, it's kind of like the soft disable. And this is why I think the win rate of the hero isn't particularly good because this hero isn't the driving force of winning a game for your team. And sometimes you need that from your support. So I think you probably have to compensate when you pick Crystal Maiden by picking another support that actually has really good scale. And that's where I think this hero probably will shine the most, but it might be hard to like have that read. It might just be like, oh, we have Crystal Maiden. That's fine. That's all good. You might not look into it too much being like, we need something a bit harder to carry. Speaking of hard carries, the hard carry this Crystal Maiden through the game and Anti-Mage potentially could do that, but I'd like to see it more from a support role, something that has that ability to scale a little bit harder. Man, what do you do for Seeker now? It's this, which in a very difficult position. I, I was going to say, like, they've got some really strong lanes on Seeker. You're going to be running Mars Batrider, more than likely Poppy playing a Sky, and Sky's always been kind of well known as to, to be a solid lane. I can't imagine it would be any too much different. It was a five, but now it feels like this Anti Mage could make things a little bit more difficult. I'm not sure if you just, like, go double bracer for the Mars lane and, and try and. Uh, out trade and just play off the back of stats. I don't know if you can put the Mars potentially mid for Corden, but it's a very interesting anti-mage pick for Spirit. Yeah, I mean, it's a really good anti-mage game so far, but you are going to play against a carry matchup that's not good for you. They could pick the Terrorblade if they want to. That's historically a good one. Faceless Void doesn't look too bad this game as well. Against Kunkka, if you max your backtrack it or your Q, it should be fine but you're not really punishing the Kunk on the laning stage, which could be a little bit sad. I guess in this situation, what other heroes would we be looking at? They haven't, oh, they picked Troll. Okay, that's a hero that's also good against Anti-Mage in a lot of regards, and pretty good versus Kunk on the laning stage. It's like a nice medium, because whenever you get the Blink Fragment, you put it on the Troll, at least he can blind it and kill it down a little bit. So I do like that pick quite a bit for Team Secret here can get kited very easily though there's a lot of control from spirit i conquer is quite frustrating with the tidal wave as well so gonna really have to see a lot of that comes down to i imagine again boom on the mars and how he's going to be able to play with the arena and the, the just the bkb usages from from chrysalis and how much value you can get out of it yeah he's got good control at least right batrider and mars can lock targets down for him and that, that's what they need they need something that can just do the damage and they have the control. Their damage is mainly gonna come from the sky and from the troll, and they have good control. But overall, the lineup is secret. I, I do like it. It's looking pretty solid here, and I think they are going to, however, flex this Kunkka to the very end. So I think they want something other than Kunkka to go against this troll, if I would imagine. Maybe it might be a Viper in the works. Razor's already getting banned out, of course. What other offlaners? would Troll not really enjoy playing against here. I mean, Viper's definitely a big one. And Venno is not a hero we see a bunch of anymore. I don't particularly enjoy that one myself. I mean, I don't know if they'll play it, but Coddle is really annoying to play against as a Troll. It just feels like your Solar Bind just ruins your game and forces you to ult until you get an Agnums, I suppose. So maybe they don't want to go that far all in. Do we feel like secrets will need to address the anti-mage with this last pick? Like, what, what do you need to cover? Because I believe they're looking for a mid laner. 
you definitely want to make his game even harder, but I feel like you have a lot of good tools already. I feel like Mars is pretty good versus Anti-Mage in a lot of ways, just because you can't counterspell any of his abilities. So if he does manage to get a spear on you, an arena combo, you just die. And if Troll's there too. So you kind of just want a mid laner at this point. I feel like that makes it very uncomfortable to put Konka mid. That's what I'd be looking at secret. I would want something that doesn't give Konka an absolute free game. And you could have like the double whammy effect here. You can just pick Viper for yourself and now all of a sudden they can't pick Viper. And now you don't want to put Konka mid either. And then you'll have to put them for sat and then you have to like address it with like a Wind Ranger or something like that. Which Wind Ranger is also very good this game for Team Spirit if they wanted to go that route. But the Collapse Heroes though, like I, I'm naming some heroes that I don't really see him play. Yeah. I feel like he's gonna play something more his style. I mean, it would have been Mars if it's in the pool, obviously, against the troll, but Magnus banned, DK banned. What would Collapse play against Troll Warlord? Are you wanting a better way to address the TA now? Or are you, are you happy with the Conquer TA and you still go for your Collapse Hero? I mean, I think it's just Viper. <laughs> like, it just made my Viper better. I was, I was already saying Viper just for the troll, right? And now they pick TA and it's like, okay, well, it's an even better Viper game now. I'm incredibly surprised that hero just got through. Like that has to be the best hero for this game possible. That That is like a gotcha pick. You know how I say these don't happen very much? What did Secret ban again? Like, um, Razor Enigma. It was Enigma. Yep. Yeah, that's, that Enigma ban should have been a Viper, I think, almost for certain. But Enigma also would have been fairly annoying, but I think this Viper is devastating. It's it's that bad. Like, okay. you just Viper strike the troll or the TA in the team fights, they're useless. The lane is pretty atrocious here. Like, I'm not sure what this troll and Sky are going to do to stop a Viper. I don't know, guy, good luck with that lane. We'll, we'll see how it plays out, but that was a <laughs> oh, no. really nasty pick. Oh boy, all right. Well, uh, <laughs> how about the other lanes then? What about mid and, and uh, you know, the other lane for secret? Uh, I think the Mars bat lane should be pretty well off. I don't think Yatoru is going to get like super free farm in this. I mean, it could be, I, I like it's, Seems a hard hero to gauge because, like, if they get level two slightly before you, she has two nukes with a blood grenade, all of a sudden you die, the dynamic of the lane changes. But in theory, Boom should be fine down there, just right clicking out Toro. Eki should just like peel off the, the CM from the lane. Their lane should be okay. Mid lane, TA versus Konka. I'm not sure how this lane goes anymore. It used to kind of be like a 50 50 matchup when they both could like deny creeps, and now I kind of just feel like it's just TA favored, but ever so slightly. It's not going to like super punish him. But maybe that will be a little bit different if he goes meld and just plays a bit more aggressively. We'll have to see. But I think this mid lane should just be a wash. Okay. Let's see if that's going to be the case heading into this game again. A, a very vital game. Not only for these teams, but a lot of the other teams as well. You've got, you know, Liquid are kind of riding on maybe a 1 1 at the moment. To, to hope they can still have a, a chance to be able to make it out into groups two. And we will see what we have in store for us. You definitely have like a hard decision to make because like, I feel like you have to address this Viper, which means the Batrider will have to like spend a lot of time in Viper's lane trying to make him feed. But the moment you do that, you give Yatoro absolute free farm on the Anti-Mage. So it's kind of like a lose-lose situation, but uh -oh. maybe a first blood could be what they need. Ooh. All right, I think they should still get him because see him is basically a creep. You think so, right? Okay, yeah, they will. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, they're just gonna take their time. <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> Crystal fakes it. Uh, I mean, it's still good on him, but it was a little yeah. funny. I thought they're saving it for Corden, and he hit him once. Like Crystal, nah, I'll take that. It's. It, uh, yeah, I mean, you say it's good on the troll. Does it matter in this Viper lane? Like, is, I've, yeah, I wonder. Like, usually I'd be like, yeah, it's the carry that takes it. Like, you're pretty happy with that. You, you can't go wrong. But, like, 
Is this really going to change how this Viper lane actually goes for the troll? Unlikely. And I already think he may have made a small mistake here. The battle I don't know. I could be wrong here, but I think he needs boots. <laughs> like, ASAP. Maybe if you got first blood and really fast boots. Because not only are you playing versus Viper, right? You're also playing versus Tiny. And when you play against these heroes like that are melee, Tiny, Pudge, having these early boots is gonna what? It's gonna keep you alive. So we'll see how fast he can get the boots on Crystallis. He's gonna finish the early Wraith Band, but he still has a good chunk of change. That boots will be coming out after, I don't know, a wave or two. So perhaps this first blood will be the difference maker in top lane. We'll have to see. I didn't see if Lull needed Torrent for that previous fight. I, I suppose you, you probably will with a 5v5, but I don't know. I was going to bring up the fact that he leveled Torrent, but he was able to get three last hits still, so not a concern of him being able to secure yep. his range creeps. Perfect CS for Torrent. No cares. Collapse? Huh? He's dead. Is he? He's got a fairy more right click. Chrysalis? Okay. Has been killed. Queer. Well, I guess dropping like flies here. Yeah, this is this has always been the weakness of the Viper, right? Like level one, level two, then all those points afterwards. So looks like they're doing at the stage where it's going to be okay. They're doing whatever they can to, to try and slow down Viper. But yeah, once once you get to levels, uh, this this lane's going to look very different. It's still a pretty desirable like start. They even get the pool off to begin here. Oh, Puppy's going to get a good camp here, too, and deny three creeps, so... I will say, Secret is already handling this lane as well as they could, given how early on it is. Viper's still level one, he's going to get denied here, you're going to have your level two on both Puppy, after this creep, and Crystallis, so you're definitely delaying this lane. But yeah, as you mentioned, at level three, that's when the lane gets incredibly difficult, no matter what you try to do. But you could bully them right now. Like, this is a weakness of the Viper at this current point, and they, they see it too. Continue to put a lot of pressure on. Kind of get lucky with a bit it's of an kind of all in, but... though. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, you are starting to take up a lot of poison attacks. You get the kill, but you two will enter the grave. We're definitely playing to win this lane here on Secret, which isn't necessarily a good or a bad thing, really. I think Mira's going to be the breadwinner on this one which still is going to be, I think, favoring uh, Spirit just a little bit, because once that toss comes online, I think you're no longer going to be able to do these all in place. And well, how's our other side lane shaping up at the moment? Looks like we're pretty happy with the 14 and two. We'll see, like you said, there is always kill threat for Secret, depending on Maposhka's positioning. And we are probably going to have a fight for this Lotus as well. Eki's in prime position, but it's just him at the Mars really to help out, so Spirit will get both Lotuses by the looks of it. And Laurel's gonna XTP himself. Get himself his full HP back, as he was taking a lot of uh, meld strikes to the face here. I didn't catch your name, Slappy. Do you, uh, do you go Soul Ring in this lane on Boom? I thought pretty much against any mana burns you would. Uh, you used to be able to go that build, but nowadays I think you just favor the sustain because okay. you'll get mana eventually. I think maybe a stick might be pretty good, but I think Boom is just going to deal with the fact that, you know, anti mage doesn't really do much damage to you if you have like more stats than him and you just right click mm -hmm. him with low mana. And eventually you'll have a God's Rebuke up because he's not always going to be able to right click you. I think this is totally fine. And so you can see through the CS, it's definitely really fine for him. Yeah, and I, I if just, you ever pop Soul Ring, you kill yourself, right? And that's too much damage to take in the early game. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was the double bracer into Soul Ring or, or like you said, if it, it didn't matter in the end. So uh, he's even he's got the uh, what is it? Blades of Attack coming out, so even extra little bit of damage to be able to play this lane. But we'll see. Uh, there is a kill over on the other side. Continue yeah, back down Toro, bottom though. as well as your Toro. Is he going to be able to win the man fight? I mean, boom. Might just need to continue right clicking. He's 100% gonna die, and looks like your Tora will also be killed off as well. So, got a bit of a brawl going on across the map. Yeah, we're definitely trading here. Sometimes when you go on these offlaners like this, it's an all in experience, right? Like, you have to blink in to do the damage, but once you're in, 
you're kind of in. And same with uh, Crystallis on the top lane. Once he goes in, there's no going out. And now this is the time where the Viper lane could be incredibly dangerous to be in. As, like, you... Puppy kind of wants to kill this Viper, but I think they will die if they attempt this. You're maybe begging for... I don't even know if Cordon even wants to rotate, like, with, if he gets a haste rune. Maybe you're begging for the perfect rune for him to try and offer some insistence and manipulate this top lane, because Troll is also a hero that... And I guess you have the die side to, to help back and fall into the jungle, but you really need levels to be able to keep up with those whirling axes points, so... I, I don't know what you do to be able to help out top. They're gonna toss back Puppy here. They say free kill and a support, they'll definitely take it and... Chrysalis, nothing he can do, face checks the collapse Viper and it's gonna run the opposite direction, so... A little bit extra gold, a little bit of extra experience as well for the Spirit Boys. Once again, we got the Lotus up, and it looks like, again, Spirit going to find both of them. It does come at a cost of the supports not rotating for the power in, though, so Cordon will have an Arcane. I mean, it was inevitable, but if you look at Crystallis, he already has phase boots online, so I feel like he didn't have a disaster laning stage, which is kind of a win already in a lot of ways. And then maybe a lot of that comes down to the first blood. Maybe a lot of it comes down to how they played the first couple waves, but I think he adverted probably what would have been like the worst possible result for him. Oh, we're gonna TP Viper here, mid lane. Should be able to get a kill as a result of it as well. Lol. First boat of the game. Oh. Gordon, I'm um, sitting inside the nether toxin. It's not gonna tick out, but it's a bit awkward. What, what, what do we what do we do? We're we just gonna sit here for <laughs> 20 seconds, hope they don't bring detection. He'll try and disengage. A refraction back up, and he's actually going to make it. Well done, Corden. So, Collapse's first move is completely nullified, and, and meanwhile, uh, what's going on here? Uh, over on the other side of the bridge, Maposhka's trying to sneak on by to get the Wisdom Room. It looks like he should be able to, but both Spirit supports are going to be killed off, so... At least you got that to go to wave. Maposhka's going to kill Eki beforehand. No, not to be, so... Some interesting stuff going on this game. And Crystallis actually took the other wisdom room, so okay. it will be one apiece at least. So that just means one of the supports most likely will be suffering a bit on the side of Team Secret here. Both at level four at seven minutes. They're definitely need to find a lane to get some EXP as Tiny's almost level five and CM is level five. I wonder how great of a game Eki is going to play as well on this Barret Rider. He's already, we see him falling back into the jungle, starting to make some stacks. It's a hero that can for him do a lot you? with gold. Awesome. I... Who would you prefer? Because, I mean, corden has got Blink queued up, but also if you give it to the Barret Rider, he's going to be able to get pretty active as we're actually currently seeing him make a goal onto Lull. Corden traps are on cooldown, didn't have any already pre-set up as well. I think they should share it. You know, that's only fair, uh, right? Share the love, okay. <laughs> now, there's an argument for both, because Corden already has a good game. Is Corden with those stacks going to, you know, take over the game solo? It would be the question. And Puffy's just going to give his life for the cause. And Got boom, as well. down too. Yeah. And that's with the rotation from Corden too. So, definitely not a good sequence of events there for Team Secret. That was, well, I was going to say, Poppies is just inevitable because Troll can't go there and you never want to, like, pre-10 minutes just have nobody in the lane. You want to force at least them just to go for and kill you. And it looks like they're going to share it. Look, I, I was right. I shared the love. <laughs> Aposhka, how big Aposhka's of a Nova? Sharing too. Wait, is he going to... Oh, that's not oh, even a Nova. No. He's got ulti. Oh, no. Okay, that's all right. Boom's here. <laughs> I would say that's still pretty good. Yeah, get some experience. You do get dewatered. Your Tora is probably looking for a free kill. They will find it, especially with Lull stepping in. Mirror, this is such a peculiar angle for the tiny. Oh, how did he get there? Uh -huh. Wraps all the way around. They're going to drop the boat. That will result in another kill. Will it? Will it? it steps out. The splash for the Conquer is enough to bring him down. And Adyatoro trying to jump and leap away. Boom. 
No, okay. he's gonna land it. <laughs> and also, even Crystals is here. So everyone's, everyone's coming, why not? We got 18 kills just before the 10 minute mark. Everyone but Collapse showed up for that one. I hate Laurel is out. Why has he got like dangling feet under? It just looks, he's dying. Oh, that's really not, um, Chrysalis gets involved two kills then. I'm very impressed, man, on, on how much farm Chrysalis has and what he was able to get off the back of that lane. You were bringing up, this is not a good lane for Troll at all, but three, one and two, and you know, he's showcasing his more than happy to, to leave that lane and, and offer some assistance. Yeah, out of all the things that could have happened that top lane, like I said, the result was very desirable for Team Secret. There was some really disaster scenarios that could have happened, but they evaded them and it was just good. The, the lane stage was just good for them. Tower See what they're going to be able to do off the back of this. Does look like Corden's going to take the Ancients. So this will be a pretty fast timing out of the Blink Dagger. And we're going to have a very similar build once again for the Mars going down this Yule Scepter route, which of course is going to have a lot of value versus the Anti-Mage, very similar to a lot of Spirit Heroes. A little bit more risky though, because he can reflect it back on you. Smoke down from Spirit. They're going to TP collapsed in as well. He's already dealt with his own objective up top. And Chrysalis just snuck by and also popped the smoke from a post and low. So Secret going to have plenty of time to be able to react and they will just look to dodge and go to the opposite side of the map. I think that's wise for now. Collapse going to TP mid. Just get his farm on. That's pretty much all you do as a Viper. You just hit creeps for a very long time. The hero is very slow. Pretty tanky though, and they will potentially go on Maposhka here. How badly do they want it? What? Okay, toss back in X. It doesn't. How? Matter. How I don't did know. You find the angle that. for that. <laughs> okay. Tossed him from the high ground back down to the low ground where he was standing. Fans of beast love. Yeah, man. Is yeah, we don't see him often on these melee. Position fours, but isn't showing so far. Lowest net worth out of this, the everyone in this game, I should say. But we'll see how he's going to be able to find his farm and them getting objectives across the map is definitely going to help out. What's the build from Low? Okay, he's uh, I think is this? Did he go casual Sanj, which is actually something you were bringing up? And yeah, he did go casual casual Sanj, and then he's going to be going into the scepter afterwards. He knows. Nah, the casual Assange was definitely underrated, for sure. This item is really good. And I think at some point he's going to go the Halberd too, but I think you don't want to go the full Halberd right now. You want to get this Aglum Scepter still. You are playing versus TA and Troll. Of course, Halberd has, like, lots of value here. And he deemed oh, that... Boom. No way is he going to be able to TP out? Oh, wow. Yeah, he's out. But is Mira out? That's the real question. I don't think Mira's out. <laughs> no, quite dead. It's definitely dead. So, that blink dagger. Not looking like it's going to be a fast timing in this game. But it's okay. He's already done a lot of work on this tiny for his chorus. You just want to see at some point him get a little bit of space. That way he's in the setting up on Corden. Okay, he's relying on the torrent. Yeah, so there's gonna be a farm game now for the most part. Like you have a TA and troll, right? They're just going to hit creeps for some time. And on the other side, you have an anti-mage lineup and a viper. Of course, these guys would want to like take some fights when possible, but it's not really worth moving, right? Because if your choices are to walk to the enemy side of the map and stop them from farming or just farm yourself, that's a risk involved because you don't know what happens in these situations. You can just go there. Secrets are obviously going to be their farm. You can die. Now you gave them gold and you didn't take the own farm that was on your own side of the map. It's pretty much risk versus reward. And there's no clear timing on either side where it's like, go, go, go time. Maybe this Yules coming up for boom might be go time. Maybe the blink dagger on Batrider. But outside of that, until we get at least those items, Secret probably not going to make any moves. And as far as the side of Team Spirit, there's not a single item I can think of that's going to make them want to 
make a move within the next five minutes. I think they're totally chill farming. But who does this favor them? Like, if we're going to have this ultra farm game and if we're going to get to the late stage in game one here with this last series, like, who do we feel like is really favored? That's better late game? Yeah. That is a tough one. I want to probably say Team Spirit might be favored because I think this Anti Mage, Viper, and Kunkka are just going to create so much havoc in the team fights that, you know, a lot's going to come down to Boom and precisely how good his initiations are. Okay. We, you, you've mentioned a lot about the supports you have an impact throughout the entirety of the game. We're very intrigued to see what, like, I, we know that you, you said Crystal Maiden's not going to have that, and I feel like your puppy maybe with silence. Probably by then you're going to have BKBs and, and Mantra on the anti mage, but really for me, like, I feel like Eki could be the potential X factor. You know, you're mentioning some yeah. of the initiations for Boom, but this Batrider can do that. And, and what we saw the Tundra game where nine class, they did lose that game, of course, but well, he had Blink Force and Scepter uh, on a on a support Batrider. So, like, let's see how much farm Eki's going to get if if we do have this game that gets stored out. Maybe he can somehow find some farm like deep in Spirit's territory and be a bit of a pest and and take away some of their own neutrals. So he he could be that X factor for for Secret. Yeah, he definitely could. Right, we'll have to see. It's just Dota is a really hard game nowadays, and it's been this way for a long time to be like, this team is going to win late game no matter what, right? Because there's just so many X factors, I'll say, in the game where you just don't know how the game is going to progress. Like, there can be one fight where Puppy gets a triple kill, right, randomly. Now, all of a sudden, he has, like, some Atos or something like that, and now he's solo killing Anti-Mage, and it's just like, well, how could you ever predict this? Stuff like that can just happen in Dota. And it's unless it's like some anti major Medusa, you know, where there's a clear timing situation, it's very hard to like read who's just gonna win if it goes late in Dota nowadays. I love how that, like you to say on the anti major Medusa, I know, I know you mentioned like late game, you really look at anti major favor, but I love how there's little, there's much more detail that goes into matchups where we saw, I think, in. To, to make this comparison easier, like when the Rapier build was common, like third item for Fedusa, where you could actually just end the game before Anti Mage is, is even a threat. Because uh, traditionally, we've known like Anti Mage, you completely counted Dusa, like Ultra Late Game, and you made four or five items, but you know, that that's one matchup, and there's a lot of other matchups where sometimes it's even just level dependent instead of like maybe three items uh, where you can you have this slight advantage and then you use that to, to perfection, and then all of a sudden you get a couple kills and game looks quite different that's pretty much everything in dota right now there's always a play through it there's only one matchup in dota that is tried still and true that is just guaranteed success and that's when you play huskar mid against ember you'll always <laughs> win that matchup no matter what you do but that's only a lightning stage thing and you're not even guaranteed to win the game there's always layers and layers of strategy that's all it is really that you can come up with to give yourself a game at, from a disadvantage oh, that's no <laughs> so, a, lot of, a lot of exclamation points mr lol i have to keep that tone down a little bit it's working on it hey, hey you puppy she's <laughs> <laughs> uh she's the ad is extra input as well yeah, this one worked out pretty surely, sir. I'm sure. Uh, it's, we've we've got pretty lucky. We've we've actually run into no issues so far in a lot of the games that that, that we've been covering. So yeah, we get a pause. It's that's not too bad. We get to look at the game a little bit more. Get to look at the tournament as a whole. Yeah, of course. I mean, in this game in particular, I'm just curious on Yatoro. Yeah, he's just gonna go for the standard build. Like I think when you play versus troll, you kind of have to do this. Go for the Agnum's build. It gives you three charges of illusions. That way you don't have to commit your hero, right? Blinking into a troll is probably like the worst thing you can do. So you can get Ags and you can just throw in some illusions that'll just poke at him for some time and eventually you will burn all his mana. And then when he's out of mana, you can't BKB, you can't ulti, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it'll be very difficult to play the game. Where... Are you looking at a... Missed. <laughs> <laughs> trolling them. We won, we won. puppy. <laughs> Rule book um, and puppy. 
Hey, hey, they need these wins. You're up against it. It's definitely, I mean, this game's even, but it is still a tough road. Like, it is anyone's game that is potentially able to take it. I do want to continue to stick with this anti mage itemization. You know, we've, we've mentioned, like, uh, dispersers with the with the scepter. Um, are you needing a butterfly in the, in this matchup, though, versus the troll? I think it's very nice to get a butterfly in the game. Yeah. I don't even know if disperser is. It's okay this game. I don't know if it's the best item with all the nerfs. Before you could just turn your brain off and get it. Well, what's going on? Look at this fight's kind of breaking out. out. Yeah. I Meanwhile, they're onto Chrysalis top lane, so just mirror collapse able to deal with the carry on secret in the jungle. Meanwhile, as well, other fight going on. Opposed could the only casualty at the moment inside this second skirmish, and of course, Spirit very happy with the trade across the map. Yeah, TA now has the traps online, so it's a bit more annoying to play around there. They could have potentially turned that on Laurel, but Laurel just got permanently silenced by traps plus the puppy on his Skyrath, who has four points in silence, by the way, so that is very long duration. To be able to find and him to collapse. collapse. Okay, blink out from Eki, collapse. Well, they should be able to catch him out in the tree lane. They're also going to be able to stop Mira's TP too, so... Uh, he will really make him work for the kill. I have to imagine they're going to be able to catch up to him, though. That Maybe. trap. Do they see it? Okay, yeah, they got the trap. Oh. Yeah, never mind. So they will be able to get him. And they're already setting up for uh, trying to convert this into Roche as well. So secret. Off the back of these two kills, trying to get a very big objective with that early ages. Yeah, and they got TA and Troll, so they definitely have heroes that can take this down quite easily. So a really good rotation there from Secret, even though Crystallis did die at the beginning of it across the map. Doesn't seem to matter too much as they will get the big objective here. 18 minute Aegis. It's going to go in Corden's hands here, and now Corden's going to feel very strong. And I think Team Spirit, they wanted to farm before, and well, that strategy definitely is not going to change as now there's an Aegis in the TA's hands. And you have Blink on Bat, you have this Yules on the Mars, so I think you don't want to fall behind the farm if you're secret. Keep farming, of course, but you can start farming more aggressively now and take parts of the map away from Team Spirit, make their map a bit smaller, and they're going to do that and just look to the top lane. Looks like Mirror's going to be the target, so... Not a core kill, but they will continue to slow down this Blink timing. Instant TP is going to be cancelled as well. Was Lyle's TP, who is getting close to the scepter. Uh, this is that'll be big. Radiant structures are fortified. Oh. Bad timing though to control this side of the map. I don't know how long they're going to be able to stick around for. You do have Tormentor up in a minute. Of course, wisdom very shortly afterwards as well. Boone's going to be careful about entering his own triangle. Meanwhile, collapse is still sticking around, but that previous observer dropped from Poppy. Should reward them a really big kill onto Collapse as well. So, uh, the sequence of events uh, perfect so far from seeing, uh, Team Seeker. These past couple of minutes, they're making some very good plays. Oh, uh, most definitely. Like, this is going really well for them. Killing this Viper multiple times now, making him feel like he can't really farm much. But if there are a couple things you're going to have to look out for very soon for Team Spirit. And can you overcome them if you're a Team Secret? One of them is going to be Gatoro. Obviously, he has Manta. He's ready to go. But more specifically, his Aghanims. Laurel's Aghanims is going to be the big one to be looking at. And I think Tiny's Blink Tiger. All of these are on the horizon for Team Spirit. So if you can do as much damage as possible until they get those items, that'll put you even further ahead in this game. So it's down bottom. Of course, he's the one without the ages. He does have BKB in his hands, though. With the jump, maybe they can get Yotoro. Could it be a big kill onto the anti-mage? Already with the Manta use, he's not going to be able to get out of the sun. So it's not going to matter, though. So much chaos with that Torrent Storm. Chrysalis will be able to activate the BKB and the ultimate trying to turn to the Viper, but it's just not enough. The sustain, thanks to the run buff, will keep everyone alive on spirit. And those are the two big things you had to watch out for. The Blink on Mirror and the Torrent Storm. Absolutely devastating for that fight. And you didn't even have the Ags on Anti-Mage yet. Like, they didn't even kill the Anti-Mage. Like, you can't really... Okay, Corden's gonna try going on. 
We got Toro here. It was not successful, but it was a good attempt. I respect it. An enemy tormentor will be taken away. And Luckily for them, it's not the greatest. Tiny shard, level one tree grab, you know, arcane boots, right clicking. It's something. I guess it'll help them farm a bit, but it's definitely not one of those big shards that can change the game. Like CM Dyer's shard would have been really good, actually. Sometimes lucky, sometimes unlucky. What can you do? So weird how it gives you just 100 extra damage over the tree throw. Okay, yeah, maybe it's, yeah. I mean, yeah, you de like you said, you definitely prefer the CM shard, but... Yeah, I didn't even know it gave an extra 100 damage. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's, it's actually, like, <laughs> kind of okay then for a support. Like, it's, I mean, yeah. sure, you would much prefer a lot of others, <laughs> but it's like, it's 800 extra nuke, which this, this tiny hero can always play off the back of your Toro. It's always going to be fine. I, this is the difficulty, this game. Like, how are you going to be able to deal with him? Boom, going for this BKP before the blink. He cannot really offer that initiation. Where, you know, if there might be some potential. He's going blink next. So what can we see him do with the blink into the yours and spear set up? But currently, they are having a lot of difficulties with catching this anti-mage. I mean, he just realized after that last fight, like, the way you play against Konka, right, is you just BKB up. Everyone buy a BKB because... You cannot play Dildo into Torrent Storm without a BKB. It's like literally impossible. And I wonder if he's gonna go, yeah, he is cool. So he's gonna go for the the Bloodstone build too. Well, yeah, they're going in. As soon as he pops the smoke, he's gonna be able to activate the boat. And yeah, they're just gonna look to disengage. This is not the fight that Secret wants to take because all of Spirit have responded. This collapse is starting to stack up the poison puppy. Should be able to close the distance. Poison attack still connecting regardless, Shator. Able to leap one over towards the other side. They're not done just yet. Boom is still in a lot of trouble. Maybe even get the yours to help some separation. Nice spear. Don't for the vision. It ain't gonna matter. Boom, not escaping spirit. Two team fights in a row have gone incredibly well for them. It's the Torrent Storm. They just can't fight into this boat buff. And I think it's still so hard. I think you definitely need a blink initiation that results in your cores hitting heroes, but it just feel like they can't. Like Troll and TA offer the same type of damage and it's just not being connected. I, we did get a last little, but I just didn't see the damage come through from the side of Team Secret here. Uh, they're definitely lacking it's not that they lack damage, it's just they're lacking positioning to do the damage. And that's what's gonna have to fix pretty soon here. Oh, here they go. Running really aggressively into secret side of the map and finally, they're gonna be rewarded with a pretty big kill. He does get the torrent storm, which is gonna force out the BKBs. Meanwhile, the spear is there on territory with the silence. It's not gonna be enough. Boom's still able to hold him down inside the arena secret. Can they close the distance? Christmas He's got trying a gem. to get him range. He might be able to get him. Boom. Just in the nick of time. Mirror somehow escapes, picks the gem TP out. Corden. Corden? Is he dead? He always gets solo killed by the Christmas <laughs> made of a push kick. Got him. Lost right click. Mirror gives him the tip. I mean, it's still a great fight for Secret, but a consolation prize that Mirror escapes with the gem and somehow they get the kill on Corden. There's so many ways that could have been so much better for secret like it was good yes but boom he spears the anti-mage away from his team so at the end he kills the am but he pushes him towards so the gym is easily picked up a while by Miro, and that's you saw Miro. he just grabbed the gym and tp'd out and then gordon just man fights the theum and ends up just dying so like i don't know how spirit had any business retrieving that gym or killing the ta there but that definitely salvaged well, it could have been an absolute disaster. But it's still good for Secret, though. Without a doubt. But losing that gem would have been so bad. That is a better shard now. So you got the one on Claps to work with, who also went for his own helmet. So and he's now going to yeah. start to transition, get those stats up. Scott into the BKB, waiting for that universal 25. Yeah, Halberd versus TA, Halberd versus Troll, both 
really good pickups that definitely puts uh, Troll specifically, right? This is definitely one of those games where once his BKB goes down, he's not really going to be hitting anyone. So we saw the last though into Troll killing a hero being the start of that fight. And that's what they need to continue to do. That type of initiation. Stun them when Troll is nearby because Troll is definitely on a timer this game on how long he can right click in these fights. Are they looking to try and veer their attention off the back of the smoke Eki? Able to pop in the Poshka's position and get that blink away. To help out with this kind of blowing one person up inside the lasso, is Chrysalis ever considering something like a blink to instantly be able to get onto that lasso target? Or uh, there's just way too many other items that Chrysalis is thinking about and, and it's not even required this game? Uh, it's not bad. I don't think he necessarily needs it, but at some point buying it wouldn't be a bad thing either because he will, I think he'll buy it eventually just because he needs to be able to get on top of the anti-mage the moment he's done by Mars or Bat. But for now, I think he has higher priority items that yep. he's going to Yeah, more like buy. your fourth, fifth item late, later on, but yeah, yeah, that could be good. Mickey up to his classic shenanigans. Very nicely done. I mean, this is just what you're going to have to do at this stage of the game. Because, I mean, you do have Roche up and Poppy is pinging it, which could be pretty huge. It does look like Spirit of Red this, though. They're starting to bring all their forces over towards his top side. Will Steve Secret be able to do it fast enough, though? I don't think so. Yeah, the right choice is to go fight him now. I know they're out, though. They've got like a trap sanctuary here, so that will fade. There could a be a pretty bit. decent kill. A lot of the control. Does he have a buyback? No, he doesn't. So it will be a 4v5. Does this give them Roche, however? Are you killing Lal? 31 under health. I don't know. It's kind of hard to go in with no Tiny now. Like if Tiny got his spells off and would have tossed them back, maybe this is something you consider. But you do have the gym. On Yatoro. Does Collapse want to bait his body like this? I guess he has Let's no choice see. now. Spear connection now, but the physical damage, they blow up the Viper. And now Chrysalis is trying to get on top of Lal as well. Can they get any extra heroes to be able to help out with Chrysalis? A buyback out of Collapse. This is all or nothing now for them. Are they going to be able to get there in time to keep Lalo alive on top of the bridge? Maposka does as best as he can with the freezing fill, but it is not enough. A big fight out of the boys on Team Secret, and now Collapse as well is, is a little bit isolated. Off this buyback, he's going to be cautious. If they can kill him off a second time, Secret should be able to reap the rewards with Roshan. A triple kill for Corden. Now Collapse is in no man's land, Yutoru. Getting no involvement out of the anti mage collapse forced the sense. That's a huge mana void. It's just not enough in the end. A die back out of the Viper. Now that yours able to set up for the speed, drag back onto the crystals. Down goes your Toro as well. And Secret have clawed this game back. Spirit. I mean, multiple fights have gone their way, but back to back now for Secret, and they will be able to get second Roche. Yeah, this has been like flawless positioning by Secret in these fights. They catch the Tiny with the Bat Raider right away, and Tiny gets no spells off, dies with no buyback. And then Collapse decides to put his body on the line and just walk in there, but he was grossly mistaken on how tanky he was, and he dies immediately in that fight. And at no point in this fight did Gatoro feel like he could commit. I guess at the end of that mana void, but that's like three buybacks to your teammates knowing that your Viper's diebacking. I think someone else also had a dieback there on the side of Spirit. And that fight ended up being an absolute disaster for the side of Team Spirits there. And it comes down to like, they just weren't together. Like when the Tiny got lassoed, they weren't together. Radiance when the Viper was initiated on, sure, I guess they were together, but I think there was no way they were going to win that fight. Four versus five, running into like a bunch of TA traps and a Mars Arena. So just a bit of a wrong call by Team Spirit there to take that fight. And Team Secret capitalized on that heavily. That they do 11,000 net worth lead. Two T2 Tower is going to get claimed as well. We are still waiting to fill that impact out of the anti-mage. We tore pretty close to the butterfly, level 20 as well. Secret. 
Not wanting to stop just yet. Another smoke from them. Collapse is showing on the higher ground and, and they're not going to hesitate. They feel like they've got plenty of damage with the net worth lead. They will melt through the Viper. Always his weakness has been physical damage and Corden and Chrysalis have that in abundance. This game is starting to feel really, really hard now. Like those timings I said that Spirit had, they used them, right? And it looks pretty good. But now the other timings that you have aren't looking so good. They did come mid at least. Just gotta make sure they don't lose some of their heroes though. They're not gonna be able to get the spear fall. Torrent Storm is forced out from Lull and he doesn't have the Ag Shard to drag anyone back into a position where maybe they can get the kill. Nonetheless, they will only lose the melee barracks. Radiant are scanning. I suppose that's good enough. But yeah, you talked about this butterfly timing on the anti-mage, but if you check the TA, almost has MKB completed. Troll. Same boat where he's queuing it up as well. So when his butterfly is up, he's just going to play into MKBs. So it doesn't feel like even that is going to give him an advantage in this next coming fight. Always feels like one more item for the anti mage. That's all, that's all they say. One more item. One Let more me find one more item. <laughs> well, that's what are you uh, now? That's just kind of how the hero works, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a shit hero. <laughs> I could sense some Dyer's resentment in that last comment. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, it's just like. I mean, I, you have, I, surely even as a carry player, you've, you've had to play, you know, sometimes puzzles. You've, you've had anti mages in your games and you've been like, what's going on? When you, when you want to fight, brother? Uh, you Tora? That's only the, the bad anti mages. Ah, oh, I see. Well, Tora at the moment is potentially adding another death to his tally. Nice timing out of the silence from Corden. Yutori still gets the blink away. It ain't gonna matter though. Five deaths. As a hero, that can't have too many. Yeah, I mean, the problem with this game really is that it's the Viper. Like, it didn't get what it needed to get done. And now it's at a stage of the game where he's like lowest net worth. He can't really make any involvement. He can't really make any space either, so. A bit unfortunate, but with this BKB pickup, perhaps this is uh, a moment. And of course, there, you've always got plan B with Viper, right? Just go to 70 minutes in the game, become a universal hero, and all is okay. good. I feel like uh, the, the the closest plan B we might get is <laughs> toss back into the into the tidal wave. Like that is what what you're looking for out of uh, out of the boys on Spirit. You might not have that opportunity. Because if you keep finding Lastos like this onto the Viper, you're not going to have a Collapse Hero to play with, nor a Conquer as well. Even through this ultimate, uh, he's falling incredibly low. He'll get back to the tier 4 tower, and Corden's not going to have enough damage. They're not done just yet, though. Lol. Oh my god, Thank what? You. Lives on a slither of health. They almost blow up Crystalis in, in, inside the ages. He's still going to be able to hold this. 30 seconds left, and finally they'll get it. Right, we're gonna toss back. Maybe onto the anti mage so they can get the blink further in. Nice silence gonna prevent that. And big men avoid once again, but Moom is ready to go. And they don't have the buybacks on Spirit. It's gonna be a 3v4 in Christmas. There is absolutely nothing that Troll needs to worry about. It. On the outskirts of the arena, you're caught and pumping in the damage as well. Yeah, this is definitely not how your anti mage game was supposed to go. He just needs one more item and he'll, he'll be fine. <laughs> nah, there's no one more item for him here. He does not have much of a base. His back doors up so they won't get any more. They don't have the ability of hitting anything but the throne right now, so that's a plus. True, can't go bottom. Say the tier two. Are they coming your door? Ooh, ooh. Oh, nice gun as well. Yeah. Oh, this is a... Oh, well, my Dota Plus is still bugged as well, so it's 100%. Set it for Seeker for the entirety of the game, so apparently was able to read it. Very well done. They know. It's just really difficult for them to fight on Team Spirit now, because, like, the only thing they really have is just Kunkka spells. Which are all negated by BKB, and you've got triple BKB online. 
And yeah, Antimage is still farming, getting some farm available. But if you look at the net worth of Collapse, it's below the Mars right now. And if you compare their impacts, it's like Viper's a carry hero, right? And just because he's an quote unquote off laner, his job is to win his lane and his job is to just be a right click and carry. So his net worth should definitely be higher. So to be behind a hero that his job is to just stun heroes for his two carries, literally two carries here, and the TA and the troll, means things are not going well for you whatsoever. And that's just the unfortunate reality of just how this game is going for them. And yeah, TM's just gonna die. I think all you can do at this point is kind of like queue up the shard on Kunkka, which he does have now, and start playing the repositioning game. Yep. And which, probably buybacks as well. And uh, we, we did see them have the attempt on it when Secret were previously in, inside the base where you, you toss onto someone with blink and then you, you blink further back and they're going to... The distance is, is greater, which we saw them, them attempt previously. I think that's probably what you're hoping for on, on this next defense. I can... Like, do you even want to take a fight around Roche? I, I've... Like, do you care if you have ages? Because I'm looking at, like, maybe, again, Spirit, you toss back the Aegis target further inside the base, you get the kill on the respawn, you toss again, tidal wave, and then all of a sudden it puts Secret in a, in a compromised position where you're fighting super, super deep inside Spirit's base. Because I, I don't know if they can do exactly that if you're fighting around Roche. Yeah, I mean, I think all the Roche fights are going to be very difficult for until that gold lead does go down. So I think the game plan really is simple for Spirit. Fight in your base. Uh, maybe you can fight outside of your base if you have a numbers advantage. And by that, like you see like this Mars farming bottom, right? And then you can go on puppy top. These are like situations and fights you could take. But if it's five on five, yeah, you pretty much have no chance because you're playing into TA traps and you're playing into a huge net worth deficit. But they're going to try anyway. There is currently a numbers disadvantage. Boom. Mm. It's yep. the bottom side. He's got a TP top now. But then again, they might see it. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Here's Boom. All right. So Boom. They do see. And they blow him up. And do they even want to go for that, though? We're with a jump through. Not a heavy committal. He's going to be able to dodge the bow. Activates the beacon. Beam. At least does get spells off. And, and Boom's still going to be able to stay alive. Spirit. Don't convert on that opportunity. Yator is able to assassinate the Skyth Mage, but it doesn't seem like it's not. Uh, Crystal's falling really low though on the other side. Hang on a second, Yator. Wait, what? Now they're gonna turn to Corden as well. Is this the fight spirit? Make something out of nothing. A triple for Yator. Unfortunately, Roche is not up, but they are not out of this one just yet. No, that's a godlike streak going the way of Yatoro there, but catching Boom instead of Boom catching you is a big deal. And that's Smoke, because they knew Mars is bottom, right? And they saw Mars TP in, and I think that's best case scenario, because Mars had to use himself defensively, and Collapse's positioning was actually perfect there. They forced the Viper to end up getting lassoed in the back, but there's no damage, right? Because in the, what was most critical about this whole fight is they kited out the BKBs. They kited out the PKBs perfectly to the point where you now had the Torn Storm and Yatoro could Radiant finish the fights there. So that's kind of just exactly how it's going to have to go. Like once these BKBs are down, it's really hard to play the game. And we saw that through like what ended up happening to Crystallis here. Sure, he had no BKB, he had the ulti, but they're not killing the heroes. They didn't kill the Viper fast enough in this fight. And may maybe a lot of that has to do with the fact that Collapse finishes BKB. Now he's a bit more maneuverable and less burstable. If they get the Aegis though, this is going to be a big problem. Looks like they should. I mean, it's definitely not the fastest, but it's going to be fast enough regardless. Collapse is here, so... You're not going to have the heroes alive. Refresh the shard for them to work with. That is a lovely item for Lal. Oh, yeah. That's a, They're coming, though. That's a big one. Really going to be cautious someone doesn't get caught out. This could be a nice ward for Poppy to set up for the next fight. See them okay. on the retreat. Wait, well, they, know they might get caught. Yeah, keep with the jump in. I mean, Yutora's not here. He rifted on the other side. You don't have your carry anti-mage, and you're not going to have Lyle as well. 
Nicely done. Puppy to set up with the vision, which gives them all the information they need for that fight. Yutori will TP down now. They need a way to be able to help collapse. Yutori wants to deal with the backline supports instead. Takes rid of Puppy. But that is all they will get out of it. Secret, they do not care about your age's advantage. I mean, Yatoro just bailing there. Put his team in like a huge disadvantage, and now you just have no buy on two heroes here. You still do have Kunkka though, with a refresher shard, which is absolutely massive. So maybe they can respect that and hold because the BKB is on cooldown for both of the heroes here. But it will cost a buyback there. It was a really good read by uh, Team Secret, though, to just like continue to take that fight, even to the Aegis. I don't know if they saw Yatoro leave, but the moment Yatoro wasn't there, it was free pickings to just run in. Crystals? Lincoln's pop? Are they actually going to be able to get the kill? No mana? They got him! Yeah, no BKB. Wow. That's one of those things you just kind of shake your head a little bit on. You feel like you need to do something, right? Because there's two heroes dead. But the reality is you can't do anything. Antimage still had an Aegis. You have no BKB. They're just going to go ahead and just like kill you straight off like that. But I can understand why he was there. He's like, they have two heroes got dead, guys. Let's go. But without BKBs, you can't fight him with Kunkka. I'm pretty certain of it. I really want to see the correct probability. I want to know. <laughs> they have a better idea. All right, Fig, you, you, you can be it for me. Like, get in the mind of probability. Pass. Yeah. I mean, looking at it right now, I'm going to say this is uh, my probability or Dota Plus probability. That's the question. Mm, I'm going to go my okay, probability. probability. Yeah, sure. My, my probability, this is a 60% win scenario for Spirit. Really? Your favorite Spirit? I do. What what is sixty percent and they're down nineteen K, there's no barracks mid, no barracks top, you don't have a tier three bottom. What well, what's giving spirit such this edge? Uh, they got an anti mage. <laughs> is this hero that good? <laughs> oh yeah, this hero's really good. And oh, this, I this see. stage of the game. And I think it's not just the anti mage. They're starting to TP in. Wait. He wind wakered himself <laughs> to take the silence off, right? So, okay, okay. But reality is, if he probably just right clicked him, he would have killed him. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. <laughs> it was a really good move by Poppy. We got a really nice ward as well. It looks like Spirit's trying to bring everyone back over to this area. I mean, this is a really key location. You got a DD as well. Oh boy. No Viper though. The call is going to be secret. Seem like it's going to be a lot of difficulty with just face checking anti mage, especially with the ages front of the minute. So the smoke is not going to work for them. They're going to continue to look to move to the north. Again, always something in their favor is going to be the creep equilibrium. I just feel like the barracks don't really matter in Dota. Like, Mega Creeps kind of matter, but anything other than that, they don't really matter. Okay. Okay. So that advantage is just gold, the way I see it. Okay. And heroes like TA and heroes like Troll, they become progressively harder to play in the late game against a hero like Anti-Mage. And what I'm mainly looking at is Kunkka. Can Boom accomplish what Kunkka is doing in these team fights? That's like the question. And the ease of execution is a lot easier for the Kunker, right? You just throw all your shit on the ground and everyone gets stunned. And that's just how it works. Now, level 25, it gets ridiculous. Where a Mars, you need to actually hit your spells. And I think he needs a refresher orb too, which he's not even going for. It seems a lot more difficult for him to be able to execute this. But it is possible. I mean, Boom can definitely break this game wide open. But he's like their big initiator. Of course, the Batrider. This is also another big one. Between Boom and Eki, they have to get some really good initiations in on this game. Aegis is now down. I think the name of the game for Spirit is you just wait for buybacks. Uh, they're going to be back and well, Laurel's is three minutes away. Yatoro doesn't have money and either does the Tiny, but they'll get there. 
Can you all in the barracks here? Oh. Yeah. And by that, I meant secret all lanes, but they're still also losing their barracks here. You know, Toro is doing a nice little cheeky plays of X mark slash hit buildings. They will go up against Megas. Right, what's the yeah, call? Looks what's like. the call? Okay, never mind. Secret don't want to commit. They want to get a jump with Batrider. That's what they want to do here. Ideally, who's the best target for Eki? Anti-Mage, for sure. Okay. If they can bring an Anti-Mage in to the troll TA and hex them, they can kill. But you got to be careful for Konka, because Konka X can break class, though. You got to keep that in mind. And you got to be careful of Mirror with, with this Wind Waker, too. So yep. that, that's another thing that's also going to be able to disrupt. Now you need an Olafire. Just four to zero. <laughs> And have we got that queued up? We've got a refresher currently queued up from Chrysalis. We have a Arcane Blink getting queued up for Cordon as well. Okay. Looks like there will be no nullifier. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more on your your point saying you felt like uh, Templar Assassin and Troll? I think you said something about positioning compared to the Anti Mage late game. Oh yeah, I mean just one one second. There's probably a fight here. Yeah, they're coming, alright. Oh, Mirror? Oh, that's quite the start! Onto one of the supports, and boom! That's not the arena they needed. In fact, he gets no one. Everyone is fine on Spirit on the outskirts. They do have to use the Torrent Storm, though, so it's not like they didn't commit any ability for, for Spirit as well. That's just a Blink Fragment. Like, he thought that Blink Fragment Illusion was the real Anti-Mage, but... There is no real clear tell that it's an illusion, which is kind of annoying because it has the same blink sounds that Antimage has and animation when it blinks in. I'll talk. So it's kind of annoying. Are they going to be able to get him? His buyback's still down for a minute 10. 3,900 health they're going to have to go through, but with Corden nearby as well, they should be able to get the damage onto the Conker. All right, that was 100 good seconds, 4v5. Very nicely done from Seeker. And that was kind of all set up with that previous outpost getting claimed so they could TP in multiple members. I mean, he doesn't have money for buyback. He's just... That's 90 seconds. He's just dead. How do you hold without your Kunkka? Now, that is going to be the interesting question here. Oh, Mero. Nice toss back onto Eki. They're going to be able to convert onto the kill, though. Yours will make it a little bit more messy, Eki. Able to get away. Still the blink. Oh, he might himself. be enough to get the kill. Another one chucked out. Yutori... Doesn't finish his meal just yet. Eki will be okay. He's actually ready to go back in along with Boom. Are they, do they just want to deal with the objective of the arena potentially covering the avalanche? It's making it a little bit more difficult for them to do so. You've got to fly back out of the Eki's ready to go still in the wings. Lasso back off cooldown. Yator is actually going to jump in with his real hero as well. They want to try and deal with the troll waller. BKB's out there. And they are happy with that. They get a buyback out of the Crystal Maiden Yutoro. This what they're ready. They will not be able to catch Secret on the retreat, though. And you're definitely running out of base with your team spirit here. A lot of it goes down to... I guess Laurel didn't understand that his outpost was taken over, right? Didn't expect that they could TP there, but... Gotta pay attention to these minor things. Because they can be game-breaking. Him dying there almost cost his team the game, but not quite yet. They're still in it for sure. Uh, 27k gold lead, and we even see 4 versus 5. It's not easy for Secret to fight them. It's definitely no walk in the park. But it's just good enough for now. And I think if they can continue to go on Laurel, that would be quite good. I mean, he's not even close to buyback, as he did spend his money to buy the BKB. They're going to smoke out now. And you have no buybacks except for Yatoro for Radiant side. And buybacks, everyone but Eki has a buyback on the dire side. Take a look at the levels as well. All in play. Let's see if they're going to be able to get there fast enough. I mean, Clapsy showing the lane, and this Roche will fall very fast. And Boom's going to be able to stop them acting as his blockade outside the pit. So they get the Aegis, they get the Refresher Shard as well. A quarter of Literally BKB'd. Big bees. And he doesn't have the Aegis too. He's going to use Refresh oh, Another BKB jump in. Very aggressive from Corden. He needs to be able to convert on a couple of kills. They got, Anki, they got the prime one. Anti-Mage caught inside the lasso. Drag to Crystalis. 
somehow gets the blink away. Lyle's okay as well. But this is looking like a successful fight for the boys on secret. Two fights breaking out simultaneously. Lyle getting hunted down from court. And meanwhile, they should be able to get Yatora as well. The slam from the shield from Boom cuts away the health pool. Now they got the spear as well. And it looks like finally secret have broken open this game. It is anti-mage against the world. And I don't even think Yatora God is enough to stop the five man from secret. If Yatoro can stop this push, I will just get out of my seat and not come back for game two. Okay. <laughs> See, Yatoro, what can you do? I mean, what, 3,600 gold, what, you sell an item, sell Manta, go Rapier. You gotta buy back on Tiny, what's the cooldown on everyone else? Okay, no, nah, we done, we done. <laughs> oh. Wind Waker? Gonna need it just yet, holding it now for the last second. You're gonna lose Mira. And you're going to lose your Tora as well, pretty surely. Not even going to matter. Won't get back inside the base and the Gs are going to be caught. So in the end, secret. Uh, I mean, they had to work for it. 52 minutes. But in the end, they're able to overcome the Spirit Boys and find a pretty solid victory. We won. Yes, probably yeah. you did indeed. Well, for I sure. guess everyone I mean... didn't see that. Because <laughs> <laughs> they didn't see the or chat, but at the end, yeah, Poppy said we won. Thank you, Poppy. I didn't notice until until he said that but either way they played a really good game on secret there i was a little worried towards the end just of how the heroes function that this Kunkka would be too difficult to play into but at the end of the day it really just came down to them catching laurel on that outpost really broke the game open but outside of that the roche fights i think the big one was that roche fight i think it was was that the first roche no second roche i don't know it was first or second roche right where collapse kind of walked in got arena they picked off the tiny first they played all these small little fights like perfectly and that allowed them to just really open this game up and i think it was this fight actually one of those couple where they just like slammed this game open and made it in a situation where they kept the net worth lead. they were even though they still got to the late game on team spirit it was just manageable enough but you do have to have spirit props as well they were down so much gold for the majority of this game but they're still making a lot of these team fights look kind of even right and that's that's not easy to do that's just really good game understanding as a whole but they just got too far behind after having that one failed rush fight it was like a, a nine thousand gold swing trying to take that one fight yeah this was the last fight i was trying to remember if this was one beforehand but i mean we saw they got that prime target onto onto the anti -mage. like you were saying somehow yutori was able to live but i mean the damage was dealt where he was not you know truly right clicking someone inside really enabled crystalis to get creative and uh, interesting choice with that refresher as well for him to have double BKB, double battle trends, which uh, seemed like it was all they needed for, for the boys in secret to close it out. Yeah, it was also the refresher shard from Roshan that they had a double BKB on the TA. So they managed to have like double BKB in those final fights. And that was just the network advantage coming in. Like they fought all the Kunkka spells with two BKBs. Crystallis realized that he'll be completely safe in these fights. All they have to do is withstand the duration and of course like they needed the double bkbs because they're playing this double halberd as well so itemization was on point and honestly team secret just outplayed team spirit in this game in almost every aspect a very impressive performance from the boys on team secret again another real five-man performance where everyone able to uh, pull their weight and get them over the finish line so in the end did take them a while 53 minutes but they're able to get the job done is just a game one. Let's see what we have in store for us for our final game of day two for Dream League season 22. See you guys after a break.
Secret able to take game one in that last series of the night. And hopefully we get a very similar game overall with uh, with these two teams going head to head. Because uh, again, there's a lot of importance riding on this where closing out day two of the group stages for, for the first groups, I should say in particular. But of course, these groups, Group A, Group B, very, very close. We've seen so far there are teams that can take it to, to everyone currently and all these maps are going to be very, very important overall. You know, hopefully we're able to get another good game in Dota because that was very competitive. You know, we saw from start to finish Secret, they were able to pull out. Somehow Spirit almost called their way back into it. Not enough in the end, but it you know, should be in store for another very exciting game between these two. Oh yeah, definitely. But I think Team Secret has... They're playing better right now, so if Team Spirit does want to beat Team Secret in this next match, they're going to have to tighten things up a little bit. It was pretty sloppy all the way from the laning stage. I didn't particularly like how Mira and Collapse ended up playing that lane. They could have had a lot more situations where they played together. They allowed Puppy to get the small pool off multiple times, and this Viper that was supposed to have a really good game didn't really have much of a game at all, and the team fight execution didn't seem like they're on the same page. Where from start to finish here, I feel like Team Secret were just always doing things together as a team, always have the same train of thought, and it really worked out well for them. Maybe, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I'm not quite sure what's going on with the, the boys on Spirit, because again, you know, there was, uh, at least from the par that we've seen from them in previous tournaments, the, the Bedroom Darts, you know, where they got eliminated was definitely something that um, them and a lot of people probably weren't expecting. Everyone thought they were going to have a much deeper run. And so far, they're having some difficulties in the, the groups as well. I mean, they are currently, what are they, I think they're three and four now uh, after that game. So, you know, definitely not out of it again with how competitive the groups are. But you're in a position where you know, if you, you continue down this trajectory, like we could be looking at some, some tiebreakers for them. And again, it's going to be very scary because everyone has got two wins on the board, at least. Like we've seen some tournaments in the past where there've been a couple of teams who've been like, maybe some freer victories, but at the moment there, there is no team that, that is a free victory at all. Oh, definitely not. Like the teams, everyone here is just like playing top tier Dota and you don't know who is going to be coming out victorious of even group stages. So I think a lot of that has to do with like, there's no dominant teams at the beginning of the year. There usually isn't. I think there was Gaming Gladiators who did it last year. They're pretty dominant. But Team Spirit has never been known for being super dominant at the beginning of the Dota year, right? They always take a little bit of time. They always call it like the being in TI form. Definitely don't look like they're in TI form right now, yeah, but they got to practice and keep grinding if they want to get back to that form. And going into Team Secret, they're hungry, right? They haven't played these caliber teams as frequently as they'd like to, right? So they're going in here 110%, making sure they have their best performances. They got, they got some stuff to prove. There's some, uh, again, new blood on this team, and uh, we'll get to see what heroes are going to be able to play as well. We do have that draft getting underway here again for our final game. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. You were coming through from Southeast Asia in particular. I called him was a very, um, was was talked about a lot. I was highly ranked on the, the Southeast Asian leaderboards, had that opportunity with his uh, stint on Bleed, and didn't live up to the par, which uh, a lot of people, and, and I should say the expectations that a lot of people had on him. He's come through, looked pretty solid on Secret so far. Then you bring Eki in as well, who also very similar, uh, very high up on the, the Western Europe leaderboards. And you know, so far, they're a very young team. And like you said, they're hungry. They want to prove themselves. And to get a 2-0 against Spirit here would be so much for their confidence heading into day three and four of the group stages. Yeah, most definitely. And we're going to see a little bit of shake up in the bands here. And Sorry, that caught me by surprise. They just <clears throat> picked Razor instantly into Centaur, which, I mean, the lane's good, right? Later on, the Stampede is historically known for being good versus the Link, but we'll see. Yes, you got your Chrysalis here, though. So, that is. Yeah, but I don't think he's that about. limited anymore where he has to be first picked, right? He doesn't have to play his Razor, Monkey King, Bloodseeker. We saw him play Troll last game, and it looked good. He has a lot of heroes he can play, but I think this is just their answer to Centaur. But can they do something with this Centaur? Because, like, when you take the Centaur from Secret, you're kind of, like, blocking them from having that flex hero. And it is a hero that Collapse is just good on. Mars is banned, we talked about before. 
the bat rider i was wondering if they'd ban it this game because they just lost to it there's some really good lasso plays coming from eki that game so i do like the fact they ended up banning that one it's okay i think when you play against a team like spirit like focusing and making sure your laning stage goes well it's not a bad approach See, I'm probably going to be looking towards some some stunning heroes for Puppy to be able to help enable this razor. Definitely, Clockwork would have been uh, a, a support that we actually have not seen in in quite some time. But I know it is uh, definitely a, a Puppy classic and would have been great with that razor lane. So, kind of hoping for a similar style of hero just to really help out with these lanes and, and enable the razor pick. There's one melee hero that really stands out for me when I think about Puppy. It's Ogre. True. It's a classic puppy hero. Ten seconds remaining. Not the same hero it used to be, as it's more catered towards uh, a core with the way he works now, but Tree and Protector, Ogre, are some heroes that also fit that bill. I mean, you could even Undying too. That would be fine. But if you really want to demoralize the centaur, Undying would do that. <laughs> See what it's the puppy meister is, is going to pull out. Well, that, I do like the I like the morphling Ben. I think the Dragonite as well has a lot of value versus the Razor. Um, mainly as the game goes on, it really feels annoying for Razor just to get kited with the Scepter on the DK, and then of course the morphling with the the Static Link being able to steal it. Yeah, you know, matchups quite good versus the Razor. We are going to get the Enchantress though, so there is not really a stunning hero, but of course still um, provides a similar role with the slow and, and kill threat in the lane. Yep, a very strong laning stage hero. Historically has been. Haven't been seeing a lot of Enchantress recently, but when Poppy's in the game, seeing a Chen and Enchantress is pretty normal. That's like his favorite style of play. I don't know if it's his favorite style of play, but it's definitely what we know him for, right? Playing a lot of these micro-based heroes. And this lane is definitely really strong. Curious on how you're going to address it. Do you just pick the Marana now? This is a hero that's resurfaced, as we heard in the last interview. People are just picking it because uh, Falcons did, but that's not what I would expect for Sench. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Enchantress is very good versus <laughs> ET, as you can dispel the Astral Spirit. So, yeah, that's a, that's a strange one for me. Does it enable a ranged hero, though? Is because uh, range sure. heroes versus Razor has a very good time, but I mean, you probably could have got another melee hero right to act as a, a way to enable like a range carry. Yeah, but you don't have to have a melee support to pick a ranged carry. Well, okay. Not really. I don't think that's exactly how that one works. So, and there's a lot of options that are really good versus the Razor that they could still pick. Let's see if they end up going for that. I mean, there's. Lena was a good one. Drow, just if you want to keep your distance, of course. We've seen the Sniper before. If you just want to break the link, you have a lot of options. So Faces Void, Sark, PA. These are all... There's tons of options for Racer. It's basically the point I'm getting at here. Okay. And not all the ones have to be ranged. And there's a ranged hero that is very good versus Racer. And that will be the carry Wind Ranger, which I think it will be. I know that... Yatoro has been playing this quite a lot. So whether this Razor is offling or whether this Razor is a carry, the Wind Ranger kind of checks both boxes. Like it can lane against it, but it also is good in the game against it. So I do like this pick quite a bit. And there'll be Brewmaster offlane and Razor carry. They're kind of just showing all their cards here. And then they're going to give Cordon the overall last pick of the game. Unless Eki's been dabbling and some Brewmaster support. He's definitely one of those players where you can not really truly expect anything. Expect the unexpected. It does seem like he might have the potential to play the position for Brew, but I feel like that is a little bit less unlikely. We're actually going to get a toss from, from Team Secret, so a lot of control out of them with these two heroes in particular. I think what they want to do here is... They want to put the inch against the ET, and they probably think the inch is going to be position five. And then they want to put the tusk with the razor. That way they can have like uh, just a strong laning duo. Most likely that's what they're going to do in my eyes. 
They might not, but I think it feels like it's a bit of a waste to not... If this is a Wind Ranger ET lane, it's a bit of a waste if the inch doesn't go to that lane, because you have two really good spells you can purge off. The Wind Run and the Astral Spirit. Uh-oh. Oh, Bantier. This is uh, quite a good puck game. There is absolutely nothing you have to fear. And maybe for just so we bring it up, Spirit of Ren Yatoru Puck, but I, I didn't see that draft, but I would have to imagine it was pretty much because they got 24th Sniper and they wanted to avoid the lane. I'm just guessing. I don't actually know if it was a 24th Sniper pick, but um, yes, we will just say that Yutoro has played the Puck so far. Regardless though, there is nothing Puck has to fear. And if this hero gets his items, he he will just he will win you the game. Like Puck is in this position where Prasma just does a stupid amount of damage. Scepter is dumb on this hero. Uh, mm. And he can he can get the boys over the finish line. Yeah, and then it's a really good puck game so far, as you mentioned. They don't have any real disables for the hero right now. So whatever they last pick here is gonna have some form of control. Whether it's a TA where you crush the lane and you have the traps for silence or just a hard stun, DK's not in the pool, so that won't be an option. What other heroes does Puck really hate playing against that's in the pool here that mid laners enjoy? There's if arguments Void for Void Spirit, yeah. You know, it, it goes both ways in my eyes. Yes, 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 yes. It could be not, like you have a very a aggressive lineup with Secret. Like the Void Spirit, you're gonna you have Tusk Enchantress rotating early. Puck doesn't particularly like having too many people in his lane at the early stage and, and securing the, the runes. Um, I think overall, like Void Spirit is still regardless could be quite nice. I also do believe Corden really likes his Spirit Heroes and I, I also think he's quite high Dota Plus level on the Void. But I, I, exactly like you said, this matchup can go back and forth though. So, um, so we'll see if uh, I think that's just a little bit more play dependent. I think the TA probably has to go though, because I think that one is like your best option. Because it gives you a strong lane. You just kind of go all in on the fact you don't have stuns. Like whatever. We at least we have some silences later on. Things can go well. And I think that's one of the hardest matchups for Puck to lane against would be the TA. At least that one's like just a clear win for Secret if yep. they take it. But we'll see. These mid laners know their matchups better than I do for the mid lane, as I don't really play mid. And it will be the TA. And now they just need to pick a hero for... Well, m probably Mira, I would imagine. But it could be Moposhka. Let's see what they want there. Covering the tracks here from Secret with the Naga along with the Shadow Demon Ban. Do we want to give over to Mira? Some ranged for techies, Marana. Oh, we already talked about the Marana so early on. They just go back for it. Yeah. And now now's the moment of truth. Moment of truth for the mid laners for Corden. Is it just the Void Spirit, or does he have something this, spicy for us? You can look at the Ember as well, um, if you want to. I don't know how people currently feel about that heroes with the Mage Slayer getting nerfed. I don't know how much that impacts him. Um, Mm -hmm. That is also another hero that has done traditionally pretty well into the park. There has to be some other hero missing. That has good control versus Puck in the mid lane. Tiny, no DK, no TA. Yeah, Tiny, DK, TA, or like the big ones. Apparently Sniper, I didn't even know about this matchup, but apparently that one's bad for Puck. Yeah, that's... Abysmal. Uh, we started Bet Boom Dacha. Gotcha. All right. So there we go. They will go to the Void Spirit route. I mean, like you said, though, this matchup really goes back and forth, but it's a, it's an interesting one. You know, the puck can be fine. Uh, you know, previously when we was, we saw the Void Spirit kind of hit Captain's mode, it was really the, the Yule Scepter, which was a guaranteed way to be able to set up for the Aether Remnant. Uh, that is not the build anymore, and we have not seen that for quite some time. I will imagine Corden's probably... I believe Mage Slayer is still the build that people are going for. Mage Slayer into the Ag Scepter. Um, so I would imagine that's something he's going to go down. I'm also kind of waiting for Void Spirits to mess around with this Orchid, uh, especially until Puck. 
I don't know if that's even something you're considering just because of, I mean, you get the silence out of the scepter and with the stats being really good, but uh, Orchid has always destroyed the puck and it's been cheaper. Regardless, very excited to see. Uh, I, how do we how do we feel about this? It seems like it's, uh, is there a draft you're favoring? I, I feel like it's relatively even. Depends on how they lane this. Okay. If Eki lanes a boom against the Wind Ranger plus ET, and Enchantress lanes with the Razor against the Centaur and the Rana, then I'm not feeling very good for Secret. But if they make the adjustment of putting Inch versus the ET, I feel a bit better for them. But I it can't be ignored, right? That this is a pretty free puck game. And it, there's a lot of stuns on Spirit for the Void Spirit. It doesn't look like a lineup that is easy to execute. I, I will just say that. So I'm definitely favoring Team Spirit's draft. And it's mainly just because Team Secret's draft has very obvious flaws in it. They first pick a Razor, has a bad carry matchup. Um, not really big fan of that one. They picked a lineup first. No stuns against a puck. Not a huge fan of that one either. And I think that's all I really need to see to be like, this looks too good to be true for Spirit, right? You're also playing Centaur against a Razor, so you do have that Stampede to disengage, but the lane should still be hard. I don't think the lane is going to be very easy for the Centaur, and that's like the one thing they have going in this particular game. And then Corden's just gonna be the X Factor for me. We'll see what he can pull out with this Void Spirit. His item build will be pretty oh. crucial. Oh boy, that, yeah, that's... Not some stairs you want to be running up, especially not with Spirit set up like that. Wind Ranger gets there first. So there you go. I mean, it, it really sounds like you're putting a lot of importance on the lanes, and well, now Sounds you got first seconds. blood given over to your Toro. No, I'm it's just a lane. Have you ever lane versus Wind Ranger before? No, but I've heard a lot of people have. I've I've heard a lot of people complain, and I've also watched a, a lot of streams where I've seen the Wind Ranger, and it's it, it, it's it's stupid. Yeah, I've exactly. I've seen it's it very is dumb. low skill. It's very low skill. You have your ranged hero that has evasion, and your base damage is off the charts. But they're gonna try to go on collapse here. Nicely done to be able to hold Eki back. I think that was what they were needing to potentially get this kill with the tag team. Wait, Lau used orb. Hang on, maybe they're gonna get the puck instead. Steps into the trees and he's okay. Now Maposka is also wanting a little bit of a brawl. Well, that's pretty good for Secret, like other than Boom getting first flooded, but the top lane is going to be uninhabitable here. Potentially for Collapse if they do manage to get another static link on him. Mira's doing a good job just like clicking him down for now. That level one link though has such a long cooldown, 50 seconds, oh my. 50? Holy, yeah. I didn't know it was that mm. long. It's quite long. What? How uh, how long was it beforehand? They did change it, right? Wait, let me take a look. They've changed it's it a change bunch, life. but there's a reason why if this hero doesn't get his W at level one. Most of the time, you see the flash on the field. But in this lane, you know, arrows on cooldown. You can just walk the centaur. A nice little walk there. Gets 41 damage. Zones them off the creep wave. All is good. I'm just getting. Beat them this bottom side, and they did go for the lane setup you were hoping for. So, you know, with Enchantress playing into yeah. the, the Elder Titan, so have fun with the Astral and they keep being up top as well. So, you know, seeing this besides First Blood given over and a thousand net worth lead, we are, uh, you know, are we gonna have a game or we're we gonna at least have another exciting one like we saw previously? Oh, we Give me some hope here. have a chance of a game. There's definitely gonna be a game here. The lane is still going to be tough for bottom. The mid lane, that's where most of the gaming is going to happen, I think. The runes going over. Will Void Spirit make the rotations or will Puck make the rotations? And will these rotations connect? A lot of that does have to do a lot with uh, not only water runes, but... Okay, top lane, Eki. Roll is going to continue out. Eki... Ooh, well, actually, maybe? Okay, Mira gets the kill. He's got a fairy fire. Collapses damage. He might get a both. double kill, actually. All right. oh, okay, well, I thought it was... Oh, <laughs> Everyone's gonna double kill, I suppose. I thought it was going to be the Razor getting a double kill, but <laughs> I, I suppose both sides do in the end. Literally everyone on top lane is respawning, so... 
<laughs> What's going on? Bottom lane. Regression on a boom. What do you know? You got your toe. Good old Windrage. Yeah, just cracked W. Yeah, Poppy's W was on cooldown, so. Boom's lane is pretty bad, right? He got first blooded to begin with. He's got six CS. Windranger. That's always my sign to see if a lane's a disaster. If the enemy has as many denies as you have CS, that's when I consider a lane a complete disaster. And that's pretty much uh, what's happening down here. Not good. And this Enchantress moving over to help the lane. Well, at least you're getting CS still, right? So there, there's always that. Is there, an, is there an argument to be made for Boom uh, to go Wraith ban? Um, one Wraith ban instead of the Bracer? I mean, at this point, it doesn't matter. Here, you got the Bracer, so... I mean, I think he needs... <laughs> like, he's gonna go for two Bracers. This Wraith ban was nerfed, though. You have to keep that in mind. So, I think, in general, I haven't really done the, the math on it to see which one is more cost-effective. Just having the raw damage of the Bracer with the HP region or the armor. But I have a feeling it's probably probably Bracer favored is you don't really see anyone building Wraith bands anymore if they're not in a chill deal. Let's see what they're gonna be able to do when Puppy's got that second point in the enchant. And really now I mean bottom is looks like completely free for your Toro. Yeah. I just want to see what the supports are going to be able to do to help put their mark on this mid lane currently. Because again, this is still the capability you have on Secret, and I reading can rotate as well. But how are you going to be able to enable Cordon? Just runes, really. Just help them get the runes. I mean, both water runes have already been dealt with, so that is no longer a possibility. Now it's really just going to come down to the fact of. Who's gonna get the power rune at six minutes? It's a nice time. My boots from my push canal. Oh, good dodge by Eki on top lane. Ended up dodging the hoof stomp with snowball, allowing Stalus to get a kill here. And they're gonna go. All right. Ooh. Mirror's just going in. <laughs> and my push is going to a TP as well. So he's got two Wraith Bands, extra... by the way, on Mira. All right. I'm not afraid to fight. Such a chat build. Uh, it does leave the Toro alone, and you see instantly Seeker, uh, they're going to try and get the kill. Win one is available, but Puppy's holding the enchant, so it will give you no... Oh, well. It was misused. Okay, Yutoro is out. Can they find him with the mud golem? Until Ooh, that it splits, is a... it's on cooldown. Ooh, that is a big opportunity that goes begging. Yeah, I mean, he probably feels like if he doesn't use it right there, that he's going to get fogged. And that's kind of like what he was waiting for. Waiting to use it until he went into that fog there so he could get it off guaranteed. And they are going to split the golem. And it didn't split. Wait, why didn't it split? <laughs> I'm so confused. Did it, did it time out? I don't know if... It should still split even though it times out. <laughs> I, 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 don't know how the, I, I don't know. I don't know how the enchantress <laughs> golem works. I don't know if it, when it times out, if you'd get the. All right. Well, refreshes or something. I don't know. I didn't see. But that, that is interesting. Go. I am very confused. I want to join a lobby and test that right now. But <laughs> probably not the best use of my time. Anyway, life goes on. I got the haste. That's good, Let's yeah, see. and he's level 6. He doesn't have to do anything with it, but it, even if he doesn't do anything with it, Team Spirit, no, right? They can't be too aggressive, because he does have this haste. And he will TP and he will react, and you will feed him his puck. He's securing the 7 minute rune top. And Eki with pretty good shards here, but he's still going to go down without getting the snowball off. Oh, they got both wisdoms. Oh no. Poshka. Oh, Poshka has no TP, so. Well, he's gonna run to the experience. defender's gate and die over there. Boom love this injection of gold, considering how rough the lane has been. Oh, he's got 28 last hits, but. Where is in the net worth, though? He's actually doing much better in the net worth than I was expecting. Uh, definitely that kill is going to really help bump him up there, but it's pretty close to the puck's net worth. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm just a little worried for Puppy in this game. He is in a situation where he's only level 3. The, the levels, and same with the Tusk. We've seen this before, game in, game out, where if you don't get a Wisdom Room and the enemy team gets both Wisdom Rooms, who suffers? It's your supports, right? And then you don't really feel the effect of that right now in the game, but you'll start feeling it around 12 minutes. Mid lane? Uh, mid lane? All right, that's kill? what you need. Some individual brilliance from him, but... Dude, he had him. Very close. He had him. He just, like, misclicked or something and didn't get that right click off in time, or he thought it was enough already, and... Unfortunate, and you said it like he does need some moments of brilliance in this game Radiant to really make space for his supports because his supports are not going to be doing too much this game. Bottom lane should be able to get the kill into your Toro Stampede. It's going to be used, but everyone is coming down. Oh, no, okay, they got a glimpse of him. I was going to say, man, if you found a spot to be able to TP out, but five heroes is what they need from Secret to shut That's down respect. Toro. That's putting respect on his name right there. I'm gonna bring five heroes to shut him down. Is it worth it? Yeah, probably. Hey, you killed your Tor. That's gotta be a confidence boost, right? <laughs> All right, <laughs> listen. Five heroes worth it, just the confidence of getting rid of probably the best carry at the moment. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. It's a mental game. Tor's like, what the hell are they doing? Oh, here is you serious? He's got to walk out to the lane as now. At least he's got Windrun and Piggy, top lane, Eki. All right, a couple of teepees. I'm going to make him work for the kill in the end. Boom's got his primal split that he wants to use as well. Oh, but... they teepeed Boom in, huh? No detection. And you know what's crazy about that? <laughs> Mira, you yeah. serious? That's so greedy. <laughs> that is so greedy, man. And he's actually probably going to get away with it too. Triple leap. Meanwhile, okay, can they get your Toro? Do they have the shards? Eki's still on cooldown. I'm just going to find another double hoof stomp, but he will be killed off. So at least secret, he's going to die, right? They're not even going to get him. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, the echo stomp on point there. And all this is because Mira was level six at eight minutes in this game. That was a Moonlight Shadow that saved Collapse, right? And that's got two Wraith Bands, he's got his Arcane Boots, he's like swimming in it right now and still 10 minutes in, level 4 on Tusk, level 4 on Enchantress. Uh, Boom's rough. just gonna get solo killed from Itoro down bottom as well, I think. Uh, so he went top with Primal Split, had no involvement, went through the portal, and then just runs straight into Itoro with a Javelin and a Focus Fire. And he's going to have a very slow game going for this Radiance. Yeah, I mean, he's 2,000 gold on the way, which is honestly kind of impressive Here's considering how the lane went and the, everything else that's been going. But still not good. And I think we're going to really feel the impact in the next, like, five minutes of what can happen on the map based on the difference of support levels. Like... It might not seem, seem like 2k gold at 11 minutes isn't bad. The fact that Puppy is level 4 and Tusk is also level 4 is really bad for the game state. Because it just pretty much means that if you look at Corden, he has to go jungle and give a lane to his supports. He can't go gank with his supports. He can't do anything proactive on the map with his supports. He just has to go hit creeps in the jungle. And that never really feels good. And of course, because you're showing in a lane, you're going to die on your supports because you're level 4 and you're easy to kill. And it's rough. It, it's definitely rough out here. Just those small opportunities they had on Secret. It's the Wisdom runes. That's all it is, really. The wisdom, the pop fight, not getting the kill. Corden not getting the kill mid lane as well. Onto the park, him just surviving on a slither of health. Like, these things are all going to add up when they need to snowball, when you can't get low, when you cannot have the puck have a good game. You're, you're losing a Razor on the other side of the map as well while you're having a bit of a fight for this power rune. It's really starting to get out of control. Yeah. It's Toro making good rotation there. Snatching that one up. 
But you do have like good dispels this game. Like if you kind of look at the Enchantress and Brewmaster goes unmentioned for now about he can dispel as well. So maybe you can get some cheeky kills off of Yotoro with these brew splits, just getting rid of uh, his wind run. That could help. But that one gank on Yotoro, it was good, but he's gotten two ganks back since then. We've got the top three net worth pretty much aligned here, all going on the team spirit side. And Mira being that full support right now that is making that transition, right? Not really looking like it's gonna be a support this game, but more of like a scaling fourth core. Spirit kind of look to smoke and continue to accumulate this net worth lead. They've got up to 4,000 at the moment. See who the target's gonna be. Maybe they'll be eyeing up Corden. Call out the ready, and oh, there's gonna be a lot of nuke potential with the levels out of these supports. Corden's gonna break it instantly, and uh, there's just nothing they can do. They're gonna try and TPM, but it's gonna be far too late. They might be able to get a return tool, but apparently Claps is gonna blink as well. Stampede. Have fun with your static link. Boom as well. Second split of the game, but it's not going to matter. You'll lose Eki, and you might lose more as well. Which blades are the ready here for Lal? He did orb him pretty aggressively, but they just have nothing left in the tank. Even Yutoru is going to be here as well to clean up. Another double stun from Collapse over the top. Boom's going to be killed off. Chrysalis, he just has to stand on the outskirts and watch, but Yutoru, I mean, he's ready for him. Hunts him down, tries to snipe. Boom. In the end, they get every single hero <laughs> yeah that, that's really rough honestly and it just goes back to like what we're seeing mirrors impact in the game especially when Poshka. you have your blink centaur online and sure boom he's got some net worth right but he just doesn't it just saves the net worth it doesn't really give him anything at the moment you can't really use it. It's not like a tangible thing like a blink dagger. Is, did he just lose his courier with the relic on it? Yeah. Okay, that's not great either, but I think it's fine. He probably won't. He's not really farming that fast. And Eki. Yeah, though. Okay, made him use oil. the oil at least. Some silver lining. This ain't like game number one, are you? We'll say that much. No, I. <laughs> I, th <laughs> you were supposed to make it like game number one though. Like what? Well, apparently casters have the, the power to be able to pause games. Surely we also have the power to be able to make games you know, somewhat even and uh, not 8,000 net worth leads at 15 minutes in and uh, it's still 100% for secret though, says Dota Plus, so. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> I 100% agree with that one. Like, I don't know how Team Spirit could possibly win this one. <laughs> it would be difficult. We're missing something here. I mean, it's the blue gonna... split, right? With the radiance. That's it. That's gotta be it. Oh, I see. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Let's see. <laughs> see what time he's gonna be able to get this, though. Because they are going from lane to lane. Future Tower's even gonna take a little bit of damage as well. You got the power runes up shortly, which looks like lull. Position to be able to take that. And he's got a DD. So. Secret. They're gonna run into Yotoro. A pretty good position for them to be able to blow up the wind range up. They don't have the damage though. Wind run steps down to the river. Now the turn's gonna be there as well. And Chrysalis, it's a difficult call. Do you fight or do you retreat? Whatever you do, Spirit, they're always ready to respond. And it looks like again it's gonna be another five man wipe. As Spirit barely break <laughs> a sweat. I mean, this is a much different outcome from them, from, from game one compared to game two. And they're mad. It's like, Puppy typing, we won last game. <laughs> I'm gonna taunt him this game here. This is the one that's been absolutely clinical. Losing two team fights in a row within like, not even team fights, team wipes. Like five to zero, five to zero, back to back. We're at 20 to five. 16 or 17 minutes into the game now you're down 13,000 gold these are the games that you just are sitting there and praying that they run into your base and throw a couple times because they're getting bored and that's pretty much what you're just, relying on oh man everything is working you 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 rotate three heroes down bottom you even tp in as well and they they have an absorb one out front of your t2 tower 
So all your resources you tried to put to maybe set up onto Mira to hopefully get a kill on at least someone, they, they can't even get that. When you put it that way, it's kind of sad. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> is working. <laughs> Nothing is going well. Kind of feel bad for me. I mean, a whole point of like their strategy was to play around the dispels of the Enchantress and the Brewmaster. But unfortunately, they just have not been able to do that successfully. Not even really once. So that aspect was a core part of the strategy that isn't really... So plan B. What's plan B going to be? Probably just go with Radiance on the Brewmaster. You don't have anything really relevant coming on the side of Razor. He's just farming up with a Mage Slayer and going for BKB. Of course, BKB is always a great item and it's going to be helpful. Not super helpful for Swind Ranger, of course, but all the other Dyer's stuff is going to make you play the game. But just farming that particular item, who knows what's going to happen before you finish it. There's going to be a lot of things still happening on the map. Your map is really small. And Poppy's just going to do his best to try and just get out there and push the lanes out. But this only makes Laurel that much richer because he's going for the Kaya Sanj as well. But Poppy, he's going for it. He's going to get it. He's going to get the Wisdom Rune. Oh, he doesn't oh, see it. Oh, no. I just smirked under the wall. He doesn't know. Well... Dyer's top tower is under oh, the smoke and no avail. The, the warning, I mean, that has always been one of the key attributes to Miposhka, just with his experience overall. Everyone has always praised him for his vision game, and uh, <laughs> it's no different in this game in particular. You scout out that smoke from Secret, starting to move out of lull. I was aggressively jumping in. Without everyone nearby, they're not really going to be able to follow up with the core. They are starting to move over them. The Stampede's going to help them close the distance. So what are you going to do for Secret? I mean, Collapse is a little bit split from the team. They're going to make All the right. attempt onto the Centaur. Oh, what Mikoshka a helps up with the four star, but the Storm's just going to disrupt them. A and now it's messy. You split half duration left. You tore snipes Eki over the other side. And now, I mean, this split, it's completely wasted. You don't have it left to work with. You've also been able to catch up the Crystallis. You're trying to TP out from corner, but the stomp once again from a Poshka stops Boom from disengaging. You got a random Gleipnir as well to also catch Poppy. And it's just another fight where Secret do not even find a single kill against Secret. It's just, I mean, we are at the stages where you might be ready to call it. Yeah, and you're kind of seeing the lack of control their lineup has. The moment you coil Void Spirit, what do you have? You, you have pretty much nothing for this puck. Even with Void Spirit, I feel like you still don't really have anything for puck. <laughs> like, this Aether Remnant is very difficult to hit on a puck without the Yule setup you, you mentioned or if he's Space Shift. So, he is going for an item that is good for his puck in the Aghanim Scepter, but it's looking pretty far away as every single fight is resulting in four to five heroes dying on the side of secret and none dying on team spirit as they're set up on he's just gonna get arrowed as he comes in see you later heaven death Oof. you have them uh, everyone gets them there's tough games and the team's just got your number from start to finish, and is the, this is looking like, without a doubt, it, it's going to be one of those games. Yeah, 19,000 gold at 21 minutes is... it's a lot. It's definitely not in one of those situations where you're feeling very optimistic about what's going to happen for the next few minutes. However, there is no reason to just give up, right? It's your last match of the day. Just play it out. I've seen teams throw games pretty hard before. Always a possibility. There's always a chance. Even if that chance is, you know, 100% for Team Secret, according Dyer's to Dota Buff. Or Dota Were you, Plus, sorry, not Dota Buff. Were you one that was more in the camp of not calling GG and, and playing till the end as Lal is just trying to solo kill Corden? I think... Oh, it's I'm in the camp of calling a game when it's over. <laughs> I've never been in the camp of 
we won't GG till the throne dies. But I'm also not okay with like calling GG if the game is still winnable by even like oh, a no. small margin. Oh no. <laughs> oh my god. But I, if I was Crystallis right now, I would I'd bring up the idea to my team right now for sure. It's like, yeah, I, I'd be cool if you guys want to call GG. <laughs> oh, he uh, definitely not. would be okay. Who is that person that's holding them hostage? <laughs> Who still wants to play this game? Because <laughs> it seems like it's one person at the moment. I mean, you know Boom doesn't want in. <laughs> Boom, Crystals, Eki, they went out. They got seven deaths. Call it's like, oh, come on, guys, I could do it. Let's just wait this set, though. Come on, let, let, Puppy's let, only let zero 4 That's not so bad. Oh, well, maybe zero five. 0 5 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, That's kind of spoke nugget about it. Yeah, he's oh. gone. Uh, Dude, three also he does have ulti. All right. A lot of damage on low, but... Oh, and, boy. Jesus. All right, mercy, please. Let, let's get out. We won. Let's get out. Lol said we won. All right, everyone gets to see it before we get to uh, Puppy with a good job. <laughs> so in the end, I mean, for to close context, out the day, right? That he, Puppy did say we won, and when they won last game, just didn't see it. So it's kind of like just some banter. <laughs> Bro, doesn't look too happy. He's just job done. I mean, of course for. Uh, the Spirit has still been a difficult showing so far for Dream League. You know, they've been got, dropping games and, and series to teams they'd be expected to win against, but this was, uh, wow, they really turned up the heat in, in this game in particular. Fire, that was a, that was a masterclass performance, 32 to 5, 23 minute victory from them. Yeah, I was really impressed by Mira this game on. Hopefully they show a little bit of the highlights on what Miro was able to accomplish. Maybe not, but either way, like, Miro in this game just was able to trade, right? They ended up getting uh, winning a lane that I feel like they had no business winning. They said Razor Tusk lane. That is such a strong lane. And you're playing Marana Centaur, which is also a strong lane. But they come out of it where Miro's, like, level 6 to 8 minutes, able to pretty much bail collapse out of trouble with the early moonlight. They weren't expecting it. And then stuff like this happens, right? Like all of a sudden you lose your lanes. Now Centaur has a blink dagger. There's the level eight Marana in the game, just with level four star storm and level three arrow just hitting you. And things just get out of control really quickly. Dota's a very snowball -y game. And of course the Enchantress, it didn't work out the way they wanted against the ET. Like they got the lane that I feel like they definitely wanted, but it just, the execution was too difficult to do, and I think it's mainly just because the Wind Ranger is just such a strong hero. This hero does way too much base damage, way too much health. All you do is build stats on him, and that increases your damage. You know, just universal hero things. And Wind Ranger's laning is just like out of this world right now. Where even if you put an inch against it, like it's not enough. And I guess Puppy had the issue of deciding who am I going to purge, the Wind Ranger, or am I going to purge the ET? And plus, level one, like the Enchant, has too long of a cooldown to really do the job. So. Lanes did not go the way they wanted them to. I think Cordon had a good lane, but outside of that, it was pretty rough. It was pretty rough indeed, and in the end, to close out the day, Spirit, they're going to be able to find a 1-1 one -one tie. That's going to be, uh, it's going to feel nice to be able to go head into day three with such a convincing victory like that. So, uh, yeah, in the end, we're going to have a 1-1. One -one. Of course, we're going to send to a break, though. When we come back, we will get a winner's interview with one of the members from Spirit.
Spirit able to close out the day with a 1-1 tie up against Secret, which means we will have a winner's interview with one of the members on Spirit. It looks like we're going to have Yutoro God himself, so we're going to get to ask the, the carry man some, some questions, but um, to close out the day for them in particular, looks like it's going to, they're 4-4, they're four and four, I I believe, and, and Secret, they are 3-5. and five. There we go. We've got Yutoro. Uh, Yutoro, congratulations on the victory. I'm going to let Fear start with the questions. Sure. Uh, hello. You know, people often say Team Spirit is in TI form. What does that mean? And can you also feel when your team is playing their best? What does that feel like? Um, it's a hard question. I, I think it's like uh, we just have everything is uh, on map is uh, successing. Like we, we do every think what we want to do like everything is uh, accepted i don't know how to explain i think it's uh, something like that when uh, everything so smooth you know is there a reason for that sometime like is the training better or s people are playing more pubs in any specific way that it feels uh, i think it's uh, just like try harding and when we have some good plan in game uh, maybe maybe some luck I don't know okay. uh, so uh, when all this uh, stuff stuck together and uh, you just playing better I, th I think it's uh, something like that all right sounds good now next question is gonna be when you play pubs do you play mainly to just gain MMR or are you playing to like practice heroes for officials uh, definitely for practicing I don't care about MMR like uh, I'm just trying to uh, see something new or train some new heroes, to train some new item builds and something like that. MMR is not interesting for me right now. So yeah. All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Yutor, what was it like with uh, being a Bepin Bacha and um, you know, versing Ame? Of course, I know he's been a very big role model for you and seeing Ame in, in person as well. I'm not sure if there's been other, other tournaments where you, you've already met him in the past, but mm -hmm. I know you've you praised Ame a lot and, and said he's someone he, you look up to. So what was that like for you? Like, I don't thought about this in game or like past game. I don't play against like uh, especially him. We played against extreme, so I don't uh, give too much attention for that. I'm just played Dota, so we played bad, so we lost. Something like that. And um, I'm curious, what, what do you enjoy to do outside of Dota when, when you're you know when you're not boot camping, when you're not at tournaments? Are, are there other things that you enjoy to do with your own time? I like to play ping pong, I guess. Yeah, it's uh, good stuff. It's a uh, good uh, game. Yeah, it's the be best uh, after Dota in my life. Okay, are, are you? Do you guys have a table tennis uh, ping pong? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you, uh, have, you have it set up at the boot camp. Yeah, yeah, and we have a big lamp for play at night. You know, because it's outside. Who, who's the best between between everyone? Mm. Mira, Mira, I guess Mira course but i will you... beat his ass soon okay okay so you're close what do you need what do you need to be able to beat him what are you lacking right now uh, just more more practice and some uh, crunchy you no know. okay <laughs> just some better hits to be able to get there all right well, awesome well hopefully you're able to get there uh always a treat to be able to watch you and cover your game so thank you very much for joining us for the interview and good luck in your upcoming games as well thank you guys bye bye right, thank you Tor. Hi, right, there we go. Good to hear from the man himself, Yutoro Gold, two-time TI winner. That's going to close out day two here of Dream League Season 22. Yeah, I mean, it was a really good day. Finally, we got to see Team Secret kind of show up and play really well. Of course, it's only for one game, but I really do enjoy, and it kind of shows like the competitiveness of like the entire tournament, right? Any team can beat any team on any given day. And only Bet Boom team right now looking like they're soaring above and everyone else in the regards of that. They look a little bit unstoppable, but that can always change, right? All you can do is look at the replays. So this is still a relatively new patch. Find out what they're doing. Either mimic it. They kind of even said themselves they kind of mimicked Falcons from when they did well at previous tournaments. 
all you have to do is do that. Just to see what the good teams are doing, do it yourself and you'll get a bit better. Yes, yes, you will indeed. And I've got to say there are some surprises though with some results. I mean, in particular, I think China in, in Group A, G2, IG and Azure being at the bottom with two and six. Um, and then- Yeah, NA being at the I'm, top isn't a surprise, right? No, no, of we course. All knew I mean, that. I've, <laughs> look, I, I, was, I was getting there, but like, you know, we, we, can, we can shy away. Oh, everyone had high expectations at NA. What do you mean? Oh, what, NA who? Actually, right? Like, who's, who's NA on that team? What do you got? One I mean, we, person, didn't, we don't need maybe? to mention it because like NA is just first. Look at them. First place. <laughs> first place all the way, baby. Let's go Shopify. <laughs> I see Extreme are pretty close. Aura is pretty close. And, and that's another um, team that I really wasn't expecting to, to have the performance that they're having right now. But uh, very exciting to see for the Southeast Asian boys. Hopefully they're able yep. to keep that up. And of course, on the bottom, really big, big surprises is Liquid, but not over just yet. So hopefully they're going to be able to call some, some victories back. Is that a surprise though? I feel like Liquid at Dream League has always historically yeah. been very bad. And like they're a really good team, but for some reason every Dream League, they're like getting knocked out of the groups, they're doing really poorly. Like Dream League just isn't Liquid's tournament. So this honestly doesn't surprise me. Okay, okay, never mind. Well, I, I suppose, yeah, you're right. The last two Dream Leagues, they haven't made it out of groups one. So uh, this could potentially be another one of those Dream Leagues, but we'll see what the schedule is looking like tomorrow for us on this stream. We've got GG up against Falcons first. Secret up against Tundra. It is a Western Europe affair tomorrow. Then to close out the day, what are you? We, we got the best team at the moment. North America Shopify up against Team Spirit. Uh, I'm very excited to see how Heroic is going to be able to perform as well. We haven't been able to cover them just yet, and they're looking pretty yeah. solid at the moment, kind of around the middle of the pack of Group A. Yeah, we'll have to see. They're also playing versus Gaiman, who's middle of the pack as well. So these two teams have this match might matter a lot, right? And same will the Spirit Shopify Rebellion one. If Spirit can manage to take some games off of the best region in the world, we'll have to see. <laughs> yeah, we will have to see indeed. We'll see if the best region is going to be able to hold it up against the, I mean, one of the, the better organizations and the better teams as well in Team Spirit, who are struggling a little bit at the moment, but potentially they're able to um, get their anger out or get whatever frustrations they have out in, in ping pong, and then they can uh, come back tomorrow with uh, a fresh mindset and go for there. But for us, for Dream League Season 22, Day 2, we are done and dusted. Four more series on this stream, and of course, three other series, sorry, three other streams going on at the same time as well. So all up, a lot of Dota, but we're not done just yet. We still got two more days, at least, of Groups 1 action. So with that being said, we'll see you guys back here at the same time for some more Dream League Season 22 action. See you guys then.